happen in my house, but that's that's besides <laughs> the point. That is a what time you have to do that? Yeah. Well, have to do that is yeah. really it's it's lunchtime, it's, eh? Cool. Well, like I say, it fits into the schedule of what goes on in my family. So I think yeah. it works on these weekends. And why not? Why not be a part? I said this yesterday right at the top, and I'll say it again. So Daniel and, and Bert, I apologize for the reminder, but I could be doing literally anything. I could choose to do a million things right now. Coming in here, teaming up with a guy like Koff, which is, is just a bonus because you don't know who you're going to be working with. You don't. Um, and yesterday was Glash, and I said it. It's like, hey, if I know I have to – take time to like put myself to do something. It's like mow the lawn. Nah, uh, do a chore. No, thanks. Like, Hey, get to collaborate with good people. Have a good time with the DK Sim fam, watch people destroy my thoughts on certain things. And maybe we agree on some stuff. This is where we want to be. It really is true. There are times, don't get me wrong. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's work, but like, Hey, Sunday noon, let's go. Let's, let's kick it off. Right. No, to your point, we don't have to be here. I mean, we probably do a certain number of times a week. We certainly don't have to be on the weekend. We certainly don't have to be on Father's Day. We choose to be because we like it. We like it with all of you in the DK Sim fam and hanging out and just goofing around for the next hour plus. I'll be here for two Sims today, as a matter of fact. And uh, coming up over the course of the uh, the rest of the stream stream day, you will have another dad, Jeff Ulrich, who's with Whoa. me uh, for the next one, and he's doing two. And then you got a bunch of guys who aren't dads who are generously spending part of their Father's Day you know, because they could be seeing their dads or doing whatever, but they're spending part of their Father's Day here with us. Uh, obviously, Tom Carroll, Matt LaMarca, Brendan Glasheen, they will all be along a little bit later on over the course of the day. Uh, you know, we we could bust chops if we wanted to. We could we could nitpick the guys out there who aren't dads and aren't doing Sims today. We could do that if we wanted to be jerks. Easy. Like, right, you know, but no, we don't need to. We don't need to. We can be very nice. We choose to be here because there is a part of us that really, really likes it. No joke. Like, all jokes aside, yes. job, all that stuff. Like, I was trying to uh, describe this yesterday. Uh, and, like, I appreciate you saying basically the same sentiment. Glash went not in a different direction, but he, you know, sometimes, you know, he, he's a different character than us and I and everybody. Mm -hmm. That's the best part. And that's a whole other part of why these dream streams are badass. Because you get so many different personalities, different perspectives, different thought processes. So, it's good stuff. Well, like I said, Rossi, Koff, we got Jordan, our producer, Daniel, our technical <laughs> director, Bert, Bobo, the man in ops who, I mean, truly, the first thing I said to him, Rossi, when I hopped into the Zoom call, I said, Bert, you need a hobby, bro. He did, I I think he, what was it ultimately, Bobo? You did five of the six yesterday? I mean, the man has been living in Simland. Who needs a hobby when you're making that sweet, sweet cache? There all right, that's all I'm saying. This is a hobby, probably, in some weird way, and I don't mean that disrespectfully, for all of us. And, like, hobbies become, if you can get paid to do what you like, even better. Well, he said it. I mean, I said, you need a hobby. He said, this. Yeah, this. exactly. Oh, you know, although I, I'm curious what you think of this, Bobo, and uh, and Rossi as well. Rossi, you've done your fair share of Sims, as have I, as have all of us. You know, Tom, who has become, like, Mr. Weekend Guy, Tom Carroll, he did four yesterday. He's doing three today. You know, TC is just, he is owning it, man. He is, he is representing. And he, like you said, is making that sweet, sweet pace. But, uh, you know, he said, man, because we were talking about Bert doing five. He's like, if I were put on the schedule for five cents at that point, I'm just like, give me the other one. Like, give me six. Let, I've said like, it. Let, let, like, let me have, let me have all six. Let me just I do love it. it. So Bert, what's the deal, man? Like, <laughs> Why, why didn't you do all six yesterday? I don't do that. Don't, don't, don't even answer that question. Tell them bleep off. <laughs> no, but I, I will second what you said, because I remember back in the, in the Madison days, I did five a couple times in my weekend, especially different situation I was in a year ago. And um, I remember telling her, I was like, just throw me on all six. She's like, right. I can't. She's like, I physically, I can't allow myself to allow you to do it. And I'm like, like seriously just do it and i was talking yeah. to drew one day and i said drew there's going to be a sunday where i'm just going to run the game or a saturday probably a sunday i'm yeah. going to run them all he's like I, I don't think i want you to do it this was like an actual conversation not like a text that i was like right. dude just i'm in like if i'm going to do it let's just do it he's like ah he goes it makes me uneasy and that's the same thing it's like you know i respect that from a production side of things sure. like yeah because you never know because i'm going to be probably straight trash and like i would people would think the last one I would think like the fourth one. Gloves are off. Who yeah, knows what could come out of your mouth? You've you've done three, and you know you still have two more to go, and you're probably just like, bleep it. It's like when you're on a long car ride. At some point, you're like, 
I don't know, I'm turning the music up louder, or I'm opening the windows, or doing something ridiculous. Bird says, not ideal to admit this as the ops guy who's doing the manual scoring, but he says after four straight, I lost a little focus. Oh, but no, no. Imagine just staring, like, especially, that's why I joke, I, Goff, you know this. They're the hardest. We are just two jamokes. Oh, we're screwing around. Yeah. Chatting they, it up. Like, ops is working. Production <laughs> is working. We are hanging out. Completely, completely agree with that. So, shout so, out to you, Mark. Yeah, and no, we've, to, to your point, though, about, like, the conversation with Drew and whatnot, I've I've been saying since... I don't even know. Like I've been joking about it for a year, probably the the all day coffeeathon, me doing all all six in a day by and, yourself. But I, yeah, but I but I feel like I feel like, and I don't know if this is the same for you. The only way that I could realistically do it, it has nothing to do with whether they'd let me like production, whether I'd be interested. Like those are not the factors. I production would be fine. I would be fine. What it comes down to is. I'd have to find a day. I would have to strategically find a day that my wife and kids are just not here. Like, you know, staying at her parents for, for the weekend or something like that. Because it's I like there's no universe in which I could say to them, like, I'm gone for the next 12, 13 hours. <laughs> yeah, like, I'm but, not but here, within I'm the house. Yeah, I'm downstairs. Right. Yeah. Like if I like if I got to leave and like go to work, like that's totally different. I'm in the house all day talking about simulated football and i will be of no use to you unbelievable except for like half hour breaks between sims and i'm sure that's the one thing you want to do when you get off it's just like let me go uh make sure everything's tidied up and the fan right. one's good let me let me squeeze three hours of play into 26 minutes <laughs> while eating something not pizza must be at all. Appreciate all the uh, Happy Father's Day wishes. And of course, as we said off the top, but if you weren't here yet, Happy Father's Day to all of you. Thank you for spending part or even all of it with us. Who knows what you guys have planned, but we're glad that you're here, obviously. So we're halfway through this opening quarter. Washington, virtual Carolina. We've not gone over our lineups. Nope. So uh, tell me, my friend, for the... You know what? Let's do this. Let's see if they score. And I'm going to tell you if they're in my lineup or not. And then there I'll you go. You could BK it and say that whoever scores is your That's captain. My cap. Yep, it's my captain. That catcher. The, the nooner, the just a couple dads on dad's day free roll. I'll give you mine while we wait for Rossi's. So I went with. Everyone's <laughs> anticipating mine. That's right. I went with Steve Sims Jr., the man with Sims in his name, as my captain. Four and a half percent of people did the same thing. There's a catch inside the five to the two. Bridgewater, quick 37 in the air. It was Christian McCaffrey right there. Another dad, BK, by the way, speaking of, uh, is in this contest. He, I just, I happen to be scrolling. I, I see his entry. So I've got Sims at captain. He's in about third of lineups, a little more than that. Christian McCaffrey, JD McKissick, a couple of chalky guys, both own north of 20% in the captain, better than 75% overall. DJ Moore, Curtis Samuel, Ian Thomas. A very balanced lineup. Back of the end zone, mm -hmm. touchdown, Carolina. DJ Moore. Okay, not in my lineup. Ah, uh, well. I like yours, though. I, I overall I vibe. We, we kind of went similar. I went with Inman in the captain where you went Sims. I knew you were going to do that because I swear every time I, we do a Washington game, you throw Sims, at least in the lineup. Cause yeah, I, I mean, I try to. Namesake. But that's why yeah. I do the same thing with a guy you have in yours as well. That is Curtis Samuel because he may not score even five points, <laughs> but he has, he has the ball in his hands so much throughout their offense. We didn't see it there in the first, but... Uh, first drive, but he normally gets like a carry or two, or you never know. He's sneaky. Uh, so I have, yeah, I have Ian Thomas, McCaffrey, Samuel for my uh, Panthers, and I got McLaurin, McKissick, and then Inman in that captain spot. So with uh, hundreds watching, maybe thousands across yep. all platforms, but definitely hundreds here on YouTube, millions across the galaxy, internationally and, and, and across the universe. Interstellar. You know all that. Yeah, inter intergalactically. <laughs> uh, smash that like button, all of you. If you're with us on YouTube, give us a follow on Twitch, twitch.tv slash DraftKings. If you're watching across DK Nation, DK Playbook, Game Center, wherever you're finding us, we greatly appreciate it. So, a lot of good stuff in the chat. And, uh, and this came up earlier. I think it was from Solomon, so I want to bring this up. My wife said to me uh, last night it was before bed she says to me so listen what would you like for Father's Day 
you know, is there is there anything specific you would like for Father's Day, you know, that that you know I I could realistically get in the next few hours? And I said, hon, you don't need to get me anything. Your love, your affection, oh, and the God. Brooklyn Nets just lost in round two. Woo! That's all I need. That is all I need. See you later, super team. Down in round two. But you know what, Rossi? Here's what I have to admit. I thought, and I've been saying it all year, I was obnoxious about it. No, you obnoxious. I, it's hard to imagine. I know. I was saying all year long. I re- I thought they were kind of. I thought they were going to combust. I thought it was going to be their personalities, internal drama that was going to be their downfall. That wasn't the case. Truthfully, no. they stayed on the same page. They did. Ultimately, it was injuries that got the injuries. best of them. Kevin Durant was otherworldly, especially in games five and seven. Just couldn't do it himself. I mean, hell, he was the length of a toe away from ending that series with a victory. If yeah, we're, he was. we're being, you know, completely honest. But yeah, James man. Harden got hurt. Kyrie Irving, evidently too hurt to participate. You know, no nose job this time around, missing game yeah. seven. He was he was in the building at least. That was nice but of him. Down, you know, I, I never I never thought the Bucks were gonna win that series after they fell behind 0-2. I had Milwaukee and six going in, but when they fell behind 0-2. Never thought they were going to come back and win that series. Uh, e- even when they were 2-2, I wasn't terribly optimistic about them winning that series. And uh, frankly, I, I, you know, everyone was just proclaiming them champions the second they beat the Nets because it's so wide open now. The few teams that are left, like yeah, nobody man. has a clue who's going to win. Yeah. I don't think it's going to be Milwaukee. I really don't. I think like they could not have possibly tried harder to not win that series as we get a touchdown for Washington. We got a vulture. And, uh, wow. Caca, caca! I'm a Father's Day vulture. Caca, caca! Hey, Barker, baby. You know what's funny? I saw him at the bottom of the list, and I almost threw him in there. But I'm like, he never touches the ball. Ah, Peyton Barber. Gorgeous. Got a haircut. Um, well, to what you're saying. So anyway, Nets are out. Nets are out. There's so much to go here. So many, many places. First and foremost, I want to say this. Yesterday we had this whole conversation. Me and Glash. It kind of got, I think it's as close to me and Glash having an argument as like we've it. had on the sense that all about people's legacy, who's soft, everybody. I feel like in the world of sports, especially when it comes to like big players, everybody's overrated. Brad Stevens, overrated. Doc Rivers, overrated. Who is rated then? Who is rated? That's all I, I keep asking people. Like Eric Spolstra, I feel like people before, oh, he's overrated. I him. Now we found out he was underrated. Point mm-hmm. being, if Milwaukee lost that game, I know for a fact all we'd be reading about today, because the Nets should have been a given, would have been Giannis isn't the guy. Giannis mm-hmm. is overrated. Giannis can't win in the big spots. Giannis is soft. Gian- and I'm like, oh, this is so frustrating, because today, today, just say Durant hits that three. It's a three instead of a two. You're talking about earlier. Toenails clipping away from burying the game at the end, which, by the way, an embarrassing series at the end for the Bucks. but they all end up working out. All, at the end, all throughout. Well, the overtime was embarrassing, but, you, I mean, when they had a two-point lead, oh, know, yeah. seconds on the play clock, and yeah. Brooke Lopez is holding on to the ball like, he, like it's a beach ball or something. Like if he had just great. thrown it up at the rim, that game probably ends. I was irate I watching that thing. I agree. So any, I was, I was saying, I, I'm like muttering to myself, is anyone even going to talk to Brooke Lopez in the locker room after this game? Like, can until anyone he, even look in his direction? Until he just made sure overtime was his time to shine the block, right. the rebounding. He was great. But anywho, I just don't like when we put these things in the category. Like today, Kevin Durant, no one's going to say a word about him, legacy, any of that, because he played as, as great as a player can play almost feel like single-handedly holding a team that somehow has a Blake Griffin healthy, by the way, no one's talking about him. He played well with 17 points yep. called out though. But like, I just, I, like these things, are, it just blows my mind how we get as fans. And I know it's the knee jerk reaction, but for me, I'm very happy as well. Cause aside from, and I don't mean to sound rude, like Kawhi's injured. So that still kind of has a, not a super team, but has that dynamic duo manufactured team in the Los Angeles Clippers. But outside of that, you have what the, what we, I think really now, I think the NBA fans, aside from the off season drama and the fun of like, who your team is going to get. I think we want to get back to draft and sign, not trade everything, get a bunch of superstars and plug this like manufactured team together. 
I think we want that wasn't good. Was it? Nice, nice D. Um, I, I think we want to see like more Suns than we want to see Nets. Like Devin 100%. Booker and, and for the Bucks, like the Bucks too. Like people want to say like because I was making this head like Brook Lopez. I'm like Brook Lopez isn't a star though. It's not like Brook Lopez is is going from any team next year if he doesn't stay with the Bucks and like that team automatically is like skyrocketed to the top. Like. I think we want to get back as a fan. I think for the NBA sake too, it's like draft well, hit your picks, and then trade for that next piece, the Chris Pauls of the world, or sign mm-hmm. that guy. I just think like that's what this was a sign of. And I get it, Kyrie Irving was injured and all these guys, but like it's such a good thing to see them lose. And I know I'm sorry if you're a Nets fan, and I know it's got to stink because you're really excited, but that would have been such like I don't know. It just, we saw it. Like listen, I'm a Celtics fan. You're a Celtics fan. You do stuff. Podcast, all that stuff. The Celtics, unfortunately, started this vicious trend. <laughs> um, but, they, but but you know what? They didn't because like I saw somebody, and it was someone out of New York the other day, um, one of the writers, tweet this. You know, basically like I, it, I'm paraphrasing, but it was more or less like I I I don't see how any of you Celtics fans, you hypocrites out there, could take issue with this Brooklyn Nets dynamic when. You guys were what you were during the new Big Three era with KG and and Pierce and Allen, obviously. And and where I reject that premise, where it's not the same, is the way in which those teams were constructed. As we're at the end of one seven seven, you know, front office like Danny Ainge at the time, obviously, they had Paul Pierce. Yep. Traded a draft pick for Ray Allen. Traded mm-hmm. a whole bunch of stuff highlighted by Al Jefferson, but it was like an eight for one swap to get Kevin Garnett. <laughs> but yep. it was it was trade trade to add to a guy that you already had. Great. Where where that's different. Like I have no problem with any team out there constructing their team that way. You know, a a, a front office going out and saying, "How can we get better? Let's trade assets. Let's get better." What the Nets did and what Miami did back when LeBron was there and what the Clippers have done in many ways with George forcing his way out of OKC and and obviously Kawhi opting to leave Toronto and, you know, other teams along the way, you know, the the Lakers, AD and LeBron to some degree. Like the, the list goes on over the course of the last decade plus. This is players coming together and saying, where do we want to play? And then organizations making that happen. You know, that's, that's totally different. That's, that's, a, that's, that's the, you know, it's like, don't take issue with the phrase. Cause it's, it's like, it's, we use it all the time. It's an expression, not literal, but it's the inmates running the asylum. You know, it's, it's the players deciding how, like, how do we want to form this super team? And the front office is like, you know, just left out there to, okay, well, how, how can we you know what it is? you? Yeah. It's a blank check. Like, right. Okay, what do you want? Okay. Yep. That's like, that's totally different. I mean, like KD and, and Irving could have just as easily. And a lot of people anywhere. thought they would could have just as, as long as the team had either the salary cap space or manageable space that you could, you know, get rid of assets to make it happen. They could have gone to the Knicks. They could have gone to wherever. Like, I mean, hell they like, they could, you know, Kyrie Irving could have resigned in Boston and they could have made it work. And Kevin Durant could have come to the Celtics. Like Absolutely. there, there are, uh, uh, excuse me. Don't die. A bunch of different ways in which, you know, they could have decided as a duo how they wanted this to go. And then at that point, once they're together, Harden forces his way out of Houston, like openly quit on the team. I mean, openly in a press conference, quit on the team and said, you know, he didn't say this part, you know, as, as part of the press conference, but the reports were there. This is where I want to go. And it was in Brooklyn or Philadelphia. Well, Brooklyn stepped up to the plate, obviously, and got rid of the assets. They made it happen. Blake Griffin, you know, they essentially quit on on Detroit, so they cut him loose because he was useless. And he and and all of a sudden, like, pops out of the wheelchair like Paul Pierce and goes and you know resign and signs with Brooklyn. And all of a sudden, you know, he's not fully turned back the clock to the early Detroit or obvious, obviously the the Clippers days, but. Service was he was a yeah. useful piece. Yeah. Like this is this is the players deciding we want to come together to win a championship. I I 100% agree with everything you're saying. My point going back to why Boston started the vicious cycle. I get it was all but like Kevin Garnett once he saw what Boston was doing had the conversation with Pierce was like yeah I'll go. Like it wasn't like 
it, it was just any like the Celtics were like okay we we're putting this like the grand picture is what you said about today's NBA agreed I just think it showed that hey if we put three top tier guys together this is how the NBA should work where like right. before the Celtics you had teams like the Detroit Pistons starless with all due respect to Chauncey Billups and all due do uh, due respect to Rip Hamilton and Ben and Wallace Ben Wallace who I yeah there were no superstars on that team no. and also Ben uh, Wallace was only like 6'10 and he played like he was like 7'3 right um, but anywho the point like there were in, and obviously you had a, a team like the Spurs who won a ton of titles in there as well but that was you know one with David Robinson but like you had you know, draft. That was all drafted players. There was nobody saying, oh, I need to go sneak a title at the end of my career over there. Yeah, there might have been, like, a couple guys there, but we're not talking about guys that are at the top of their game. Like, I remember David West went there at the end. He didn't win. Like, I I just saw all that. Then you had, again, it started to shift again with Golden State did. Golden State drafted. I'm getting excited. Here we go. NBA's back. And then Kevin Durant kind of goes ahead and malfunctions that, wins a title there. People criticize him, but hey, bigger picture every you know but you know what like to that point you know just just so people don't think like oh well the celtics did it one way so you like to cough and everybody else does it another way so you don't like so people don't look at it that way (laughs) the way golden state built their team was exactly how teams should be like phenomenal they they did it through they did it through draft you know curry and thompson and draymond and they did it through development they did it through signings and like the kd thing was a fluke like the fact that Golden State was able to internally generate the salary to be able to sign Kevin Durant, that was something that was only, I mean, literally only able to happen that off season because of the new TV partnership in the NBA. I know. The, it, was the, it was the influx of money that came in that specific off season. That happens any other time, any other time. Kevin Durant's not in Golden State, but timing is everything it worked out you know they pay into the luxury tax and you know for for some other players but i have you know like while they sort of became the you know from like this plucky oh my god the splash brothers and they're so much fun to they're the villains because they have kevin durant now and they can't lose you know it i still like there's i have no problem with the way they built that team they built that team exactly the right way and you know what at the end of the day the things that we're talking about, the reason we're going, through, we're kind of navigating through history, recent history in the NBA, but the Nets are out and it's over. The dude, like, I could care less who wins the title at this point. I still rather see the Suns beat the Clippers. I'd love to see a Suns Bucks, even though the NBA right now is going, what are we doing? Wait, we got Brooklyn. Not only all the stars in Brooklyn, <laughs> but we get rid of that. Bro- oh, wow. Push McCaffrey. Just embarrassed. Yeah. Uh, but like they're saying to themselves, we just got rid of the East Coast, like the hottest market in the East Coast. Now they still Philly, but still not the same. You know, they we'll we'll see what happens tonight. By the way, um, right? Yeah, I mean that um, thing's not done. I know, and it's it, like to me, I just how funny. Like we always joke about this. Like if, when you were a kid, cough. I'm sure you used to, like maybe fill out an M- NBA bracket of yeah, like, absolutely. Like, like drawing on like crayons, and because um, you, you, I know you still use crayons, but I didn't. Want I to do. Them. Yep, regularly. But, and you do multiple color as we go along, but mm-hmm. yeah, I'm going I used to do that too. Fancy. And when you were a kid, you kind of had this like vision in your head of like, oh, it would be cool to see these four teams at the end. Where we're it, let's just say Atlanta wins. That's where we're at this year. Phoenix, Clippers, which Clippers are probably the four out of four in that one, but like a cool fact, like you would like another underdog or whatever you want to call it. But Phoenix, I know they were the one seed, but they're still an underdog team. I don't think. Well, two seed. You oh, they were. You're right. Sorry. You're yeah. right. Maybe no, but have- like to your point, Clippers, Suns, Bucks, Hawks, nobody had that force no. going into the postseason. No way. As a final four. Nope. Nobody. Bucks and Clippers, sure. And I'm sure the Suns had some love, but overall. But it- like that, yeah, some, like one person having those four teams, nobody had that. No. And uh, and that would, would get me excited. Like, And I will just say, like, I wish last night, and I don't know if you feel this way, Cough, at all. Don't you kind of wish that was the Eastern Conference Finals? It was great. Yeah. It was, it was such it was, Oh, it was such good drama. Like the last two minutes of the game into overtime felt like it was an hour and a half. You feel <laughs> like if you were obviously like someone like Hoff is regularly on Twitter and stuff like that, like it just everything felt so well. You felt like you were watching something we're gonna talk about ten years from now. 
Yeah, that was and a I great like series. It was so, in that game, just the way everything went down and, you know, it was just, we don't have to go into everything about it, but it just felt like a moment. I felt like I watched something last night that, like, I'm going to remember. So, Must Be says, I've been telling y'all, Phoenix versus Atlanta. Mm-hmm. Now, Must Be, I'm not telling you that can't or won't happen. Absolutely good. I mean, obviously, the Hawks have one big win left to even make that a possibility, but here's what i will say about that if you have the suns and hawks and i'm not this is not me saying oh that would be a bad series or that stinks or like i'd love to see it in terms of two like new teams being in that situation versus what we're used to seeing year after year that would be incredible however (laughs) generally speaking and when i say that i don't mean like you rossi you production team ops you dk sim fam i mean overall like the the ratings is anybody going to watch a Suns Hawks NBA Finals? I think you really got to worry about that in a lot of, to be honest, no. And you know what's weird, Cough, though, and you know this, and if we're going to have this part of the conversation, the NBA Finals just, as of like the last, like, what was it, six years, like the or five years, like the ratings aren't anywhere where they were a few years before that. So I think that's the weird thing. Like we just went on our little fandom diatribe about teams build, who, which way you like it, which way you don't. The NBA at the end of the day is like, I don't care. Get that net. Like, they're going to try to find a way to get the net. They tried at the end of the game to be like, yeah, we're going to add that three seconds in here. And hopefully Brooke Lopez misses both of them and they throw a .3 second bomb and and it goes in. Like, they, I swear they were saying to themselves, like, wait a minute. This is an epic game, but we're about to lose the Nets. We lose the Nets. There goes your ratings. Like, right. in general. Because even with, like, the Bucks are a great story. Like, I'm all in on the Bucks. I hope they win it this year. I've been behind them because I want Giannis to – I want players to see, hey, staying with that organization can sometimes pay off. Well, it, yeah, it'd be great to see a superstar in a small market rewarded. I, I, For and, sure. And, and hopefully it also leads them saying, oh, you're great. Now we don't have to go get that next guy too. Chris Middleton and Giannis are our guys. Those are our centerpieces. Work around them. Don't go sign whoever the next – you know, big free agent would be. I don't even know who is next year. But, you know, 50 Yeah, we could look up the next free agent class. But, like, Kelvin Kelvin says in the YouTube chat, the Chat Kings conference room here, true b-ball guys will watch any great competition between deserving teams. Kelvin, 100%. agreed. The problem is that's not what the NBA is looking for. The nope. NBA's got the true b-ball fans. What the NBA wants is the casual fans. They want my the wife. People, they want my wife. Right. Brought in. Yeah. My wife they, they want the people that wouldn't tune in to exactly. tune in. And the Suns and Hawks are not going to make you do that. Like, I didn't want, and you all know this, I've said it a thousand times. I was prepared to boycott the NBA Finals if it was <laughs> Brooklyn and the Lakers. I was not going to watch. Now, I'm I'd like, still play my DFS contests. I'd still, <laughs> I'd still, you know, look at the don't box Don't get me score. wrong, I'll still put some cash on the line. I yeah, I'd, I'd, still, I'd still be aware of what's going on, but I wouldn't watch a second of it because, it, like, as a Celtics fan, there was just no good outcome. Oh. But but are you going to tell me that the NBA itself, like Adam Silver, the or, you know, whatever network has the finals this year, ABC or whoever's got it, that they weren't drooling at the idea of a Nets-Lakers finals? Of they course so, they were. They are so depressed today. You know it. And you know what? You know, but it also, like you said, it was an injury thing. That's I just I laugh whenever I think of this. Like it's the same thing. I'm a hockey guy, and like them right now, they're thinking, okay, we need that Montreal to get in because that's going to get us the Canadian market. Obviously, for oh, DMC in touchdown, Washington, 45 now yards. Now we're cooking. My lineup's going to be getting better. We'll check it out. But yeah, like now, like you know, for they want that Canadian market because okay, U.S. you know. Stanley Cup gets what it gets. But, hey, if we can get, like, uh, you know, Islanders to sneak in there and get that New York market, okay. Now, if it's Tampa Bay and Montreal, they're going, oh, boy. And right now, that's the same thing the NBA is thinking. Okay, how do we, like, really – you're going to – if you watch these games, and cough, I know you watch and you watch – you probably listen to a lot of the commentary, like myself. Mm-hmm. I'm so interested in the narrative that's going to be spoken in game one today of the Suns and the Clippers because, obviously – Chris Paul's out in COVID protocol, you know, no Kawhi Leonard. And there's, is there any chance he's really going to return? Kawhi? I, I doubt it. Yeah. I doubt it. I mean, no one's reporting a tear or anything like that, or even confirming the ACL injury. And he's not even definitively out for the whole series. He's just, you know, out indefinitely. But if you're asking me if I believe we will see him again this postseason, I really don't. 
Okay, I'm in the same boat. So my point being today, they're, uh, Devin Booker and Paul George are going to be talked about like they're generationally great talents. Not saying they are or they aren't, but if you listen to that game, if you watch any of that game today, and the same thing when you watch tonight, they're going to start talking about all of these players, especially the role players of the world, of these teams. They are going to start talking about these guys. Like, you have to watch them play. You have to be intrigued by them. Every little ounce of storyline or drama they can build, you're going to see it, and especially for this game, because one of these two teams is going to the finals. So, like, it's like with Atlanta and, and the Sixers, there's still some time. Like, you, the right. Bucks are obviously awaiting. But I just I, – I'm so intrigued to see how they – the stories that they are going to tell. Yeah, exactly. Bird, Terrence Mann is he is a perfect example, but they are going to talk about him today, like he is a the second coming of somebody. I don't know who they're going to relate him to. You're going to hear all sorts of crazy things, and for him, hope he continues to play good. He has a good story. Bronx Bomber says, "Cough reassured me why I hate everything Boston." I'm just going to put out there, Bronx Bomber, Glad the he- fact that your YouTube name is Bronx Bomber. I don't think you needed me to reaffirm your hatred of Boston. Yeah, that's true. But I'm glad I mean, that he said you. Yeah. I mean, if you are a Yankee fan, as you are, Bronx Bomber, it is just inherent that you hate everything Boston. And Bronx Bomber, I'm sorry to see the Red Sox, by the way, back in first place today. Back in first place. Uh, on the subject of NBA, by the way, we have eight spots left in the last-minute NBA, or the uh, the Cough Classic NBA, as it were, for today, which, remember, starts early. You have a game at 3 o'clock. Or 3.30, actually. So uh, lineups lock in uh, shade under three hours, eight spots. I'm not worried about it filling, but I'm reminding you that it is out there in case anyone wants to jump in before it does fill. Nice long game. (laughs) Just heard of Samuel for 55. Now, I said Samuel gets involved. I was not expecting something like that. Wish he just broke into the end zone at that point. But Nice catch. Yeah, I also find it funny that the West Coast game is so early. Like for them, like 12.30 tip. Right. It's great. If I'm a West Coast fan, especially Father's Day, this, what, a, what an awesome day that would be. Oh, is that him? And touchdown. Look at all the offense in the first half of this game. Got a lot. Is that a vulture? It... Is that Tom? No, it's, it is a vulture. Caca, caca, I'm a Father's Day vulture. Caca, caca. <laughs> Who is that? It's a uh, little, little oh, tight end depth chart diving. We got uh, none other than Chris Manhurts. <laughs> The tight end two for Carolina. Oh, my my X Factor is completely lit today. Two volts <laughs> first half. They must know it's Father's Day. Seriously. By the way, yeah, we I know we're talking about NBA. We're both very passionate about the loss of the Nets, maybe even more than the Bucks win. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. For me, I do have that because I said I picked the Bucks coming into this year. It's good for the NBA. I'm happy. But you said it. We have five touchdowns here in the first half between two Matt teams. Right. I was not expect. I thought like 21-14 might be the final, not at halftime. Never yet. Still with a minute uh, to go. So everyone who's going to come here tomorrow, I think I'm doing the noon with Emerson. There'll be like a three to six to three game. Just remember, sometimes the noons can be lit on a weekend. Lindenbaum says, who has the edge? Suns well-rested or Clippers battle-tested? Oh, that's a great question. It's a great question, but I think the part of the question we've we've you know hit on it to some degree is obviously which team has the edge like the one that doesn't have chris paul at least indefinitely and which you know the one that doesn't have Kawhi leonard indefinitely you know which team's supporting cast is is best to surround like you said devin booker and paul george so for me it's not even the well-rested versus battle tested now it's okay like who's got the stronger club and I would love to be at the, you know, to see it be the Suns. I do think they're deeper, a little more balanced, and and also just a, a more fun team to watch in, in my es- estimation. Yep. Uh, but I, I mean, I gotta say the Clips would be viewed as having the edge if you know from a from a, a better standpoint. Yeah. I also like I want to say the Suns, and I agree with almost everything you say here. But I think we also it's not just the battle test. You also saw what the Clippers, like, kind of, and I, and I know we don't want to, people may not believe this, but I think the NBA more than any other sport, maybe the NFL's right there with them. Talk about, like, reading the press clippings, and, like, Paul George is basically being called out, again, with all these knee-jerk reactions. He's soft. He doesn't hit in the big game. Everyone's trying to get their hot takes on him, and he is absolutely turned on to another level. And I don't think the Suns have an 
answer for him if he can continue. To, and now it's not going to be every game. Like he's going to have to, you know, at some point they're probably going to triple team him <laughs> or something. They're like with, with the you saw the um, Bucks do last night against KD. It was like almost triple coverage at one point. Like just we dare somebody else to shoot. But I think you're going to see. I, I still think the Clippers have the edge going in right now, especially where, like you said, Chris Paul, who should, if everything goes according to plan, um, come back. But I, I just, I, I like the Clippers a little bit more right now, obviously subject to change. So just in, in the interest of uh, in, admitting when one is wrong, I just looked it up and the Suns are right now viewed as favorites to win that series. Well, do you think that's because of Kawhi's injury though? Like it's got to be, like that had to be the reason they shift. Oh, absolutely. But again, this is a Phoenix team without Chris Paul. So it's not like... But only one, like allegedly one game, right? Like allegedly. I don't know that we know. You know? Well, we don't, I mean, but it's, it, it, it's, I just want to say something. Like, I, I don't think anyone views him as being out as long as Kawhi. No, because he's... You know, so like, if that's your main point, I agree with that. Yeah, he's only in a protocol. He's not any physical injury. Which, by the way, I think it's he's in the 10-day, but they never announced it, which he should be good for game two if that's the case. Right. But again, that's a weird thing about. I think like the NBA is actually like we don't want to keep one keep. I feel like it's twenty. Wow. More Not points me. before the break, by the way. Twenty-one seventeen after the field goal. Yeah, just interesting to see have like pro COVID protocols now, like where we feel like everything's back. It's just always remember, still be safe out there. Be cautious and don't be cold easily. That's all I'm gonna say. Said it. I'm walking away. Oh, look at Daniel. <laughs> Daniel. Daniel made a, a Father's Day in Simland Mount Rushmore. With the two of us, Moose oh and BK. Are we the only dads or are we just the best dads? <laughs> uh, I was wondering that, actually. Uh, let's, Zach let's Thompson's look. a dad, I think. Yeah, He's, Zach Thompson's a dad. He would definitely get me over me. So, But, Daniel, I appreciate this artwork. Um, That's true. Who else? Let's see. Yeah. That might be it, actually. Well, Christian's a dad. Christian's a dad. Good point. Christian. Um, but I, I think that's it. I think that's, that's your house. list. Six. So, out of the six, who really gets bumped? I'm just kidding. <laughs> As well, I mean, longevity wise, whether it's you or BK and, and you've been around longer than BK, haven't you? Or have you not? No, yeah. Yeah. yeah if you, so, if you and Christian yeah, came so right I mean, like BK would have to be bumped for Zach because Zach has been here since, I don't know if it's been the beginning or basically the beginning, but it, I mean, he's been around essentially as long as everybody else. Oh, yeah. Daniel says though, he <laughs> said Daniel, we we forced Dan to defend himself. Yeah, I feel bad. I only fit four on Mount Rushmore, and three of you are working today. So no, but Daniel, this is just like when me and Freeze Pops do the Mount Rushmore. You got to go through all the navigation. Yeah. Get, get criticized for no reason because it's just you doing something that you probably didn't need to do. Well, obviously didn't need to do, but right, you got to process the whole thing. Oh yeah, cough. You should jump in when we do a Mount Rushmore again. Like just be fun. The chat just destroys us. Daniel said he made he had to make some executive decisions. Exactly. Yeah. And then one of us has to make, yeah, Daniel gets yeah. it. Daniel gets it. Uh all right. So at the break, 2117 Carolina's in front. Just to quickly give you the leaderboard as things stand right now for the uh the nooner, the just couple couple dads, excuse me, hanging out on dad's day. All choked up thinking about it. We have a two-way tie for first right now. That is train one and Bama Jones. Your leading lineup involves. How about this? Dustin Hopkins, the kicker at captain. I want him to win. Captain. Go train. Obviously, these guys did it just for you. But for a very balanced lineup after that, Hopkins only has seven and a half. But then you have McCaffrey, who's already 20 plus at the break in the flex. McKissick, McLaurin, Moore, and uh, Samuel. Shout out to uh, One Love. I was told to give a shout out to One Love. An evolving changes actually. So Bama Jones has just hopped into first. Remember, manual scoring, so it takes a few moments for everything to get up I to like date. I'm in 48th. Where are you hanging out? I'm just bumped up to 60th, and I'm hoping that he's just going to drop 80 more points in my lineup. But no. there you go. I'm being weighed down big time by Inman and uh, Ian Thomas. Those guys are, especially one being the cat. We're probably in the same boat. Like we're probably that's why we're similar in our positioning in this line in this uh, this. Uh, contest because we both have kind of dart throw captains andy and thomas uh clint says rossi i mentioned this yesterday uh with your new look here you went from walter white science teacher to heisenberg <laughs> <laughs> i sure did i said i look like homeless drake but um <laughs> Tara Lynn's forehead says uncle fester does sims yeah watch out 
Uncle Fester, what an awesome character, by the way. Appreciate all the uh, Happy Father's Day wishes, by the way, uh, here in the chat. And uh, same to all of you out there who celebrate or obviously have dads in your lives, as uh, you know, in, in one form or another, I imagine you all do. So thank you much. Appreciate it. Good eyes by Marquise over here. So noticing my Swiffer in the background. Not you guys. You guys, obviously, we know I'm blind. Glasses were ordered on Friday, so I will be getting glasses nice a little over a week so i'll be looking even more different um but yeah, you guys have such really good like distinction on things that are in my back i feel like i have to start putting easter eggs back there. you should not like actual easter eggs you know what i mean <laughs> you could do that too good easter egg could be an easter egg also folks reminder the uh cough classic mlb is full already and it's for the early slate which begins just after one o'clock about 20 minutes so uh, I know you can't jump in the contest, but if anyone reserved their spot and hasn't built the lineup yet, remind you to do so. You don't want to take that zero. Ah, oh, the worst. Anyway, also, I'll give a quick shout. Um, you know, there is a WWE event, you know, the official partner with DraftKings. So there is a free pool for Hell in a Cell. Oh, nice. Hell in a Cell tonight. Yeah, you get all of that action. So if people, you know, what's funny. I always try to make pools. But you can't make like you know like how you can do like you can make contests. I for a while I thought you could make contests off of free pools, but you can't. And uh, makes, that's bad. Yeah, but it also makes total sense when you really think about it. Sure. Terry McLaurin into the bonus. Thank you, Bert. Yep. Shout out. I don't see who this is. It could be your uh, your gimmick, your shtick. You're the wrestling pool guy. Listen, dive in, baby. Hey, cough. When you go into pool, do you do you do the toe tap first? Or do you just dive right in? I would say as I have uh, as I have aged not so <laughs> gracefully, I have I've become more of a ease my way in down the steps guy than a, oh, than, a, than, a, than, a than a cannonball in guy. So you know what? I think that's gutsy. That makes you like legendary. That's such a dad, but you're like, that's legendary at this point because I can't do that. Well, but like, I hate it. Like it takes me forever <laughs> to get in the pool because of it. Let's just be honest. Once you hit, once you hit the kneecap area, it's it just gets colder and colder until you just dunk under. And it's so. Oh, well, look! Any anyone who does this knows there is, and and I don't know. I can only speak to to me as a man. I can't I, I can't tell you how it relates uh, gender wise. But there is no worse feeling than when you're doing that. You're doing the slow walk in into like. You know, not warm, either like cold to like marginally warm waters. And you just start to hit the crest of that waistline. Oh, yeah, baby. That's that is, it. I mean, that is a wake up call like no one needs. That is like, this is just painful. I don't like it. And it doesn't even have to be that cold of water. That's the thing. No. People, like a lot of people used to ask me that. Like, oh, I just, uh, just keep coming. It's like, no, 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 no. <laughs> Um, Jordan says he didn't even make it in his pool today. Fell asleep next to in the chair. Jordan, that's a heck of a way to start. It's not even noon, Jordan. <laughs> um, but with that, like, I, I agree. Like, I, like, so like my dad, after later today, we're going to be going over there. He's got a pool and stuff. And I nice. just, I just have to go. I do the touch just so I know exactly like, how worried I should be. And then I say, all right, if I'm going in, kerplunk, baby. Like, I don't have to do a cannonball. Just, just jump in. I think anybody who does what you do is borderline psychotic. <laughs> I agree. In a uh, meager, <laughs> meager looking for a buy stream trash of uh, cannonball, can opener, or flip. Okay, I have a question. Is the can different... opener the can opener is kind of a uh, that that's the one where you've got like the you pull one leg up and in to you, right? I believe then, so. The jackknife is what I know. Yeah, it's, it's more of a jackknife. Yeah. I figured he was going to throw out like the flip, the cannonball, or the pencil dive. Oh, see, I, I, I either way, but we can. Or just like, a traditional dive. I just can't a straight do up like Michael Phelps dive. I can't dive. I have no skill to a dive. I, it's embarrassing to watch me try to dive. <laughs> I would put a belly flop over a dive. But I would, if for his, for you know, Meager set it up, set the the guidelines. So I would throw out. Well, you go first. If you want. Okay. Well, so if I'm taking this from the perspective of back when I used to do these things and didn't <laughs> wim wimpy walk into the pool, uh, I, I was, uh, I, I, I would, 
I would buy the cannonball. I would absolutely stream the flip. I loved when I was, you know, younger flipping into pools. And when I say younger, like, I don't know, the last time I flipped into a pool was probably three, four, five years ago, somewhere in that range. But before that, all the time. The pencil dive, I mean, that's just lazy. Like, what's the point? Or the can opener, I guess. Is you know, same same kind of thing. Yeah. Ugh. I think that's where I'm landing on that. I'm having so I definitely am I'm I'm trashing the flip because I can't. So just that it would be cool if I could. I gotta buy you gotta buy the cannonball. <laughs> like it's every you know, Tom Dick and Harry woman, man, child. Like <laughs> it is every it is the every man's way to get in the pool. The can opener if you nail it correctly, or as I like to call it again, the jackknife, if you hit it correctly, you can make a splash that's hilarious. So I'll, I'll stream it. But I, I, the cannonball is like, I still think the funniest thing in the world. Like I get giggles to this day. I could be at a resort and someone could run and go cannonball and then splash it and get a giggle out of me. It could be when I'm over my family's house and one of my nephews does it to an unsuspect, unsuspecting mother around right. and just and they don't even mean or even unintentional splashing just the idea of like calling it out cannonball it's hilarious harmless fun first time playing Fortnite on twitch cough was the kid at the pizza parties who stayed in the pool alone while everybody else ate because of his pizza allergy I'm not allergic I, re I reject it the uh, to your point though about the splash factor like there's there's nothing better than that <laughs> just awful kid or grown up, like, you know, I mean, plenty of like, you'll go to your buddy's house, like people will have pool parties. Like you're, you're we're not too old for that. The, <laughs> the, the people, oh, yeah. excuse me, that will do the deliberate, um, like, all right, what, what's my angle? Where do I need yeah. to jump precisely to maximize my splash of these people sitting poolside? <laughs> I've always, I've always respected that. It's it's hilarious. I'm sorry. It is one of the like I'm not a big prank. I think pranks are very can be mean spirited and rude or all that stuff and kind of bullying in some ways. But right there, a good splash, even if like especially if it's like most of the time, especially when it's a child that angers like an aunt or a parent. I think it's hilarious. As long as you know, again, I'm gonna eat my words probably in a few years, but I just think there's something. Even if it does, like I'm like, oh you rats, galleon, and then I'll laugh because I know I'll laugh. Cause I did it. That was like me growing up, especially <laughs> like when my dad would be near, we had a pool growing up and we had a, we had a grill that they had to move the location. Cause I would purposely cannonball so that the water like hit him while cooking, not realizing it also would go all over the food. Hilarious. Flip it over. It's it'll cook off. It'll I'm cool glad this was not listed by the way, maybe because it's too obvious, but like the belly flop, somebody brought up the belly flop in the chat. Hashtag team always fade. Oh. No, thank you on the belly flop. I used to always do it because I used to try to learn to dive and I would just smack. If you get a real belly flop, like the actual smack and you hear it, maybe one of the most painful things that can happen to you. Yeah. You, like that dude who climbs out of the pool, beat red across the stomach and chest. Yeah. Looking like the water oh. just kicked his butt. <laughs> Seriously, look like we got a couple of Ric Flair chops. Yeah, everyone's calling call me out basically saying that I'm <laughs> the belly flop guy. You can tell. Also, when you got more of a belly, it's kind of funny. You all cannibal to get attention. That's an eager. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, but then you do the can opener, go oh, can opener to maximize the splash. That's what, if you hit it right, meager. You yeah. know, it's that lower back, buttocks. You can really, you could, you could sail. You could sink a ship. That tidal wave. Sean uh, says, "Get out the X-ray machine, the surgeon." Got to get that incubating alien out of Kaufman. I'll tell you what, the uh, it's it's still not great, but it's better than it's been the last few days. The the amount of coughing here. On I would say, yeah, and you did a lot more talking when we were rant. You know, our, our let's just say nice heated debate or conversation about the basketball stuff. But like, yeah. yeah, that's when it gets you. I can tell. That's when it sneaks up on you. And you just motor mouth it in a good way. <laughs> yeah, I know. Rossi, Koff, Jordan, our producer, Daniel, our technical director, Bert Hood, always up to no good. He's doing ops. 
late third quarter, 21-20. So the scoring has slowed down a little bit. We've uh, only got a field goal here in this third, but that's okay. A lot of offense so far. Nooner free roll, first of a half dozen Madden simulations coming your way. Bama Jones in first place right now. Marginally. Got Train 1, Tanker Raider, among others, right behind. Love the names. Listen to Lindenbaum. Stop being such a klutz, Rossi. Do a freaking dive. It isn't that hard. I honestly may film myself one day how uncoordinated. Dude, I don't even think it's about being a cl- Well, maybe it is, but I'm just so uncoordinated. Like, I, I cannot physically get i get up to the edge babysitter billy can back me up on this like i get up to the edge of the pool i do like the, the you put your hand like a shark fin i guess that's yeah. a, and then as i lean in my body doesn't like straighten out i don't know it's you just ultimately that, it's basically a belly fluff anyway it's, yeah it's even weaker belly it's one of the most embarrassing things you just fall in essentially. yeah literally it looks like you somebody pushed me in <laughs> Bad. that's one thing i don't stand for never push anybody in a pool. yeah no, don't. It's you know, as as I've gotten older too, like whatever, I'll throw my kids in the water. Well, that's but, different. But you know, like your buddy, like that whole like, oh, watch this, and you like chuck your friend into the pool. I mean, maybe may, maybe this is a little too like old man shaking fist at cloud. But dude, like people have their phones in their pockets now. Nowadays, like, whole, yeah, like, yeah, like I'm not about to potentially break somebody's phone or you know ruin everything in their wallet just for a cheap laugh. Yeah, and, and if they've already been in the pool, it's a different story. Like, I do that yeah. to my sister all the time. Like, she's now, like, if, like if your buddy is just standing there in a bathing suit and clearly, like, has been in the water and he's got nothing in his pockets, gloves are off. That's a different story. But Great. just, like, your like your friend in street clothes, who knows? Like, I'm not wrecking a phone. Not I'm not putting a phone in a bag of rice for that. Nope. 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 Because I'm a good friend. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Happy Father's Day, dads. McLaurin six for one fourteen. He's he's celebrating Father's Day. I don't know if he has any kids in real life, but he's showing out for him today here I'm in Simland. I'm gonna look that up. Just in Simland, fun. he's got about fifteen, and he is representing <laughs> all of them. See, in Simland, Terry McLaurin is Antonio Cromartie. <laughs> he's got them all. <laughs> he's got them all. Uh, personal life. McLaurin has been called several nicknames during his NFL. Scary Terry. Are any of them dad? F1 in the captain. No, I don't think he has any kids. No, no, at least no Wikipedia about it. And I can't see it. That was the only thing when I Googled him with children, the only link that brought me there. Meager says iPhones old. are waterproof now, aren't they? No, I don't think so. No, they can be, I, I forget exactly how, what the term. I mean, there are probably waterproof cases you could get for them. Well, there's definitely that, but there's some about the iPhone you can use in water, but it's not necessarily water. It's something weird. Don't, here's this. Don't test it. Daniel says they are water resistant to That's certain it. depths. That's it. Thank you. Daniel always knows. Why did I even start talking? I should have just said, Daniel, please. Well, I, I don't know if I've ever told this story on the stream and I'll make it real quick, but uh, for me anyway, uh, we were at Disney. I, so I had, I had always been an Android guy and I just, I was never really into the whole Apple scene. I finally got an iPhone. I finally got an iPhone this many years ago. Um, and it uh, it was like the I- iPhone 6, I think, maybe, because that's what I've still got. And it's, it's not the same phone, but the same time period. So I, so I get the iPhone, and, uh, and then we go to Disney, like two days later. I mean, I had just gotten that phone. And my son, my oldest, who was little ish at the time he was i guess probably i don't know maybe four or maybe, maybe 32 four, like that. yeah 30, 37 years old um so he goes down this a, a small water slide it is not like a big dangerous whatever it's just a small little water slide in a splash area uh but but it was more of a thing than a splash area because there was real water in the water slide you know it wasn't so he he goes down in there and he did the he did the old little kid freak out move rossi uh where he 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 stopped himself in the middle of the slide like arms legs out against the sides so that he he wouldn't go through so he was stuck i mean he wasn't stuck but he was stuck in that he made himself stuck because he wasn't letting go so it was ah crap like dad to the rescue so i run up (laughs) run up there and I go down the water slide to force him out, basically. 
you know, like go down and like hit him on the way down and force him out. And like a moron, I didn't take my iPhone out of my pocket. That kid ruined my iPhone, broke it. It was done, it, toast. On the last day of vacation, the uh, the, I, the iPhone, you know, there was no rice to save it. The iPhone was done. This, this, there were no water resistant versions. So my kid wrecked my iPhone in the water slide and I yeah. was so angry, like ruined the end of my trip. <laughs> Listen here, you little pip squeak. Well, cause I, it wasn't even that. It was like, I, you know, I had a week's worth of pictures and all the, like all these memories that gone. Cause it wasn't, they, they hadn't backed up. So I, I was, yeah. I was so mad. And I just know that feeling too, of just that complete fear where you just can't do it. Like, even though it's really like, even when you try to rationalize it in your brain, you're like, ah, it's just like, and especially when you're younger, it's like, no, no, I'm not doing this. Like, well, you're already doing it. Like there's no turning back. Like, I'm sorry to let you know, whatever it is, is happening. And it's a water slide. <laughs> right. Abby Rizzo says, this is a quick story. Yeah, it was like a minute and a half. For me, that's not bad. I didn't find that one to be like. Long. Yeah, as Mike says, for cough, this is a short story. <laughs> right, don't preference it. That's what BK used to always say. I got to tell you this quick thing. He's like, don't bother, dude. You can tell the story for all four quarters for all I care. <laughs> field goal. Washington goes ahead. That's three oh. straight field goals. For Hopkins, how are you feeling if you got him in the captain? 0.8 percent, yeah. Genius. Must be says you did it. Don't blame him. The only oh. thing I did wrong there, obviously, was not having the wherewithal to take my phone out of my pocket and like throw it in my wife's direction. That was the screw up. You were being a, you were being a hero. Heroes don't think like yep. that. Yep. Not all heroes wear capes nope. or have water resistant phones. <laughs> Gare Bear says my phone over on Twitch is my phone has been waterproof for years. Just sits on the wall. Keeps being a good rotary phone. <laughs> nice. <laughs> that That's is a- amazing too. Like you ever think about, I mean, growing up, that was the thing. We all had them, but I mean, most people, I don't Well, most, I don't know if most is fair. A lot of people no longer have landlines to begin with, but when's the last time you were at somebody's house where they had a phone on the wall? I was going to say, I've seen more rotary phones than I've seen wall phones. Wall phones are gone. Like, those are done. Like, right. Nobody has a phone that connects to a wall. Unless maybe there's some wireless ones out there. That, But I feel like even still, that's not like a look anymore. It's with the modern style of things in homes and apartments. But, oh, man. Like, I, I haven't. Like, go, I, go, 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 go. We've seen this recently. <laughs> Sorry, there's just spoiler alert. Oh gosh, don't do it, don't do it. Sorry, my wife ran an errand <laughs> and I just heard some just ridiculous bang upstairs and I can just let you know, it's just me and uh, the little one. But- um, are, So are you, because the exact same thing just happened in my house. Are you sure you weren't hearing what happened in my house? That was definitively in your house? 1000% was in my house. Because mine was right above me too. I, something's going on in the world. What is happening? Because there was a big bang just above my yeah. head, and not the big, not the science big bang. George Jordan, who's producing, says I didn't hear anything from either of your houses. Good, that makes me feel a lot better, actually, Jordan. Not lie, when Cough said that, I was starting to freak out for a second. There's little things in this world that will get me, and stuff like that, like those kismic, like, did you just hear about? Because my 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 son moved, and I said, no, don't wake up. Good. I'm not leaving the sim. Sorry, pal. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> that was. I heard nothing. Says Bert. Stop it, you two. Well, first of all, things did actually happen. Well, they're hearing, well, I guess not in Zoom. I was going to say they're hearing the crowd noise and whatnot, but in Zoom, they wouldn't be. No, and I mine wasn't loud enough that it was like, holy crap, what was that? Like, sometimes you guys hear certain things upstairs. Mine kind of was, but I know my wife is home, so it's whatever it is being dealt with. And it, it might have just been a kid dropping a toy on the ground right above me, but a big heavy toy. Yeah. I don't know. I think some came off my fridge. That's my guess. Because we've been uh, either that or there's a ghost. It'll be Could a be. ghost. Ghost of Father's Day. Mo says I just heard a Big Bang too. WTF? <laughs> Knock it off, Mo. 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 The Marka. That's <laughs> gal. The Marka. I'll go with tooted. If the Marka tooted and that thing made my house shake, I would be awesome. I wouldn't even be mad. Clint says cough stories begin with in the beginning. 
It's like a good uh, he coughs. That's like you know in the beginning of uh, like these Marvel movies. Sometimes it's that's right. It's twenty three some odd movies and however many hours. I'm guessing that all those movies combined's got to be somewhere in the seventies, right? Um, no. That well, that's are you including dramatic. the TV shows? No, yeah, that, I think that is what the TV shows. No, it's got to be in the fifties, right? Just think about tw- twenty three times two is forty six. Some of those pups are in the. Are there twenty three or twenty five? Either way, to your point, I would say it's probably in the high 50s. Yeah, low 50s. Because some movies are like two and a half. There are a couple that are closer to three. My, my home are you, uh, we've talked plenty about this on The Sims, so we don't need to dive deep, but are have you watched Loki? Are you into it? Are you up to date? Are you not interested? In this weird place, Cough, where, ooh, touchdown! Carolina goes ahead late, final few minutes of regulation. The Andersons got tickets to the game. I, uh, I've not, I've not d- 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 driven, I've not dove in yet, and I'm not, because I don't want to, I think I just want to, like, maybe this week, I think this will be the week, because I'm a huge Tom Hiddleston fan, I love yeah. the character of Loki, I think this is going to be a really good show, you know what it was, Captain America Winter Soldier, by the third episode, just kind of lost me. So, and did you not even finish it? I did not yet, but I'm going to just bang them all out one day, because somebody said, yeah. if you're at that point, just watch, like, a movie. Yeah. So, and I think it, some people say it plays better as a movie too. But I believe that. We'll we'll see. I I, I hate to be this guy because that's never been my style. I just there's been other things, other shows that have gripped me. Like I've been really into the Sweet Tooth show that's on Netflix, mm. and I'm not binging binging. Like me and my wife will watch no more than two episodes a night because we want to savor that sweet sweet content. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think by this week I'll probably catch up with Loki and, and get it because. It, it cannot not be good in my eyes, especially in Owen Wilson. Come on. It's, re- it's really good. Story I'm concerned about, but we'll see what it means. No, it's really good. I'm looking forward to your thoughts. <laughs> By next time next week, if we're to, I don't know where we're with, but we'll, we'll share those thoughts. I've completed my uh, – I, I'd seen them all, but I've completed my Fast and Furious binge. Hobbs and Shaw last night. I am ready for Fast 9 on Friday with Glash. Hey, what time are you guys going? 11 o'clock in That's the morning. The- that is the I don't care what anybody says people can laugh about going to the movies at night is a foolish man's game <laughs> you want to get that movie in early get that sweet sweet theater especially if you know I don't know what kind of movie snacks I'm very intrigued we'll talk about that after but sure and make sure plenty of uh, floor candy will be eaten so but, much floor candy like if you do I said that I'm going to show up there like with whatever kind of candy Sour Patch Kids or something and just drop them on the ground and say go ahead yeah have at it eat them <laughs> now put, um, put your dirty mouth where your money is <laughs> but I, I do think it is is going to be interesting because I or the reason I like going earlier and the reason I like it is just I won't eat like a like a pig not that I'm a huge pig at the movie theater but I'll usually down a popcorn before like anyone blinks but like if I'm going at 11 a.m. you know maybe you'll be more cautious of it. I doubt you have the same intake that I do but still I like to eat a fair amount yeah, so, but you know what I mean? Like at 11 a.m., you're probably not going to have that same. No, at that, at that yeah, at that point, it won't be ridiculous. Yeah, you're not going to have like a bucket of popcorn and oh, Bert throws. Oh, where's my bunch of crunch in the popcorn? <laughs> Got to do that every time. Bert, wow. Bert, are you a local? I feel like Bert needs me. Go meet these guys. 11 o'clock on Friday. Right? Yeah. Join us. Whoever wants to come. 11 a.m. Friday. <laughs> are tickets like? Is this like one of those things? Like, are tickets readily available right now, or is it like kind of selling up? No, at the, well, I mean, I guess I don't know now. He, Glash bought the tickets a few days ago, but when he bought them, he sent me the map of the theater because remember, you got to reserve your seats online. And okay. it was, there were like two other people. It was wide open. Okay. Because I don't know where people are at with movie theaters. Like, I've yet to return, but the fact well, that. Well, and it's 11 a.m. on a Friday. Yeah, well, that's what I was going to say. It's that as well. And trust me, I know people are returning. I'm saying I have yet to. Ooh. Ooh. I thought that was going to be an interception. Um, but I would say, I'm like, you guys made me Jones for it. So I told my wife, like, what movie do we want to even see? Like, right now, there's nothing. I'm not a fast guy. I'm a slow guy. Um, <laughs> like, when we well, have... Well, you know what I do? I mean, I don't need to see it in the theater, so I'll wait. But what I do want to see that's out right now is I'd like to see the uh, Hitman's Bodyguard 2. Yeah, that's you. That's all you. I, well, I, I really enjoy Ryan Reynolds and totally right. forgot, by the way, that he's in Hobbs and Shaw until I put it on again. That was great. Spoiler. Uh, yeah. And I'm then, just, I mean, it's been out long enough. And then, um, uh, and Samuel Jackson, obviously. Yes. No, the cast is fantastic. I think Selma Hayek as well. Yep. Correct. 
but like I, that's a movie I could easily like good but like that's I could see why that would be an enjoyable movie experience though because you yeah. go you're gonna laugh you're gonna have some fun with a friend the explosions there, but, chases yep it's got a little bit of everything but to me like I think my next movie experience might be Black Widow I'm, or, or unless something comes out that my wife like a Quiet Place too. I'm you know I'm a horror movie guy but that I didn't really like the first one and at this point I don't even know what's in the like I'm so far off from the theater yeah I mean I'm I I haven't seen the first one. Everybody tells me it's really good and I should check it out. But I'm going to say if you have not seen the first one, you or uh, if you have seen it and didn't like it, you, I can't imagine why you would like the second one. I like the story idea. I just don't like the execution and things that happen. That's the thing about, like, quote-unquote scary movies. They have some of the dumbest plot points. Like, it's just like, that. Would, what are we doing? Without being explained. But anywho. Executive Session says, seen the Hitman's Wife. It was awesome. Cool. By the way, I'm gonna. Out executive sessions. We're, I, we're gonna wait after this play before I give you the awards because they're gonna run the ball. Spoiler: They're going to run the, the ball. Spoiler: They do a knee, then they run, then they'll take the knee again. By the way, I have, I have not mentioned this one time, but if we could uh, smash that there like button, get to 100 uh, by the end of this sim, that'd be great. Do it for Father's Day. Do it for all oh, the dads. Do it, do in it your for life. all the dads in your life. Yeah, that's it. Don't do it for us. Just a couple other lamo dads here, but. Do it for Moose, too. He's coming up later. You can give yeah. him another one then. Real soon, a little less than an hour. Okay, so you play with the game. I don't care. Fight me. All right, this is it. This is the fight me moment. Dustin Hopkins. Whoa. I like Dustin it. Hopkins. No, I like it. Come at me with all your best. Um, oh, look at this. My And my son literally is rising. He knows. He knows. He's rising. Get back down. Get back down. I think that was good enough now, bro. Um, and your Not My Kid Award. I'm extremely disappoint here. Like, all the big guys scored. Like, Ian Thomas, I'm guessing, wasn't really owned that much. You want some assistance? You want me to take a little look-see? Yeah, I'm just looking. Like, when you think about this matchup, though, like, who... Just trying to think I mean, I, I think McKissick is a real letdown today. Did he score? Am I crazy? He didn't score. 10 points in the flex, but the dude was 28% captain, 77% cap. yeah. overall. Done. He's in. We're out. By the way, today is like the whatever anniversary of the release of Jaws 2. One of the best movies. My favorite movie of all time. One of the greatest movies ever. Is it really? Yep. It's a great day. Great day. That's it. Oh, look at that. I don't think I'm supposed nice. to play. I'm not going to play audio, but he is. That 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 is that a, a, a woke child. So woke child. <laughs> um. See if there's anything else notable in the chat before we do get out of here. And again, hit that like. Please. Appreciate y'all. Awesome. Lineups of lock for baseball. Remember, uh, get your lineups in for basketball in the next couple hours. You had a little time for that. A little two-game classic slate today, if I remember and am available, and I should be. I'll mix in a showdown beforehand as well. A little last-minute variety. I always enjoy that. Uh, good stuff, man. What are you going to do for the rest of your Father's Day? You said you're, you're going dad's over to cool. your folks. Yeah, and- I'm going to go with my dad's, and in the next few hours, I don't know right now. But you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to live it up. I'm going to enjoy it. going to put a big stupid smile on my face maybe put some more sun on this big bald white head and uh, we'll see what happens it's grown back already fast no so longer come- mr clean my friend no it comes quick comes quick by this uh, time d- next week you won't even know d12 <laughs> d12 uh not to be confused with the rap group d1232 the unofficial free showdown winner uh with cmc and captain spot Stats still being updated, but, uh, you know, once they are finalized, that is the projected winner. Uh, not unlike Tank Orator in first by a couple of points, two and a half-ish, in our uh, smaller than nooner, just a couple of dads on Dad's Day free roll. So congrats to you. Also, uh, it's not done yet, but anytime I could shout out Meager, man. Meager is first in the Moose Classic, the uh, the big moose contest. Moose! Promoting like crazy. So good on you, Meager. Take that money. All right, thanks to Jordan, to Daniel, to Bert, obviously to Rossi. Enjoy the rest of your Father's Day, my friend. Uh, you have got four more Madden Sims coming your way today. The very next one, I'll be here with you with Moose, Colts, Bills, at uh, about 45 minutes from now for pregame. So join us for that here in the Dream Stream. Up next, you have got uh, Nick Costas uh, joining uh, Ross Tucker for this edition of the Ross Tucker Football Podcast. 
Even Money to discuss sports betting across the NHL, NBA, NFL, and a whole bunch more. So enjoy it. And again, happy Father's Day to all those who are departing for the rest of this Dream Stream today. So long. If you'd like to make your NFL games a little more interesting, you've come to the right place. It's the Even Money Podcast with Ross Tucker and Steve Fezzik. Yeah, Vegas, baby, Vegas. It is the Even Money Podcast presented by DraftKings, America's number one rated sportsbook app. I'm Ross Tucker. Former NFL offensive lineman, five teams, seven years. Most of you know that. You can check me out on social, at Ross Tucker NFL. All the shows are posted to at Ross Tucker Pod. We got the YouTube going, youtube.com slash Ross Tucker NFL. Almost a year with YouTube, which is very cool because you can watch the shows and or just look at the the best highlight clips from the other shows. Maybe you don't want to watch the whole Fantasy Feast or listen to the whole Ross Tucker podcast. Watch what I thought were the three or four best moments of the whole show. Watch the highlights of those. Why not? It's awesome. Um, Speaking of awesome, so fired up about today's guest. I've known him for a long time. He's been on the show. In fact, he was on the show a year ago, right in the middle of everything going on with the pandemic. He is the founding father of wagertainment. He literally coined the phrase. And with Steve Fezzik out this week on assignment, I could think of no one better than my buddy, Nick Costos, the host of You Better You Bet, 4 to 8 p.m. Eastern time every day on the Odyssey app. Check him out on social media at the Costos. Nikki, how are we doing? Doing great, man. And and Ross, I'm a I'm a huge Ross Tucker guy. I would never go to YouTube and only watch just like one or two moments. I gotta consume the whole damn thing, whether it's the fantasy feast, even money, the Ross Tucker football podcast. You know, buddy. I, I got you. Great to be on with you, my friend. How you doing? I'm doing awesome. I appreciate you saying that. I'm coming off of a week at the beach, the Jersey Shore, which I'm sure on some level you can relate. Uh I was at was- Spring Lake on Saturday, of course. I was down at the shore myself on Saturday. Oh my gosh. It was absolutely glorious it's great to be back though uh steve where is steve steve's like in the moabs of utah or something like he does this every year he takes this week off every year and i thought all right who can i get to fill in for steve talk about a bunch of things and we probably referenced this last year i do not believe to my knowledge there is nobody who's a better combination of entertainment and information when it comes to sports betting right now than you. I really think you're the guy. Like, I think you're the guy. And what's crazy about it is it was like 12 years ago that you were a show producer at Sirius XM NFL Radio, maybe even like eight years ago. I don't know. But whatever it is, a a job that I would say is probably – not thought of as like destined necessarily for great things. I don't want to put words in your mouth, but I do want you to talk about your career a little bit and like what you were thinking when you were producing some of my shows at Sirius XM NFL Radio and how the heck you got to where you are now. Because I do think there's some life lessons there. Well, first thing, like, and I'm not just saying this because we're doing the show. I loved working with you. Like I, because you, you, you know your stuff. You've got a good personality. You're a nice guy off the air. Like I had dinner with you and your wife in Pennsylvania on one of the training camp tours that we were on. So like, you're a good dude. So I always, I always really enjoyed whether we were doing shows on the road, whether they were studio shows, but it was me, you and Jim Miller, who's also a great guy. You know, these are, these are great memories of mine. And I'm actually going to tell us a story, something. When I think of you, I think of one story, actually two stories. One, maybe we'll leave on the cutting room floor, but uh, that always makes me laugh. But yeah, so, um, I'll, I'll be trying to be as brief as I can with this and appreciate the kind words. Um, so I went to Fordham and uh, I worked at the radio station there, 90.7 WFUV. We're seeing a lot of big time talent coming out of Fordham on the broadcasting side. Syracuse, watch out because Fordham's coming for that ass. A um, lot of great Fordham broadcasters now. Um, and my junior year interned at FAN in New York. And then my senior year interned at 
at the time, Sirius Satellite Radio, the first year of NFL radio, the 2004 season, which culminated with the Patriots beating Donovan McNabb and the Eagles um, in the Super Bowl and got hired by Sirius out of college. And at that point, you know, I had I had won a New York State Broadcasters Award my senior year of college for hosting the NFL draft when uh, the Giants traded for Eli Manning. Um, we beat all the major radio stations in, in, in the New York area as a college radio station, 90.7. Um, but I did not want to move after I graduated. You know, my girlfriend at the time lived close. My family, my friends were all close. I got offered a job in Buffalo. I got offered a job in Green Bay, Wisconsin. Um, I decided to, to stay. And um, I kind of found myself interested kind of in the behind the scenes um, facet of radio. So I got hired by Sirius. They did not want to put me on the air right out of college, which I understood. Maybe it would have been a pressure move by them looking back on things, but that's not what happened. So <laughs> I, 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 I kind of I kind of really liked it. And look, like I made like no money for a long time. Like Ross, when I was producing those so, those shows for you, I was making no money, like literally living in my mother's basement, not figuratively. Like I was actually literally living, like we turned the basement into like an apartment in my mom's old house on Long Island. So that is a thing that that actually happened. So I, I look back on on that stuff fondly. Like, listen, I went through it. Like I I worked my ass off. I scratched and clawed to get to where I am. And I look back on that and I wouldn't trade it because those experiences behind the scenes gave me so much perspective as a talent now talking where, I mean, I, it's not just that I feel like I'm able to deliver like with, with, with my words, kind of the content. I think I'm able to kind of conceptualize before the show even starts how it should be delivered. What's the order in which things should go? What's the hook for a segment? These are all things that working with, with talent like you and, and Adam Shine, who I produced for for many years, like that helped hone kind of my content skills where I feel like not just on air, but off air, I feel like I can really like put a show together and really make a show sing. So these are great memories that I've had and uh, never gave up on the dream. Sirius didn't want to put me on the air. Good for them. God bless. Ended up going to CBS and now I'm at Odyssey. So this kind of all worked out. And the story that I want to tell, um, so I forget what year this was. Maybe it was like 2010 or 2011. <laughs> I, I don't even remember who the third host was, but Ross and I are doing a show at Dolphins Training Camp in South Florida in Davie. And for people that are unfamiliar with weather in South Florida, like it, I lived there for three years, you will have, you will be in paradise one second and then the apocalypse is on nigh the next. <laughs> and then 15 minutes later, after, after like the biggest rainstorm of your life where no one can, you know, can steer the ark with all the animals through it. You're back in paradise again. It's wild. So we're doing the show at Dolphins Training Camp. Tony Sperano was the coach. And we were interviewing Jared Odrick. And you were talking to Jared Odrick about Penn State. And we are and we are like under this canopy, right, uh, in, in the stands at Dolphins Training Camp. And it is a torrential downpour. Like insane cats and dogs. Like you've never seen anything like this. And it's getting to the point where the water is kind of penetrating like like the canopy above us and coming in through the side because of the wind. So now there is an accumulation of water around all the machinery and all the wires. And Jared Odrick is looking at me as this is going on like, he didn't say anything because he's on the air, but he's like basically like, I don't know if this is safe. And Ross, whoever the other host was, is asking a question. You take your headset off and you're much taller than me and you kind of lean down and you go, dude, we got to get out of here. And I'm like, you're right, we are. Because we're gonna get electrocuted. So that is that story always stands out to me. Like I will never forget the look on your face and like the panic in your voice where you're like, man, like we gotta go. And I'm like, yes, man, yes, we do. So that always that always kind of stands out to me. I just remember thinking like there's a lot of electricity and wires here. Yeah. And it's like pulling up of water. I'm like, I can just picture like not only for me. But like how bad it would be for Sirius XM if like one of the Dolphins like star play. Jared Odrick, second round pick out for the season. Why? Electrocuted on moving the chains. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yo, you got it. So, by the way, um, th there's a lot to get into here. And, and I want to get Nick's thoughts on the NBA, NHL, the NFL bets he likes. Because what's really crazy is you do four hours of what you call wagertainment every day. That's a lot, man. Like, first of all, <laughs> I don't know how many other daily betting shows there are, but then four hours, like, that's a lot of content. Yeah, it is. Um, 
Well, I think right now, you know, the NBA playoffs is kind of like manna from content heaven and uh, we're, we're super into it, but look, I mean, like it is, it is a lot, but Ross, like people like you, me and you that have been doing this for a long time. And this isn't to make it like, I'm like, like God's gift to this kind of thing, but listen, been doing this for more than half my life at this point. I'm 38. I've been in the industry literally since I was 18. So, I mean, we can kind of sit down and conceptualize how a four-hour show is going to go so we're not filling anything. There's always stuff going on. There's always stuff to talk about. I'll give you an example. So yesterday, you know, we tried to do NFL in every show because A, it's awesome, and B, everyone loves it, right? Because it's awesome. So how can we do NFL in the show? So, you know, I'm looking at kind of news stories here, and it doesn't have to be like Julio Jones gets traded, now we're going to do NFL. No, it's, well, Jarvis Landry said Odell Beckham Jr. looks amazing, you know, working out. So we use that story and that soundbite as a way to talk about the Cleveland Browns and the hype around Cleveland heading into this season where we kind of have an unprecedented situation in the betting market where Cleveland's Pythagorean win expectation last year, despite the fact they won 11 games and nearly upset Kansas City in the divisional rounds of the playoffs, was eight. Like, they got lucky a lot last year in the regular season, played in a bunch of weather games. What is Pythagorean win? What is that? All right, I don't want to make it like I'm like this math whiz because I'm not. I'm like stealing content from people. And, and by the way, and by the way, I don't think there's anybody better at the math stuff than Fezzik, my normal co-host. Like the math stuff, he any odds you give him, any anything off the top of his head, he will tell you what that translates to. Like it's crazy. Yeah, I can't do that. Not at all. I mean, my co-host can't. Right, Pythagorean I, win. I, what is that? Okay, so Pythagorean win expectation um, is basically like the amount of games that a team should have won that season. I think it's has to do with like points scored and points allowed and some other crap as well. Um, people can look this up. This is all like readily available information, but basically it's more of like an actual indication of what a team has done the, the season before. So Cleveland won 11 games last year. The Pythagorean was like 8.3 or something like that. And now their win total is 10 and a half where normally you would see the win total for the next year, assuming like coach quarterback remains static, like, like they come back that the win total is going to more reflect the Pythagorean expectation. Cleveland's win total is 10 and a half. So it's kind of un- an unprecedented situation. So we're able to marry like, like a story that's relevant in the news with a team that's really hot button and, and marry it with kind of like a really cool betting angle. And it turns into, it turns into a great segment. You know, we, we can do an hour easy in our sleep on the NBA playoffs. We literally do it. It'll be the first hour of our show today. As we tape this on Tuesday, we're going to do an hour on the NBA playoffs to start. We do a full hour on the power hour, which is our bets for that night where we kind of run through everything. So that's kind of done. Three guest segments, two or three open segments where we kind of slot in other sports stuff. Euro Cup's huge right now. We'll do a segment or two on that every day. And boom, four hours over before you know it. So it it seems like it's daunting, but uh, I, I actually think like the big secret is it's actually not terribly difficult to execute and execute well. Got it. Um, well, you do it extremely well. Um, and... The other thing I would get to before we get to some specific stuff, you know, Steve mainly focuses on the NFL. I mainly focus on the NFL. He kind of has a guy for every sport. You know what I mean? Like NFL is his focus. He's got a college hoops guy. He's got a baseball guy and they help each other. Like that's what these pro betters do. How do you blend being sort of a jack of all trades, master of none? Because that's really what you have to be. I mean, you're doing a daily show year round. You can't be a master. You have to be a jack of all trades. Yeah, I, I think that what helps is, you know, my co-host Ken Barkley. Um, and I'm, listen, I'm not like his agent, but I want to talk him up here because he enables me. Like that's part of he's a huge part of the wagertainment formula. Where like, listen, I entertain and I can inform, but he's really sharp with a, a lot of these different sports. And when he's not as sharp with with some of the sports, you know, we bring on hockey experts, pro hockey betters. We bring on, you know, pro golf betters or pro tennis betters that come onto the show. So I think what we try and do is, you know, we're very honest and authentic with the audience. Like, like, I'm not a huge golf better. I was during the pandemic because it was the only thing going on and I'm crunching the numbers and trying to figure out what the hell I'm doing. I'm not a huge golf better. Now, I, I will do my research and I'll give golf bets out on the show, but we have experts come on to kind of give their golf bets and we highlight those experts. So I, I, I think that's kind of how you do it. You just be honest. You know, I think that I've been watching sports for over 30 years. So I have, you know, all the major team sports. I, I, I know inside and out. I can talk about those easily. But when it comes to other sports, if I don't know, I'm going to tell you I don't know. And then we're going to bring on someone who does. And we're going to highlight that person. I think that's how you do it. All right. I do have a golf bet. Because we know what's coming up this weekend. 
third major of the year. How about this? How about this bet? DraftKings is giving you 100 to 1 odds on Bryson DeChambeau sinking at least one birdie this weekend. Seems like a strong bet. Yeah, are you kidding me? A hundred to one odds. Unless he's in his tried- head about the match for next week, but I think, yeah, I think that's probably going to be an easy winner. Probably cashed on Thursday. If he doesn't get a birdie, something's very, very wrong. So if you want essentially a free hundred dollars, okay, go to DraftKings Sportsbook, use the code Ross to turn one dollar into one hundred dollars, which is amazing. All right. That, gotta, by the I way, gotta, is why I, Ross is such a stud doing this for a living. Seamlessly integrated that that in, into our conversation. That's what makes Ross such a stud. You this. like that? You like I love that? It. That's that. That is my. That is one of my strengths. My my segues. <laughs> they say so. But here's the deal. I, I I I probably shouldn't admit this, but I will. So I mentioned that I was at the beach last week, right? So we got up at four a.m. Monday morning and drove back. That's how I roll, right? Monday morning, drive back. So I get home at like 7.15, and I do College Draft Podcast with Emery Hunt at 8.20, whatever. Then I do Adam Lefko was on the Ross Tucker Football Podcast. And why the Sixers lost last night. Do you ever feel that? I mean, you, I know you're a night owl, so you probably never go to bed. And you, like, you always stay up and watch it. But, like, I felt like, wow, I quit on the team last night, and then that's why they lost the game. Well, I, I actually – I I went to bed last night in, like, the third quarter of the Clippers-Jazz game, and I had a sizable bet on the Clippers, and I woke up at, like, 3 in the morning, and I, like, looked at my phone just to make sure that I covered the bet, which I did, which was great. So that, that does happen every once in a while. Look, I think – it's kind of like the, one of the dirty little secrets of this field. And look, I, I'm hyper sports fan and have been my whole life. 16-year-old me would absolutely despise 38-year-old me in terms of being a sports fan. Because I got to tell you, bud, I don't care anymore, man. Giants lose. I used, When the Giants blew the 38-14 lead on January 3rd, 2002 to the San Francisco 49ers and lost 39-38, I literally cried after the game. Like, in a dark room, shut all the lights off, cried. When Jay Feely missed all those field goals against Seattle in 2005 in a regular season game, I cried after the game. My sister came out outside on the deck and was like, you're 23 years old. Like, it's time It's time to grow up. And I was thinking, yeah, you're probably right. I don't care now. I don't care about any of this stuff. Because, like, we've been doing this for so long in the space. We worked in the NFL, especially you, me to a lesser degree, where, like, I know people that work for the Eagles and the Cowboys and other organizations. Like, wow, like, I really like these people. Like, these people are really cool. I don't want these people to lose. So, really, for me, it's become, who did I bet on? That's who I root for. Now, look, I'm like you. Knicks made the playoffs this year. I was super into it. The Yankees suck right now. Guess how many times I'm sitting down during the week to watch the Yankees. Take that number, multiply it by a million. You know what it is? Zero. Why would I waste my time watching that terrible team? I'm not going to do it. I got other things going on in my life. I get no benefit from watching it unless I bet on it. So I think you and I are kind of on the same wavelength here. Um, I, I wish you were kind of different, but this is kind of the uh, the path we've chosen. We get paid to talk about sports, so it's hard to be as invested as a fan. All right. Give me some NBA bets that you like right now could be bucks nets tonight could be sixers hawks tomorrow night or clippers jazz maybe it's a series line maybe it's a team to win it all like what whatever you got on the nba that you think is strong i'd love to hear it well i i am very invested um in the clippers in the series against the jazz um they went down 1-0 i put a series bet on the clippers they went down 2-0. I put a series bet in on the Clippers. I bet the Clippers in game three and game four of the series shifting back to Los Angeles. The Clippers covered all of those. I still why? think the Clippers. Why are, you so, why are you so into them? Well, I just feel like the Clippers, Utah is kind of, the Jazz do what they do and they do it well, but they only do what they do. Like they can't do anything else other than what they do. And like when they're making all their threes, like they're they're probably going to win. They can win a championship if they get super hot for an extended period of the time. But the Clippers can have answers for them. And we kind of saw the Clippers do this with their rotation in the series against the Mavericks where they fell down uh, 2-0 in the first round. And then they eventually figure it out with their rotations and they quote unquote like solve a team and what that team is trying to do. And then at the end of the day, they've got like two, two of the best players and certainly the best player on the court, maybe not against Dallas, um, when Dallas had Luca, who's like transcendent, but 
I think Kawhi is the best player in the series with apologies to Donovan Mitchell. So I think the Clippers have clearly shown you that they've solved the jazz to a, to a degree here and watching games one and game. Now maybe Mike Conley comes back and make things a little different. I still like the Clippers, but in games one and game two, the Clippers should have won game one. Um, they were a day and a half removed basically from an emotional game seven against Dallas. So I thought they were drawing dead coming into the game. They still should have won game one. I watched all of game two. They should have won that game too. Terrible shooting. Utah was begging the Clippers to take that game. And, uh, the Clippers were like, nah, you can have this one. We'll take two going back to Los Angeles. And then they did in a, uh, in dominant fashion. So I think the Clippers have kind of solved Utah to a degree here. Um, so I, I like the Clippers to go on and, and, and win the series here. And I think you can still get them around like plus 100. Um, obviously not as good a bet as the ones I placed, but I do like the Clippers to win that series. Um, I don't know that I would necessarily bet it um, because the price is going to be big. Uh, I would be absolutely stunned if Philly lost to Atlanta. I guess we kind of have to, here's the crappy thing about the postseason. So many injuries to star players. It's brutal. We'll get to uh, Brooklyn in a second. Jo Joel Embiid is obviously the ticking time bomb here. Clearly not healthy last night. If he is, I think they, they win going away against Atlanta. So assuming that Embiid's good to go, there ain't no way Atlanta's beating Philly, but I guess we should wait to see what Embiid's status is moving forward here. That's what kind of the fly in the army with that series. And unfortunately, I'm not a doctor. I would be shocked if we saw Kyrie Irving and James Harden in the series against Milwaukee. Maybe if it gets to seven, maybe you'd see one of them here. I, I struggle to make a case for the Nets to, to win one of the next two games, which sucks because they are clearly better, I think, than Milwaukee, and they proved that in games one and games two. But it's going to turn into a referendum on Kevin Durant's legacy, which is so annoying, and I know that the idiots in our content space are going to be like, oh, well, KD couldn't get it done by himself, so he sucks. It's like, actually, you suck. You suck for actually saying that, whoever wants to say that. Um, I just don't think he can do it. Like, it's Durant and a bunch of guys against a really good Bucks team. So Bucks are four and a half tonight in game five in Brooklyn. I like Milwaukee to win the game. I think they'll probably cover the spread. And uh, if there's no Harden and no Kyrie, I, I just struggle to see how Brooklyn advances here. So I'm going to lose a bunch of money on Brooklyn futures. What can you do when two of the three guys get hurt? So I very much like uh, Milwaukee at this point now. And I hate them. And I hate that I hate them because Giannis is a fellow Greek freak like yours truly. But uh, they're really annoying, and they don't deserve to win, but they're going to now because of the injuries. <laughs> what about um, – you mentioned it earlier, Euro Cup. <laughs> Dude, Here's this is funny, right? I'm at the beach with my wife's family, and my wife's uh, cousin is watching Turkey against somebody, right? Italy. Italy, Italy. won 3-0. I had the over. That was Friday, 3 p.m. Eastern. It was great. Yep, and he has it on TV, and it says Euro Cup 2020. And I'm like, I'm like, are yeah, you it's really annoying. into this? Yeah. I go, are you really into this? He played soccer, like in high school, was really good. He's like, yeah, but this is from 2020. It's just a replay. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was live. Do we do that shtick on the show? I call it every day on the show, Euro, Euro 2020 in 2021. It was supposed to be played last year. COVID knocked it out. I'm so like, they didn't update I, I the name. Yeah. I didn't realize that I see people tweeting about it. I'm like... Oh wait, like th that that's just what they're calling it. Yeah, it's so stupid. what is, so it, Euro Cup is essentially the World Cup but just for Europe. That's right. And it's it is absolutely magnificent and I love soccer. It's actually probably my second favorite sport behind American football. I love soccer, love Why? betting on soccer. I it's it's hard to explain to like and I don't mean to like put like you or like other fans kind of like in, in a box here, but like I'll say like American sports fans I think it's hard to kind of like explain to people that are not kind of vested in it or have not paid attention to it, how awesome it is. It's not just kind of what goes on the pitch, they call it, but like the drama that goes on behind the scenes is it's tabloid stuff to like the nth degree. And it is absolutely massively entertaining. And then you add in like geopolitical intrigue, right? With like countries that hate each other that have been like at war with each other in the past, have to play each other in soccer. Like, it's it's just awesome, man. And I actually and I enjoy the game and like the cat and mouse stuff that goes on uh, on the pitch line. Once you actually like realize that, like actually what's happening, it kind of elevates it to a new level. But I am like I watch every game. I bet on every game. I am like massively into the Euro Cup right now. Got it. All right. So, how, like, do you have a bet there for people? Like, do you have something you like? <laughs> yeah, man. Do I have a bet? Let me see here. Let me because I have like. I can give you like 25 bets if you'd like right now because I have, have them all written down here. Um, well, some you of have them, a notebook? You don't have like a spreadsheet or anything? You have like an old school handwritten notebook? Bro, I write I write everything down. It's all written down. I've got well, like I a million notebooks. Like it, though. I, am, I am transitioning as we speak from 
I got a bunch of notebooks for like each business. Hold on one second. Probably not supposed to do this during a show. Keep talking. Say something. All right. Yeah. So yeah, I'll give some bets out. Um, well, I don't know when this podcast is going to post, but I like Germany to beat France today. That game's Tuesday at 3 p.m. Eastern. Uh, I kind of think Germany's got a good chance to win the whole tournament. I've got an outright on Belgium to win the tournament. They're like Kevin De Bruyne back. I know Ross is a big They're Kevin not going to win it. Belgium's not beating Italy and England and Spain and off, Germany. Yes. yes, Belgium's significantly better than both England and Spain. Maybe you can make a case that Italy could beat them. Belgium will definitely beat England and absolutely beat Spain. Is Belgium... This is where I get in trouble. Belgium's the same as Wales, right? No. They're not? I don't even... What are you, people from you Belgium are, you, called? You're, you're, you are the dumbest person to ever graduate from Princeton. <laughs> <laughs> what, are people, what are people from Belgium called? Belgian? Have you ever had a Belgian waffle? Where do you think it comes from? <laughs> <But> Scotland? <laughs> Thailand? Hey, like, hey, so here's what I wanted to show you. Uh, so I've got, as you know, Go Big Recruiting and my front page story, and then I got the podcast business. I have a, a notebook for each of them. Like, and I and every day I have notes for each business and when I have conference calls and whatever, right? I am rec I'm transitioning away from this because when you're traveling or something, like you don't want to be bringing all these notebooks. And it's not easy to go back to like previous pages. Like it's a pain. Whereas yeah. if I, I have an open spreadsheet and I just keep going down, 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 down. You can always scroll up to the night, the day before, the day before, whatever. So I am literally in the transition of moving from notebook to strictly digital. You know, I, I don't, I, this may be me. When I write stuff down, like with a pen, I feel like I like commit it to memory. And I don't feel like I get that when I type. That's just me though. And look, I'm also not a businessman than you are. So, you know. All right. So here's what I got for you. Um, do you have any, so you did the Euro, anything NHL? Uh, well, yeah, I think the Islanders are going to win the Stanley Cup. But that's um, not your team. You're a Rangers guy. I'm a Rangers fan. But as we, as we've previously said, while, while it over fandom 100 times out of 100. Okay. Um, but my, here's my question. Cause you grew up in Queens, right? Yes. Okay. So I would think most, are most Queens people Islanders or Rangers? Um, I would say there's definitely more ra well, Rangers for sure. But um, my grandfather grew up in the Bronx. So we are a Yankees, Giants, Knicks, Rangers family passed down from my dad to me, to my children eventually. So yeah, my grandpa grew up in the Bronx, a fan of those teams. And that's why I root for those teams. Okay, here's my question though. Do you kind of adopt the Islanders a little bit for the playoffs? Like, do you kind of root for them because it's you live, you grew up near there, you live near there or not at all? Um. If I didn't do what I do for a living and like I like was like a, I don't know, like an accountant or something, I would probably root against the Islanders and I'd probably be like, oh, Rangers, huge rivalries for the Islanders. But, uh, oh, okay. But, but no, I mean, like I, I bet on the Islanders against the Penguins because Christian Jerry's an absolute mess. That was an easy bet. I took them against the Bruins because Tuka Rask clearly wasn't 100%. Those were easy bets. I bet them, like the, the, the price before the Lightning series, the Islanders were plus 225. That price should have been like, at best, minus 180 Tampa, like plus 150 Islanders. Like that was a crazy insulting line. That's an easy bet to make. Then the Islanders win game one, and now the Islanders are basically like, even money. Nice little um, synergy there to win the series now. Of course they are, because the two teams are like identical. Uh, I think the Islanders are going to beat Tampa. And then I think they've got a great chance they'll be the underdogs against Vegas. I'm riding the Islanders to the finish here one way or another. Um, your favorite NFL bet right now. Might get you on again before the NFL season, but your favorite NFL bet, whatever it can be, a season win total, uh, MVP, comeback. I thought you were going to mention Odell as comeback player of the year when you said we used that clip from Jarvis Landry, blah, blah, blah. Your favorite NFL-related bet right now. I want to give you a win total, and then I'll give you a division bet that I really like. Okay. Um, we'll see what happens with Deshaun Watson. I don't know that he, A, plays the season, or B, plays with Houston. Let's assume Watson doesn't play. I think the Texans could realistically go 0-17. 1-16, 2-15. The roster is absolutely dreadful. That is a terrible roster. I'm not trying to bang on the players on the team. It's not meant to be insulting. Just the fact of the matter. I don't I don't see you're going to hang a four-and-a-half win total in a 17-game season with that team. 
I will, I'll gladly take the under on the Houston Texans. So that's, that's one that I'm definitely eyeing. Um, it's funny because I was, I was kind of like on the Jaguars over as a result of Houston being bad. And I was down on Tennessee. I actually, I think, I think the Julio Jones trades a big deal for the Tennessee Titans. So I don't know if I like the Jaguars as much now, but I want to go to the NFC East. Um, I feel like people are sleeping on Washington a little bit. Their odds were crazy a couple months ago, like plus 375 to go back to back and win, win the NFC East again. When kind of, I, I was saying on my show, you better, you bet for a while, all this team needs is like even like a semi legitimate starting quarterback. And this team's ready for prime time, man. And look, Fitz has his warts. He'll look like Marino one week and then he'll look like, you know, like Kevin Cobb the next. So like we, we do see that sometimes from Fitz, but I think Fitz is more than capable of getting the ball down the field to McLaurin. Love the signing of Curtis Samuel coming over from Carolina into an offense and with a coaching staff that he's familiar with, obviously, with Ron Rivera um, and Scott Turner. Love Antonio Gibson, Logan Thomas, um, Brown, the speedster out of North Carolina. I, the offensive line, the defense is obviously really good. A coaching staff there. I don't know that Ron Rivera is Lombardi, but like I think he's definitely like one of the better coaches in the NFL. Um, I'm, I'm not a believer in Dallas because I think that defense stinks. And I think Mike McCarthy was like shockingly bad last year. And like, I like Mike used to come on, I don't know, I used to talk to him off the air. I made it like we were like good friends. We weren't, probably doesn't remember me. But anyway, he was a really nice guy. In any event, I thought he did a really poor job last year. Uh, I know you like Micah Parsons, but I mean, really like another off-ball linebacker with like a, a top draft pick. I thought that was poor. Dallas getting outmaneuvered for J.C. Horn and Patrick Sertan. So love the offense. Line should be better. Those score points, I don't trust the defense. I don't think Dan Quinn is necessarily like the ointment to cure um, all their ails. And then the Giants, I want to be high on. That's my favorite team. I want to be high on them. If Daniel Jones is good. I think they can be very good. Uh, here's the here's the issue. I don't think he is good. So it's hard for me to like the Giants to do make a lot of noise. Ergo, uh, I think Washington's kind of pretty undervalued right now in that division, the NFC East, to win it and go back to back. At the Costos, you must follow this man on social media. Look, I, I I'm just telling you, he's a star. People will realize over the next five years how much of a star he really is. Follow him on social media, The Costos, founding father of Wagertainment, which I love. He's the host of You Better You Bet, live, 4 to 8 p.m. Eastern time on the Odyssey app. I do go on that show from time to time. I enjoy doing it. Nikki, you're the man. Thank you so much. Fantastic. Ross, thanks for having me, man. And the other story that I was going to tell involved me and you at Buca de Beppo in Indianapolis for the scouting combine and a beer named Rossi, which you really like because it has your name in it. <laughs> another great story. But thank, thanks for having me. Always happy to come on with you. That was amazing. Costos is amazing. Fezzik will be back next week. Other than that, good luck. Hope you guys win some money. Thanks for listening to the Even Money Podcast. Make sure to also subscribe to the Ross Tucker Football Podcast, the Fantasy Feast, Business of Sports, and the College Draft. All available at Apple Podcasts, RossTucker.com, or wherever.
What's up again, DK Sim fam? Good to be back with you here on Father's Day. We, uh, I'm still, I'm still all choked up, Moose. We say goodbye to one dad and Jason Rossi. Off to enjoy his Father's Day, and uh, this is the crossover Sim right here because I will be done after this one. We bring in another dad for his first of two, and that's Jeff Ulrich. Happy Dad's Day, Moose. Thanks, pal. Yeah, big day. Yeah, I'm, I'm. Look, it's, it's nice. I'm a father. I'm very happy to be a father. Two beautiful girls. Yep. I do not make a big deal out of Mother's and Father's Day because I feel like they're society-created holidays. You've heard me say this before on DK Simline, but it's momentous. You know, we do celebrate the people that are fathers. I like it. So yep. whatever. It's cool. Happy Father's Day, everybody. Yeah, I uh, tend to be pretty in line with you, which um, my <laughs> wife doesn't always love. <laughs> but, oh, but no. that's okay no. that's all right we're generally on the same page with that stuff good you know so you want to make it, it, it it's it's not that it has to be an extra special day as you know the the people will tell you just don't make it a miserable day right exactly like don't don't go don't go out of your way to like it at least if you know you can have that that little powwow with the kids first thing in the morning like listen it's father's day it's mother's day it's whatever significant you know significant day just uh just don't be a jerk today. Like, just try, like, try and keep it together. Try, you know, try and have that that little extra threshold. Don't totally. don't spring into fighting immediately. Yeah. Just try and keep it together as long as you can, and that's really all. It's all we ask as parents for Father's Day and Mother's Day. I don't even ask that much because, like, my kids are incapable of understanding that at this point. So I, I didn't <laughs> like. I. It's basically just another day for me where, like, you know. I got like a congratulations. I got like an extra hug. That's enough. That's it. That's all I need. Yeah. You know, one extra hug. Great. Perfect. I will say my my wife and, and the kids, but really like that's a testament to her, not so much them. I did get to sleep a little bit later than I normally do. That's which, perfect. You know, is, is not like, that's a pretty good gift right there. That's you right know? there. That's all I need too. That's, that's it. That's right there. How you feeling, by the way? I know uh, you had the, the second vaccine. You were going to yes. take it easy yesterday after our sim together. You were just going to relax, maybe check out Loki, but you were going to unwind. What'd you do? Yeah, no, pretty much did that. I, was, I felt pretty rough mostly yesterday, but I only had one sim. Got a great sleep, feel much better, pretty much back to normal. So, you know, Good. take a day. It wasn't, it wasn't even that bad a day. You know, I was just tired yesterday and my arm hurt. <laughs> That's pretty much it. So all back to good, you know. Backed up, got my superpowers going, and uh, ready to rock, man. Do a couple. Did, you, did you wind up watching Loki? Oh yeah, no, I finished it. Yep, good, so, great, yeah, how, great how second feeling, episode. How you feeling through two? Good, great, great, good. great show so far. I liked good. it, man. I think you know we're already getting. I thought they were gonna drag this second Loki person on for like three episodes, and I like that they just moved right into it. Like, okay, it's a different version of Loki. I, I won't spoil like whatever, but. You know, you get to find out, and mm -hmm. it's you know, let's let's go. I like it. Like, let's move along. These are hour long episodes. We don't need to drag this one thing out for three episodes. So, great show yeah. so far. I was thinking about it, and uh, and and you have already given away a bit more than like Zach and I did when when we were talking about the show. But I I do like that. You know, if this we just kept calling it like the big reveal at the end of episode two, right? Right. And and we, you know, if this were your typical tv show like one that was not designed within this basically six episode arc or six hour arc uh, a little bit you know less than that and and i know there are designs of of having a season two as, as part of the marvel universe based on what you read out there uh, i don't know that well it's certainly not the case for wandavision i don't think it's the case for uh <coughs> excuse me falcon and winter soldier either but um like if this were your regular tv show on on any of the the major networks for 22, 24 episodes a season, all that, like that big reveal that you just talked about, like that would be your season one finale. Like yeah, that, totally. would, that would, that yeah. would be dragged out for so long. Yes. And I, and I love, like you said, I love that they're like, you know what? We don't have a lot of time to burn here. We're going to jump right into this and keep it moving. Yeah, exactly. Right. You know, and, and WandaVision was kind of like that, like they dragged it out a little bit. They obviously, it obviously worked a little bit different in that show. And, and like, I didn't mind it because it was, it kept you, it did keep, kind of keep you guessing. And, they well, and it was purposeful. And it was a little bit more artistic, that show. You know, I, I feel yeah. like just trying to go through the different the decades and stuff. But this was like, yes, that's what I want. Like, let's, let's get in. Let's see who this new character is and stuff. And yeah, it's, it's great so far. I love the first two episodes. Very cool. 
I am very interested long term beyond Loki to see where the TVA fits in because yeah. it's uh, that's one of those things. Lots of possibilities, like, man. Yeah, I mean you can't just like do a six episode run and then leave that. Like that's no, a it's no, a no, no. big thing. Well, and look, if you want to get into the you know the Marvel of what's coming up, we got Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. You know, like obviously that's probably going to be connected. We got yeah. Spider Man, who's you know rumors are they're bringing back like Andrew Garfield and Tobey Maguire possibly. Right, supposedly who knows? The multiverse, so, yeah. So there's some stuff going on, right? I mean, it sounds actually really cool. I'm I'm pretty pumped for it. As a as as you could probably tell, I like comics by my background. I think people like that, but know that by now. So. How big, by the way, as we're just getting underway, in Buffalo, Indianapolis, Jeff Ulrich, Adam Kaufman, Jordan, our producer, Daniel, our technical director, Bert, Bobo, and Ops, and a happy Father's Day to everybody out there. Thank you for being with us. You, um, we know you're a comic guy. We've talked about it in the past, and obviously, like you said, you've got some displayed on the desk there behind you. In general, though, like those, those are, I'm assuming your most prized possessions, the graded ones, the, like, these are the biggies, but how vast is your comic book collection? Uh, it's growing weekly. Let's put it that way. I had a pretty, you're like, still I had, an like, investor. Oh yeah, absolutely. Man. Um, it's like, I got like, like five books on the way here. Um, but, um, so and it's something, yeah, I just got into grading them, collecting them, picking up key issues, things that I like. I, I, yeah so I'm, I'm into it I got uh, these aren't even that's like I got like five more graded ones in the basement or something so that's not even the full full meal deal I got a bunch of you know what you call raw ones from uh, back when I collected them as a kid I got to clean them up and stuff and I just what, uh, what, made what a big space mean, clean them up what's that what does that mean clean them up oh I'm gonna you know you can get like some paper cleaner where you can kind of like rub it on and it'll it'll take off some of the dust or something and you can press them and stuff Hmm. So I got some key issues. I want to do that too. It's all like a technique. I'm just kind of learning about, but um, yeah, I'm going to do that. Clean, clean up some of my old ones. And, and uh, like I said, I got some new ones. I'm always looking for stuff. So I just kind of collect what I like. Like I, you know, there's certain comic book characters I like. There's certain things I like. There's, you know, it's the same with sports cards, man. Like, right. That, and generally if you do that and you, you kind of collect like the more rare stuff of, of stuff, like it'll, it'll pay off for you in the long term. If I'm being honest. So, you know, you gotta, it's just like investing in anything. I mean, it's a long-term thing, but. Do you read them at all or are they purely to collect and then obviously put put in the sleeve or the case or whatever you use and, and they're, you know, there for safekeeping and, and keeping them in good condition? Oh no, those ones, like once they're in the case, they, they ain't coming out. Um, but like, yeah, for most part, it's just, if, I, if I'm buying a comic, it's like, I don't even open it because I don't want to wreck it or anything like that, so. So it's it's purely as a collectible. It's not for yeah, for sure. The thing is, not, a lot it's of the like issues to, to sit and read. A lot of the issues you will collect. I'll have read at some point in my life, either when I was younger or online or some sometimes. Mm. So, you know, if you want to read a comic and you're into collecting, either buy a really crappy condition comic of it or like just read it online. Because if you buy a really nice version, and you open it, like you're probably gonna like do some kind of like spine damage that you don't even know about. So right. Like it's just funny not, like, i didn't even know and, and this is my just my own like ignorance to comic books and i i collected comic books growing up too but i i mean it was never like a serious hobby i just bought a ton I, like i still have hundreds in a box that are probably in in good shape but they're you know who knows if any of them are actually worth anything but i never even thought about whether you had the ability to read paper comics you know printed comics online i didn't even know that was a thing Oh yeah, you can, there's like, I think Marvel has like a whole subscription you can get and you can pretty much just read it all online. And it's not, it's not surprising. I just never even no. thought about it. No, I know, right? It's, it's just one of those things. It's like, oh yeah, the internet exists and this is probably on. Right. So, no. Yeah, no. So, I mean, again, if you want to read comics, that's kind of just, I just look for it online at this point or I just get really crappy copies, but. So I know you've gotten into the resale card game and obviously Top Shot is Top Shot comics as well or are you more still in the buying stage and not selling them up no for comics i don't i like i said i have some raw ones i'll probably clean up and try and sell but i haven't i haven't really thought about selling much of what i got uh mainly just because marvel and, and like even dc is like it's still just like growing i mean i know we right. just had like the big first run but like disney is just taking over like this is gonna get big over the next 10 years so i'm not really even interested in selling much 
I guess if I if I really the only reason I'd sell one of my comics right now is if I wanted to buy a bigger one, you know, yeah. like like just to fund it, right? So that's kind of like the only way I'd, I'd really even think about selling right now. What's the prize possession right now? What's the what's the top comic in the collection? Uh, you know, I don't have anything like crazy expensive. Um, no, I did, but even probably, even a favorite. I got well. What I I bought last week. I bought a Flash number 139 it's the first appearance of the reverse flash or professor zoom mm -hmm. uh which i think is going to be i think he's going to be featured in oh that was a catch Oof. i think he's gonna be oh, featured yeah. in the Off new the flash agenda. movie and he's like kind of an iconic villain so i don't know about i don't even know if money wise it's the most expensive i own yeah well, maybe uh but it's it's up there and it's uh i think it's it's just a cool issue like i think he's a cool villain and i think I think that one will go up in price. So I'm kind of excited about that one. But um, one no, I don't, I don't, I don't have any it. like super crazy. I just kind of have a lot of ones that are like worth, like they're not cheap. The oh, one that I, have. Just, didn't I don't have there. any Zach like Moss. crazy. What's that? Zach Moss tried and failed. Didn't get oh, there. Sorry. Yes. No, that's okay. I don't have anything crazy. Like I don't have like a, you know, Spider-Man one kicking around or anything like yeah. that. Maybe one day, but not. We're in safety range here. More questions for Moose on this topic, because I am very interested. And if, uh, by all means, people in the chat, if you have questions on this or anything else, sprinkle it in. Nice run, so much, Marlon Mack, out to the 16. So much for the safety, man. Right? Seriously. Let's smash that like, as Jordan points out. He's like, 87 likes on YouTube. Come on. Hit that like. Didn't even mention it earlier until the very end. So hit the like, hit the subscribe button. We greatly appreciate it. Thank you for being here with us. So I'm curious what your wife thinks of all this not that she's like surprised i mean she knows you she's been with you forever like these this is part of who you are but i know that like the fact that and like i said I, i'm not an avid collector the way that like you or lamarca or butes or julian or whoever with cards comics whatever yeah but how can right you now. say that when you have a thousand dvds behind you no for sure like we all have our things i i don't mean i'm not i don't collect stuff i mean yeah, i don't yeah. have like yeah. cards you know like i so, but where, where I, what I was building to in saying that was I have thousands of cards all just in a closet in my office that I had from when I was a kid. And my wife, like, she doesn't get it. Like, she's never, you know, she didn't oh, collect sure. cards or something like that growing up. And I don't think her brother was super, super into it. In fact, he gave most of his cards uh, away, um, you know, because it just, like, they, they didn't mean a whole lot to him. Um, nor did he have anything, excuse me, of significant excuse me significant value or anything like that obviously but like anytime you know we, we're in our our third fourth well including apartments we're in our fourth place living together and these things have for the most part followed me all the way through and it's yeah, not like i take them out to look right? at them all the time yeah. they're just always like they've they've made the trip and they've gone yeah. the closet whatever and she's just she's never gotten it like like how are how, how are these even like to her, like they would just be thrown away, let alone oh, for sure. yeah, you know, yeah, trying yeah. to figure out how to sell them or something like that. Like to, to her, they are completely and totally worth worthless. Like if I told her that, you know, the the elite of the most elite, like the most rare cards sell for millions of dollars, it would blow her mind. She would not fathom it. What does your wife think of your expanding card and comic collection? Like does she does she support it? Does she think it's dumb? Is it somewhere in between? Oh, she probably thinks it's dumb, but she does. She supports it, like just because she supports me. Like she's like, right. do you know, do it. Like she, like what? Realistically, as a wife, what would you rather your husband do? So, like collect comics or like go out every night and like you know, like do like crazy stuff. Like it's just yeah. you know, okay, like you're being a nerd in your office, great. Like you know, right. go do it. Go yeah, ahead. You don't you don't have any habits that are going to get you in trouble. Exactly, right? Like, if this is the worst thing you're going to do, like, great. So, no, she, I mean, but she's the same way. Like, if I, like, left and the, just this stuff was here, she'd probably put it in a box and put, like, free for pickup or something. Right, you know? like, yeah, she's out in the front yard. Who yeah, wants like, it? Like, at some point, like, I do, I, I have to, like, she knows that they're worth value now, so she she's not, she probably wouldn't do that. She'd probably, like, have someone look at them first, thank God. But, like, you know she's not knowledgeable about the subject or anything, which is fine. Like, I don't care either. I mean, but no, she's, she's completely supportive. It's just, yeah, it's not her thing for sure. Tom Cruise uh, says, um, 
My parents are visiting, hanging out while I have the sim on in the background. So in a way, I'm watching the sim with my wife and parents and I never could have imagined. <laughs> Which is odd. Hey, Tom Cruise, if I may ask, if this isn't too personal, you know, there are some people that have been around for a long, long time or from the beginning that we feel like we get to know in the chat. And I, now, like, it's it's been a year and a half or whatever it's been of doing Sims, like 2,000 of these. Now, I don't know about you, Moose, I'm, I, I'm at the point where I'm starting to, like, there are just, there are specific people that I want to know more about. You know, like, the, the real, like, the people that have been around forever. Like, I, you know, they, they include little details about themselves, like that, your wife, your parents, Tom Cruise, a.k.a. Les Grossman. I, like, there are little more things that I, I just, I want to know. Like, Tom Cruise, I want to know, like, how old are you? I'm curious how old Tom Cruise is because I see Tom Cruise in the chat. I immediately think of the actor Tom Cruise, but maybe this Tom Cruise is is uh, not that one and much younger. I'm I'm curious. I just I want to know more about Tom well, Cruise. What can I tell you? Let's play this game. How Touchdown, you Stephon okay. Diggs. Yeah, that's nice actually. How old do you think real Tom Cruise is? Oh, boy, uh, I bet he's definitely older than he looks. He has aged very well. Uh, real Tom Cruise, let's put at, uh, he's not 60, because, like, that would have been a big deal at some point. So he's not 60, but 57. Close, 58. Ah! I thought he was, like, 52, 54, so. Yeah, he looks I, great. Dude, like, how does this guy still going? I mean, this is. <laughs> right. It's getting, getting pretty nuts, the stuff he's doing, and just, man, yeah. 80 poker, rude cuff. How much do you weigh, Tom? <laughs> uh, oh, I like this from Chad. Tom Cruise age is impossible to figure out. That's right. That's our mission, should we choose to accept it. <laughs> Brian C says, I've been here for eight months. I guess cough doesn't care yet, LOL. That's not what I said, Brian. Where the bleep do I sign? Uh, I mean, Domino Joe, by the way, says, uh, have the Colts won a game yet in the Sim season? No, they were the worst team in Sim land by far. They are 0-10. 0-10 in our simulated 2021 season. The Colts? Um, MF Jones, which is one of my favorite names, says, Moose, have you ever read Superman versus Ali? I haven't read it. I know that, like, issue or whatever. I've seen that cover. Let's put it that way. Okay. <laughs> Lindenbaum. Wow, maybe there is something to that Scientology thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it's I think it's more of the plastic surgery thing, but you know, yeah. whatever. A lot of that Botox. Yeah. Moses, where can we check the standings? DK Playbook, DK Nation. They are uh, right there. Just Google Madden Stream info page, as I always tell you guys. Used to tell you a lot more. Google Madden Stream info page. It will take you right there to uh, it'll be the top result on google it'll take you right to the standings and everything else it's interesting though i mean the dude's 58 he's got what two more mission impossible movies coming out I think like so. at some and, point and you're gonna Daniel go points out his birthday is july 3rd yeah so he's almost 59 like is, is there gonna come a point where like hey, this guy's just too old for this because like i not, haven't not hit so that long point he's out there still doing his own stunts and everything i know like but uh, like watching the last mission impossible movie i was not there i was not like oh this guy's too old this this is lame yeah i was like this is just tom cruise doing his thing yeah i don't know man uh bert says that he says i think he said he was done doing his own stunts after this one i'll yeah. believe it when i see it man Tom Cruise is renowned for it. Like, uh, there are some guys, look at this run. Naheem Hines, go, 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 Oh, go. shit, the tackler. Touchdown. Looks like he had the force field on there. Right? He broke his six yards. Yeah. There's no broken ankles on that play, but uh, well, maybe on the defense. Um, Tom Cruise, bro yeah, you've smashed his ankle on the last Mission Impossible doing motorcycle stuff. I don't know if he hurt himself on this new one, but... I know in the last one he had a pretty bad injury. Yeah, and they had to obviously pause production for a while. Yeah. You know what? Like, they're just... Obviously, he's a little... He's off. You know, and I'm not even talking about the Scientology thing. Like, you know, believe what you want to believe. But there are... Like, he just seems to be a dude who's, who's a little bit off. A little, a little bit nutty. But he's a hell of an actor, man. <laughs> he's like... Oh, I, yeah. Like... Yeah, it, it's it's not easy for me to find a Tom Cruise movie where, like, I may not love the movie, but 
where I'm going to say like Tom Cruise was bad in this. Like Tom Cruise is a legit good actor across the board. Yeah, like across the board. I mean, he's done some really good dramatic stuff. I hope he does a little bit more of that, you know, when he gets older. I mean, I know he's kind of just do it like, you know, maxing out his action stuff now. And he's got the Top the Top Gun sequel coming up, which like when that's that when do you know when the, the release date for that is? I don't. Uh, I bet should Daniel be. tells us in about two seconds, though. Yeah, it <laughs> should be very soon because, you know, pre pandemic, I think it was like slated to come out very quickly. So. Yeah, Daniel says he smashed both ankles jumping from a rooftop into a window in the adjacent building. Jeez. Bert says 2021, so got to be pretty soon. Yeah, good point on Sean Connery. He was another guy who actually... Oh! Daniel just sent the video of Cruz busting his ankles, and oh my goodness, that looks like it hurt. Really? Oh! Sorry, I keep watching the, the replay. You guys gotta Google that, man. Him just crashing into that building. Oh, is that... Is that... That's the one they used in the movie, too, though, isn't it? Yeah. Daniel like, that looks like that the scene from the movie. Yeah, yeah, it is. Daniel's right. Wow. Okay, I actually didn't know that, so that's crazy. I'm gonna have to rewatch that. Yeah, that was, that was not a fake injury, man. No. I remember that scene. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Lindenbaum says, I still haven't seen the last two Mission Impossible movies. The first three were so-so. Uh, so they, Jordan, I was like you for a long time. You guys may remember this because we, we talked a lot about it early in the pandemic. Uh, and then I binged them all. And uh, they definitely get better as they go on. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you, you, uh, you should play catch up there, Jordan. You won't be disappointed. Two is terrible. It's the worst by far. Yeah, absolutely. I don't know what John Woo was doing there. Um, three definitely starts to get better, man. And then four, it's like game on. Yeah, and they're through six now, right? I think seven. Or seven. Are they through no, six? I think seven. six. I think you're six. right, actually. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, Lindenbaum says, I don't know if it's his best movie, but I always like Collateral. Rain Man was good, too. Uh, he's better when paired with a good actor, for sure. I love Coll Collateral. is awesome. Collateral is yep. one of my favorite performances of his because you just so rarely see him as the bad guy yeah he's he's one of those actors who like thinks it's going to damage his brand if he does bad guy roles too much so he rarely does it and you're right it's just like he's so good in it like it's he should do more of that stuff like from yeah. a dramatic standpoint he's he's a remarkably good villain and i think he probably knows that in his mind but like yeah he doesn't want to do it because then he can't do the mission impossible stuff where he's like <laughs> you know, so I'm trying to think. I mean, there are there are so many good Tom Cruise movies, but as, <coughs> excuse me, as far as my my absolute favorite ones, I guess I'll I'll cheat. I'll go to his IMDb. It, the best part is the guy's career, and he's only he only has 51 acting credits. Like he's not he's not De Niro out there taking every role available to him. Yeah, yeah. So obviously, I mean, he's great as Ethan Hunt. The Mission Impossible movies, we know. You know, Top Gun was awesome. I, I really like. Not that they're great movies, but he's really good. Really enjoy the Jack Reacher movies in, in that sense. Sure. Sort of Mission Impossible like. Uh, you know, he's great in Edge of Tomorrow, the one with Emily Blunt. Oh, yeah, that's a good movie. Yeah, yeah. He's really good in that. Yeah. Tropic Thunder, we've talked all about here on, on Sims Past, obviously. Minority Report is an incredible movie. Yeah, Minority Report's good, too. I don't love the drama. Like, I was never an Eyes Wide Shut, Magnolia, Vanilla Sky, even Last Samurai, you know, it, and, and that's not me saying Last Samurai is a bad movie. I just, I didn't really get into it. It's not that good. It's okay. It's like not, yeah. The Firm and A Few Good Men, absolutely. Both really strong. Cocktail going way back. Top Gun, Rain Man, as we know. Color of Money's a good one. Good pool movie. Oh, yeah. I, that's such an underrated movie. Yeah. He's Risky really good business, in it too. Obviously. Yeah. Color Money is one that people just forget about. Yeah. Well, it's a shame too. It's Paul Newman, right? Oh yeah, exactly. Yeah. Paul Newman and Tom Cruise, like it's, it's so good. Love that movie. Great gambling movie too. It's hard to find good movies based around that subject, but when you nail one, it's awesome. 
Like yeah, whether that's, it's that I, movie, whether it's Rounders, whether it's yeah, like yeah, yeah. Molly's Game, which is not too old at this point, was a really, and I know it's based on true story, but that was really good. Watch that on uh, BK's recommendation one day. Um, 21, right? Uh, was that's Have you that seen was Mississippi called. Grind, Carl? No, I haven't. That's a good, you should, you should you'd like it. It's with Ryan Reynolds and Ben Mendelsohn. Hmm. Where it's really is, good. Yeah, you'd like if, it. See if that's streaming. I do like Ryan Reynolds. It's he's good in it too. Like he's really good in it. It's not like some B movie where it's like, oh, it's just got Ryan Reynolds. Like Ben Mendelsohn is one of my favorite actors too. Yeah, you, that's that's one you, you gotta even if you gotta pay like a couple bucks for it, it's honestly yeah. you like it. Uh let's see. Yeah, it's on uh Oh uh, yeah, it's like a buck to rent, something like that. Or no, it's on it's on Showtime. If you have a Showtime subscription, yeah, it is available to you there. Oh yeah, that's good. Put it in your queue, whatever. Yeah. Put it in your cough diary. <laughs> Dear diary. Dear diary. I'll have to uh, I'll check out the trailer for it after our sim. Seven all game. Have we even given our lineups? No. All right. What do you got? We got into by start, starting to talk about Loki and comics. So, oh, my lineup's terrible. Um, I got Hilton in the captain, Josh Allen, Bass, Burton, Campbell, and Pascal. I got zeros in like four of my five, six spots. So, so I'm about to get a pass field goal. So Good. I, don't know. I have Josh Allen, a captain. I paid up. Stefan Diggs, I have him as well, so that stack has worked out for me, but almost nothing else has. I have Burton, Goose Egg, Pascal, Goose Egg, Smith, Goose Egg, Mac, 3.8. Which is why I'm in the middle of this thing, whereas uh, Rain Over, not to be confused with Rain Man, Rain Over is in front in our contest. Someone asked earlier who you like in the U.S. Open, by the way. Obviously, it's, oh. uh, it's round four, day four, concluding. Just bet Louis U stays and collect the money. He's winning. This is it. I'm telling you. Today's that Louis day. He's huh? on the loose, folks. In all seriousness, I, I think it's you know, tough scoring. He's in the. He's got the lead. Shouts uh, to the leader of the Moose Classic U.S. Open Bonanza right now. Meager. Meager's in front by about twenty points. Probably time for you to create next week's contest, right? Would that be post our salaries up yet, or is that not uh, no late? salaries? Salaries on Monday. Okay, so, so tomorrow the, you're gonna have to create. Yeah, yeah. That. So it is gonna be tight. Look, we're, we're I'm going 200 again, so it's either gonna fill or not. I don't care. You know, like yeah. I said, I'll create a Monday as soon as the salaries get out. It'll be out there. The Moose Open V2 version two. Yeah, uh, we got the Travelers Championship. Should be a good field. There should be a ton of good golf contest on DraftKings next week too it's a good field and it's after the US Open so but we'll have it out there you know I'm doing a, I think I'm doing a sim Monday night pretty sure promote it a little bit let's see what happens you know roll the well, dice Tom and I talked about it yesterday and uh, no one's tweeting out any links <laughs> Tom, Tom was very he was hurt he was hurt that I that I oh yeah you guys had the chance to talk it. about this yesterday didn't you he was very hurt <laughs> like I'm helping a buddy out and then I get this guy giving me flack. I could tell. I could tell. I went too far. He just couldn't <laughs> went too far. And I was just kidding. But I didn't Tom's a sensitive guy. I didn't mean to like, you know, I didn't want to criticize him. It, and like I obviously don't care. I'm very I'm glad it filled and everyone's having fun, especially beating me because my lineup's terrible. But I yeah, that's fine. I I've lost the Tom support, unfortunately, but that's my own doing. Oh yeah, no, he's not even going to talk about no, it. No, no, he won't. He probably won't even mention it. Yeah. Contest doesn't even exist. Tom will probably enter it and then unenter it just to make. Me... <laughs> He'll wait till it gets to one fifty nine. Yeah. You know, to, like be number two hundred. Wait for it to get real close to lock. Yeah. And then withdraw his entry so it doesn't fill. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I know. I think I'm on with him next too. I'll have to talk to him about it. Yeah. Yeah, you guys are going to have to dive into it. You are together. That is confirmed. Oh, Derek is uh, second. Come on. Oh, safety range. Give it to us. No, come on. Another good run out of the... To the five. Folks, remember, lineups lock for NBA in an hour. We've uh, we've already filled the 
the cough classic, but uh, just a reminder, don't get those goose eggs. Don't get those zeros. Get a lineup in. So despite the fact that uh, Father's Day is not a big deal in your house, are you doing anything special later? Are you guys going to, you know, do up dinner a little bit more than usual, maybe? Go, go! Oh, ah, so close. Wow. So close. So no, we actually had a dinner last week um, because it was like, yeah, we had a dinner last week to do it just because it was like uh, we had a bit of a family thing because it was my wife's birthday like very recently too. So mm -hmm. we kind of just did it all together. We're not doing anything crazy today. No, nothing. Just this morning we hung out. That's, that was basically it. There you go. Come on. Come on. Oh, man. Teasing us here. Seriously. Maybe we'll get a, a block punt. Maybe we'll get a block punt. That would be nice. It's on the table. This is when they come, when they're like, you know, when they're pinned three yeah. yard line two yard line totally agree mo says we're gonna need tom and glash to help fill it up moose <laughs> i think I, I think i've lost tom and glash you get, you i've, came I've out definitely hot. lost the tom and glash support <laughs> oh got it away it looked tight there yeah but yeah i i'm on my own next week i fully realize it <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't i don't have any support right now i'm so uh, what what's your play are you making a 200 person contest every week and if it fills it fills if it doesn't it doesn't or are you only doing it until it doesn't fill and then you're done if it doesn't fill one week i'll have to reevaluate but i'm not gonna like go down in numbers so, so like when it doesn't fill next week after you've had no one support you have to debate whether or not to create it again the following week Wow! Hines, 81-yard touchdown wow, reception, dude. Naheem Hines. What the heck? How did he get out of the backfield? We got to line up as a wide receiver in that play. We got to have to check this. I don't understand how I didn't roster Naheem Hines. I, I don't know either. Naheem I didn't Hines. even like consider him for some reason. That's I insane. always roster Naheem Hines, and I didn't today to have a more balanced lineup. Like an idiot. Bonus. got like 160 all-purpose yards was that the bonus for receiving yeah oh for sure wow we're, we're on like record setting pace here this is uh there you go so in the chat what is heinz doing all the way down there <laughs> totally oh no uh it, not the not the bonus but even better, the double bonus is in play. Yeah, no, that's for sure. 81 receiving off that grab and 79 rushing for Naheem Hines. The double bonus is in play, folks. Yeah, we could get a double bonus. We could maybe get like something crazy, like a four touchdown game. This is, uh, this is all kinds of possibilities now. Hey, double maybe Indy will get a win. Too. They're 0 and 10. Maybe we can get a little sim history today. Nobody beats Frank Reich 11 times in a row. <laughs> Jordan Oates, being a good producer that he is, coming into this game, the most the Colts had put up in a game during our simulated season was 17 points. Already at 14 here, not even quite the break. Wow. They're so motivated. Daniel says it would have been a good pizza deal. So this, like, honestly, and, and I can turn to Daniel, to you, to probably any of you, and certainly members of the DK Sim fan. This goes to show how, how out of touch I guess I am when Glash and I at least aren't working together. I don't even know what the pizza deal is. I just always hear about the pizza deal, and now it's a pizza deal. And what like The pizza deal's gone, now it's back. What is the pizza deal? Oh, you don't even know? I don't even know. So, basically, Glash does... Um, he says, okay, I'm going to give away a pizza, but you got to give me like a good, you got to throw out a good player prop. So, okay. you know, someone says, okay, uh, Cody Bass is going to get, or what it was, Tyler Bass, Cody Bass. I can't remember. Tyler Bass. Tyler Bass is going to get four field goals and over 12 DK fantasy points. And then we watch the game. And if he does, Glash buys you pizza. If he doesn't, you don't get a pizza. Or someone throws out Naheem Hines going to get the double bonus. Okay. We watch. If he gets... 
double bonus slash by the pizza but they're wild player props and it's not like it can't be like oh philip rivers is gonna get 200 yards in a passing touchdown it's got to be yeah. like something rare yeah because then glass should just be buying pizzas at like five a day so it's got to be like something a little bit unique and crazy and glass picks the best one at the start of the sim and then we watch and we so sweat how, it. how often has this come through to where he's had to Oh, he's, oh, he's purchased lots. Yeah, ask him. I, I thought you did. You you had to. Are you kidding me? You didn't even know about it? Like it, that it existed before? No, I knew it existed, but I, I didn't know what it was. Oh, okay. Okay, yeah. It's just it's just player props, basically. The Glash is rewarding with pizzas. He's rewarding creative player props, and then if they hit, he gives them he buys pizzas. Jordan says apparently someone ruined it, uh, creating the same username as the winner, so he couldn't figure out who actually won. Yeah, some so loser tried it. to scam Glash out of a pizza, of all things. Like, oh man! Give me a break. I mean, I mean, what, buy your what own. What are you pizza. doing with your life? Like <laughs> scamming a free pizza. So why doesn't he just have somebody like direct message him on Twitter or Instagram his prediction? Well, that that's what prediction. we're doing. That that's the new rule. That before you give out. Before Glass chooses you, you have to give him your Twitter handle. Has to be Twitter. Yeah. That way he knows this is the person I'm dealing with. If someone else tries to do it, he'll be like, no, this obviously isn't the same Twitter handle. So the new rule is on top of giving Glass your player prop, you have to have a Twitter handle that you also give him. So, so he has streamlined the process a little bit. I yes, like with it. my help. It, it took our two humongous brains to do this. You know, we couldn't figure it out at first, but second go around here, it's going to be much smoother. So. Naheem Hines, three for 84 on the ground with a touchdown so far. 14-10, India's in front here as we are halfway through this thing. Take a look-see at the pass catchers as well. Give you a look at the standings, all that good stuff. Pardon me. <laughs> Up over 100 likes, good to see. So, uh, Dick, hey, five for 68, touchdown. Smash line. I'm not. Times. I'm not gonna buy anyone a pizza today. But I'll tell you what. If Louis U stays and wins the U.S. Open, I'll do a couple pizza deals next week. I'll hop in. There you go. Amino transfer ace, I guess. Uh, uh, transfer us. I, I don't know. Uh, Amino's in front by about two and a half points. In our Mad Matinee, the uh, what? You guys are here on Father's Day? Free roll. And we are. And so are all of you. It's good to hang out. Hines up to about 45 in the captain spot right now at the break. Crazy. Crazy for staff for Nehemiah Hines. Yeah. Not even at the bonus yet. Mm -mm. Could have just a monster game. It's good to see. Let's see. Uh, NBA, you've got... 50 minutes to lock, folks. We'll do a little last-minute showdown as well as we get closer. Uh, Cough Classic MLB, who's our leader currently. Domino Joe! Saw you in the chat earlier. Domino Joe is up about 20 points on the people. Brubaker. Hell of a start for Pittsburgh today. He's got about 30 points right now. And only 7.5% owned. Good on you. Not bad at all. Mm. All right. Stats are updated, folks. We're going to go to quarter number three. Thank you to Bert. Bobo. Alabama Bert. Man of many names. He says, CJ says, that. if he ever finishes first in the, in the GPP with $3 or more buy-in, using my picks, I'll buy it. He's going to buy me a pizza. So <laughs> who knows? <laughs> oh, so Daniel's found the, uh, the updated info. Mission Impossible 7 release date, May 27th, 2022. 2022, yeah. So we got uh, almost a year wait. I think, well, I think they're still shooting. Like, I don't think it's quite done shooting. So. Yeah, Daniel said there was a COVID issue and they had to pause production freak of nature why is trey young questionable tonight Good play. don't worry about it is that game seven yeah crazy i can't believe philly's taking seven to get rid of atlanta what'd you think about the well i know what you thought about the nets <laughs> getting eliminated you'd love it <laughs> i was saying to rossi earlier 
it's the best Father's Day gift that could have been given. Oh, totally. Well, I just love how united all of you guys, Rossi, all of you guys. I was sending Glash like all these emojis last night. You guys probably had like a Zoom chat where you just popped bottles. <laughs> right. like, Celtics know? fans band together to celebrate the demise of Kyrie Irving in the second yeah. round again. I, I'm, I'm honestly, I'm kind of right there with you. So like, I'm not, he's so annoying. Like, he's it's just so unlikable. It's just, he's the worst. He really is. Like, it's, it's nothing even. Uh, it's yeah. So, so yes, I was, uh, I was definitely excited we're happy. about the, uh, about the Bucks beating the Nets. Not so I, much about the Bucks winning as the Nets losing, but yeah. they came together obviously to, uh, uh, to form a united front, like you said. Bert, uh, not even a Boston fan, I dislike Kyrie. Yeah. It's, it's just he's, and look, like I, I realize we weren't all together the DK Sim fam and all when uh, Kyrie Irving was in Boston. And I wouldn't blame a lot of you if you were thinking, you know, oh, cough, just a, like a scorned ex, you know, ex, you know, feeling this way. I felt this, I mean, anyone that knows me, who knows me beyond the Sims and whatnot, I felt this way about Kyrie Irving when he was a Celtic. So it, so now that he's not, I can really relish in this. I, I semi recall you saying something like not liking him when he was on the Celtics because nope. we were, you know, obviously still working together at that yeah. time. No, I was against the trade when they acquired him. Yeah, maybe the that's what it, maybe that's what I remember you saying. You just you didn't like it or something. Anyways, yeah, I just I didn't like him. I don't like him. No. So good. I mean, the only player I like I like Kevin Durant. That's the only player I kind of feel bad for. But like, I he's got like I don't really feel that bad for Kevin Durant. No, he's got multi, it's not like this this isn't OKC Kevin Durant anymore who's no, exactly. starving for yeah. a ring. He's got a couple championships, he's been a finals MVP. If if I feel bad for anything, and, and this would be for Nets fans, because like you guys didn't do anything wrong. No, um, true. If I were to feel bad for Nets fans, it is for this reason. If you watch that game, and Rossi and I talked about it earlier, but I don't know if, if you watch Moose or you watch the highlights or whatever, but yeah, yeah, yeah. like that, that, you know, two pointer for Durant to tie the game to oh, overtime that, yes. you know, obviously would have been a three except for like the length of, of a big toe, basically. Yes, yes. If, yes. I mean, that being a two, and it, it was the right call, but, you yeah. know, his foot was just on the line, but that being a two versus being a three, and obviously them going on to lose. I mean, that could have been the difference in winning a championship. Oh, because, completely. Because That's... the NBA is so wide open. Like, everyone presumed the Nets were going to win. So if I'm a Nets fan, that's what irks me. It's not like we went down to, you know, to the Bucks in round two. It's not the uh, – it's it's the – if Kevin Durant's foot was an inch, you know, farther back, yeah, we might we might, we might have had a, a parade this, this summer. Yeah, that's, absolutely. That's dude. what's frustrating. Yeah, that's true. That it, it was a tough loss in that respect. That's that's a good point. Yeah, because like you said, it's not like Nets fans were like did anything wrong. They're just you know the Nets. They you know they got the new stadium and stuff. They never really they had that one run with Vince Carter, I guess. But you know, it's not like Brooklyn is you know like a, a team everyone hates or something. It's just they just got an annoying player on them. No, I mean, I think everyone has grown to hate the Nets, who's not a Nets sure. fan. Yeah, you know, totally. Beyond, like, it's it's all of them. It's it's They're all unlikable in their own right, just for different reasons. I mean, they truly were that, like, NWO villainous team that never just embraced being the villain, which is, you know, problematic in, in, in its own way, as we got yep. a field goal good, 17-10. So Indy matching its sim high for points within our simulated season anyway. If... Uh, you know, like if they had just embraced being the bad guys, I think people would have been a little bit more receptive. I mean, nobody, nobody was rooting for that team to win a championship if you weren't either a Nets fan or you had money on it. Short of that, no one wanted to see the Nets win. I mean, they are just a detestable <laughs> group of people overall. But all of that being said, Nets fans other than being overly cocky because why wouldn't you be if you acquire three of the best players in the world mm -hmm. 
they're not overly obnoxious. They're not, you know, Patriots fans. They're not Yankees fans. They're not, you know, like they're they're not Lakers fans. They're not like just awful, yeah. you know, like they they were tolerable. They were just, you know, uh, unfortunately, I have a couple friends that are Nets fans who like as soon as Kyrie Irving went there, you know, I I, I just I'm watching them as because we did it as Celtics fans defending every little thing he did or said you know like he go he goes a wall goes to like birthday parties he's you know avoiding all covid everything protocols and they're like oh he's it's fine it's fine it's it this is like rodman going to vegas during the finals it's fine it'll be okay i'm like you poor misguided people like this this is what it's like that you know this this you're just defending you're defending and deflecting and you'll see as soon as Kyrie goes somewhere else because he will then you're gonna hate him too. You just need to wait it out. <laughs> well, I'm just reading, just reading the Twitch chat. What's that say? What do you got? Oh no, just uh, CJ saying he had some success with NHL, and then I can't remember who. I don't know who it was, but uh, oh, Ke- Care Bear says his golf picks got me wrecked this week. <laughs> Look, Jimmy Walker made the cut. Even though he's plus nine today, he made the cut. So he's 6,500. What can you get? It didn't work out well this weekend. I'm not going to lie. Keith, I would like you to, I'm not going to read your comment out loud, but I would like you to expand upon it in the chat. (laughs) I I want to know more about my lack of understanding. We got a fourth and six coming midway through the third. It really is interesting too. We get AD Poker says, you know, sort of the definition of buying a championship, which absolutely. And look, if you're the Nets, why wouldn't you? I mean, if you if you can, you have the means, do it. Yep. But very rarely across sports, very rarely does buying a championship work. We've seen it. Don't get me wrong, but more often than not, those teams fall short. Yeah. It, there's definitely more bust things, you know, bust occurrences. And, and when when you try and spend all the way up to first, it just – the Yankees have tried it numerous times and failed. Yeah. Uh, that's, you know, they're they're just classic for it. But, you know, all the costs too. So, yeah, that's true. Yep, yep. Now, the lot, I mean, we've seen it in hockey as well. Um, lots of times in hockey, man. I mean, it's it, – yeah, we've seen lots of big name hockey teams fail. Um, I'm trying to even think of just like the yeah, Burt Dodgers. Like until they finally won during the pandemic season, I mean they were they spent a decade trying to buy champions. Well, and that's the thing: if you do it for 20 years straight, eventually you'll probably win one. But like you're spending so much money that like you know it, you're still missing far more than you're you're hitting. Right. You know? The NFL is interesting because like, we saw the Eagles, I guess, bust with that super team. But was it really like trying to buy a championship? I don't even know. Like it just, I guess you could say it. But it's harder to buy a championship in the NFL because everybody kind of spends, like most teams spend to the cap. You know, I think I think all the NFL teams are pretty well off. So you don't really have too many teams that are like, oh, yeah, we, we're not going to spend the money to get free agents like everybody kind of just spends so it's like the one league where you know buying a championship maybe isn't like quite doable jordan says i feel like hockey is the toughest sport out of all of them to buy your your way to a title uh it, it used to be actually pretty it used to be easy because there used to be so much there used to be like about five or ten teams that legitimately like they wouldn't spend anywhere near to the cap. right. I was gonna say they would spend to the cap floor, and that was it. Yes, and and like you know where if the if the cap was eighty million, they'd spend like their max would be like fifty million. You know, like Bruins for you know, years. Like Ten teams like that. Like the NHL used to be in pretty dire straits. Have like a lot of teams in dire straits. The Oilers were one of them too for a while. So. Yeah, Bruins for a long time. You know, uh, and not recently. Like the last, I don't know. 
15, 20 years probably they've spent. But prior to that, like there was a long stretch under the Jacobs ownership where they didn't spend. They were renowned yep. for, yep. for pinching pennies. No. The 90s especially, you know, teams like uh, I think maybe like Detroit, Colorado, like those teams used to spend a lot. And, and sometimes it worked, sometimes it wouldn't. But there's definitely some some instances of, of teams spending in the NHL and it just completely busting. The Kings did it a lot. The Rangers actually did it a ton. The Rangers were as bad as the Yankees, actually, if we're being honest. Maybe even worse. They'd spend to the max every year. You know, they got they got the, the cups with Messier and whatever, but so New York teams. It's all it's always the New York teams and the LA teams. Uh Keith uh, saying the understanding is we live and breathe all teams just like you live and breathe your Boston team. So to say things like uh, like that, it's like me talking about how we knocked your Boston team out. Also says that's the first time uh, you've ever recognized me leaving a comment. Uh, well, Keith, I didn't realize I had avoided you. It was not deliberate. <laughs> and I encourage you to chat in the chat anytime. I think we do a pretty good job of, of recognizing people and reading comments. I mean, yes, I certainly, like, I, I happen to live among a very passionate sports fan base that's not true in every market you know not like not every market is boston or new york or philadelphia or you know wherever you know you, you've got those you know you got some sacramentos out there at, or or tampa or miami or what you know it's it's not it's not the same it's definitely not the same i mean brooklyn it's you know it's yes it's new york but nets fans aren't knicks fans <laughs> like if, if, if the Knicks were going on the, if they had gotten Irving and Durant and they were going on the run that the Nets went on, it would be such a bigger deal or would have been because Madison square garden and the history of that team and the organization, the Mecca and all that, it's just way different. And the Knicks, to Daniel's point, they tried just didn't pan out. Keats says uh, Islanders did it back in the eighties with a super team. I mean, yeah, they won four straight cups. And made it even more than that, didn't they? The Islanders? Yeah, I think during that during that like ten year run. <laughs> yeah, did they win four or five? I can't even remember. They won four in a row. I don't remember if they they won five total. They won four in a row for sure. I don't know. If, I can't remember if they won more around that. Yeah, uh, let's see. I know the they they beat the Oilers the first year, then the Oilers slammed them the second year, and that was like the end of their their run. Right. Um, let's see here. When did they win the cup? 17 10 through three, by the way. Stats are being updated. Uh, Hines, nine away from the receiving bonus. He's, uh, excuse me, th three for 91. Okay, they won. Yeah, they won four in a row from 79 to 83. Right. Uh, Linden bombs his cough. Do you think the Clippers are going to roll at the same starting five or go back to Zubak today? Um, I mean, he's not a really compelling play to me regardless he just really hasn't been since like mid-season but whether they start him probably not but i'm not sure what the starters obviously look like right now we got in that series um i like the suns better it, and a lot of it's just going to depend on health, right? Like the assumption is Kawhi Leonard's not going to be back. Yeah. And yeah. you've got uh, Chris Paul out for the start of the series in COVID protocols, but I, the expectation is he'll be back. So yes. For for me, it's Phoenix. I just don't think that. I mean, does anyone out there believe that Paul George can do what he did the last couple of days for an entire series and carry this thing by himself? I don't. <laughs> if if he could, if he if they get like a split and then Kawhi comes back, but is Kawhi does Kawhi even have a chance to come back? Like, is it it's, that bad? It's very hush hush. Yeah, like, yeah. It, it's very day to day, out indefinitely kind of thing. But no one sounds. sounds I know he travel for the start of the series. He's he's hanging back home. Yeah. I would love to see Phoenix win. I've been saying that for a couple rounds now. I'd love to see Phoenix win a championship. I'd love to see Chris Paul yeah. get his too. 
has DeMarcus Cousins been doing this playoffs? Not much. Not much. Like, how much run does he get? Mm. I can look up his minutes. Not a lot. That guy used to be so good. I'm just, I'm just theorizing how the, I'm just theorizing how the Clippers could win this series because it looks kind of bleak to me, like without Kawhi right now as well. So. It should. Yeah. So Cousins played. He didn't play in round one. Period. Yeah, he's he not played, even. Good. He's played 15 total minutes in round two. Okay, so he's like not even a factor. Nope. Yeah, I mean, look. Which is interesting Paul because being... I'm just looking at it. Like, he played, you know, after his time with Houston when he was acquired by the Clips, he played decent minutes in uh, in April and May. He really did. I mean, not, you know, only once over 20, but he was a, a steady, excuse me, steady yeah. in, the, in the teens. And, yeah, postseason is just he's not been part of the rotation. Could be interesting, you know, if, if Paul and, and Kawhi stay out for a couple games, it will be an interesting first couple games. But yeah, I'd, I'd probably side with the Suns as well. I don't know. Like you said, I mean, you need like, I just don't know who else is going to step up and you need Paul George to just basically continue being like mini LeBron James or something, which I don't know. I like our guy, Jordan, producer, sending out the warning shots. Almost a touch. No, he's getting in. Really? Touchdown. A little stretch oh, anyway. Yeah, Devin Singletary got in. Thought about playing him, thought better of it. Turns out I thought worse of it. We're about to be tied. Uh, Jordan says 112 likes, one, uh, but we got 275 watching on YouTube. Hmm. Yeah, that's right. Smash that like, folks. If not for us, do it for Jordan. Do it for Father's Day. Sean Preston, my agent in here, says... Uh, Kyle, if you need to just send some clips to NBC, Fox, ABC, they'll hire you. <laughs> yeah, you guys think that Glash's WNBA gig is big. Wait till you see me doing Monday Night Football. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> <laughs> so, Booger, who do you get in your lineup tonight? Well, you know, Kyle, it's Tampa Bay versus the Packers. So I did roster Aaron Rodgers. He plays quarterback for the Green Bay Packers. <laughs> wow. Did you watch uh you watch Loki last night, Booker? <laughs> you up to date? What do you think of it? Yeah, whatever. We'll let the action play out in front of us. People can see it. <laughs> Let's really dissect the future of the MCU. How many likes we got, people watching? <laughs> See what's going on in the chat. A little M MNF chat. <laughs> oh, boy. You guys in the truck believe this? Great energy in the sim. Uh, a game. Game. It's great energy in the actual game. Good energy in this Monday night football. Did they replace Booger on Monday Night Football? I, I, I think I think they did. Yeah. I don't I actually know. do. Do we know who the crew is next year? I. That's the thing. Like I don't even remember it was on last year. It was just like maybe. I don't even. Know. Yeah, I definitely was watching Monday Night Football last year. I just don't even remember who was calling the games. I probably just stopped caring. I guess. <laughs> Daniel's the same crew as last year. <laughs> so which who was? Because I honestly don't remember. Yeah. Booger's on Sunday night. Okay. Okay. Oh, Lewis Riddick. Yeah, okay. That's kind of coming back to me. That's right. Steve Levy's doing it. You know what? The fact I, I don't remember their names probably is like... It's a actually good a good thing. thing. Yeah. That, that's yeah. kind of how it should be for announcing, if we're being honest. Right. Just get out of the way, you know? like. Although for, you know, generally speaking, I agree with that. But Monday Night Football is such an institution. Yeah. 
you know, that for years, like Howard Cosell, obviously, and not, like for years, it, it was as much about who's calling the games as it was the games themselves. Al yeah. Michaels and, and so on. Daryl says, Cough, if you like Thor and Greek mythology, check out Ragnarok on Netflix. I've heard that, and I haven't watched it yet, but I have heard that. <laughs> I've heard it's very good. Is it? Okay, yeah, I saw that show. I haven't checked it out or anything. Oh, there's still four minutes left. I guess we don't have to sit up the OT signals yet, but that's going to Yes, Daniel, the Norwegian one. That is correct. Bert's given a 7 of 10 for Ragnarok. 7 of 10. That's not terrible. Uh, must be, says, do you think an individual, excuse me, individual's uh, person's fandom is measured by the sports market they're in? I think in a, in a lot of ways, yeah. I mean, social media has changed that in a lot of ways, but even for athletes, think about, think about how much bigger a deal Mike Trout would be if he played for the Yankees or the Red Sox, if he, if he were on the East Coast versus his talent year after year getting lost on the Angels and them not going to the playoffs. And part of it, too, is that he's boring, not as a hitter, not as a baseball player, but as a person. Like, he's not marketed at all. There's nothing that we know of that's unique or special about Mike Trout, other than this guy might be the greatest baseball player of all time. And right. he's an incredible hitter, and it's ridiculous. But I bring that up, that latter point, because Shohei Otani transcends all of that stuff. It doesn't matter that his abilities are being wasted on the Angels and that, you know, he's on the same team and same coast and all that stuff. He's just so electric. And the international acclaim as well, but even just within the United States, he's so electric that anything and everything he does on the mound or at the plate is going to be something that goes viral on social media. So, like, Mike Trout doesn't have that. Yeah, totally. No, I mean, you're right. You know, Trout is <laughs> Trout is like one of the most nondescript superstars like in the world in a lot of ways. Yeah, absolutely. People just, the only reason people like Mike Trout is that he's good. That's it. He's just really good. And, you know, that's if you're that good, then, you know, that that's enough, but you know, he's like even like comparing him to like LeBron. I mean, LeBron is more outspoken he's got his own stuff he's got kind of his own brand and stuff like trout really is just a dude who plays baseball yeah like he's done so, a subway commercial that's right it. right so definitely uh yeah he's you know trout is just like one of those purists who uh people like just because he's um he's good at the game in a lot of way or he's, he's more of like he appeals more to purists i guess is maybe a, a better way you know yeah yeah but I mean, seriously, like a night after, and I tweeted this out the other night and I, it turned into, this wasn't my intention, but it turned into one of those wrong answers only things, you know, where people just were responding with ridiculousness. But I was serious when I tweeted it. Shohei Otani is the most exciting and enjoyable baseball player to watch since blank, is what I tweeted. And personally, and some people did respond this way as well. I mean, can you think of someone since Ken Griffey Jr. that has like turned the game upside down in the way that Otani has? Uh, not really. I mean, yeah, like who would you, I don't even know, like hmm. It's just so unique, obviously, and uh, I'm trying to think, I'm, I'm pondering my head. I mean, I'm not like a baseball historian at my best, but Obviously, I follow the sport, too, so I don't even know. I mean... And Otani's barely marketed, too, but he doesn't have to be because, obviously, what he is doing as both a hitter and a pitcher and being so electric at both oh. takes care of itself. He doesn't have to do every commercial. He doesn't have no. to... You know, just the... Just the dual aspect of what he's right. doing. It's just... it's It sets him apart, right? So, yeah, I right. don't know. I mean... I would agree. You know, you go back to, like, a guy like... Uh, Ken Griffey or someone like that who's like maybe just so good on defense but also like such a good offensive player kind of thing like 
Well, and, you know, in, in this era, this era of baseball, which is not, I know, as, as entertaining to people as the steroid era, but you don't have any of that, oh, he's cheating. Oh, he's doing something wrong. Yeah, like, it's no all just every, everything that Otani does is celebrated in the same way that everything Griffey did. Like, he's he's just, and he played in that era. But for some reason, and, and I mean, as, as my favorite all-time player, I enjoy this. But for some, like, he was just never accused, suspected, linked to anything. You know, so, like, it's not the same as, like, Barry Bonds, obviously. Like, everyone knew. Yeah. I mean, you like, look at his head grow. Everyone yeah. knew. Look at you his know, like, rookie card compared to his, you know, yeah. card 10, 10, 12 years later. It wasn't hard right. to figure out. Yeah. Like, you know, Mark McGuire, who is, is not even, even if, excuse me, even if he did, uh, didn't cheat, I still don't think Mark McGuire's home runs alone would have been enough to get him in the Hall of Fame. Maybe I'm wrong about that, but he just did. He didn't do anything else. Like he, yeah. he struck yeah. out or he homered. Um, yep. But same thing, like that unbelievable home run watch that year with McGuire and Sosa, which really is the thing that brought baseball back from the strike. It was, yeah. You know, like that, that, that coupled with you know, Cal Ripken breaking Gehrig's record, like that, but, but especially the home run chase. Yeah. That was brought, what brought people back. Yeah. But still those guys weren't looked at the same way a guy like Otani is like for them, it was about the story. It was about the narrative. It was like every at bat became must watch because they're chasing Maris's record. But Otani, like every, everything that Shohei Otani does is must watch everything and he's not chasing anything other than just international stardom which he's already got yeah he's just a, a unique player right like the people right. you know it's like it's like going to watch like steph curry at a, at a basketball game like nobody like you know just is that kind of size and like takes you know threes from like half court and just drains them with regularity kind of thing like he's just a unique player kind of like griffey was had, had more of just like natural power we all like the, the 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 athletes, you know, as the Colts here get into territory, Google territory. Trying to win this thing, first one. Yeah, that 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 home run chase was crazy, though. Like, just as someone who was like growing up in that time, I mean, it was it was everywhere, man. Like, every baseball yeah. game was like a, a big deal that they played. Like, it was. Yeah. It got to the point where, yeah, it was. Uh, that was it. Like that. That's what people were watching. It's crazy. Jordan says, will Josh Allen start doing commercials soon, like Rodgers and Mahomes, Brady, obviously, guys like that? Is is Josh Allen – I don't know anything about Josh Allen's personality. I'm not even sure I've ever seen him do an interview. Obviously, he does. I'm just not sure I've ever seen it. He's pretty well-spoken, to be honest, and I, I definitely think he could be a guy who eventually, you know, strikes out a little bit on his own. He's got his own, you know, ki- kind of unique – uniqueness to him you know a little bit a little bit like those guys i think he's a little bit under the radar in terms of like of that he's he's pretty intelligent if you if you hear him speak i know i i listened to him a bit last year just talking about some of the changes he made and i was actually surprised i didn't really think of josh allen that way as i just figured you know he's he's a plus athlete he's got a big arm and you know but you know he was talking about his mechanics and stuff like this dude's actually pretty smart and it kind of makes you think, well, okay, this, this kind of makes sense that he was able to take a leap because I think that for someone, it wasn't just natural talent that got Josh Allen better last year. It was like a mix of him being introspective and the natural talent. So, yeah, yeah. I think I could definitely see Josh Allen being a guy like that eventually. I'm very bullish on Josh Allen for the future. I, I, well, I know that. I think you, you are an investor in Josh Allen. Yeah. Yeah, I got a couple, couple nice Josh Allen rookies. One, I'm still waiting to get back from. It's lost in grading land. How does that work? It Like, do you, uh, first and 10 going forward from the 18, naturally. 30 seconds left. Do you have to insure that stuff when you send it away? Like, do you, are you ever just worried about it not coming back, period? <laughs> yes, but, you know, you get insurance on shipping, obviously. But then once it's at the grading company, I mean, it's kind of in their hands. I mean, if anything happens to it, they're you know, they're kind of reliable. Right. So, yeah, but, but yeah, I mean, uh, one day I'll probably get something lost in shipping. It hasn't happened to me yet. Like, thank God, but you know, eventually like anything in life, you know, you do it enough. 
the, right. you'll hit the the wrong dial, so to speak, or the you know land on the wrong number. So, yeah, it sucks. You just gotta try and cover yourself the best. And obviously, if the item is really expensive, like uh, there's no doubt about it. Like I'm spending up for insurance, whatever. But, um, you know, if it's like a, a hundred dollar item or even a couple hundred bucks and it gets lost, it's probably just one of those things. Well, breakage kind of thing, you know. But. Yeah. Third and three from the eleven. His insurance isn't free either, so. No, also true. First down, Marlon Mack. This game sure dragged out the fourth quarter, man. This fourth quarter feels like it's been about half an hour. All for just this piddly little field goal we're going to get. Letting the clock tick down, one timeout left. Is he at 99 yards? Did that hit the bonus for Hines? That's true. We haven't even been tracking this. Can we get one shot at the end zone? Nope, we're just going to take it. Mac yeah. bolted the by bonus. Bert. Yeah, so, yeah. Good. so Hines has 99 rushing and 96. Oh, rushing. my God. That You know, for a guy who got 53.25 points in the captain, that actually feels like kind of a gut punch, doesn't it? Yeah, it's true. I he mean, hit the one bonus. Wow. All right. Well, he's still getting player of the game. We know that. Um Who's our babysitter? Oh, what? wait. Did T.Y. Hilton get zero? No, I got one catch. Still, T.Y. Hilton, not my kid award. 36.9% owned. He's 14.1 in the captain. Four points. Well, get out of here with that <laughs> junk. Yep. More like Paris Hilton. <laughs> so here's what you got over the course of your uh, dream stream day. I am done for the duration of Father's Day. I'll be doing whatever I'm doing, but Moose will be back. Tom Carroll. They can hash out their U.S. Open and golf lineup differences. They'll be on for Lions Browns in about 45 minutes here on the Dream Stream, YouTube, Twitch, wherever you're finding us. And then Moose will call it a day, uh, at least until tomorrow. And uh, Tom will come in with Matt LaMarca, kick off the late classic at 6, the happy hour sim after the early bird special, Niners and Jaguars, 8 o'clock primetime. Brendan Gl- Glasheen with LaMarca, Texans Titans. And then uh, Glash and Tommy comes back for his third, Packers and Bikes. I'll be with you tomorrow. Uh, some possible schedule changes, but I'll be with you at some point. Definitely the eight, maybe earlier, maybe not. We'll see. i got to figure some stuff out on my end. Uh, but we will have uh, Moose coming back for Madden After Dark. That is tomorrow night as well. So uh, get ready, get excited, and uh, all that good stuff. It'll, it'll be good. What are you going to do for the rest of your Father's Day? Uh, my parents, brother, and uh, his girlfriend are going to come over in a little while. We'll, oh, we'll wow. do some dinner, play outside with the kids, and uh, hopefully a reasonable bedtime, for <laughs> at least for everybody else while I'm up working. But, uh, yeah, not, nothing crazy. Uh, it'll be a, a fairly regular Sunday with, with some takeout dinner. Cough mania there. All right. Cough man. mania. No, it'll be good. <laughs> Have a good Be one. Good. Well, thank Have you. a great and, one. And to you, my friend. Don't do anything crazy after you, uh, you get that me. next sim. <laughs> All right, up next on the Dream Stream, Pat Mayo, Jake Seeley, they're going to preview the AFC West, which players to target with your fantasy football team. So that is on the way, the PME experience. Thanks to Moose, of course. He's coming back with Tom, as mentioned, about 45 minutes. Thanks to Jordan, to Daniel, to Bert. I, I assume at some point in time, Bert is not going to do a sim, but it's really tough to tell. He might be the only one left in ops. I'm Adam Kaufman. We'll see you later. Happy Father's Day. Welcome to the Pat Mayo Experience presented by DraftKings 2021 Fantasy Football Rankings for the AFC West. We've already been through the NFC West. We've been through the AFC East and the NFC East. Plus, we've broken down the Julio Jones trade and its impact on both Tennessee and Atlanta for the upcoming season. You want to find any of those shows? You can subscribe to Mayo Media Network or just hit the description. They're all down there one click away if you want to go back and watch all of those shows. You want to listen to them? You can find them on the Pat Mayo Experience audio podcast where if you're watching this early enough, if you leave a review telling me why you should be in the Scott Fish Bowl this year, I got some spots to give away. So actually, if you go to my Twitter at the PME, you can find the entire giveaway contest up there for the seats I have available. But if you rate and review five stars and explain why you should be in the Scott Fish Bowl on Apple Podcasts and leave your Twitter handle or some way for me to identify you and you have a very compelling case, you might gain a free spot in 
to the Scott Fishbowl, if that's something that you're into. Some big announcements with fantasy football coming your way very, very soon. But until then, I got Jake Seeley from TheAthletic.com. And I'm going to throw this out to you first of anyone. I want you to smash the like button for the episode in the comment section. Jake, I want you to tell me where Javante Williams will finish running back blank for the season. I will say he will finish as RB16. That's pretty good. Mostly because I wrote this after the draft, and I I have continued to say this, and this isn't a victory lap because I'm about to poo-poo him at the same time, um, is that I said that Javante Williams is very similar to Miles Sanders' rookie season, where by week six or seven, he's the lead option. And so you factor that in with a lesser start to begin with because he's not going to be a top end RB two to start the year, but he finishes as such because he is more talented than Melvin Gordon. Obviously he could bust and not prove that in the NFL, but if we're talking about on paper and evaluation, uh, but I expected that to be the case. These recent reports and rumors that Melvin Gordon is not at camp and he's frustrated. He was already frustrated before they drafted him and that Williams is out there and impressing and all that type of stuff. We're not looking potentially that he started week one. If he was starting week one, I'd even say higher. Uh, but, you know, I, I kind of compare it to Jonathan Taylor. Like, Jonathan Taylor last year wasn't going to be top five, top ten until Marlon Mack got hurt in week one. Marlon Mack was still going to be a factor for a few weeks, and they started the season as such. So that's where I say I wouldn't draft him as RB16. I'd still draft him around the RB20s. Uh, but I could easily see him outperforming that ADP if that's still where it's hovering right now. I mean, I just wanted a number. We were going to break him down when we got to the break. Oh, sorry. But thank you. Thank you for your – that's a very <laughs> – put it this way. In the comment section, you just got to leave a number. You don't need an in-depth breakdown <laughs> like Jake provided. But thank you for that. Well, you were, you said that's pretty good, so I wanted to add context. I'm sorry. <laughs> I mean, we're going to get there. We're going through player by player on each of these teams. <laughs> RB16, we'll we'll talk about it later. Perfect. Kansas City <laughs> Chiefs, first up in the division. They are, shockingly enough, the Super Bowl favorites. Over under 12 and a half wins, minus a thousand to make the playoffs at DraftKings Sportsbook, which means you would have to bet a thousand dollars to win a hundred on the Chiefs making the playoffs. <laughs> 335 minus to win the division, plus 250 to win the AFC, five to one to win the Super Bowl. Let's start with Mahomes. He is being drafted as the number one overall quarterback, but his ADP just keeps rising and rising. Now, I don't know where this is coming from. Is it coming from a lot of casual people doing drafts? Because that's generally where you see quarterbacks go higher in one quarterback leagues. Obviously, in super flex and in two quarterback leagues, you can throw that out the window. But I'm just seeing the average ADP right now is, where where are you at, Patrick Mahomes? 13th overall, Jake. At the turn in round one is where Patrick Mahomes is going on average. It's just too high. It's way too high. Uh, And it's not just way too high because of the quarterback discussion we can have every single year. Uh, I just did a draft last night for the football diehards, uh, Bob Harris and them over there last night, where he went, I think, kind of more. It's industry league, so you got to depress the values at quarterback because of how we draft. But he still, I want to believe he made it into the second round. If not, he was one of the first picks in the third round. And then you look at the biggest issue is why I bring that draft up is because in the sixth round, that's when Josh Allen came off the board. That's when Dak Prescott and Lamar Jackson came off the board. Actually, one of them was in the seventh round because I took Dak in the seventh. Uh, When you have that, these guys who are on his heels on a points per game basis. Yes, Patrick Mahomes is the guy who can break everything, but he's still, even if he does, it's not going to be such an enormous difference of four to five rounds with what you also have to sacrifice at running back, wide receiver, or even tight end, because that's about the spot where Travis Kelsey goes as well. So what you're giving up, I mean, yes, Patrick Mahomes could lap the field, but he would have to lap the field to be that value. So way too expensive for me. And that's what I'm seeing right now. I'm just looking at my baseline season-long projections. I have Patrick Mahomes as the highest-scoring player. I mean, there's a reason he's QB1. It's just the value attached to it at 408 points. Lamar Jackson actually comes in at number two in my projections at 395 points. There is essentially a four- to five-round difference between drafting these guys in your league, and there is a 12-point difference between them in overall fantasy scoring for the year. Uh, It doesn't really (laughs) add up for where I want to be taking my quarterbacks. No, it doesn't. And you could even look at last year and say, well, what if Lamar Jackson does exactly what he did last year? 
well, then that's still worth the four round difference in discount that you're getting. And probably not even that. It's probably only worth a two, two and a half round difference if you're talking about that, because I would think most everyone would agree that Lamar Jackson's floor is last year. And so the, the upside is there. But again, it's not just Lamar Jackson. You know, you just bring that up because he's second in your projections. It's Josh Allen, Kyler Murray, and Dak Prescott, too. All of these quarterbacks, it's a tier. We, you and I, we talk about this all the time as tiers. All five of them are in the same group, at least in my opinion. I think all five of them are capable of finishing as QB1 or QB5. But guess what? The difference, as you just mentioned, might not even be a point per game per week. I even look down to as far as Russell Wilson. I have Russell Wilson projected for 35 fewer fantasy points over 17 games than Patrick Mahomes. That's two points per game, which is pretty substantial. But what you need to do is weight the opportunity cost of where these guys are going. So if you take Mahomes with the first pick of round two and give up a running back, and then you take Russell Wilson in round eight or nine or wherever the hell he's going in your draft, let's just say that, is the difference between running backs of that time really what you <laughs> want to be doing? Is that going to be two points per game? Like that? That's the, right now the difference between who is who who's the running back going directly at the turn. I want to make sure I get the, the proper name right. It the is, first round turn. It, it is either Cam Akers or Austin Eckler at the moment as we record this. I would expect Cam Akers to go higher than that. But let's just say it's Austin Eckler in a even a half point PPR league. That is the difference between Austin Eckler and David Johnson. David Johnson. Oh, look at that! <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. And I would uh, I would imagine that, yeah. e and just based on everything that we know, if everyone stays healthy, all things being equal, that Eckler is going to score more than two points per game more than David Johnson will. 100%. And you just could say, David Johnson and Patrick Mahomes, or let's take the low, who's who's the lowest? Oh, you just said Russell. Russell, would you rather have David Johnson and Patrick Mahomes or Russell Wilson and Austin Eckler? Nobody in their right mind is going to say, oh, yeah, g give me Patrick Mahomes with David Johnson, because you're also including the picks that you're making in between there as well. Uh, and this even kind of folds into the conversation you and I have every single year is that we kind of sit on different sides of the Travis Kelsey. Not as much as people might think for me is, like I said, I can see doing it. I'm just not the person that has ever done it. But the difference is, is even if you're on my side more than your side of Travis Kelsey is like, ah, I just can't pull that trigger. The difference is you're getting about three or four points per game with Travis Kelsey over the leg up. So that's why he's in that conversation of being that first rounder. And you can make the case of it because this is such an enormous leg up on anybody else at the tight end position that, that that makes it warranted. This is not that kind of a gap. What are we looking at for running backs in the Chiefs' backfield? Obviously, Clyde Edwards-Hilaire is now going into season number two. Not quite going in the first round anymore. In fact, he's going at the 3-4 <laughs> turn in fantasy drafts. Based on his production from last year, and let's say he gets a little bit better, mind you, this is a perfect running back to be, or perfect offense to be a running back in. He just didn't get to utilize all those skills, and he just wasn't as good uh, and didn't fit quite as much as we thought that he was going to a year ago. That does seem like the perfect place to buy a running back who has dropped three rounds worth of value in one season, despite the fact that he is still their starter. A hundred percent. And we'll be honest about it. You and I talked about it. I know a lot of people did. It was other podcasts as well. You had other guests probably said the same thing. It's Clyde edwards Alaire when he started reaching the middle of the first round. It was just getting insane. It was just getting out of control because Damian Williams opted out. It's like, oh my God, it's the Chiefs offense. Who the hell cares? Well, it still goes back to let's talk about before Damian Williams. And we expected edwards Alaire to be the guy, but we all expected edwards Alaire to be the guy on 14 to 16 to 17 touches per week. And that's the Austin Eckler appeal. That's to go back in the days outside of, I think, maybe two seasons where Jamal Charles sat for a lot of his career, is these guys can do more than most because of their offense and their talent and how they fit, but it's still that capped number of touches. So you put that into context and you say, all right, that's worth an early second round pick. Well, two things here is before they brought in Le'Veon Bell, he was actually, Edwards Lair was actually providing top 15 running back value. The Le'Veon Bell situation changed everything. Obviously, we have Daryl Williams, who probably still plays a part this year. But now you're not paying that price. And honestly, going into this year, I'd be okay paying top 15. 15-ish value for Edwards Hilaire because that's a reasonable price. That should be the outcome expected. And now you have a ceiling to get even better return on value. So I'd take him in the third. 
Uh, I could even see him pushing up to the like the top end of the third around this two three turn. Uh, right now in the fourth, I would take him a thousand times out of a thousand every single time I see him in the fourth round because it's that. It's what we talk about every single year. It's the, the, the disappointment. It's the perception. It's last year's trash. It's when people don't live up to expectations. They don't want to draft the player again because they got burned. Daryl Williams is being drafted as running back number 70 right now. I don't hate that either. That's what I actually like that a lot. That's way too low. Just if nothing else, if Edwards Alaire misses time, which he did last year, uh, Daryl Williams could be a top 20 running back easily. So, okay, let's move to wide receiver. Obviously, Tyreek Hill is going in the first round or you know, at worst at the very beginning of the second round. You can't really say anything against it. That's how good he is. What about the rest of the guys, though? No Sammy Watkins anymore. So you have me, Cole, hard man, the heir to the chip fortune and Byron Pringle. Demarcus Robinson, who loves catching the first touchdown of the game and then doing nothing else for the rest of the game. What are we doing with the rest of these guys? Is it just Hill and no one? Because everyone will talk, th- <laughs> someone in your league will talk themselves into Harden and be like, he's the fastest man on the planet. You know, they're going to finally <laughs> unleash him this year. It seemed like whenever Watkins missed time last year, Pringle was actually the one who was playing. There you go. Well, it's because who replaces Watkins? Pringle does. The biggest issue to Harbin is to go back to whether you want to believe reports or with this, that, and other, because all rumors, nobody knows exactly what the Chiefs office was thinking outside of the Chiefs. But at that time, when they drafted Michael Harbin and the other people that were on the draft board receiver-wise, the people always bring up DK Metcalf, but they were doing that because at that time, there was uncertainty around Tyreek Hill. Harbin is a very similar wide receiver to Tyreek Hill. If Hill misses time, I could see value for Hardman. But if you're talking about what this offense needs and how do you replicate what they've been doing, you're looking for the Watkins replacement. And Pringle is a very similar wide receiver to Watkins. And I think that Hardman's excitement, because they see no Sammy Watkins, is still getting a little overblown because they think of the excitement, what what Hill brings on a per-catch basis. So I'm with you. And there's already been... We never like to buy into reports this early into the offseason, but there's been positive talk about what Pringle has been doing out there and that you know, Holmes is looking his way because he's filling that Sammy Watkins role. So if anything, the cost of Hardman and then the non-cost because he's free right now of Pringle, I'm I'm just taking Pringle and ignoring Hardman. Yeah, essentially outside of Tyreek Hill, you can just not own any other Chiefs wide receivers. It might be worth it for the upside that could come along with them, but based on the results that we've seen, it's been Hill and it's been no one for like the past three years. Like you can own Watkins, that's fine. Then if you didn't play him in that one week when he scored 500 fantasy points, he was probably pretty crappy. And that's and that's kind of what I was going to come back to is like it might just be one of these you want to try and find somebody, but the end result might just be it's Hill, Kelsey, and then the backfield and nothing like we're just chasing our own tails because you, you, you made the joke about Demarcus Robinson, but I mean, Demarcus Robinson can come out week one, a hundred yards and a touchdown and actually show up the entire game and then disappear for four weeks. And then you go and pick up Robinson. He doesn't produce, you drop him, and then Pringle pops up, you pick him up and then it's not him and it's Hardman for two games. And you're just constantly chasing your tail, trying to figure out who it is. Travis Kelsey is obviously tight end number one, as he has been for the past four seasons. He's going to pick number nine right now on average which is right around the pat mayo range of where i've been taking him for the past few years so people are finally catching up to me jake (laughs) they're finally jumping on your kelsey bandwagon look again i've just said it before when i was saying that i'm not the person to do it because you know i i think that what you lose at running back and wide receiver is offset and the point being is it has to like kelsey has to be why or first round value or you've got yeah, but, double yeah, hit. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah, but I, I don't like that argument that he has to be first round value. Anyone you take in the first round has to be first round value. Or your team's not going to be any good. No, no, no. The difference is, sure. But the difference is because you're taking a position compared to what you're sacrificing, especially at running back. We're talking about the difference in points per game. And so, like I said, that's why. Kelsey can put up three more points per game. But if it's only half, if it's only one, and that's why I said that, it's because the down year of Kelsey was still great. He's still the number one tight end, but it wasn't that gap over the next three or four tight ends that made your double cost kind of come into play. So that's why I say it. I agree with you. You can say it about a wide receiver. You can say it about a running back, but the difference being is that when you lose that, even if he plays 16 games and doesn't get hurt, but only puts up one more point per game than Waller and Kittle and potentially Pitts and Andrews and all that type of stuff, now you don't get that advantage of what you were trying to pay for. That's that's why. You, you're not wrong to take him. I'm just saying that's why I don't ever take him. 
So the way that I like to look at it is we did, I mean, Darren Waller, notwithstanding, like he had an excellent year last year. We project him to have a really good year this year. I haven't projected to be tight end number two uh, in as the simulations have run themselves out. That's where he ends up ahead of Mark Andrews and George Kittle in terms of overall fantasy points by like two. Uh, all those three guys are really clumped together for me. And then Kelsey stands way above. So right now I have Kelsey projected to score 3.6 points per game over those three guys. But those three guys, I project to be pretty good. There's probably going to be a Kyle Pitts who jumps into that or someone we don't even think of that just has a really good year at tight end. I just don't know who those guys are going to be. I know Travis Kelsey, when running right, is the best. And if he can score almost four points per game more than two, three, and four, just think about what he is. So, I mean, that's, that's one third of your league. What happens to the other two thirds of your league? You're outscoring those guys by like six, seven points a game all at one position. And just the drop off isn't that dramatic at any other spot on the field. That's my case for Travis Kelsey, and hence why it's also my case when I talk to you, and you can't really do it this year because Kelsey was slipping towards like the middle to the end of the second round a year ago that you could do the Kelsey Kittle, and it didn't work out because Kittle got hurt, but if you wanted to go Kelsey at the like end of the first or wherever the hell like Waller is going, like first and third, Kelsey and Waller, and monopolize that position, you just create such a gap between you and your league. It's not a straight, narrow path to winning your fantasy football championship, but it's one of those decisions that if you get it right, you're probably going to win. Sure. And what I'll, my, my, what I'll push back on is you have two years where Kelsey has done that in the last four, but you also have two years where he was right around 12 and a half, 13 points per game. Uh, one of those years, he was 0.1 ahead of number two tight end and not even that far ahead of the three and four tight ends. But it comes down to you can make that a same argument about last year's running backs and say Aaron Jones at the back half of the first round was putting up three more fantasy points per game than whoever was in the second round of running backs. And that'd be true. Nick Chubb was as well. So again, you're not wrong, but I don't think I'm wrong either. It's just when it comes down to it, if that gap is true, I would draft Kelsey at the end of the first round. I'm just worried that if it's the other two years where the gap is 0.1 or he was actually second place in points per game the one year that that's the concern you have is now you spent zero difference on a tight end position with what you sacrifice at running back. So that that's all it is. If if you believe if you want to say I guarantee you Kelsey's going to out outscore everybody else at the tight end position by three points per game, even two and a half points per game. I'm with you. Take him at the end of the first round. Again, I don't think it's just everyone because I think that the replacement level at running back, you can find a running back. You don't always find the running back, but guys pop up throughout the year. It's just at tight end, although it is only one allocated spot on your roster, everyone has to play one. And it's not like you're just going to randomly pick up a guy who Travis who challenges Travis Kelsey as the number one tight end off the waiver wire where you can patch weeks together with running backs that way. And especially at receiver, you can find guys. Yeah, that's fair. Like I said, we, we, do, we do this every single year, and I'm not saying you're wrong to do it. It's just why I don't. That's because you're a chicken. You're like Michael Johnson when he <laughs> took on Donovan Bailey in that 150-meter sprint. You're a chicken. That's what you are. <laughs> is, is that what it is? <laughs> yeah. I mean, you're gonna... I'll take all my championships. Okay. I mean, hey, I'll be the Donovan Bailey. I'll be the one who sets the world record. I mean, I'm playing for first year. <laughs> And I mean, that's also the, I mean, uh, the difference between how my fantasy strategy goes versus other people's where, I mean, I, I am smart enough to know that I am not going to win a fantasy, like my fantasy league every single year. What I try to do is put myself in the optimal position that if I get this year right, that I am going to win. And it loses more often than it wins. But if you can win once every four years, you're doing way better than everyone else. And that's sort of the approach that I try to take to it. I'm not trying to like play for fourth and be the fourth best team. I kind of want to be the best team or the worst team. I've, I've always, if you're not first, you're last. But I also have a lot of championships to prove for it. So do you. Like that's, It can work. Look, let's make one thing clear. Any strategy can work. I mean, that, that's really what it comes down to. Like, we can, I don't know how you feel, but I mean, we could, this seems to be a debate. I don't know why it's resurrected this year, but the zero RB, I think it's ignorant to be zero RB. But if you're the only person in your league doing it, and that's what the key is with that, in my opinion, if you're the only person doing it, guess what? It can work, and it might even work and get you a championship. Like, a lot of strategies can work. Yeah, I, I think that the, the best overall method for, like, a floor in your league, and I, I, don't really go by this, but it depends on what pick you get. If you get one of like the optimal running backs with your first five picks, you take one of them. And then you probably don't even need to take any for like the next 10 rounds if you don't want to. Build yourself a super <laughs> team. But if someone of value... 
Yeah, but if someone of value drops to you and they happen to be a running back, I'm not opposed to taking them. Like, I'm probably far more pro zero RB than you, just because I think that people gobble up running backs so quickly that it just presents so much value at every other position. And I do things like take Travis Kelsey in the first round and just different weird things like that going down the list. I'm not afraid to double up with another elite tight end and play them as my flex just to box out people from that position in my league. Because then all of a sudden, if Darren Waller is the guy who is the one who challenges Travis is Kelsey well no big deal I got them both yeah and, and you know all these things can work no, that's why I said it while you were talking was the bell cow that's what I say bell cow running back get me one guy I know whose floor should be about 10 or 12 fantasy points per week because I say bell cow for fantasy because Austin Eckler is not a real life bell cow but for fantasy he's a bell cow there's like kind of that difference there so maybe we need even a different term um but that that's where it is I I have done the Kelsey thing just because I've had, been at the 11th pick and enough running backs have gone off the board. Tyreek Hill is gone. We still don't know what's going on with Aaron Rodgers. And I don't really want to take that next tier of wide receivers because I know they'll be there in round two. Or even the running backs, that the tier we've now d- dove into already because how the draft is, draft is gone, that it's the same. It's the same as who's at 11 that there's going to be at the second pick in the second round. So I've done the Kelsey thing. I just I don't like it as much. And to come back to it, any strategy can work if you know what you're doing, honestly. The Los Angeles Chargers are up next for this. Justin Ebert, the reigning <laughs> offensive rookie of the year, returns. Their over-under is nine on the dot to make the playoffs, plus 137. You didn't favorite. ask me again. I- I'm not asking. I'm just trying to run through this now. To win the division. You've okay. had time to go look these up, and I know that you have. Win the division. To beat the I Chiefs legitimately haven't. Would be 6-1. to one. To win the conference, 16-1. to one. And to win the Super Bowl, 33-1. to One, one of the most popular bets on DraftKings sports bet, uh, tra- DraftKings sports book for future wagers on the NFL so far this season is the Los Angeles Chargers to win the Super Bowl at thirty three to one at the moment. I know that when we get into the pick show and the future show, and Feinberg is on, he will tell you that is a great bet. I'm not necessarily there on it, but let's talk about Herbert and how he stacks up. Is Herbert going too high at quarterback right now? Versus like, is he? We mentioned that tier earlier with the Mahomes tier, and I think it goes down to Russell Wilson, but I think that Herbert is firmly as a part of that next tier of quarterback. I say next tier, yes. If he's the next tier, the problem is is that tier is getting so close to the ne- the one above it that it's kind of pushing its heels and kind of almost not 100% moving into a com- combining the two, but it's getting close that we've almost kind of separated Mahomes, Allen, and Murray and kind of now – move the tier so to speak and they've kind of fallen into their own because the concern about Dak and Lamar have made them pull back closer to Wilson and Herbert and Aaron Rodgers with his situation all that type of stuff uh Herbert I, let's preface this with the fact that he surprised me last year I was too low on Herbert I was too low on Herbert because I watched three years of him in college not improving against mediocre competition. You can argue the people he's playing with but you want to see signs and what we saw from Herbert in college was that played well when the pressure wasn't on him, kind of fell apart when it was. And I had concerns that not only he wasn't going to be the starter, which he wasn't, it was Tyrod Taylor, and then he got stabbed in the chest by his doctor. Uh, But Herbert, from day one, looked better than I expected. I'll admit that. At the same time, the final few five, six games started to see some flaws. And it wasn't just the pressure thing that I brought up. It was some of, look, defenses are starting to figure out, figure you out. They're starting to get the book on how do we make you make mistakes? Where do we trap you? Where do we disguise coverage? And they're going to make the comparison I make quite often with Jared Goff, who Emory Hunt brought up to me when it was happening. Is Jared Goff way back when, is uh, two, three years ago now, when he had to fall off and he's never really come back. He was playing exceptional until late in that season when defenses finally said, oh, Sean McVay's the genius. Let's disguise our coverage and not switch our formation, switch our coverage, switch, you know, whether or not we're blitzing, hide, mask, whatever. They did all that. They waited for the headset to click off where Jared Goff now had to make that decision on his own. I use that as an example to not say that Herbert's going to be Goff. I don't think he's that bad by any stretch of the imagination. I just think we have to understand that the last five or six games tells us that maybe we need to just be a little tentative on immediately thrusting him into this Russell Russell Wilson tier because of how good he played, that there are a lot of quarterbacks, there's a lot of players where the NFL figure you out, and then all of a sudden you're mediocre going forward. I think he's better than mediocre, but I bring all that up to say I would not take him anywhere close to Russell Wilson. 
and he is going one spot ahead of Russell Wilson in early See? fantasy drafts right now. Pick number 46 to Wilson's number 47, uh, which is still just too high for quarterbacks for me. But either way, like Lamar Jackson's <laughs> on that tier at 44. He's the fifth running back off the board. I would just take Lamar Jackson in that spot versus the other two. I think Lamar Jackson is elevated even above those two. Wilson and Herbert, I think, are somewhat close, but I definitely have Wilson ahead of Herbert. I guess the Herbert decision comes down to, do you think that he has the potential to be a top three quarterback? quarterback this season because I remember during uh, the flex draft last year I drafted my team with that Kelsey strategy and I didn't end up with any good running back so essentially what I had to do was try to shoot for the most upside at every position and it almost worked uh, I got boxed <laughs> out uh, with a just horrifying loss uh, in the final week of the season to miss out on the playoffs uh, and my team was kind of rolling at that point it was the Kyler Murray thing and it, Kyler Murray was my hinge pick last year I reached on Kyler Murray because I assessed the situation I said you know what if things break right for Kyler Murray this year he is going to be the number one fantasy running back he needs to essentially just do the Lamar Jackson of the year before but throw for a few more touchdowns and start to run on that consistent basis and he was doing that until he got hurt so it didn't quite hit that ceiling and that's what I needed him to hit for that to come through for me if you're going to take Herbert at this spot you need to be able to convince yourself that he could be potentially the number one quarterback overall and I just don't think that he's going to be no, neither do I, because I look at him last year, too, and of the, he's going to run a little bit, but what was it 200, 250 yards last year and five rushing touchdowns? And I kind of emphasize that five to say it's a lot for somebody only running 200, 250 times. Could he still do it again? Sure. I mean, Dak was, was Dak was 306 for three straight years or something like that. It could happen, but you chop off two rushing touchdowns to be reasonable expectation of somebody running that infrequently. Uh, and you say, well, now you've already lost 12 points, and we know how slim the margin is at quarterback for that to happen. And now you take that away, and you need to start throwing like Tom Brady did last year. And Tom Brady didn't even finish as a top five quarterback throwing it for as much as he did. Actually, in a points per game basis, Tom Brady is a low end QB1 because he doesn't run. And that's what matters in fantasy. So I know we're not talking this division, but if you want to go the Kyler Murray route, we talked about it on that show. It's Jalen Hurts. That kind of, it's Jalen Hurts because you run for 800 yards and seven touchdowns. You don't even need to throw for 25 touchdowns, you just need to throw. 3,500 yards, 20 touchdowns with that rushing, and you're probably getting close to the top five already. I have Jalen Hurts projected at 736 yards and five and a half touchdowns as his medium projection. I think that's conservative, and that already puts him above Justin Herbert for the year in total fantasy points when you combine you his when you combine his like 3,900 passing yards and 22 touchdowns to go along with it. Yeah, and I would say you brought you bring that down to 3,500 yards because maybe he doesn't pass very well because he definitely he had flaws. We talked about it on that show. Go watch that show. But also the rushing touchdowns, that's where I think is the conservative part. I could easily see running seven plus. I mean, Kyler Murray just ran for 11, and I'm not even putting that on him, but you tell me he's running for seven plus, 700 plus yards, I would put seven plus touchdowns with that. And just the... The difference is that Herbert's going to be the starter all year long. Herbert's going to be good, but he's going to be good in the way that Matt Stafford and Tom Brady and Aaron Rodgers all have these like peak years and can pop up and be quarterback number four or quarterback number five. And maybe it's a little bit more with Herbert because of the potential rushing ability, but you think that they probably rein that in just a little bit. They don't want him out there running like Josh Allen because he doesn't need to. That's not a part necessarily of how they want that offense to work. At least in my, I, in my projection, I don't see that. So when I see someone like Hurts, the downside is most definitely there. I'm not saying he's going to outscore Justin Herbert, but there's a path for Jalen Hurts to be the number one fantasy quarterback, where I don't think that exists for Justin Herbert. Completely agree. Yeah, I mean, you're talking about rushing, too. Like, Daniel Jones ran for over 400 yards and just one touchdown last year. He could have had two. We all know that clip. But just that kind of running where you just mentioned is not Josh Allen, it's not Kyler Murray, or even Deshaun Watson, even Dak Prescott. Like, that kind of running, like, they're not getting plays called. They're not calling their own number that much at the goal line where you can really bank on the rushing touchdowns. Well, how about this? If Joe Burrow is healthy and 100% week one, does Joe Burrow outscore fantasy-wise Justin Herbert this year? Uh, you know, I do have Joe Burrow as playing week one and playing 16 okay, games well, in well, 17. Let, let, let's work on a hypothetical here. Let's just let's work I with am. the standard that we're doing this. Uh, and they play. I, they play, I know. I just 
And listen to me for a second. We're going to play the <laughs> hypothetical. We're going to project it out over 15 games. How? What's the percentage of time that Justin Herbert finishes as the better fantasy quarterback, assuming no injuries, no benching, anything like that, that everyone is 100% healthy? Herbert is, what, a 55%, 60% like lean in that? I was going to go a little bit higher. I was going to say 60, 65, so not okay, that well, far off. Let, but let, I, I'd say two out of three times. Okay, let's call it 66.66667% that Herbert beats Burrow in fantasy scoring. The difference between drafting those guys right now, Herbert is going at pick number 46, and Burrow is going at pick 111. <laughs> I knew like you were going. Like that, that's more than <laughs> that's double. Insane. Like, Well, and let's bring, can, can I bring another quarterback in this conversation? Because Is, is it Stafford? Or Watson? No. No. It's the rookie. They talk about talent coming out of college. And Trevor Lawrence, for everybody, like, he's the best since. Yes, this is the first time in a long time where you can actually say, yes, he is the best since. If Trevor Lawrence doesn't work in the NFL, just cancel evaluations. Cancel knowing anything about football. But Trevor Lawrence could outscore Joe Burrow. Like, I would say that's probably, like, more 50-50. But if you want to even put him in there, and I'd say, what, Trevor Lawrence is going after Joe Burrow? Yes, well after. See, so there you go. You're telling me that Trevor Lawrence can't come have a rookie season with the weapons he has in Jacksonville under Irvin Meyer with all the questions about that defense, he being able to stop anybody and that they're going to have to score. And then you tell me that Justin Herbert's rookie season can't just be replicated by Trevor Lawrence. And I would say you're crazy because I think it's easily doable for him.
I know that I said that if I ever won a free roll, I was probably going to just quit my job here, but it happened last night and I'm still here. So take that for what it's worth. Tommy Freeze Pops here. Happy Father's Day to all of the dads out there. And happy Father's Day to my friend up north in Canada, Jeff Moose Ulrich. Happy Father's Day, buddy. Apparently I've been got a little, you got a little Father's Day uh, phlegm. Father's Day plan this morning. Father's Day phlegm. Yep. You have a nice Father's Day morning. Do a little golf maybe. Go out practice uh, the swing in the garage. I did breakfast. actually do some garage swings. Uh, that's about all go. I had time for, unfortunately. But, yeah, when you have two four-year-olds running around, five-hour golf games typically don't get involved in your day. But, um, uh, yeah, no, dude, it is a nice little morning for sure. Happy to be hanging out here. And, look, not only are you back, we got you in the one seat here doing, like, you know, the heavy lifting as per usual. So, congratulations, man. I mean, look, I know it's Father's Day, but, like, this is the day after. I mean, breaking through, <laughs> just smashing. And now, look. Now that you've won one, you need to keep the heater going here. So that's, that's right. Floodgates are open, baby. Yeah. Let's just keep it rolling. Uh, look, I am still basking in the glory, but I do realize that all glory is fleeting. And uh, I'm probably not going to win again for another 300 or so Sims. So I'll enjoy this one and maybe the next one. And then I'll, I'll try and get over it because I don't want to get my hopes up, you know. It, it I mean, took a long time. It's probably going to take a long time to get another one under my belt. But the lineups have locked for the Browns and the Lions here. Who you got in your captain spot? Who you got in your lineup the rest of the way? If you had time for a Father's Day lineup here. I did. And uh, I went with uh, a Lions heavy stack, which is going to be very contrarian and probably very stupid. But okay. I put Galladay in the captain. I got Stafford. I got Marvin Jones. I got okay. Swift. And Prater. So I got five Lions and wow. Odell Beckham, the only Cleveland Brown. I went against the grain, Tom. It's just the way I roll, man. I just can't help so myself. We have some crossover. I have Galladay and Beckham. Neither one's in my captain spot. I went Jar- Jarvis Landry in the captain spot. So uh, the two aforementioned players, Landry in the captain, Browns DST, Amendola, and Baker Mayfield in my lineup. So, uh, I don't really know ever what to do with the Lions in Simland and the Browns. I mean, you can go a little chalky with them. Although Nick Chubb isn't great in Simland, even though he's really good in real life, they tend to give the ball to Kareem Hunt more than you'd like. Yeah. So I, I kind of stick away from them, but I like to get OBJ in my lineup. I think Jarvis Landry is always a fun play. So we'll see how it goes. Thanks to everyone for joining us here on Father's Day. we got Jordan, Daniel, and Bert on our production team. And to my knowledge, none of them fathers. So I will not wish them a happy Father's Day. <laughs> happy Father's Day to their fathers. Though. Hey, everyone's a father. I mean, look, you got a little microwave that behind you, you know, you got to take care of. So there you go. If Emerson was on here, he'd be insisting, you know, I'm definitely a father. I got two two kids. I got, you know, he's a girl dad to, to two Springer Spaniels. So That's right. You know. He's got the uh okay. he's got he's a dog dad. Fathers is a it's a generic term. I'm, I'm more than happy to share the spotlight with all <laughs> sorts of fathers regardless of human fathers, their animal fathers, you know, household appliances, whatever. Fish fathers. Let's just <clears throat> car let's fathers. Just throw the, just throw the term around. I, it's, it's a made up holiday anyways, if being honest, Tom. So, Wow. Way <laughs> to keep it positive here, Jeff. I mean, come on. This is a day that celebrates you and all of the great fathers out there. And you're out here just calling it made it's up. It's a Hallmark all ho- holiday. All holidays Hallmark are made holiday. up, if you really think about it. Like, True. Okay. So I, I kind of I kind of push back against that. Don't get me started on Christmas, Tom. Don't get me started. On, I'll ruin it for everybody. I'll do it. Now oh, I want to know Christmas. No, go ahead cuz I'm I'm fascinated where you're going to go here cuz I love Christmas. Well, Christmas is great when you're a kid, you're just getting presents, you don't have to buy anyone anything. Then you hit adulthood and you're like this thing costs money. People get mad at me if I'm not at the right Christmas party. I got to go to five different houses. Awful. Terrible. Wow. Give so me you a don't break. like so you're anti-Christmas. I like the holiday Christmas. I like the holiday part that comes after Christmas. The lead up to it is horrific. Shopping? Are you kidding me? I hate shopping. 
Shopping is no, you not know what I like about Christmas? Favorite? I like I like donating to people at Christmas. I, okay. I legitimately that's the part that like I legitimately like. And I'm not being I'm not trying to like sound cocky or like anything. I legitimately or trying to sound like the the white knight. Don't I like the donation part that comes at Christmas. It's a great time to help out others. You can go down volunteer stuff. That part of it's great. So don't get me wrong. I'm not like I'm not actually anti Christmas. I just really don't like the commercialization around it. It's 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 a time for toy companies to throw out you know their big guns and their advertising and, and try and just you know get your kids to be as you know, bratty as possible. I don't know. It's, it's whatever. Wow. It is what it is. You just sound like the worst right now, Jeff. <laughs> I thought Canadians were supposed to be happy-go-lucky people. What is this? You're anti-Christmas? Look, like look, I know you like the donation at, thing, but it the, sounds like you want your cake and then you know you want to have your cake and eat it too. Look, I don't, it's one or the other. You either like it or you either get the whole thing or you get none of it, Jeff. You you Google anxiety rates in Christmas and you'll see what I mean. People get anxious over Christmas. They get it, it built. It's not good for people. Like legitimately, <laughs> it's the the stuff. It's not good. It creates anxiety in people and and uh, and stuff like that. So it's. I, the spirit of it is obviously done in, in a positive direction, but you know, it, do uh, your children know that you hate Christmas? No, of course they don't. <laughs> They'll know when when I get older, when when they get older, and you know they hear my opinions. On it. They won't yeah. be listening. To, by that point, Tom, they won't be listening to a thing I say, and they won't care. <laughs> so it'll just be an old man rambling. It's going to be like I hate Christmas, and they're going to say, "Good, I hate you." <laughs> 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 probably probably at some point but. we'll keep an eye on the contests for this one as the game goes along we got the 250 dollars free contest for this matchup we got the early 250 dollars free contest for the early slate here uh so this would be the last game of that slate if i'm not mistaken yeah it would be look so i'm there getting you go. some agreement in the chat here I'm, I'm i mean look executive sessions 80 poker it's it's a good holiday for certain stuff, but there is a part of Christmas. It's dark. It's it's hard on people, like legitimately. Okay. So I understand the financial burden that some people feel, and I'd say actually most people feel around the holidays. But I think that the joy of getting people together around the holidays and the giving that goes uh, along with the holidays as well outweighs the financial burden and the stress of you know, being at the right house or, you know, this thing costs this and I need to get the right thing for my kid and yada, yada, yada. I think all of that goes by the wayside when everyone's together on Christmas Eve, drinking eggnog, having a good time. Maybe you get to open up a gift or two the night before. Maybe you get to crush some honey baked ham. Maybe that's the one time a year that your mom makes that appetizer that you really like. Maybe you're super into pies, got a good Christmas pie on deck. I mean, I, I just, I like the Christmas season, you know? You have your holiday parties with your friends leading up to Christmas that's always fun. You do a little secret Santa with some friends. I'm a Christmas guy. I enjoy the holiday. And Thanksgiving again, I, through New Year's, I have I, a good time. I appreciate your positivity. I do. I'm a positive guy. I'm glad. I'm glad that, that you are. It's, it's far better to be a positive person in life. And I'm not. I don't consider myself a negative person. I you just, sound I'm like one realist. right now, though, Jeff. I'm a realist. <laughs> and and there's there's aspects of Christmas that are hard on the general population. And you know, you know, again, to your point, what if you don't? What if you're like more isolated and you know you don't have a lot of close family? Like it can be tough, right? So that's why Absolutely. I like Christmas. Because people often go go out of their way to help other people, you know. So again, I agree. I, I think those are all good positive takes by you. And, and it's more. Here, it's here's what I want to hear from the chat. Probably. I, what I want to hear from the chat right now. What is your favorite holiday, and what is your least favorite holiday? Because and give your reasoning for both. Because it sounds like so. Would you say Christmas is your least favorite holiday? Uh, no, it's not my – well, the, I'll have to think about that one. I'll get back to you. Let me let me go over it in my mind. I mean, um, you know, there's there's definitely, like, summer holidays versus, you know, like, bigger holidays like Christmas or – or I am for you guys, I know Thanksgiving is big. Thanksgiving is 
You guys have what? Boxing Day? What's Boxing Day? That's Boxing Canadian Day is thing, the right? day after Christmas. Boxing Day okay. is just an extra holiday plus a shopping day. So it's kind of ridiculous. But um, yeah, it's Boxing Day is the equivalent of Black Thursday, you know, for you guys or whatever you call Black it. Black Friday, right? Black Friday, excuse me. You know, for for Thanksgiving. Um, our Thanksgiving, we only get like it's generally like a Saturday to a Monday. Usually, guys like start from Thursday kind of thing. So I don't know. Like for me. I wouldn't say, you know, I, I, again, Christmas is one of those things, like, it's just such a big buildup. And I think some people in the chat made a good point. Like, the buildup to the actual day, I hate. But then, like, like the, the Christmas holidays that come after, I like. Like, I like that portion between, like, the 26th and, like, you know, January 2nd. Because you do get to see more people and kind of the pressure's right. off at that point. But yeah. yeah, and I think that that outweighs the negatives, you know? Fair enough. No, that's fair enough. That's a fair take. So we got executive sessions saying that Memorial Day is their favorite holiday in their small opinion. I don't believe your opinion is small, executive sessions. We all have normal-sized opinions. They all matter the same. Memorial Day is fun. It's kind of like the unofficial start to the summer for a lot of people. Got that long weekend. Maybe a head down to the lake. You know what my favorite holiday is? What? Labor Day. Labor Day is a great – it's kind of the, the unofficial end of the summer. For it's, me, Labor Day can kind of be sad in that regard. Like, it's a fun weekend, but at the end, you're like, oh, true. man, it's true. over. Oh, you but, know what? Yeah, Robert makes it. Bob makes a good point. Bert, sorry. Uh, July 4th. I, I might even put that, I think, because July 4th for me is Canada Day, but it's it's very close, and it's very similar. It's in the middle of the summer. Does Canada, so wait, Canada celebrates July 4th as Canada Day? No, like, no, they no. also it's, do it on July 4th, or what day no, is it's that? Ja- it's, it's July 1st in Canada. Canada Day okay, is July gotcha. 1st. But it's very close. That was my point. Okay, it's, here's my beef with sorry. July 4th, and hear me out. I don't want to sound anti-patriot, anti-American, but here's my beef. <laughs> uh, Morgan wants to know if there's a maple syrup day in Canada. Oh wow! Come on, Morgan. No, he not. he kind of uh, he feels offended by the, uh, the, stereotype. the stereotype. It's one of my favorite. It's one of her favorite condiments. It's says. terrific. It is terrific. It is terrific. We have a touchdown here from Danny Amendola. Six nothing Lions. Going to be seven nothing soon when Prater nails the PAT. Okay, so so why don't you like? Okay, like here's July my Fourth of July thing. Okay. So I don't think that we should have to celebrate the 4th of July on the actual 4th of July every day. I believe that we should, and it is called Independence Day. That's kind of its official title. 4th of July is sort of the unofficial. Mm -hmm. One way or the other, you want to go. Both are true. But I think that it should be called Independence Day, and we should celebrate it on the same exact Monday or the same exact Friday every year, whether that's the first Friday of July or the first Monday of July or the second or whatever we want to do, whatever Monday or Friday is closest to the fourth. That's when independence day should take place because when, because it's just a day of the year, sometimes it falls in the middle of the week and you have to work like two days And then you get the 4th of July off and then you have to go back to work on Thursday. Whereas it should, you know, it's the, it's celebrating the beginning of our country that, that deserves a guaranteed long weekend, no matter what. And I get that we get that with Memorial day and labor day, but it when possible, we should always try and make these things into long weekends. So that's yeah. my beef with the 4th of July. I got to give my brother credit for that one. He's He kind of has instilled that one in me. And I think I've perfected the take over time. But, yeah, let's call it Independence Day, and we'll put it on the same Friday or Monday every year. Yeah, I I agree. I it's just, I have the same qualms with Canada Day. Let's 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 do long weekends here. Like, this is what we're to, this is what we're about here, you know. If you want to do like small little fireworks on the actual day, that's fine. But like, let's do the actual day off on like to make a part of the weekend. Exactly. That's what we're here for, you know? Right. Like let's, let's maximize this day off. Here. Yeah. It's, uh, it's Kyle weird. asking when I'm on with glass today, I am on with him Madden after dark. First time we have been on together since May 25th. 
Oh, and wow. before that, we weren't we the last time we were together was April 20th. So Glash and I not been doing a lot of Sims together because he's guys, very busy with WNBA dudes. Yes. Yeah. You guys used we, to do a lot together too. All the time. Yeah, he, first he, was, stretch. he is the person I've done the most Sims with, probably. Like still, even with that uh little Without a doubt. Even with those huge gaps. He did kind of uh, have sort of a schedule change there, yeah, didn't he? Yeah. All right, let's see uh what some of our DK Sim fam's favorite holidays are. Uh, I'm going to scroll back a little bit. A little bit. Halloween. Morgan says Halloween. We did have some love for Halloween on here. We have a uh, Halloween. People just say Halloween's not a holiday. Well, it, it is. It, it is technically a holiday. You don't get the day off for Halloween, but it's kind of a fun day. Like people kind yeah. of take it easy. I guess when Halloween's on a weekend, it's very lit. So, no, that's fair. I, I respect the Halloween take. Everyone's kind of in a good mood. You know, free candy for the kids. I'm, I'm hoping that Halloween gets back to normal this fall. I know that was tough uh, in 2020. Not a very COVID friendly holiday. So, uh, I like Labor Day. I, I support the Halloween it's... thing. People like dressing up, good, uh, good costume parties. I like Labor Day just because it's usually a nice time of year. The weather's still nice. The weather's very, better Labor Day, for sure. It's, it's not crazy. You just get an extra yeah. day off, and you don't have to celebrate anything. You don't have to buy anyone anything for Labor Day. <laughs> day, bro. Just take a day. That's what holidays so you, should be. You like holidays where you don't have to buy people gifts. Yes, and, and where you don't have to. Lot of there's, no extra, there's no extra pressure involved. Good with food, day. good drinks. Yeah. Good, Nobody good vibes. anything from me on Labor Day, except just to yeah. take a day off. So does Canada also do Labor Day? We do do Labor Day. Okay, yeah. so as North America, we all celebrate that one together. That's I, good to you know what? I'm, that's my take. Labor Day, best holiday out there. Okay, good good take. Good take. Uh, Morgan saying that we're not sure if Mexico does Labor Day. Uh, so, yeah, we'll have to get research I actually wasn't even sure if, if you guys did it. I know Labor Day is more of like Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we do it in so. September. When do you guys do it? Yeah, no, same thing, September. Okay. Yep. That's good. Nick Chubb, three carries for five well, yards. You, not a lot going on. Rushing the ball. Well, Danny United. Amendola, one touchdown with those two catches for 26 yards. Everyone else that has a catch has one. So not a whole lot going on on the offensive side of the ball early on here in this sim. We'll check out the contest in a little bit once things start to happen. Uh, we have Sean Preston saying he loves Thanksgiving. I cook a good turkey. And bonus, turkey is cheap, and Christmas for getting and giving presents. So there you go. See, I, I, I'm sorry. Say that again, Morgan. Costco gives out free turkeys to their employees. There you go. Costco gives out free turkeys to their employees. Morgan is packing up our apartment uh, right near the laptop, so that's why she's are you she's here? Is it? She's, uh, guest is it that close she's a guest that? analyst on this sim. Yeah, no, for sure. I, I enjoy it personally. <laughs> um, it's like the producer just chiming in, you know. With exactly. She's like the producer. Yeah. Exactly. Um, um, all right. So sim? we got 80 Poker 89 says New Year's is probably the most fun for short periods celebration slash party in and out. So I actually, New Year's Eve is one of my least favorite holidays. Morgan agrees. I think it is sort of built up. And you, you go in with these high expectations, and at least in your 20s, you know, you, you're if you're living in a city, okay, you, you want to go to this bar, you have to buy a ticket to a bar that you never even have to usually pay a cover for, and then you get there, and you ju they give you your one your one glass of complimentary champagne, and it's crowded, and all of the drinks are overpriced, and the food is not that good. And you know it's midnight, and yay, exciting! And the kid, you kiss the girl that you're with, or or you're alone, and it's sad. And it's like, okay, well, what do we do now? Oh, okay, well, do we go to bed, or do we keep spending lots of money at this bar? And then the next day is New Year's Day, and you usually have that off, and you're hungover, and then uh, you have to go to work the next day, and you're and you're looking ahead at the next year, and you're staring ahead. You're going, am I even gonna try and do resolutions this year? <laughs> You're thinking back on your last year. You're like, I didn't even make it a month into my resolution. I just think New Year's Eve is a, is a tough time for self-reflection sometimes. And uh, it's it's unneeded cost, and it ends up not even being that fun. So 
I, 80 poker, I respect that you like New Year's Eve because it's sort of an in and out thing. It's like a one night, everyone go crazy and then done. But I think that there's uh, there's there's definitely negatives attached to that night for me personally. How about you, Jeff? I'm, I've admittedly never been like a huge New Year's Eve fan. It It's definitely like one of those things when you're a bit younger. It, it can be fun. New Year's Eve is such a crapshoot. I've had great yeah. New Year's Eve's where like totally fun. And other ones where it's just like, just like, I don't even remember what I did. Like I don't I've probably... punted on trying to go out for New Year's Eve over the last few years. Either I'm going to a house party with a small group of friends, or I'm going to grab a really nice meal and just yeah. hang out with more. Like that's, and, that's the way to do it. And look, New Year's Eve when you have kids is basically, it's just not even a holiday. It's just like, well, it's a holiday because <laughs> you get the next day off. But like, you just... You play fireworks for your kids at 8 p.m. You pray they go to sleep right after and they realize that, like, and, and you've tricked them into thinking that it's, oh, here we go. Chub, chub and That's up. a big, big carry. Big boy game. Um, you know, you, you pray that they don't realize that it's actually not midnight yet. They go to sleep. <laughs> and then you chill out on your couch and you, like, you know, you watch a movie. and Maybe like, that is oh. a holiday for some parents where they're just like, okay, I can, I can just sleep. Yeah, totally. And you get a day off. Relax. But, it's not really like a big deal anymore. You know, it's a big deal. New Year's Eve is a bigger deal when you're younger. It can be fun, like I said, or it can be, like you said, it can be time consuming and the, the payoff. What, what's the um, what's the whole policy in Canada about fireworks? This is that you you said that you fire off fireworks for your kids. So, well, so no, I mean like, like a... watch. I meant watching them on TV. Okay, gotcha. I didn't know if Jeff is out here in his backyard firing off fireworks. No, dude, it's like that wouldn't be a good combo. <laughs> my house wouldn't be here if i was allowed to do that uh big bad bill is sweet william now on youtube that's a heck of a name as obj with the catch gonna be first and goal here for the browns he says i don't care for any holiday or my birthday because they are just another day in life i understand the sentiment but at the same time why would you live your life like that enjoy life give yourself the opportunities to celebrate and enjoy living with those that you love i appreciate the sentiment like i said because every day is just another day we got to live one day at a time touchdown cleveland who we got jarvis landry with the score seven seven coming up after the, the first point. touchdown i can't even remember now uh danny amadola oh the right detroit lions so both guys in my lineup just saying uh, Big Bad Bill is Sweet William now. I'm just saying, man, yeah, maybe maybe try and, you know, turn that frown upside down and enjoy these celebrations. Uh, AD Poker asking how we landed on the holidays conversation. It was because Jeff said he doesn't like Father's Day. As a father, he says it's a made-up holiday. Morgan says that that makes her sad. You should enjoy Father's Day. <laughs> Oh, I don't. I don't not enjoy it. I mean, I, I still enjoy it. I'm just saying, it's, it's definitely a made-up holiday. <laughs> but again, all holidays are made. Yes, and and that's a fair point. You know, you can make that argument around anything, anyone. The, so, the chat just jumped ahead on me here. Brian C likes the Fourth of July. He says Groundhog's Day is probably the worst. Uh, I, I think for the people in the area in which Groundhog's Day takes place, it's probably a really cool day. But nationally, yeah, Groundhog's Day is a pretty useless holiday. Uh, a groundhog comes out of the ground, it sees its shadow or it doesn't. So it, that's supposed to fake tell you if there's going to be more or less winter. So I agree with you, Brian C. Useless holiday. Yeah. Uh, Sean Preston says Halloween is a sucky holiday. It's only good when it's on the weekend. That's fair. That's fair. Uh, Jermall saying who scored. I said, uh, I'll say to that, Jarvis Landry and Danny Amendola. They have scored. Brian C says he likes leap year. It's a rarity. It makes me excited. So you celebrate that extra day in February every now and then? Okay. I respect John everyone's Preston, on this. But Sean Preston's good point. He says all holidays need to reach weekends. I I am with that. If there was a an international movement to move every holiday to a weekend, totally game for that. 
We got game one of the Western Conference Finals going on in the NBA in Phoenix. The Suns have a one point lead in the second quarter with about three and a half minutes to go over the Clippers. We'll keep an eye on that. Yvonne Saunders saying, Tommy, my problem with July 4th is that there was a race of people still enslaved. So whose independence are we celebrating? I know you won't read this. Well, I did. Uh, and yeah, I mean, there's definitely a, uh, it's definitely a lot, a lot there. 80 poker loves Thanksgiving. I do too. It's such a good holiday. I like the American Thanksgiving. I, I like. I, I think I. I know it's. It's got a lot of the components that I said for Christmas. But at least with Thanksgiving, it's like you know, like that's the holiday. Like you the holiday is that you know you're not. You can go shopping or whatever. But it's like it's mainly to like get around to dinner table, right? Like there's no qualms about it. It's not like oh yeah, it's also Christmas and it's like you know, but. So I kind of like the way you guys do Thanksgiving. You got the, the two days off kind of thing, you know, a little extra. Yep. I like that. No I doubt. Our Thanksgiving was a bit bigger deal. Like if we had Friday to Monday off for our Thanksgiving, I think I'd like our Thanksgiving more. But our Thanksgiving, it's like one day off. It's like, dude, you're not even giving us the extra day off and we got to go, like, go see our family? Come on, man. It's it's awesome. I like because I like Yeah, yeah and, and yeah. it makes that Wednesday evening into a really good – yeah, kind of semi-holiday as well. It's exactly. like Thanksgiving Eve is Reading, always fun. Like, that's that's great. Everyone loves those. I mean, yeah, people, people come into town, see each other. I like American Ta Thanksgiving. Just tied to Raider says Labor Day has to be the best because it's really just a day off to have a day off. <laughs> that's true. It's like you know what? We all have jobs. We all labor. Let's take a day off from laboring. I still like Labor Day, but I, I, I like the way you got I wish there was a couple more because Easter's like that too. But Easter, you know, I mean, all these holidays, and look, some people already brought it up, and all these holidays have things attached to them. Independence Day, Easter's obviously got religious and stuff like that. I'm just, we're, I'm just talking about them trying separately what they mean in our society today, you know, and, and what pressures they put on them. So, you know, Easter's a, a decent little four-day holiday, too. I wish there was more kind of day, like 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 American Thanksgiving, where we get, like, Thursday and Friday off. Like, those are cool holidays. You know, they break up the year a little bit. They should turn Labor Day into, like, a four-day holiday, you know? Oh, Anyways. 100%. Give us the whole give us the whole weekend. Yeah. I mean like the, the give us the Friday and the Monday. Yeah. Four day weekend. Here we go. Lions with the chance to score here. Who we got? And he does score. Is this Adrian Peterson? Was it AP? Oh, I think it is. Number twenty eight. Yeah. Ka -ka. Wow, that is a vulture. One of the all time great running backs. Vulturing a touchdown away. Let's see what his ownership is. We'll get that to you guys momentarily. Adrian Peterson giving the Lions a two touchdown lead. One touchdown lead, sorry. It's their second touchdown of the day, I should say. AP. Matt Prater. We got Johnson. We got DeAndre Swift. But no, it's it's oh, man, Adrian Peterson. Hey, guys. Is Adrian Peterson going to land on a team? Of course I am, Tommy. I'm the greatest quarterback or running back that ever lived. I don't know, actually. Do you think he's going to land on a team? I think so. I think he probably will. Think... Yeah, Some he's owned in 2.87% of lineups in the flex. I think he will because – He's sort of a sure thing almost, right? Yeah, like, some coach will be know, like, you know what I need? I need more grit. I need to guy. I need, well, it, he, he's rarely hurt outside of the knee injury, right? True. And he's, he can run it between the tackles. I don't think he retired. Daniels, we're, could, yeah, I don't think, yeah, we're getting some on. pushback on am, him but... possibly retiring. I didn't think Adrian Peterson is an American 
football running back who is a free agent, according to Wikipedia. Yeah. Oh, look, he's been linked to the New York Giants. Okay, there you go. Who do you think gets a job first, AP, Frank Gore, or Le'Veon Bell? That's a good question, Tom. You come up with good questions, dude, when you're in the lunch seat. I'm not going to lie. I mean, you come up with good questions anytime. <laughs> but, um, that's a good one. I, I'm actually going to say Adrian Peterson. I think I think he, he gives teams a little bit more of what they want, which is just a guy who could do goal line back, take a little extra down, workload off, uh, be versatile. Let Bell, at this point in his career, A, I think he's done. He looked horrible last year. And I think that he, he's getting the sort of cancer – you know, uh, watermark on him, which, you know, for better or worse, or whether he deserves it or not. I, I think Lev Bell might be a guy who gets signed only if there's an injury midseason. I think Gore or AP could definitely be like a camp kind of addition. So I'll say AP for now. Yeah, I think AP is the move because Le'Veon Bell is probably considered more of a burden than he is Probably. like definitely the, the, is he a value add at this point is the juice worth the squeeze i would say no he looks um adrian time. peterson seems like the type of guy that is sort of okay being in this mercenary role right as the browns try and get some points on the board here before the end of the first half under a minute to go now down a touchdown baker mayfield gonna take a bad sack gonna be third and super long as the browns call a timeout so I think Adrian Peterson's the answer because Frank Gore, remember, he ended uh, his season with an injury, right? And a lot of people are saying, oh, this is going to be the end of Frank Gore's career, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. I don't necessarily buy that I mean, just because the guy has bounced back so many times and I know he's older now. I just – I will I will be the last guy to count Frank Gore out because that guy has played forever at this point. Oh, yeah. And I really want to see him play with his son. Because, to my knowledge, that has never happened in the history of the NFL. It Maybe the chat can correct me, but I'm pretty sure that has never happened. Yeah, well, I mean, I'd be surprised if it did. I mean, maybe the Matthews, but, like, even so, no, I... I mean, you gotta, you gotta have a kid in college and then play, like, 20-plus years to play with them in the league. Yeah. It's really hard to do. Uh, coaches, okay, that, yeah, that happens quite a bit. So Mike and Kyle Shanahan, they were together. You, you see the coach bring on the son on the staff all the time. Belichick has it right now mm -hmm. with his kid. Brian C. asking us if it's a crazy idea to roster all three Detroit running backs in a showdown, Swift, Johnson, and AP. I don't think it's too crazy. I don't think you can make a good lineup like that with any other – and then it ends. But, um, yeah, I I wouldn't because Adrian Peterson so rarely has an impact on these Sims. I could I could rationalize having Swift and Johnson if, if you need to go that way when you're building your lineups. But I'd stick away from Adrian Peterson typically in Sim land. He just doesn't have a huge impact. So we're done. With the first half, Matthew Stafford, 9 for 14, 103 yards and a tud. Baker Mayfield, 6 for 7, 61 yards and a tud. We'll get the rushing stats for you here in a second. Nick Chubb, 6 for 59. on Johnson, 5 for 18. DeAndre Swift, 3 for 15. Adrian Peterson, 2 for 6 and a touchdown. Kareem Hunt, only one carry for four yards so far. We'll go ahead and look at the receiving stats here in a second. Marvin Jones, three catches, 19 yards. Higgins, two for 40. Amendola, two for 26 in the tud. Galladay, two for 32. Jarvis Landry, one for four and a tud. OBJ, one for nine. So not a ton going on in the first half in the way of receiving. Nobody really on pace to hit the B word here, but we'll keep you all in the loop going to go ahead and update you guys on the contest $250 free contest for Detroit versus Cleveland king of all drafts in first place Jarvis Landry in his captain spot Baker Mayfield Stafford Chubb Amendola and Adrian Peterson he's got 
under a one point lead over a couple of dudes. So maybe he'll cling on. Maybe he won't. And in first place in the $250 contest for the early slate is G men two, 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 a million twos four. he has a point lead over cast man in the early slate $250 free contest. He's got Josh Allen, Naheem Hines, Christian McCaffrey, Dan, Dan, Danny, here we go. We'll get there. We'll try it again. Danny Amendola, Moore, Sims, Burton, McLaurin, and Bill's DST. Where are you in the free contest? Let me see here. I think I brought them up before. I'm in 74th. I got Galladay in the captain spot, like I said. It does have two catches, so, but my, uh, you know, I mean, obviously the Lions are ahead, but Adrian Peterson has one of the touchdowns, and I didn't roster at Danny Amendola, so I got exposure to none of the touchdowns so far, which... I am in eighth, uh, but I am almost... I'm eight points off the lead, so that that's going to be tough to Oh, overcome. you're in striking position, man. Stri- I'm in shouting distance. I mean, look, if I can win two straight, I really might quit <laughs> and just move to Vegas. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> I might just move to Vegas anyways. That sounds like a good idea. <laughs> so Morgan, uh, who, again, is in the midst of uh, cleaning and – packing up our apartment as we we're going to move yeah are you guys moving soon is that what's happening we're moving east on labor day but my parents are going to be in town uh, on the fourth of july that weekend so they are going to allow us to pack up their car with a bunch of stuff Ah, i see so So we're we're kind of getting ready the pre-move correct but she obviously she's you know she's shadow producing here so she sends me a screenshot of june 25th national day Cause you know how the, so these are actually legit made up holidays by the internet. You know how those, those things happen. So on my birthday, June 25th, it's national Leon day, national catfish day nice. and national strawberry parfait day. Uh, are so you I calling national her, strawberry parfait day a made up thing, Tom? Cause that's, that, uh, I, I would think you might that have that to might fight be. about that. Strawberry parfaits are terrific. So. so Daniel asks, what is national Leon day? I, which is exactly what I asked Morgan. Cause I had no idea. So she sends me the screenshot. National Leon day marks June 25th as six months away from Christmas day. Leon oh. is Noel spelled backwards. And is a day some crafters begin planning their homemade gifts and decorations. The day may also serve as a reminder to get your holiday shopping started. So that is truly a holiday created by American big business to get you already starting to think about the Christmas holiday. So I will give you credit there, Jeff. It all goes into my whole Christmas conspiracy. I will give you some credit there. That's devious. (laughs) That, I mean, see, come on, I've never see, heard that. I, start, I'm, that. I'm bringing back the curtain for you, friend. That has been my birthday since I was born. Okay. 29 years that has been my birthday. It has never changed. You've never, and I have never on once Christmas heard. Day, man. I have Christmas. never once heard National Leon Day <laughs> ever. <laughs> the more so you know. I hope he's paying hilarious. you good, Morgan. You know, producing for us and packing. <laughs> I hope he's paying you double. <laughs> She, she's paid in love, Jeff. <laughs> so I can just is, see uh, the eye roll happening behind yeah. the camera right now. Let oh, yeah. <laughs> Legendary. Bert, I'll read you my lineup again here. He's going to keep me in the loop on who I need uh, points from. No, let's just kidding, double, guys. Like just kidding. Here. Brian C. says, in less than a month, we'll be celebrating National Bathtub Racing Day, July 11th. Thoughts on such a day? Sounds like fun. Throw some wheels on some bathtubs, start rolling down hills. Like a soapbox derby type vibe. I'm into it. Yeah, it definitely doesn't sound terrible, right? I will say, when I was uh, producing radio, we would have a weekly segment where we would just like hit random topics. So I'd always Google what the quote national day was. Mm-hmm. There's some ridiculous. I mean, the fact that there is a national strawberry parfait day is insane. 
But that is to to your point. Those I'll call those the made up holidays. Like <laughs> definitely, that's made. just that's just busy. Like when there's National Donut Day, that's coffee shops around the world deciding we're going to have a deal that brings people into our store that day. Uh, yeah, National absolutely. Pizza Day. I feel like there's a National Pizza Burger or Taco Day multiple times a year. And every single time I go, oh, man, I should get food item X that day. <laughs> it works on me every time. I'm an absolute sucker for these things. <laughs> oh, here we go. Big Bad Bill is Sweet William now on YouTube. Chiming back in. All holidays are financially driven and created to bring in funds. It's true. <laughs> it is true. Third and two here for the Lions. Which running back do we have in the game now? Oh, play action. Oh, miss. Andy Adam. misses it. Got a little window. Oh, a punt here. Jeff, what do you think is more likely to happen next season? The Browns win the Super Bowl or the Lions end up with the number one overall pick? Oh, easily the Lions ending up with the number one overall really? pick. Really? Like, why do you think – Close. Why do you think it's easy? So you're saying that the Browns aren't that close to winning a Super Bowl? No, I just I, I don't think that they're that they're that far. I think they could definitely be in the running. I think that they have uh, their defense could definitely take a step up. Um, I think they got some super talented players, but I think the Lions are going to be terrible, man. Like legitimately, they hired like some a maniac who's talking about like breaking kneecaps in his conference. They made. You know, their, their wide receiver core is Brashad Perryman and Tyrell Williams, and they don't have a good defense. So they could be down to, like, you know, you know the, the dude with the fancy name, St. Brown, as their, like, number one receiver, like Ramen or whatever his name is. Uh, yeah, yeah. Lamarca you know, said it the other day. I was I, impressed. I just, like, I don't – this team is going to be bad. Like, Detroit's going to be bad. Uh, I just – there's no way around it. And they're in a, a tough division. I think they'll have a very good shot at the number one overall pick. I just don't even think that they're going to be that competitive ever. Like week one against San Francisco, they'll lose by 40. I honestly think that's going to happen. So uh, I have no time for this. The, it's not even that I'm, I'm not down on the Browns at all. It's not even an anti-Brown pick. It's just, I think the, the Lions, they're top, top two bottom team for me easily. And, you know, whereas the Browns, you know, you do have to go through KC the Bills are still going to be decent. I would probably take the Browns over the Bills next year, but still, then you got to beat the team in the NFC. It's just a harder path to win the Super Bowl. Winning the Super Bowl is hard. You know, I know getting the number one over pick isn't easy, but it's way easier to be terrible than it is to be like elite elite. So, I agree with you. My take. It just, I so I agree with you. It just felt like you were coming out so hot for the Lions to be number to definitely have a better chance at number one that it almost felt anti Browns. Yeah, no, no, for sure. Now and I understand. Yeah, it's definitely not anti Browns. I just, I think in that scenario, it would be hard for me to unless it was like you know Kansas City we were talking about. Winning the winning is just so hard. You have to get you know run good with injuries. Uh, run good with timing you know the playoffs are one game like predicting Super Bowl championships it's there's a reason I almost never bet Super Bowl futures futures are really hard yeah so everything needs to to break right for that to to that for that to go well for you you yeah fun fun to talk about tough so who who else is in the running for the number one pick next season you think Oh, I mean, Texans. But here's the thing yep. about the Texans. Houston, Detroit. Yeah. Who else? Who, who's our grouping? That's true. No, I mean, let's do a grouping. Um, I think the Jets, 100%. Yeah, I was going to say, even with Zach Wilson, I think the Jets are in the discussion. Uh, yeah. I think that just having Zach Wilson as your only quarterback and no veteran backup, you know, like they don't have a Teddy Bridgewater. You know, you could say that, okay, the Jets' defense is good and the Broncos' defense is good, but the Broncos have, like, guys to, to fall back on. Like, it's not even a comparison. Um, so I think the Jets. Um, and then I think the Panthers. I think the Panthers, too. I actually agree with that call as well. I think you could see some regression. I do not like the Sam Bradford move at all. They lost Samuel. Um, defense is, is – they've been improving, but I I don't know. 
asking a lot of young players that are to take a big step up. So we said Detroit, uh, Jets, Houston, Carolina. Eagles? And who else did we throw in there? Philly? I could see that happening. Yeah. I'm pretty high on Jalen Hurts, but again, it's more from a fantasy perspective. Mm. Eagles? I, I, I think the Eagles will pick up some wins in their division, but I don't know how many non-divisional wins they're necessarily going to be live for. I think the Eagles probably won't get the number one pick, but I could definitely see them being like bottom four. Okay. Nick Chubb, 30 yards away from the bonus here. Yeah, uh oh, I said bonus. That means he's not going to hit it now. But what, what about I, Vegas? That's the team I was just about to bring up. Yeah. I. Why do you think they're in that mix? I think they have a horrible defense. And, like, if Derek Carr got hurt or some, their O-line suddenly started to get hurt, you know, it's basically – their offense is basically Carr and Darren Waller. And, like, you know, I know John Gruden loves to, like, smash – the the run but if that o-line gets banged up you know the run isn't going to be there and then it's like wow there's a nice run that's a nice run there by your boy nick chubb you love nick chubb i do love nick chubb that's part of the reason why i like the Browns so much too he's so good and they're starting to use him a little bit more on offense in the past game and stuff um yeah give me all the nick chubb props for next year Rushing. By the way, Jor Jordan letting us know that Vegas is 2-7 and seven in our simulated season, so that yeah. tracks. Burt saying that he's happy we have not brought up the Jags. I just think that Trevor Lawrence is going to be good, and he's good for, like, four wins at least. Yeah. And you're not picking number one overall with four wins. Exactly. Exactly. Um, I think Urban Meyer, too. I, I – I know some people are pretty, like, skeptical, and I'm not saying he's, like, perfect. I don't think he's going to be good. I just want to be on the record yeah. for that. Yeah, fair enough. I, I actually think he, it'll, it might work out with Urban Meyer. I, I actually do. He's been a winner at various different stops. The guy kind of just has his own plan and, and isn't afraid to do what needs to be done. I, I don't think it's going to be happen this year where they go from, like, you know, one win to, like, you know, nine or something. But I don't think he'll, they'll be in the running for the number one overall pick, or at least they won't be for long. Let's put it that way. So who else do you guys think will be in the running for the number one pick? We so far have Detroit, the Jets, the Texans, the Panthers, the Eagles, and the Vegas Raiders. Yep. Honestly, I might catch a lot of heat for this, but I'm trying to show some objectivity. If you told me the Patriots were the worst team in the NFL next year, because Mac Jones ends up being bad, Right. And Cam Newton can't throw. I would not be shocked. And I know Bill Belichick had a team that was beat up by injury last year and dealt with a lot of COVID issues, and they still ended up winning seven games. I'm just saying, I, I will not be shocked okay. if they're the worst team in the NFL. I'll be unhappy, yeah, and I'll be surprised, but I won't be shocked. I will not write them down, but I just want to verbalize it. I am mentally prepared for the Patriots to not be good for a long time because we had Tom Brady for 20 years and we're the best team in the league for 20 years. Now we don't. History tells us that when you lose guys like that, you're typically bad for a while. So I just want to be the, the Patriot fan on this stream that shoots everyone straight, that I, I am mentally prepared for them to be bad. Okay. I mean, I, I think it would take Mac Jones and Cam Newton being bad plus some injuries on defense. Yep. But there's definitely a path for them to be pretty bad next year. For, for sure. sure. Yeah. If you don't have a quarterback, you yeah. are in the discussion right away. You are yeah. in the bottom. You are in the uh, top 10. You're right there. That's yeah. how it works. No, absolutely. I could, I could kind of see it. Yeah. I mean, definitely didn't, you know, the QB position didn't do them many favors last year. No. Who knows? Tied man. ball game here heading into the fourth quarter. 14 14 Detroit at Cleveland. Stafford 13 for 19, 138 yards and a tud. Neither quarterback in the B word discussion. Nick Chubb getting close. He's at 83 yards on 11 carries and a touchdown. Carry on Johnson, seven for 20. DeAndre Swift, or is it Deontay Swift? He's got three carries for 15 yards. Danny Amendola, four for 40 with a tud. G Man. Sorry, I read something else. Marvin Jones, three for 19. J. 
Jarvis Landry, two for 15. Kareem Hunt, two for nine, catching the ball. Landry has a tud, by the way. And uh, OBJ in the discussion right now for the Babysitter Billy Award, two catches, 25 yards. Where are you in the free roll? Just a sec. I will check where I am. I have to I have to yeah. write a, a funny thing in the chat for Ty DeRaider, who's trying to uh, – I, I don't know if he's sarcastically defending the Raiders or just defending them, defending them. But Well, I'm in 23rd. Uh, I'll take a look at the paid contest here. Uh, $250 free contest, I should say. Sorry. Uh, Big Top, $13.99 in first place. Uh, actually, tied for first place with PSCH Isler. Pizzler. I don't know how to pronounce it. Do you want to know where they I am? They have now? the same lineup. They have Nick Chubb in the captain spot. They're tied for first in the $250 free contest heading into the fourth. And G-Men, two, 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 four, has about a two-point lead over MJP3390 in the $250 free contest for the early slate. So, yeah, Jeff, who... Where are you in the free roll as we sit here right now? I am in second last, 129 spot. T.Y. Hill. No, that's the that was the last sim. I'm in 96. I lied. I'm still <laughs> doing terribly. So you but... came in second to last in the last sim, and now you're in 96. 96, like tenth to the last, or like 20 to 20th to last. Wow. I had a Raider talking about off-season acquisitions, and I'm looking at the Raiders' off-season acquisitions, man, and I'm telling you, like, I, I don't know who I'm missing here. You know, like Willie Sneed, Blight A. Ray Wilson, who has never been good. Um, Congo Cab is angry about the Raiders' slander. I just, I don't, I don't know what I'm missing on the Raiders. You guys tell me, you Raiders fans. What am I missing, man? Well, Congo Cab says we had a top 10 offense, and now our defense is going to be way better, and we're at the bottom. I I don't know about your defense being way better. Yeah, I think that's the that's the sticking point for me. And also, I look at that division, right? I'll tell you, They're going to lose both. Why. I know they beat the Chiefs last year, or at least almost beat the Chiefs. I think they – wasn't there a random – didn't the Raiders randomly upset the Chiefs last year? Yes. Or am I misremembering? Okay, so oh, – that's right. Yep. Regardless, they're probably going to lose both games to the Chiefs. They're probably – if the Chargers take the step forward that we all think they're going to, they're probably going to lose both games to the Chargers. So that's four losses right there. If Aaron Rodgers goes to Denver – they're going to lose another two games to the Broncos. So that's six losses right there in the division. Maybe five, right? Maybe they steal a game against these teams that are clearly better. Again, if Rodgers goes to Denver. So you're already starting behind the eight ball there in Vegas. I don't even, I'd like, I kind of like John Gruden. So I don't even like, maybe I, maybe I am missing something. Maybe I'm just, maybe this is like a talent thing and I'm underrating some of these moves. It's completely possible. I'm not, I'm not going to like the, as far as the teams we talked about, the Raiders is the one that like feels like it doesn't quite fit as well for me in terms of, and I don't think that if Derek Carr stays healthy, the Raiders are actually going to challenge for the number one overall pick, but that team was really bad at the end of last year. Like, the Raiders were bad last year at the end of the year. Their defense could not stop anything. And that feels like every – and this is going back to Gruden's Buccaneer years. It always feels like they're just petering out at the end of the season. They have, like, a nice little peak mid-year, early to mid-year, and everyone's like, oh, Raiders are kind of surprising. And then they end up stinking and, and missing the playoffs. Yeah. They're always one of those teams that like eight things needs to happen the, the last week of the season for them to make the postseason. From week 11 on, they allowed 35, 43. They allowed 28 points to the Jets. Yikes. 44, 30, 26, and 31 points to Drew Locke in Denver. So their defense was getting smoked by like Sam Bradford and Drew Locke. Okay. Shout out to Sam Bradford. Yeah. 
By the way, Nick Chubb is one yard away from the bonus, so next time the Browns have the ball, we might see uh, Nick Chubb get there. So congratulations, Nick Chubb and Nick Chubb owners. Yeah, I, I'm not in on the Raiders. He says, we signed defensive end Yannick, cornerback Hayward, safety Morig, all upgrades on defense. Definitely upgrades. Hayward, ugh, is, he, is he still going to be useful? I'd probably. He's old. Maybe. He is. He's older, though. Um, Yannick, I don't know. Must be brings up a good point. I mean, it is a new head coach in L.A., but everyone is sort of going with the that's good for them as opposed to, oh, it's a new head coach. Give them a year to get things together. Yeah, I'm, I'm, um, I'm not super bullish on the Chargers. I like we, might, we might be overrating the Chargers. I really like the moves year. they made and the draft picks they made. but And Herbert in year two. I'm also not going to like pick them to dethrone the Chiefs this year or anything. I don't even know if they'll be better than the Broncos. Like I think the Broncos actually have a, a, a chance to be the second best team in that division. But I do love the Herbert pick. I like where they're headed. and I But I think it's a good point by must be it's a new head coach like this could go either way this year year totally. one I mean, we've seen lots of rookie head coaches just struggle in their first year so. oh you know who I haven't shouted out in a while Twitch fam what's up Twitch fam just saying hi to everyone over on Twitch CJ71 no more sprinkles Derwin V second time playing Fortnite it's good everybody we see you over on Twitch See if Nick Chubb can hit the bonus here. First and 10, Browns. 5.50 to go here in the fourth quarter. Baker Mayfield under center. Hands the ball off to a running back. A running back. And it was Nick Chubb, I believe. So there you go. A two-yard gain. Congratulations. The B word has been acquired by Nick Chubb. Congratulations to Nick Chubb owners. We'll check out how that affects the contest. In a few plays here as stats update manually. Shout out to Burt, who's been grinding this weekend. My man Ben grinding. I think he did five sims yesterday. This game is like a, a repeat of the last game itself. It's just like 14-14 for the entire second half. And then someone kicked a field goal in the game ended. There you go. I'll take that. I'll take a nice regulation win. Well, our last game was like uh, almost double OT, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. First and 10, Baker Mayfield handing the ball off to Kareem Hunt, who gets blown up in the backfield. What's your take on the worst? Like, who, do, do you have any, like, do you think Detroit is, is going to be the worst, or do you have, like, a hard take I on think it? I think Houston is going to be the worst team. I just yeah. think that they're ripe for being the worst team in the NFL. It's been a few years since they had that mantle. And it just feels like the momentum is moving in that direction for the Texans to yeah. be in the number one pick position. Um, I think Detroit. One. Go for it. Go I'm ahead. Sorry. Finish your thought. Finish your thought. I, I was just going to say, I think Detroit's going to be slightly better than people realize. I am not. I know Dan Campbell was hilarious in his press conference, <laughs> but he did spend most of his coaching career under Sean Payton, who's pretty good coach. So. I have to imagine that he's going to bring some of that culture up to Detroit and uh, go eat some kneecaps uh, and maybe eat some dubs at the same time. Shout out right. James Winston. So I don't think they're going to be like a playoff team, but playoffs. I, I yeah, playoffs, playoffs, but I, I don't think they're going to be the worst team in the NFL. Fair enough. Um, and look, we're just hypothesizing about Houston this... and Carolina are the two teams that feel the most number one picky to me. I, I could definitely see Carolina being up there. The Texans are interesting. They signed a lot of guys, and a lot of the guys they signed, like they're not they're not great superstars, but they got a lot of depth at all their positions. Even quarterback, like they signed a couple backups. So, oh, nice move! Wow, that was a nice By move. Nick Chubb. Every time I don't roster Nick Chubb, he goes off. Every time I actually like go for Nick Chubb and try and get one of those big games, he does nothing. So, so Daniel asking, how come we're forgetting the Jets? The Jets are in our group, so our group oh, is our group. Lions, Texans, Jets, Panthers, Eagles, Raiders. But I just feel like Zach Wilson. 
if he's not going to be the best quarterback in the league, that's fine. But, I mean, he was number two pick. I just – I'm not ready to say that they're going to be the worst team in the league as wow. Nick Chubb shakes off a defender. This Touchdown. To hurt. It's starting to hurt me. Cleveland. Oh, roster Nick Chubb again. Chubb's um, first touchdown – second touchdown of the game. First touchdown of the fourth quarter for Chubb. 20 to 14, going to be 21 14 after the extra point. Saying, get off me, child's play. Uh, yeah, so that's why I'm not putting the Jets in that spot. I mean, look, if they're there, obviously I won't be surprised. They're in our they're in our grouping. Yeah. But I just think that Houston and Carolina are worse. Jets were a little scrappy last year. Yeah, they were. Once I think uh, they got some they got some talent. Must be thinks Atlanta is going to be the worst team. I just think that they have too much talent on offense. I think Matt Ryan's still a lot better than people think. Lamarca and I were looking at some list. I think I just said Lamarca's name. Really. Lamarca. We were looking at some list the other day that had Matt Ryan ranked as the 11th best quarterback in the league. That's not true, but he's certainly a top half of the league quarterback. Yeah. And when you have that type of guy in the mix, I don't think that it's really hard to have the number one pick when you have a competent guy like Matt Ryan, who's won an MVP. He's got pieces around him. Pitts is going to be good. Like there's been very few position players that people have said are going to be sure things. Mm -hmm. And Pitts is the guy that's getting that distinction among lots of really smart football people. They traded Julio Jones because they feel that basically. I mean, that's what it really boils down to. I know Julio Jones wanted out and he's getting older. So maybe it made sense, but they're not drafting Pitts and being okay with moving on from Julio. If Pitts wasn't going to be awesome. Yeah, for sure. So, and I think Calvin Ridley's really good. I think Russell Gage is good. I just Hayden Hurst is a number two. I, I think that they have a good little thing on offense. I don't think they're better on offense. Must be. Yeah. I think that they're they're equally as good as they were last year because Julio was kind of a non-factor. He just didn't play that much last year. Yeah. When he did play, he had an impact. But I think that you can make up for Julio's uh, production with a guy like Pitts, who hopefully will be healthier for them, and has like a very similar catch radius to Julio. Oh, for sure he does. Yeah crazy good athlete I just I really really I'm high on Kyle Pitts so I don't I don't think that the Falcons are going to be the number one pick team I don't he could definitely be I mean Atlanta's one of those teams that could definitely go either way like it, it could be I could definitely see them just cratering next year and like the end of the Matt Ryan era kind of thing where Matt Ryan doesn't even play like the last three games you know something like that mm-hmm. It could happen. It, they could be that bad. So I, I think they're at least in a team you got to consider. For Have, being, yeah, on your radar for sure. Yeah. But, but I could also see it. I, I could see it being right. Like that team might not be any worse than it was last year. Or it might even be better. Uh, they did. He, wow. That's a big play. Jeff, here's a question that maybe we can't answer in the next two minutes or so as this game uh, wraps up. But. I think it's an interesting thing for us to think about. Maybe I'll pose this to LaMarca. Which teams do you think are one injury away from being the number one pick? Because, I mean, we saw it happen with the Colts. Yeah. That led them to Andrew Luck. We've seen it happen over the course of time in different sports. You know, the Spurs with David Robinson led them to Tim Duncan. It's happened. Um, I think the Seahawks if Russell Wilson goes down and I know he's never been injured in his career in a way that he'd have to miss games. He's actually the current leader for the Ironman record uh, for active players. Touchdown. Is that Hawkinson? I think so. I believe it is. There you go. TJ Hawkinson with the late score minute left to go. Looks like we might get a little OT here. So maybe we do have enough time to answer this question. I, I think that the Seahawks without Russell Wilson could be really bad because their offense is predicated on him. And when he's not there, they're just going to run the ball even more than they probably already do. So teams will be able to stack the box. Mm-hmm. And 
Seattle's defense is god awful. Well, and here's another question to follow on up. Who the heck is Seattle's backup quarterback? Is it Geno Smith? <laughs> it was for a period of time. Let's pull up the Seahawks depth chart. The other thing about Seattle is they're in a division where, you know, they lose Russell Wilson, they're going to get smoked every game. Like, yep. No, Tampa Bay, Daniel, Tampa Bay's defense is too good if Brady went down. Geno Smith is their backup. Danny Etling is also there. Shout out Danny Etling. Danny Etling, yeah. What about, um, I mean, I think Atlanta is definitely in that conversation. Like, if For Atlanta sure. Went down, oh, they'd get well, it. we can even look at, we can even look at the teams that we have in our grouping here, right? If sure. Goff goes down in Detroit, obviously. Uh, Zach Wilson, obviously. Houston, who knows who's playing quarterback. Houston it actually Sam Darnold. Matter. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Sam Darnold, obviously. Well, and Derek Hurts, obviously. Vegas, who's who's uh Mariota's not there anymore, correct? No, he still is there, isn't he actually? Okay, Wait. let's see. Marcus Mariota. That's actually, you know what? That's actually a tip of the cap. I'm going to take the Raiders off my my potential to be just because okay. they have Yeah, it is Mariota. Okay, so so I I'll say Mariota and the Raiders they're not in that conversation. I'm I'm going to take them out. You know what, Congo Cab? Take them out. I'm going to take them out. Maybe that was overkill by us. I forgot they got some good depth at the quarterback. That deserves a little respect. Ser- okay. I'm serious too. We have they're removed gone. them from the list. They're removed. They're gone. But with one injury, we think Wilson. I think the Seahawks is a good call by you guys. I mean, it's, it's correct. Like Pete Carroll's not a guy who's going to coach himself out of a situation like that. He's been riding the coattails of of Russell Wilson for a long time. Like, if, if, if Wilson went down, a, a Dallas Cowboys-esque season would be on tap, and it would even be worse because they wouldn't be playing the New York Giants and Washington every week. They'd be playing the Rams and uh, the 49ers. Who would just in fact, roll. let's throw every NFC East team in that discussion. If Dak, Daniel Jones – or Fitzpatrick goes down, I think all of those teams are in the discussion. Uh, for I don't think if Fitzpatrick one. went down, Washington would be in that discussion. Because their defense okay, so is you, So you defense think Daniel Jones, though, for sure? Daniel Jones, yeah, I think that one's – oh, wait, they have Case Keenum. True, think, and he did win a game last year. Yeah, I think actually Dallas – I think Dallas is the main one. Without okay. Dak, you know, they're hmm. just – they're not good enough. I don't think they're good enough. So, yeah. I, it would hurt the New York Giants – I think the Giants are more in running for that than Washington, for sure. What about Arizona? Yeah, Arizona would be another one. I, is Brett Hundley? Like, who's their backup? Yeah, and he stinks. I think it's Brett Hundley. If it is, I mean, that's not good. No, it's Colt McCoy. No, that's still. Yeah, Arizona oh. would be in the running, too. Okay. All right, here we go. Detroit, all three timeouts, 22 seconds to go. They need a yeah. field goal to win. They hand the they, ball off. Looks like they're playing the for overtime. Are they even going to take a timeout? Oh, you Carry on Johnson coward. with the run. You Matt coward. Prater. Yeah, warming up for a 90-yard field goal. You got to get just pat. Yeah, they're not even calling a timeout. So they're playing for OT. Overtime it is. Coward. We're trying to come up with the teams that we think are a quarterback injury away from being the team selecting number one overall in the draft. I would not put the Rams in that discussion. I think their their team is too solid. I think that uh, McVay is too good of a coach, so Rams are out of it for me. Yeah, I agree. I think the Niners, they have Trey Lance, obviously, and we think he's going to be good at some point, so I just feel weird putting them in that discussion. Mm-hmm. We did the NFC East. NFC South, I think the Saints very could very well be in that discussion if Jameis is awful and gets hurt and Taysom is their quarterback and is batting. I mean – you really trust an Ian book to get out there and win you NFL games? Probably not. I think the saints are right for that discussion. Must be saying Baltimore. Lamarca was pretty high on the Ravens last night when we were talking about them. And it's kind of convinced me that I need to start thinking about the Ravens more seriously. I'm going to hold off on having Baltimore in that discussion. I think Baltimore would probably be able to do enough run the ball defense they're in kind of a tough division though so yeah it's we had atlanta we had atlanta on there tampa i agree with you has too much talent on the defensive side of the ball yeah too much talent 
AFC if Scrape, East. Scrape L wins. Swift is 28 yards away from the bonus. It's just an interesting thing to think about. We can continue to think about it throughout the offseason here. we got plenty of time before preseason gets underway. Just under eight minutes to go here in the first overtime period. Jeff, where are you in the free roll? Second and four here for Detroit. Let's do a little update. It's not going to be a good one. Uh, I'm in. I'm in 77. Need, need Kenny Galladay to just score a 90-yard touchdown. Get me back to respectability here. <laughs> Lions with the first down. They're driving, looking good on this drive here. Where are you? To, uh, you still in the running the or no? You well, I'll it? I'll check that out in a second. I want to check out the contests here. We have a seven-way tie for first place in the $250 free contest for Detroit and Cleveland. And we have a solo leader in the free contest for the early slate, MJP3390. He has Nick Chubb in his lineup, so that helped him out as Nick Chubb hit the bonus. In the free roll, let's see, I was in the 20s the last time I checked. I'm now in 74th. So the free fall has continued to spiral. I don't have Nick Chubb in my lineup, so that probably accounted for my big drop. Stafford, lots of time finding his man. Oh, no, he dropped it. Okay. Thought he had it there for a second. I, look, if, if, regardless of my take on the Raiders, and I do think that we probably besmirched them a bit too much by putting them in the bottom. Besmirched is a good word. The sixth conversation. I love how confident Congo Cab and Tide Raider and all the Raider fans are. Raider fans are crazy, man. Brother Phil actually earlier, and I lost his comment, he was ranking like the craziest fans, and uh, it's just a lot of stuff has been said since then, so I can't well, find craziest, it. Craziest, as in just like absolute lunatic. I, I feel like the Eagles fans are the craziest, but it's more because they're so manical about their team. So he had, I think he had the Bills in there, and I think he sure. may have had the Cowboys. I think you're really dead on putting the Eagles in there. I'd put Raiders fans right up there, man. Oh, yeah. yeah they yeah. are crazy rabid for their team. It doesn't matter how bad they are or how mediocre they are. They're going to stand by them and have Super Bowl expectations every single year. Sean yeah. Preston asking who's in first place in our contest. I'm assuming that means it's Sean Preston. So congratulations to you, sir. Right. As the Lions continue to drive down the field. Hopefully Matt Stafford doesn't pull a Drew Brees from yesterday taking two 25-yard sacks to push his team out of field goal range to win the game. Do you remember that, Jeff? I that do. Wasn't pleasant. No, I do. Uh, one of the more ridiculous That was quite frustrating. We saw. It, is, it is in Max. Oh, well, that's going to do it. Ball game. Danny Amendola, second touchdown of the Sim. Love that. That's going to shoot me up the contest. Somebody. Obviously, I have him in my lineup. I'm sure people have them in their captain spot for flexibility wow. purposes. So very interested to see how that affects mm. everything. Jeff, do you have anyone in mind for awards? Well, it's really as close we wrap right up now. This overtime? Really close right now. We got Danny Amendola, two touchdown receptions, 85 yards, six receptions, and Nick Chubb, 136 yards, two rushing touchdowns. Oh, boy. I, I think you got to go with – Amendola for the uh, for the ownership. Yeah, let's give it to Danny Amendola. He's fifty four hundred. All right. Too. Yeah, you know what? He only he only, he only got outscored by two points. So we'll give it to Danny Amendola. Two touchdowns, eighty five yards. Not my kid award. I'll just look at my lineup and see who stunk there. Um, I think I think I mean, OBJ to, OBJ's got to be in that conversation. Yeah, we're we're going to give it to Odell. It's really easy. Three catches, sixty eight percent owned, and seven points. That's terrible. Not coming Brother, through for the. For the peeps brother phil had the raiders one dog pound two bills three so yeah a lot of crazy fan bases out there Good maybe ranking. we can dedicate a sim to that one of these days have everyone kind of plead their case why their fan base is the best or worst maybe you are ashamed of your fan base but coming up next Damn. on the dream stream ross tucker joe dolan they're going to discuss the fantasy impact on the titans and falcons following that julio jones trade from a couple of weeks ago Coming up on the dream stream in Madden World at six o'clock, you got me, you got Lamarca, Niners at Jaguars. Jeff, happy Father's Day, buddy. I will yeah, probably see you again at some point uh, this week here on the dream stream. 
Yeah, no, fun hanging out for a couple Sims, DK Sim fam. Hope everybody has a great Father's Day, whether you agree with my take on holidays or not. <laughs> Shout out to all the dads. We'll talk to you guys in a bit. to eat what are you hungry for sit down and get ready to consume an abundance of fantasy football knowledge from ross tucker and joe dolan eat me now i'm starving on the fantasy feast eating podcast yeah let's eat baby it is the fantasy feast eating podcast presented by DraftKings. the best 30 minutes of on-demand audio and video, youtube.com slash Ross Tucker NFL. Related to fantasy football, you will get each and every week. We're getting closer and closer to Joe's tiers, which are very popular. Tiers of Dolan. Cannot wait in August when we go through that. We also, starting next week, will start to let you know about the best ball drafts against me and Joe. I'm Ross Tucker, former NFL offensive lineman that greatly enjoys not only playing fantasy football, but fantasy analysts. They're psychos. They've got the disease. They've got the sickness. They live and breathe this thing all day, every day. 
like our guy Joe Dolan at FG underscore Dolan, the fantasy gangster from fantasypoints.com. Just use the code 21 feet. There is not a single fantasy website I'm aware of that has more employees, more contributors than fantasypoints.com. When are you guys going to hire me, Joe, to be your O-line guy? Do you already have an O-line guy? Uh, actually, as a matter of fact, Ross, uh, we were, uh, I was asked by somebody just this week about who's your o- O-line expert on the site. And I'm like, well, you know, uh, we kind of just, uh, that, that's one of the things that we, 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 maybe we're missing something. Hey, Ross, talk to me after the show. <laughs> All right. Well, I, look, talk to I me after the you, show. I can send you my rankings. We can do it that yeah. way. Um, that'd be awesome. By the way, Joe, you know, I love you. Yeah. You're not looking great. Now, number one, we're well, recording this earlier than we normally do. Yeah. Number two, I cannot believe, and we're going to get into the Julio, jo- Julio Jones trade from both the Titans' perspective, the Falcons' perspective for fantasy. We got to talk Jamison Crowder. We even got to talk about some of these mini camp reports on certain skill guys. I can't believe they choked again, Joe. I, I mean, Uh-oh. knowing you're a Sixers fan. I, I just have to bring it up. I cannot believe they blew it again. The, the last three nights have been the worst three consecutive nights of basketball watching in my entire life. Yeah, I mean, everybody's getting hurt in the NBA, and uh, I'm getting hurt. Ross, I have a terrible hangover right now. Um, I, the Evan Williams was po- pouring last night. You know, I, I stick to the cheap stuff when uh, when I'm watching basketball because – uh, the, of the chances that I'm going to drink a lot of it. Uh, Ross, I didn't even have my first one until the second half. And uh, I was I, I, I opened it as a celebratory drink. And, I, Ross, I'm just so so entirely sick of it. The series isn't over. I understand that. But, like, you know, when there's an NBA All-Star, and I'm not naming names here, who gets a standing ovation for performing basic basketball tasks, sometimes at some point I just get frustrated, you know. I was uh, I, I was not a particularly uh, great basketball player, and my mom would tell me it was because I was way too timid, and I agree with that. When I was playing sports when I was growing up, I was super timid. Uh, I, if I could do it all over again, I would just be way more aggressive. But one thing I would never be is a good free throw shooter. I'm a terrible free throw shooter. Um, and I remember in eighth grade, we were playing. I was playing for St. Jane CYO, and we were playing at Holy Family Gym. And I got fouled late in the game, and I made two free throws. And, like, the the, the cheerleaders, the St. James cheerleaders did, like, a Joe rocks the house because the cheerleaders knew I was a bad free throw shooter. And I, this was me in eighth grade, and I, and I have zero athleticism. And when a crowd of 18,000 people needs to give somebody standing ovation for making a couple of free throws, I mean, uh, give me a break. I'm, Ross, the series isn't over. Um, I, I might, I might be fair weather the next couple of games. If, if, if things are looking good, maybe I'll flip the game on, but I can't put myself mentally through that. I can't put my liver through that. Um, I'm, I'm feeling like crap today. Um, so yeah, there we go. Uh, uh, you know, I, it's so funny, Joe, because I'm, my favorite team is my high school, like, and I follow along, but they usually win my high school football team. Other than that, like college in the NFL, that's my profession, so I don't really cheer or, like, get that into it. I would say the team that means the most next to that is the Sixers probably. Like, mm. I care. I, I, when the Sixers are good, I like watching them, and it's painful. Like, it is painful. And then I hate the Nets, too. So the last three nights have been so painful for mm-hmm. me. I hate everything about the Nets. I don't like their players. I don't like their fake fans. I don't like the super team aspect and how they put them together. It's just, it's been the three worst nights that I can remember in a long time, which is why I'm glad to talk fantasy football, Joe, with you here on the Fantasy Feast podcast. Major fantasy implications of the Julio Jones trade. We did not talk about it last week because we had recorded that show earlier, because I was at the beach with my family. So let's dive into it. Let's start with the Titans, and let's Mm -hmm. start with Julio Jones. Yeah, Is this a good spot for him with 
run heavy Derrick Henry with A.J. Brown. What does this do for Julio first? Well, first and foremost, um, Ross, he's going at around the fourth round right now, and I think that's overall fair for Julio Jones. I, I do. Um, uh, the volume is going to go down for Julio Jones. We know that, but you hope that he makes up for it with uh, with with efficiency. And now he's never been a touchdown scorer, but you think he's going to maybe come in there and replicate what what Corey Davis did last year. Um, in their 15 games together last year, uh, uh, Corey Davis averaged six and a half targets, while AJ Brown averaged seven point eight. I think Julio Jones can do some damage on six and a half to seven targets per game. And you would think that getting Julio Jones, look, I understand Corey Davis had a breakout year. Julio Jones is now 32. But when you look at this trade from, from the Titans perspective, I still have a hard time saying that Julio Jones isn't better than Corey Davis. You know, yes, the injuries have been a problem, but he still plays at a higher level than Corey Davis has. And our guy, Graham Barfield, came up with a really good article on, on fantasypoints.com, but he pointed out that according to Sports Info Solutions, in 2020, Julio ranked in fourth in yards gained per route run, and he was first, 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 second, and fifth in the five seasons prior to last year. So he is still playing uh, at a very high level. Per Sports Info Solutions, he was fourth in expected points added per target when he saw throws of 15 or more yards downfield. The only guys better than that – on deep throws last year were Curtis Samuel, Emmanuel Sanders, and Justin Jefferson. So Julio Jones is still an elite deep threat. And I kind of think that's what he's going to be for the Titans. You know, I know Calvin Ridley is there in Atlanta, and Calvin Ridley has kind of taken over as the number one from what that we look at from a fantasy perspective. But he's got a different kind of receiver opposite him now in A.J. Brown. A.J. Brown is a true alpha dog X. Um, it allows Julio to be moved around. I think they'll they'll move him around. I think they'll move Brown around a little bit. Remains to be seen um, if they're going to go with a, pr a primary slot receiver, if they're going to play 12 personnel in Tennessee. But I just think they are looking at this as a trade that makes their offense more explosive. Julio's ADP is, is fair. Um, before the trade, it was 44th overall, which is late fourth round. I, I think he's probably going to stick in that range, go into the fifth round. I think there was a lot of uh, uh, of consideration that he might be traded built into that. I'm in on Julio for best ball formats because while his volume is going to go hugely down, I mean, Atlanta in the Julio Jones-Matt Ryan era, especially in the recent uh, half decade or so, has been one of the most pass-heavy teams in the entire NFL, if not the most pass-heavy. That's going down, but I think Julio provides a lot of best ball value at his current price, and especially since, you know, he, there's not the pressure on him to be the 10, 11, 12 target a game guy that he was in Atlanta. What does it mean for A.J. Brown and Josh Reynolds in your mind? Well, Josh Reynolds gets buried. Um, I, I, I still think Josh Reynolds, by the way, can play the slot effectively, but you still wonder if Tennessee is going to be a predominant 12 personnel team. Think um, now uh, Greg Cosell pointed this out to me. The new offensive coordinator there, Downing, he he comes from an 11 personnel background. You know, Scott Linehan is a predominant 11 personnel. So I expect they're going to, to mix that in a little bit more, but they could still run kind of 11 personnel concepts by putting Anthony Ferkser, who's almost exclusively a receiver, into the slot. Um, so I, I wonder if they're going to have like kind of a modified 11 personnel with Jeff Swain as a blocking tight end, or are you going to use Josh Reynolds out of the slot? It's not like Josh Reynolds isn't going to play snaps, but he is now, I mean, he was one of my favorite values as kind of a 13th, 14th round pick if Tennessee didn't make this move. But unfortunately, I think if you were invested early in Josh Reynolds, I think you realize just as well as Tennessee did that Tennessee needed to make this move. It was a move Tennessee needed to do. You want to be a Super Bowl contender, you know, going to the championship game a couple of years ago. Derrick Henry is in his prime. Ryan Tannehill is in his prime. A.J. Brown is in his prime. You look at this offense as one that really needs to take the next step. And this was a trade that needed to be made. Josh Reynolds was not moving the needle for me as somebody to make that offense better. He's now more of a last round or two type of pick for me. AJ Brown. Yeah. He moved down just a couple of spots in my, um, 
in my best ball rankings. I moved him behind Calvin Ridley. You know, I think you can move him behind another guy or two, DeAndre Hopkins. I think I had him at, at wide receiver four, maybe even wide receiver three prior to the trade. To me, he's still a, a top half wide receiver one, uh, one of the top six guys. Um, he's a second round pick, but maybe if you were having trouble breaking the tie between him and, and a Stefan Diggs, or if you were having trouble breaking the tie between him and a DeAndre Hopkins, then maybe this breaks that tie for you because you know the volume isn't a, a, a whole lot of uh, in Tennessee. You know, 7.8 targets per game for A.J. Brown um, in games he played with Corey Davis last year. You're, you think you're, he's probably going to take a, a little bit of an efficiency hit based on where he was, uh, but I still view A.J. Brown as a firm second-round pick in best ball right now. What about Tannehill? Well, let's we'll start with there. What about Tannehill? Yeah, I moved him up pretty high. Um, and, and here's another aspect. Our guy Wes Huber does a really good job in analyzing coverage shells and how and how they affect for fantasy. Ryan Tannehill over the past couple seasons has been arguably the single best um, uh, quarterback against cover three, which is the predominant coverage shell in the NFL. Julio Jones and A.J. Brown have also been two of the three best wide receivers at producing against cover three. So this is a team that is going to absolutely slaughter against that kind of coverage shell. I think Tannehill's efficiency goes up. You know, I moved him past Matthew Stafford in my rankings. If you if you're not getting one of those sexy, sexy running quarterbacks, you know, even like going to, down to and including Jalen Hurts, Ryan Tannehill is firmly one of my favorite quarterback targets, but he's moving up in the world uh, when it comes to uh, – he's moving up in the world when it comes to draft position. Uh, he's firmly in my top ten at the quarterback position right now. Any impact on Derrick Henry, Joe? Uh, yeah. I mean, it's great for Derrick Henry. Now, the volume might go down, but uh, – are you putting eight in the box against A.J. Brown and Julio Jones? Because I'm not. So I think this is a really good um, good uh, development for Derrick Henry. Again, the volume is going to go down. But I think you might look at Derrick Henry and say, well, of course the volume is going to go down. You just can't keep feeding a guy 300 or more targets. I think it's good news for Derrick Henry. Um, I just think the Titans are going to look a little bit different. Um I have him as my RB three. Um, maybe this even open up opens up some some uh, screen game action for him in the underneath area. Uh, I, I I just think that the efficiency is going to be there for Derrick Henry. All in all, I think it's a really good move for the for the Titans from a fantasy perspective. I like it for fantasy. It improves Tannehill. Um, I, I think it's fair for Julio because now I think he's getting drafted at a fair spot. You know, if he got traded to San Francisco or New England. His ADP would have gotten boosted, in my opinion. His ADP might go down from where it is now as that kind of mid to late fourth round pick. In New England, that thing would have risen, and I would have been way out on Julio. I'm in on Julio at that price. A.J. Brown's going to dip a little bit, but I still think he can be efficient. This is, one again, once again, Ross, we use that term, a narrow fantasy team. This is a narrow team. There's going to be um, – you're, you're going to have A.J. Brown and Julio sucking up most of the targets. You know Henry's going to get all the carries. Ryan Tannehill's going to be efficient. Um, the guy who it hurts is, is a late-round guy like Josh Reynolds. I think it hurts Anthony Ferkser a little bit, but people weren't really drafting Ferkser as anything more than a low-end tight end one and, in most instances, tight end two. I think he's still in that tight end two range somewhere I'm willing to dabble. But all in all for Tennessee, I think it's a pretty good fantasy move, and it just – raises the ceiling of the offense as a whole let's get to atlanta um what's the impact on <sighs> this for calvin ridley uh well the impact for calvin ridley is to the moon i mean he's going late first early second round i can't i can't argue with that um he's uh, he's a guy who's he's one of the best route runners in football he's going to continue to get open um now maybe the, maybe he sees fewer double coverage but here's the thing about here's the thing about Calvin Ridley people are like oh you know Julio they're gonna they're gonna focus on Ridley and they're gonna take him away well listen to Calvin Ridley's game logs without Julio Jones over the last two seasons eight for 91 on 10 targets five for 110 on 13 targets Eight for 136 on 10 targets. Six for 50 yards and a touchdown on nine targets. Eight for 124 and a touchdown on 12 targets. 10 for 163 and a touchdown on 14 targets. Five for 130 on nine targets. Eight for 52 on 12 targets. 
the worst fantasy performance, the worst for Calvin Ridley over the last two seasons without Julio Jones in the lineup is 13.2 fantasy points in a PPR. So Calvin Ridley has produced when Julio Jones is out of the lineup. So we're at fantasy points. We have Ridley at wide receiver four. I think you can make an argument for as high as wide receiver two. Um, I, I mean, I know it's a new coaching staff with Arthur Smith, but you look at the defense, you look at the personnel that Atlanta has. Arthur Smith cannot run the same offense he ran in Tennessee. Mike Davis isn't handling that kind of workload in the backfield. Calvin Ridley is a solid bet to lead the NFL targets at this stage. Who else is greatly impacted yeah. in Atlanta? Uh, if you were uh, thinking you could uh, sneak Kyle Pitts into like the seventh round of your draft, forget about it. I mean, uh, Ross, I've done drafts where I've seen him go in the fourth round now. I, I mean, Kyle Pitts is consistently going to be going off the board as a top five tight end. He's not going to slip past that in sharp drafts. I understand it. I mean, at this point, I would almost think you're foolish if you don't project him to have the best rookie season by a tight end of all time, given the talent and the available targets. I, I mean, the guy, the, the, the ceiling is through the moon. The problem is you have to pay for him to be an outlier. I would rather pay for him to be an outlier than say, oh, you know, I think the guy is going to stink uh, because I think the latter is just flat stupid. The question is, how high are you willing to pay? And right now, it might be uncomfortable for people to take a guy like Kyle Pitts two rounds before somebody like Mark Andrews or Dallas Goddard is coming off the board. And I think that's a completely fair reason to be skeptical because there are really good tight end options, even in the back half of those tight end ones who are going at a much cheaper cost than Kyle Pitts. But if you want an impact player and you're like, this team's going to have to throw the football and you buy in on Kyle Pitts, I'm not going to blame you. I'm just telling you, you got to pay up because he is getting drafted as if he is going to have the best rookie season for a tight end of all time. What about your boy, Russell Gage? Yeah, Russell Gage was, was really consistent last year. Um, I moved him into my top 100 players overall. I, I just wonder if, if, if Russell Gage now at this point is somebody who is going to struggle to, you know, get make an impact when he's the clear number two receiver in the offense right now. I mean, look at that depth chart behind uh, Calvin Ridley, Ross. It is not pretty. You know, Russell Gage, you have Alameda Zacchaeus, who is kind of a deep threat. I, I'm, I, He's one of my favorite late-round best ball guys now. They have Frank Darby from Arizona State, who was a sixth-round rookie. You have Christian Blake, uh, who sounds like uh, who sounds like a poet laureate from the 1830s. <laughs> uh, like, so you're, uh, so you're looking at guys on this depth chart who really don't have a whole lot of pedigree. Russell Gage is in my top 100 overall players. I like him as a wide receiver four, wide receiver five. You might view him as a boring option. Maybe, as a matter of fact, maybe somebody like Russell Gage is nice to pair in a wide receiver group in best ball with somebody like a Julio, who you feel is probably going to have a few blow-up games. I'm not sure Gage is going to have blow-up games, but I just expect him to be peppered with targets, much in the same way like somebody like Jamison Crowder was last year. Um, let's get to the New York Jets. Before we do, by the way, how about the fact, I don't know if you can still get it, but right now, DraftKings Sportsbook, if you use the promo code Ross, they're giving you a hundred to one odds on Bryson DeChambeau getting a birdie during the tournament this weekend. Like, they're kind of giving you a hundred dollars. Like he's going to get at least one birdie. What What are we doing? Here? It is the U.S. Open, Ross. Though you know they make those conditions tough. He'll get at least one. I mean, come on. The way he hits the ball, he's gonna yeah. look. He might get some bogeys too, but he's gonna get a birdie. So put a dollar on Bryson DeChambeau. Watch him have a birdie. Get a hundred bucks. Use the code Ross. That's how you do it. How do the Jets do it? When it comes to throwing the football, Joe, Crowder reworked his contract. Mm -hmm. I did not think this was going to happen. I, I thought with them drafting Elijah Moore, I thought Crowder was going to tell him to stick it. I thought Crowder was going to get cut and or traded with the Jets taking some of the money. I am a little surprised by this, and I'm curious where Crowder fits in now for you. Um, he's still a super late round pick for me. Um, one thing that I have to point out is it's a new staff. 
So you have Robert Sala coming in there. Obviously, you have LaFleur as the offensive coordinator. Um, That's not to say Jamison Crowder can't contribute to this team, but you said it yourself. You said, I thought he was going to tell them to shove it and he was going to get cut. The fact that they told him to take a pay cut tells you, like, hey, dude, you know, thanks for your service, but new staff, kind of new regime. You're out there, you sign Keelan Cole, and you sign Corey Davis, and Denzel Mims is in his second season. And then you draft Elijah Moore, who I think can do more than be a slot receiver. But I think when you project him early in his career to be, that's where you probably line him up is in the slot. And I was reading an article uh, from uh, Connor Hughes of The Athletic, who does a nice job covering the Jets. And he said, like, Elijah Moore was, like, far and away the best player at Jets OTAs. Now, we always get these rookie hype pieces, but... You know, Elijah Moore was a guy I liked in the pre-draft process. I actually had him going in the first round mentally. I didn't do a full mock draft myself, but I had Elijah Moore going in the first round. Um, I thought it was great value for the Jets in the second round. And I think ultimately that Elijah Moore is going to take that job from Jamison Crowder as the predominant slot receiver. And the best chance Jamison Crowder has to be that predominant slot receiver is if Elijah Moore, they decide he could do more and he plays outside. You know Corey Davis is going to be the number one. They paid him to be the number one. Or at least he's going to get every shot to be that X. Um, so he's he's locked in. I think, I think it's going to be hard to keep Elijah Moore off the field. So Jamison Crowder has to hope Elijah Moore, in my opinion, uh, takes the job from Keelan Cole or Denzel Mims, somebody on the perimeter, um, and they think that uh, that he's going to contribute in that regard. But then I look at the Jets' receiving core, and, you know, they don't have a Calvin Ridley, but look at the Jets' depth vis-a-vis that of the Atlanta Falcons. And you're like, man, they've got some names here, Ross. Like, they've got guys, you know, Bryson Berrios is still there. They've got guys who have contributed. Uh, in the past. So you've got a, a, a decent uh, a group of receivers for Zach Wilson, who, you know, in a lot of drafts is still going undrafted. As of right now, I think he's only one of two rookie quarterbacks guaranteed to start in week one. So maybe there's some value there because I think the Jets have more weapons than uh, than the conventional wisdom might, might suggest. You mentioned something I think is important, and it's great because I wanted to ask you about it anyway. You talked about the Elijah Moore camp reports. Mm-hmm. So I remember we had one of your guys on, I think it was Scott Barrett, who said that he watches every post-draft press conference. Yep. So now that's different because that's the coaches talking. But what I want to know is, what do you do with mini camp? OTA reports what like is it uh means a lot means a little somewhere in the middle or means a lot means nothing somewhere in the middle depends on the source like what are we what are we doing with this somewhere in the middle um now of of course when we when we analyze and we're we've got guys in the pre-draft process we like by the way Scott Barrett's Elijah Moore was like his guy so like so that's why I was turned on to Elijah Moore in the first place. Um, but when it when it comes to these reports, I file them away. I'd surely, surely like a guy to have positive reports more so than negative reports. If a guy doesn't have anything, you know, I don't really care about that. But then you want to confirm it. You want to confirm it into training camp when the whole team's there and they're starting to ramp up. And if Connor Hughes is saying in August, guys, I'm telling you, Elijah Moore is still out there kicking ass. I'm especially going to make note. If Elijah Moore looks good in the preseason, I'm especially going to make note. Oh, my God, Ross, how nice is it to have a normal offseason this year? Uh, uh, I'm, I'm excited that we're going to be able to, to look at some of these guys during the preseason. But I put it somewhere in between. I like I want to hear positive reports uh, more so than negative reports. But for a guy like Elijah Moore, who was a high, he was a premium pick. He, I know he wasn't a first rounder, but a top 40 pick is a premium pick. Um you look at the, the the draft capital, the talent level, the fact that they asked Jamison Crowder to take a pay cut to even stay on the roster, that all spells good news for Elijah Moore for me. Got it. Um, I want to get to a question, Joe. We don't do this very often, but if our listeners ever take advantage of any of the sponsors, whether it's DraftKings or Fantasy Points using the code 21FEAST, and you send me a question, I'm going to ask Joe. You take advantage of one of our sponsors. Ask Joe or me the question. 
This comes to us, Joe, from Jan. I have a fantasy question for you. I apologize in advance for somewhat long-winded part of this, which is to give some background. I've been in two leagues for a long time. I have a theory I wanted to run by you. All the experts insist you draft running backs first and often. Because I was drafting 10th out of 12, I drafted heavy on wide receivers. I had four of the top 10 points producers due to my belief that there are only a few running backs that truly get heavy workloads. Most teams have running backs by committees. Mm -hmm. Long story short, I won the league with by far the best record and cleaned up in the playoffs due to my wide receivers just crushing it. My team was the only one that used this tactic. So, is this a reflection of the past proliferation in the NFL and a monumental change in fantasy football or just an aberration? Uh, it sounds like Jan accidentally dis- uh, discovered zero RB. <laughs> like, like without without uh, explicitly going out and doing so. Um, so, no, Jan, it is it, – to call it an aberration would be false because that is a strategy that has worked out for a lot of people like Sean Siegel in, in big money leagues when he, you know, came out writing that article uh, all those years ago. It was especially effective last year, Ross, because of the number of bell cow running backs who missed action. Saquon Barkley, Christian McCaffrey, you know, Ezekiel Elliott, uh, was in an offense that was broken after Dak Prescott went down. So all these high draft picks ended up biting the biting the dust because of injuries or other reasons. Two years ago, it was a very bad year for zero running backs because all the big time running backs stayed healthy and played well. It was a really great year for those first round running backs. So if you average it out, like and you're like, well, it's an aberration because all the running backs got hurt. That's not necessarily fair because I think you can have a zero RB success even in a year where there's teams that that uh, excuse me when, when big time running backs don't get injured. I think it's just a little bit harder. But I think you're playing the averages when you play zero RB. Oh, these guys are going to get hurt. We're artificially bumping some guys up because we think they're going to be a bell cow running back. You know, for instance, I might look at to, to bring into Atlanta, you know, Mike Davis is going in the fourth and fifth round. Miles Gaskin of the Dolphins is going in the fourth and fifth round because people think these guys are going to be bell cows. Um, and every single year there are guys drafted in the first and second round who crap out at that price. Um this also brings me to another uh, article that Scott Barrett wrote last year, which was bell cow or bust. He was looking at this and saying, I want a bell cow running back, but if I don't get a bell cow running back, I'm loading up or on wide receivers. You know, I think people take the zero RB and they're like, oh, that means you don't draft a running back until like the 12th round. Some people have done that. That's not really what it means. You know, I, I, I think modified zero RB is something that I've employed in the past where, all right, I've got my first running back. I took my Derrick Henry at number four overall. I got Saquon Barkley at six this year because I think he's going to bounce back. But I'm going to, I'm not going to force the issue at the running back position elsewhere. I'm not going to take Miles Sanders in the second round if I don't feel good about his role. I'm not going to take Clyde Edwards Alaire in the second round if I don't feel good about his role. Not to say I don't like those players, but I'm just making an example. And I'm just going to take the best player on the board. Like, dude, that is a very viable strategy. I don't think it's, it's a reflection of the pass heaviness of the NFL, though that makes it a lot more viable. I just think it's a reflection that there are multiple ways to build a winning fantasy team and loading up at wide receiver, maybe taking an elite tight end, maybe investing in somebody like a Lamar Jackson or Kyler Murray, a quarterback who's going to run and then supplementing them in later rounds with handcuff running backs or pass catching running backs who are going to get you uh, just a handful of points every week. And maybe you end up lucking out on the waiver wire. I mean, that's an extremely viable way to build a fantasy team. And no, it's not something you got lucky with. You you employed the right strategy. Um, you you had a reason, a sound reasoning behind it. The board didn't fall the way it needed to for you to get that bell cow running back. And if I can take a bell cow running back in the first round, I'm doing it. But there's not there's not 12 of those guys. There's not 24 of those guys. So 
Yeah, I like some of the second-round running backs. I like Joe Mixon this year quite a bit. I like that Gio Bernard is gone in Cincinnati. You know, but if you don't feel comfortable doing that, man, there are some really damn good wide receivers and tight ends available in those first couple rounds, and you can employ zero RB again this year. At FG underscore Dolan, follow this man. Go to FantasyPoints.com. Use the code 21FEAST. He's an absolute stud. They all are over there. And I love questions like that. Go to RossTucker.com, the sponsor of Pet Tab. See which one, which code you want to use. Send it to me, Ross at RossTucker.com, after you take advantage of it. And ask Joe a question. It's a great time of year to get Joe's answers to thoughts like that. That was awesome. Thank you very much, Jan. Other than that, I'm stuffed. We're done. Thanks for listening to the Fantasy Feast podcast. Make sure to also subscribe to the Ross Tucker football podcast, Even Money, Business of Sports, and the College Draft. All available at Apple Podcasts, RossTucker.com, or wherever podcasts can be found. A lot of times on the show, I mention DraftKings. Here's what you need to know. you got to be 21 or older, New Jersey, Indiana, or Pennsylvania only. New customers only. Restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com slash sportsbook for details. Gambling problem? Call 100Gambler or in Indiana, 1-800-9-WITH-IT. By the way, if what I was talking about included a deposit bonus, doesn't always. Sometimes it does. Deposit bonus requires 25 times playthrough, and deposit bonuses are paid out in site credit.
We are back. It is the Dream Stream. Madden's in the building. Niners, Jaguars, LaMarca. What is going on, buddy? Uh, not much out there. Happy Father's Day to all the fathers out in DK Sim fam. Um, I'm sure there's at least a couple of you. And, uh, you know, my own dad ain't watching, but shout out to you, Pops. <laughs> Shout out to the dads. Shout out to my dad as well. I don't think he's watching, uh, but he's a good dad. So happy Father's Day. We talked about Father's Day quite a bit on the last sim. Jeff, anti-Father's Day as a father. Of course he is. Yeah. He's a salty Canadian. I also found out that he doesn't like Christmas on the last sim. I think he's just anti-fun. Yeah. Unbelievable. No. All right. So we got the Niners. We got the Jaguars. We have a free roll in place. Were you able to get a lineup in? I did. I made a lineup. I, I was okay. bright and early to this sim, guys. You were. You were in like about, we'll say, four minutes earlier than you normally are on the Zoom. What? Why right, were you is, so free today, Lamar? Which was like five minutes till kickoff, but still. <laughs> <laughs> um, I didn't take my usual nap. You know, I have okay. a little gap in between when my shift ends uh-huh. and my first sim usually starts. Sometimes I'll try to power in a a quick nap smart Uh, and i am always gonna oversleep my naps it's just yeah i'm it's something that has been true of me for years if i want to sleep for an hour it's going to be an hour 15 you know what i'm saying yeah are you are you a multiple alarms guy are you a multiple snooze guy like what where do you sit on that spectrum no but my i set a real physical alarm because my iphone alarm does not wake me up oh okay so you have like the ring ring type of clock correct do you I mean not like it? an old school jingly clock ding, 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 ding. but i have a digital clock that makes up yeah. Beep, beep, beep. yeah yeah those you cannot sleep through those it's much much tougher i'm not gonna For say sure. i've never slept through that one but it's much tougher i um, used to have one of those I, it was lost over the moves over the years i mean it's really I, become obsolete technology unless you're like me and can sleep through a hurricane, which I and literally need it. Done. Right. All right. So lineups have locked. Yeah. So let's go ahead and hear what you got for this lineup here. And then I'll go ahead and give you the winning lineup afterwards. Yo, not, in case guy. you guys haven't Dude, heard. You got the swagger up. Swagger. I'm a champion, baby. I'm a champion. We are the champions, my friend. Um, All right, Lamar, who you got? Uh, George Kittle for my Father's Day lineup. He's my captain. Okay. Uh, the mighty most, Raheem Mostert. DJ Chark. DJ Chark. Debo, get the table, Samuel. Okay. Uh, Kendrick, born to be wild. Yep. And Tyler, I have no nickname, Eifert. <laughs> so we have four crossover players here. I have Mostert in the captain spot. Niners DST, The Born Identity, DJ Jerk, Chris Conley, and George Kittle. So we're going to be rooting for a lot of the same dudes in this one. That always makes for a fun time. Little community feel. Free to party. Do your thing. We got the Drew Stack here. We got Jim doing the scoring. Happy Father's Day. Jim. 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 I'm working with Glash for the first time in what feels like weeks i am working not that with i'm not Lash. excited to be with you for these times, but... I, dude i understand it oh my god big oh i thought it was going to be a house call there big big play on the first offensive play Yo, of the game dante pettis the makes plays in these sense dante pettis sneaky sneaky guy you got to have in your lineup sometimes here in sinland uh, I'm working with Glash for the first time since I looked it up, uh, May 25th, and then the last time I worked with him before that, April 20th. Wow! And even with all that, I still have probably done more Sims with Glash than any other commentator. So it's it's weird how little we have worked together over the last two months. But yeah, I he's mean, a busy WNBA star now. No doubt, know? my man's got stuff going on. He's busy, dude. His availability changed. Mine I think, didn't. I got I think left real in the dust. Soon, 
real soon we're gonna move to your most most used combination yeah i know we've got sure. ground to make up but yeah working like five six <laughs> together a week at this point yeah i think that the weekends you might already be number two with the amount of weekend sims we've done together <laughs> over the past two months and we got two summer months ahead of doing a whole lot of sims here so thanks for joining us here love a good sunday in Simland. Niners driving here on their first possession of the game. Third and one. Garoppolo's got three to the left. Hands the ball off to Mostert. That looks like a first down. I think they gave it to him. We'll take a look at the contests here as the sim goes along. We'll wait until things happen here before we updo update you. Lamarca, I have a sort of a random question. I love random. Throw at you here early, but it, it's something that popped into my head towards the end of my last sim with Jeff and I, I figured you probably will have a different take than Jeff did because it's just such a random question. What are the few teams that come to mind for you that are one injury away from being a number one pick team in the NFL? So for example, Colts lose Peyton Manning back in the day change them from being a the Super Bowl contender pick. all the way to having the number one pick with Andrew Luck. The one right. team that came to mind for me was the Seahawks. I think without Russell Wilson, they could be in number one pick territory. That's, I think that's reasonable. The team that, that immediately jumped out to me, and it might not take an injury, it might take a trade, but the Packers. Packers, Sons, Aaron Rodgers have the potential to be among the worst teams in football. Their defense isn't bad, but like going from Rodgers to Jordan Love, that's a that's a monster monster downgrade. For sure. I honestly Packers did not even come up in conversation. Uh so I I'm glad I asked you some of the teams we came up with Dallas, obviously we, we saw what happened with sure. Saints, Falcons. Interesting. Who's the injury on the Saints? So most hurt with the touchdown here. So we said if either one of those dudes gets injured, Taysom or J Jameis, if they're the starter, it could it could send them in a downturn. Because if they prepare their whole offense to revolve around one of those two dudes who are two very different quarterbacks, and then they go down, it could be bad. Especially mm -hmm. with the, the different, uh, you know, locker room leader situation there in New Orleans. So we, we I don't threw them it. in the conversation. Um, we thought the Falcons without Matt Ryan could be pretty bad. And, uh, yeah, Arizona we threw in there as well. Arizona then, makes sense. The uh, the teams, and I'm sure there's more, but, we, again, we came up with this late in last sim. Basically, this list is just which teams have the biggest gap between their starting quarterback and their backup quarterback. Yeah, and also how strong is the rest of their rosters, right? Like, right. if Matt Stafford goes down, I don't think the Rams are going to be, uh, you know, in the number one picks conversation. Fair point. But, you know, a guy like we said the Eagles, if Jalen Hurts goes down, they could be in a world of trouble. And in fact, we had, uh, before we did the one injury conversation, we were talking about, like, which teams, as they sit presently, do we think are in the number one pick conversation in general? We had the Lions, the Texans, the Panthers. Sorry, your Jets. But actually, okay. I think you probably wouldn't be all that upset about that. You I think the Lions and the Texans are there. in their own tier. Yep. And we, and we thought the Panthers were there with them. We said those were kind of the three teams that we felt not that great about. And we said the Eagles, too, just because, you know, new head coach. We don't know what Jalen Hurts is going to be. The, the the Raiders were in the conversation, but we were talked out of it when we realized Marcus Mariota is their backup. And, you know, it, so if Carr goes down, Mariota can still win a game. So... You know, we always talk about the teams we think are going to be good. I had Jeff putting us in a negative mindset. I figured, let's talk about the teams that are going to be bad. <laughs> and, See, and plus the Lions were in front of our face. Dragon milk. I'm not sure what that means. Hot milk, maybe? Fire-breathing dragon? Explain that to me, CEH. What is the dragon milk? I would try it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.
That's like that Hannibal Barris uh, sketch. He's like, if somebody offered you penguin, would you eat it? <laughs> I think I'd pay fifty dollars for a penguin sandwich. <laughs> That, you know what? There are very few exotic meats that I would turn down. My feeling on it is if there is a group of people that decide that this thing is tasty, then there has to be some part of it that's tasty, and I'll give it a shot. I don't think anybody's ever decided that penguin is tasty. It's more just like, <laughs> I don't know if anybody's eating it. I'm sure that people in Arctic climates have had That's it. what I mean. Yeah, like, I'm sure, like... But you know what? It hasn't made its way mainstream, so it can't be that good. Yeah, but how many Eskimos are making it, you know, to the mainstream? Well, I'm just saying somebody would have been up there and been like, hmm, this is delicious. I got to import some of this penguin here. It it might be an expense thing, you know? (laughs) I'm in on penguin. I'll eat penguin. Jaguar's (laughs) driving here. Exciting first quarter. Might have to take a look at the contests before I originally intended to. (laughs) We did not have the Jaguars in either conversation. We probably should have had the Jags in the if Lawrence goes down number one pick conversation. But we feel as though, at least Moose and I did, and I think you're the same way. That Tim Tebow can lead them to a couple wins? (laughs) You know what? Maybe not. No. Um... We felt like Trevor Lawrence is good for about four wins. And if you win yeah, four I, games, you're not it picking would not number one. Shock me. It would not shock me, again, I guess, if they finish with the number one pick again. Yeah. But I do expect them to be a little bit better than teams like the Texans and the Lions, assuming that Lawrence does stay healthy. And Jeff had asked me which of those groupings did I think I am most confident about being the number one pick. And I said Houston because it just if if all things are the same between the Lions and Texans as far as being bad teams, especially if Deshaun Watson doesn't play, the negativity cloud feels a lot darker and larger over Houston. And it just feels like it's time for them to be the number one pick team again. You know? I think I've, all of this assumes no Deshaun Watson. If Perfect. Deshaun Watson plays, they don't Six deserve wins. to be necessarily in number one pick contention. Although, I guess they did only win four games last year with him. Yeah, so. really bad last year. <laughs> Third and 15 here for the Jags. DFS Queenie says, it is in fact not legal to catch or eat penguins. Okay, good to know. Are they any endangered the species? Chris Conley with the tud. Chris Conley sounds like a dude I would have had like 10th grade biology with. Like, oh yeah, I sat next to Chris Conley in biology in high school. Are Comes penguins like endangered? Ground. I have to imagine. It seems like every animal is endangered at this point. Yeah, that's fair. Which is sad. It is sad. I like animals. I'm going to go to the zoo with my parents when they're in town. St. Louis has one of the best zoos in the country. It's It's one of those things that they always claim. They're like, oh, we have the second best zoo. I've never huh. heard of the St. Louis Zoo, but and then again, neither did I until I moved I am here. Far yeah. from a zoo, uh, a zoologist. Yes. <laughs> People always talk about the San Diego Zoo, which I've heard is really nice. Um, but yeah, I had never heard of the St. Louis Zoo until I moved here, and everyone's like, "Oh, you gotta go to the zoo! It's the second best zoo in the country." All right, oh, Joker yeah. pointing it out, saying that the penguins live in the South, not the Arctic. I'm sorry for bringing false information to the sim. When I said Arctic, I just meant like a Antarctic. cold place. He meant the Antarctic. He, he knew what he was saying. See, I got your back, dude. Yeah, I meant the cold region of the world. <laughs> I didn't realize Choker was a geography teacher. Here's a, here's a geography question for you. 
You oh, got man. the Atlantic, Pacific, Indian, and Arctic Ocean. What is the fifth ocean that no one ever talks about? Um, I've always been told that there's only four oceans. So Frank Ocean? The... <laughs> Hip-hop star Frank Ocean? The Southern Ocean. It is the ocean area that surrounds Antarctica. It is the... Uh... There's so parts of every ocean taught, in it. What I've been taught my whole life is a lie. I looked this up recently. It's called the Southern Ocean. That must be a recent change. <laughs> it's like when they kind of like decide if Pluto's a planet or isn't every year. Pluto's hmm. always going to be a planet for me. Oh, you're a big Pluto guy? Oh, I, I stand for Pluto. Yeah. <laughs> you're like uh, Gus from Psych. I will never not have Pluto as a planet. That's messed up, right? You heard about Pluto? <laughs> that is messed up. Like, how are you just going to strip them away from their planethood? They didn't bother anyone. There's just this tiny little planet way out there. Yeah, Leave when they alone. invade us and they're like, why are you doing this? We're going to say, <laughs> you know, they're going to say, you know why. You brought this Abby upon Rizzo. yourself. Abby Rizzle saying, never been to Missouri, the zoo. I have been to Mizzou. It's a good time. Columbia, Missouri. Underrated college town. 7-7 seven, seven after the first quarter, which is not typical in Simland. Usually you get like one long drive, and there will be like a three and out on the other side. So I'm happy after a first yeah, quarter. We'll take with a two scores scoring. per quarter. Yeah, I mean, come on. Uh, so we'll get you guys some stats here, uh, at the end of the second quarter, uh, Debo Samuel, just one catch for six yards, George Kittle, one for 15, Kendrick Bourne, one for 11, Chris Conley. He has that touchdown catch for the Jags. Raheem Mostert has a rushing score for the Niners. Going to take a look at the free roll here quickly. I have a bunch of live entries here because I'm in so many golf tournaments. Uh, I am in 24th here. Man, I have been just dog water in these contests recently. Where are you at? I'm 119. Oof. What's going on here, Lamarca? You need a reset, bro. I think I've just been too focused on other things. (laughs) Particularly the NBA playoffs. Of the NBA variety? Elf. It does, Jacob the Grom's health keeps me up at night. Yeah. I mean, look, I'd be the same exact way if I had a guy like that on my team doing what he's doing right now. And there's just this weird, ambiguous shoulder, arm, whatever it is issue. It's a different part of his arm every every game. It's just, it's unbelievable. We're talking about a professional franchise here that's like, oh, no, it's fine. But he has to come out of starts early and it's just... Well, he keeps seeing doctors, either. and the doctors are like, yeah, he's good. <laughs> I think are the Mets doctors love Mets fans? Down, but there's just they, – they, they keep telling them there's nothing, there's nothing they can do. Are these doctors Phillies fans, Braves fans? <laughs> I'll tell you what. If they are associated with the Mets, I don't trust them. The Mets have had the worst <laughs> medical department in baseball for my entire life. I, I forget who I talked with life. this about. How do any professional sports franchises have bad medical staffs? Like, you are billion-dollar organizations that deal in athletics. Have the best doctors and the best training staff. Like, that's your business. That needs to be a part of it. What are yeah, we I, think, I think we talked about this. Yeah, okay, I forget. <laughs> I talk with a lot of people all the time. All right, here we go. Taking a look at the $250 free contest for the Niners and the Jags. Stram, 67 in first place. He has Chris Conley in the captain spot, so obviously he's feeling good right now after that first quarter. And in the $250 free contest for the late slate, we have bumps and bruises in first place. Tied with CPEC, 54-46. Raheem Mostert bumping around. First and goal coming up for the Niners. 
Here's a great DraftKings username. Somebody can take this if it doesn't already. Uh, if it doesn't already exist. Shoots and ladders. Like but shoots is spelt like, like shoots. You know, like, oh, shoots. That's a good one. I'll give you credit. That's pretty good, Lamar. Thank you. It's not great. It's good. It's good. Yeah, if there was an alternate spelling for ladders, then it would be cool. I mean, you could do it with D's, I suppose, but... I was going to say, you could, you could, but then it's like... That doesn't really make it. That's not really a word, to be honest. Jimmy Garoppolo finding George Kittle in both of hey, our lineups. That's my captain. There you go. You're going to shoot me out up of the, the basement, George. There you go, Georgie. 14 7 coming up after the extra point. George Kittle captained an 18% of lineup, 67% ownership in the flex. There you go, Kittle. I'm expecting him to have a nice season next year after dealing with a lot of injuries. Even when he was healthy last year, he was good. So I still think he'd be my third tight end. Okay, so you're taking Waller over him? Correct. Yeah. Why is that? Just insane target volume. The Raiders didn't throw it to anybody but him last year for the most part. So you're, you're talking from a fantasy perspective. You're going Kelsey one, Waller two, Kittle three. You going Pitts four? I am not. Ooh. For we me, got four fourth. would be Gronkinson. Oh, okay. AJ, Just from targets. AKA TJ Hawkinson. I think he's got a potential to be the Lions leader in targets this year. Um, and that's obviously very valuable. Like, even mm-hmm. if Kyle Pitts is as good as we seem to think Kyle Pitts is going to be. Mm-hmm. Still got to share the Rookie load. Rookie tight ends historically struggle, and he's going to have to share the work with Calvin Ridley. Mm-hmm. So you got Pitts fifth? Yeah, How far before fifth. LaMarca I mean, picks I might- Kyle Pitts? I might put Mark Andrews five and Pitts six. I, I haven't really sat down and hammered out my rankings yet, mm-hmm. but Pitts is going to be a uh, Pitts is probably going to go earlier than I am willing to draft him at. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I uh, rookies scare me in general. He is someone I'm not afraid of drafting, but I don't want to draft him too high. I'm the type of guy that'll try and steal a rookie late in a keeper league and then hope he hits, you know? Then you got this sick young player for a few years. So I feel like I feel like I'm your fantasy sensei, Tom. Uh yeah, I mean look, I do write down some things you've said and uh I'm not even I, talking I plan... about players. I'm talking about just how to have a better fantasy league. <laughs> and I'm telling you right now. I pitched your worst... your idea to my league, by the way. The worst thing you can do to a fantasy league is make it a keeper league. Um, because one I team, go back and forth on it. One team's going to get off to like an 0-4 start, and then they're just going to blow up the league by trading their entire team for a keeper. Mm-hmm. So, I go back and forth on it. I think you either go straight dynasty league or you go full redraft. I hate it, the keepers. It just it hurts the integrity of the fantasy league i i hear you and i've when it's when it's benefited me in the past i've loved it and when it's hurt me i've hated it it it, you know like most people in life whatever benefits me in the moment is what i'm going to support (laughs) yeah of course right now i currently have calvin ridley as a keeper on a 14th round grade and i'd like to continue to keep it I think this is my last year being allowed to keep him. The way it works for us is if you keep him, you keep the guy you draft, like let's say you draft him in the seventh round, you lose your sixth round pick the next year. And it, you, every year you keep him, you lose the, it goes up a, uh, a draft pick. And how many years are you allowed to keep him for? I think we do three. Okay. So. Um, yeah. No, I, I mean, feel you. It's nice. If you if you draft well, you're always gonna have a steal like that. I got Todd Gurley in like the seventh round coming into his rookie season. So I had Gurley in his prime as a mid, you know, 
early pick, but not first round like he was going in all these drafts. Right. So I had a nice run in my league. I'm now I'm now feeling the the hurt of uh, of no longer having said player, said said type of player. I should say I wouldn't want to have Gurley at, at that grade anymore. But uh, but I did pitch your anti defense anti kicker thing to my league, and, and they hated it. so people were more okay with losing a defense for whatever reason. Everyone was like, "No, I kind of like having a kicker." It's kind of fun. Kicker points are kind of fun. I'm like, isn't it more fun to have another quarterback and another flex? I was like, and, and I explained it the way you league. explained it. I said, quarterbacks are the most impactful position in football. Why would we only allow ourselves to use like a third of the quarterbacks in the league to benefit our fantasy league when we could have more quarterbacks? And they're way more predictable, and it's just more fun. And I didn't get the didn't get the uh, the resounding love I thought it was going to get. It's going to take some time. I'm going to continue to push it because I think it's a. Good Here's idea. what you have to do. I Top don't know down, who... Chris Thompson. Oh, I always play Chris Thompson, and he never scores. <laughs> there you go. Um, you need a fantasy commissioner who's willing to put his foot down from time to time and bring the league along. You know, mm-hmm. you have to and, evolve uh, with the times. You have to be like Adam Silver. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I um, you know, like I I fill that role. Drew says most ki- commissioners think they created the perfect league. Well, Drew, I have created the perfect league. And Lamarcus League sounds pretty good. Not and I'm lie. trying to share it with the world. <laughs> um, no, in all in all seriousness, my league is is. It's all my friends from high school, but I'll tell you, like, there's some dudes who are really, like, way into it. Yeah. So um, there's a one, this one guy, Anthony Nico, who works in the like industry. such a Long Island name. He, he works in the industry. He, he's done jobs at DraftKings, at Football Guys. Um, he's one of my best friends from high school, so it's, it's me and him. So one-sixth of the league is employed by the fantasy industry. <laughs> I think that's going to say something for, uh, yeah, for you know, compared to most home leagues. And then some of my other friends are just like diehard, like listen to every fantasy football podcast. And They're just like super that. into it. Yeah. So we've we've done, I think, a good job of just like bringing the league up to the modern game. You know, there's too many quarterbacks to have a one quarterback league unless you're playing in like a 16 or a 20 team format. Mm-hmm. Our league you is 10, to, Lamarca. 10. You need to be doing some sort of point per catch, either 10. half or full PPR. Yeah, see, that's ridiculous. Insane. We all have awesome teams. Let's have an even more awesome team. <laughs> so I've been advocating to add two, at least two teams to this league for years, too. But, you know, being out on an island here in St. Louis, my voice isn't heard often. People mm-hmm. have tried to remove me from the league. They're like, you don't even watch football with us on Sundays. I'm like, I'm <laughs> in St. Louis. How am I going to do that? You never show up anymore, Tom. Like, yeah, but Aldo's always here. You know, he really wants to be in the league. All we do is talk about it. He's the only guy. So, so add Aldo and another dude. That's what I'm saying. Oh. Just add two. <laughs> we can get two more. It's not hard. People want in. No, you know, it's just it's better if he just takes your spot, you know. Like, okay, well, do, what do you think? I don't want to play anymore? So Brian says, if I'm playing in a single quarterback league, what is the best number of teams to have? 14 through 18, question mark? I would say that that's even might be a little thin. I would say more like 16 to 20. So you, now you, you're like gonna a have big, to... you like a big fantasy league where you're really testing people's knowledge. Well, the thing is, like, let me let me pull up the quarterback ADP right now. So if you play in a 14-team league and you have – and everybody, you know, you're starting one quarterback every week. That means that Baker Mayfield isn't a starter. Ben Roethlisberger isn't a starter. Kirk Cousins isn't a starter. Trevor Lawrence isn't a starter. Deshaun Watson isn't a starter, depending on what happens. Right. You know, none of the rookie quarterbacks are going to be starters. 
your boy Carson Wentz is not going to be a starter. Like, there's going to be just starting. There's just going to be starting quarterbacks sitting on the <laughs> waiver wire, which to me is so antithetical of what real football is. Right. I'm going to pitch this again, for sure. Get out of here with defenses and kickers. Sorry, Martin. If you do a 16-team league, everybody can have two quarterbacks. Because some teams can draft multiple quarterbacks. And when a quarterback goes down in season, the waiver wire for the backup is hot. There's a market. Yeah, that's you know? right. Creates a little buzz. So again, I think I think twelve teams and super flex is the ideal format. Because then, if for exactly. some reason you do have quarterbacks that get hurt, you can start a player in a quarterback spot. You're going to be at a disadvantage compared to the rest of your league who's starting two quarterbacks. So when you say super you flex, can, are you saying it's so it's a flex position where you can, can put quarterbacks in? Correct. Oh, that's a game changer. Right. All so, of the flexes should be super flex. Well, I don't want to get crazy. You don't want guys. I want to get crazy. <laughs> Just start stacking QBs, baby. No, I, I like it. Like, let's say you have three quarterbacks and two are on the same bye week. You can survive if you have good depth. You can play an extra wide receiver or a running back for a week or something like that. Mm-hmm. So. Okay, here's a question for you then, LaMarcus, since we're talking season-long fantasy. Yeah, baby. Who is going to be the commissioner of the DK Broadcaster League that does need to happen? And when when will we draft and what will the rules be? Because I, I, I'm getting excited right now for fantasy football. <laughs> I want to talk about it. It's got to be somebody who has free time. Um I think Somebody it's that tough. if we are if we are playing for a little juice, you know, that we can afford, that we can trust. Yep. That isn't going to disappear. So immediately Emerson off the table. Yeah, I think I think it should be cough. I know he has kids, but it just feels like he's got time to do things like this. I mean, great face for the league, right? If we need for to sure. make a press conference, yes, I would be fine to roll him out as commissioner. And it feels like he'll take it seriously. Like you, you never want the commish that's not visible, right? Like <laughs> I want a commissioner that I know I can come to with my concerns and will like bring it up as a league matter. Drew says, now that's going to be a league with one quarterback and kickers. And uh, that's, I will that's say that no if fun. that's the case, that's fine. I'm just not going to play. Oh, see, we want LaMarca too. See, that's, I'm not in if LaMarca's not in. So we're a package deal. Sorry. I'm not a package with these guys. <laughs> I just want it to be known. If I am packaging. Fine. I don't care if Lamarca <laughs> wants me or not. If he's out, I'm out. So the ball's in your court, Sim Broadcasters. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't think it should be Jeff. I don't think someone should run a league that's anti-Christmas. Very that's just where point. I stand. I like all my commissioners um, to be very Christmassy. For sure. You got to enjoy the holiday season if you're going to be a commissioner. Field goal is good. The Lambo, fired up, baby. Three for Jacksonville. <laughs> I don't think it should be Glass. He's very busy with the WNBA. Emerson, I don't even know if he works here anymore. Deucey feels a little too insane. Like, yeah, it's sort that, of league, like a, that league would be run by the Gestapo. Yeah, you can't have a – it's like a Fortune 500 company. Uh, they, they're they looking for stability in their CEOs. We can't have just an absolute madman running our league. Can't happen. Uh, BK will forget to set the draft date, says Drew. Yeah, BK, that guy is all over the place doing his job out there in Denver. Like, he can't – he won't focus on the league. And that's fine. It's not – it's not a knock on BK. He's got important stuff to do. He's got to cover the Avs and the Nugs and the Broncos and the and the Buffs. He's a busy guy. He's got to talk on the radio about him. <laughs> Mohammed says, Matt, tell us the kicker who hurt you. <laughs> <laughs> All of them, friend. Every oh. kicker. Here's what I would like to do. Okay. 
I put I put this out to the DK Sim fam. Sure. Okay. You guys pick three kickers every week. Any three kickers that you want that are playing in a given week. I will randomly select three kickers. <laughs> and we'll see who has more points. If if picking a kicker has an edge, you guys should crush me in this thing. <laughs> But if it's random, I think I have a chance. Wow. So, so you think? So, let's say they pick Tucker, Butker, and Lutz week one. Can yeah. they then go ahead and pick those same three kickers in week two, or any is it a survivor pool every thing? week? Nope, they could pick any kicker any week. Now, I might randomly walk into those guys from time to time, mm-hmm. but I'm I'll just say, hey Siri, pick a random you know pick a random number whatever through whatever or you yeah. know we'll find some way to randomize you know i know there's websites that you can randomize i just think that it's it's <laughs> much more luck than any other part of fantasy so uh zt getting a lot of love for commissioner of this hypothetical league i say Ooh. hypothetical it will happen what do we think i've never worked with zach i work with zach next weekend i believe for the first time listen i've never done a sim with zach but i work on the DK Live news desk with him mm-hmm. weekly. And let me tell yes. you, a man of character. Okay. A man of integrity. Okay. A man with a great goatee. <laughs> Perfect. Need facial hair also very important for me. <laughs> okay. So Z, you think ZT is going to be the guy? I, I love the call. Okay. So I, I think we need to get some movement on this. Uh, you know, the side, it's already almost the end of June. I think, I think someone needs to send out an email. Maybe that someone is me. Maybe I'll just <laughs> nominate ZT in the email. Get an email chain going. We'll figure this out. This needs to happen. Stats updated through the end of the first half. Minshew hands the ball off. To start the second half out, Chris Thompson with a minimal gain. Going to check out the free roll here. Oh, uh, let's see. I thought I would be doing well, but I've continued to drop. I'm now in 107th. Let's see why. Now 108th. Most hurt. Doing okay in the captain spot. Oh, God. <laughs> Honestly, I think it's just because I have the Niners defense and Bourne hasn't done anything. Mm, so that has not identity. been helpful. Born looking for an identity on this one, am I right? <laughs> hey, all right, let's check out the the money deals here. Uh, the two hundred fifty dollars free contest for Jags Niners. Uh, Donk Strike is in first place, solo <laughs> leader by uh, just under a point. He's got Dante Pettis in the captain's spot. Garoppolo, Minshew, Thompson. Oh, the contest just jumped, and now we have a one, two, three, four, five way tie for first place so what's the name uh, donk strike donk strike just flew down to 33rd as i was reading his lineup so donk strike apparently not a big dunk he's a big donk guy cpec 5446 in first place he's got garoppolo most hurt thompson chark conley pettis eifert so this is a uh this is not a captain style this is just uh you know building your lineup type of deal so they're they're in first place in that contest el classico abby rizzle says zt will ignore the chat though <laughs> is ZT is ZT's a, a chat ignorer on these sims i respect him for that no offense chat but if you're able to ignore uh, a large amount of people saying things about you and your broadcast right in front of your face the entire time you're doing a broadcast that's pretty impressive yeah, some guy literally told me that I'm the worst, and they hope I get a new job the other day. <laughs> yeah, I think I was on that <laughs> broadcast with you. He said that you, these two guys are the worst broadcasters drafting heads. I don't take it personally, though. No, I mean, it's part of the game. <laughs> I will say, though, when you're on a – when you're doing, like, back-to-back four wides and you did three on a Friday – and they're just crushing you all weekend, it does hurt a little. 
I'm, I'm, we're all human here. Chris Thompson gets in. Damn you, Chris touchdown. Thompson. Sorry. Receiving touchdown. <laughs> Looking good. That was second and 12. Taking it to the house. About to be 24-14 in Jacksonville. So this is a real-life game that is going to happen this season. We are simming the 2021 season. Jaguars will be hosting the Niners this year. Maybe we get Trey Lance versus Trevor Lawrence at this Ooh, that'd point. That'd be fun. Right? I mean, this is a mid-season game. I believe we're on week nine. Correct me if I'm wrong. Week nine or week ten. I mean, so, I have no idea. Yeah, I, I figured the producers. Um, <laughs> <laughs> All right, here's a hard-hitting question from Brian. Yeah. I, I mean, I, this seems pretty easy to me. Week 11, thank you. Random question for Tom Carroll. Would you sure. rather eat six cannolis as fast as you can or walk six miles in sub-32 degree windy weather? Oh, the first one. I mean, I mean, I one sounds borderline enjoyable. Yeah. The, so if I can eat it as fast as I can, meaning I can go at my speed, you know, like if, if I can't, it's not like I'm choking myself eating cannolis. It's as fast as I can. And look, I'm not a big sweets guy. So that isn't like something I'm, I, I'd rather do that with like chicken fingers if I had a choice or like piece, <laughs> piece of pizza. But even with cannolis as the option, I'm doing that over walking six miles in the cold weather. I mean, that sounds awful. I hate the cold. Hate it. Hate it. Hate the cold. All about the I'm, fall, I'm baby. one of those people that complains when it's cold and then also complains when it's hot. Same, completely. I also hate when it's 100 <laughs> so, degrees outside. I, I understand that I'm being completely hypocritical, and I don't care. I just I like late late separate. summer. Late summer weather is perfect for me. Summer breeze. Late summer, early fall. Yeah, Makes exactly. Me like feel fine. 60s, low 70s, that's perfect. Give me that all day. Not a, not actually not a huge cannoli fan. Not gonna lie. Oh, I, I enjoy a cannoli. It's not the dessert I'd choose if I had a choice. All right. Then what is? Um, it, I mean, this set might sound like a lame answer, but ice cream. Okay. I listen. I asked the yeah. question and you answered it. Ice cream I can't bend. <laughs> Here's a question. Here's another question. Sure. I gave an answer to this. We were talking. My family loves lists. Yeah. We do a lot yeah. of lists, a lot Love of Love a good list, for sure. So we were talking about our favorite cakes. And I gave my top three favorite cakes as, and in no, in no particular order, cheesecake, yeah. carrot cake, yeah, red velvet cake. I, you said all three, I would say. Cheesecake would be number one for me. Carrot cake. No, I think I'd do the same order. Yeah. But the red velvet with that very specific frosting that's good with red velvet cake. Yeah, cream cheese frosting. Yeah, that's what it is. That's good stuff. So there's a place in Rhode Island called Greg's. They have a cake. It's a chocolate cake called Death by Chocolate Cake. And yeah, that's a common. big. That's a common. It's a big name. old chocolate cake, and it's like layered, and they cover it in chocolate chips. Yeah, too much. It's delicious, but you can't you can't eat like a real slice of it. You have to eat like a sliver of it, otherwise you're just gonna get sick. I want to eat a piece of cake where I can eat a normal sized piece of it and feel okay afterwards. Is that? I've is always that said weird, that, that whoever comes thing? up with those names, it's terrible marketing. <laughs> you're costing yourself business because people yeah. are going to be ashamed to order it. For sure. You know, like, like there was a sandwich at this deli that I used to frequent, and yeah. it was literally called like the Widowmaker or something. Yeah, 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 like the heart, the heart attack. Right. Yeah. And I was yeah. like, well, I I might want to try this, but I'm not <laughs> going up to die. the guy and ordering that. Yeah. <laughs> hey. Yeah. This one's called the stroke. <laughs> right. <laughs> Yeah, I, yeah, that's a great point. There's like a weird, that's like a weird thing in the food industry, 
is trying to make your your menu items sound as morbid as possible. Right. It's so good, it'll kill you. You're gonna die. <laughs> sure, give me ten. Most hurt picks up the first. Ooh, but we got a flag on the play. Probably coming back. Bring it home right, back. So Edward Holden. says cheesecake isn't a cake. It's a what? tart. Oh, to which I say, here. well, then why is it called cheesecake? But, like, that's the type of guy that's going to tell you that a tomato is technically a fruit. That's the type of guy that's going to tell you a hot dog isn't a sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. I mean, it might be true, but it's nobody ever goes. Uh, do you have any cheese tarts? Yeah, I mean, can I you make sure to put some tomatoes in my fruit salad. <laughs> no, it's a it's a vegetable. A cheesecake is a cake. Brad Wallace says that he needs a three one ice cream to cheesecake ratio. So he wants he wants tons of ice cream on his plate. Mike Mike Vizzle says, can we all agree that urinal cake is the worst? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> I don't know. Have you tried the uh no I'm just No. <laughs> you know, here's a weird if we're gonna talk urinals for a second. The St. Louis Airport, Lambert, there's a section of the airport that has urinal cakes that have like a bug on them like as like a logo and it's like a big bug and it looks like a real bug in the urinal so much so that I stood at the urinal and was going to use it saw the bug was like ah moved over to the next urinal exact same bug exact same spot and was like whoa that's a weird coincidence moved over to the next one same thing <laughs> <laughs> Took a step back. Bug is in every urinal. What is going on with that? Interesting. Like, why? Why are you putting a realistic-looking bug on a urinal cake? <laughs> Who's going to want to use that urinal? You're causing chaos in the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's the point, Tom. So Terrible. Want to watch the world burn? Whoever, if there's people in here that work in the urinal cake business or the <laughs> or the bathroom business in general pass it along no one wants to see a bug on a urinal cake <laughs> okay i don't want to think that's the best urinal cakes are the ones i don't think of get in there do my business get out <laughs> all right anyways Drew says here for the niners Drew in the chat or in uh in our Slack chat says, Agreed, there's no flour in the recipe, therefore no cake. To no, which I responded, here. No one cares, Drew. First of all, I don't know how to make cake. <laughs> I didn't even know there was flour in cake. No, of course I knew that. But I don't know how to make a cake, so if it looks like a cake, you tell me it's a cake, it's a cake. I know how to make a cake. It's called Here's my money. I'll take that cake, please. <laughs> yeah, that's how I make cake. Gardner Minshew, 16 for 18, 233 yards, two touchdowns. Uh, could hit the B word here. So, Gardner, look out for you him. You the Garoppolo. bonus? Oh, you, ugh, you ruined it. <laughs> you guys, it's his fault. Raheem Mostert, 16 carries for 54 yards and a tud. I don't really love that yards per carry average there. 3.3 for... Raheem, usually better than that. Chris Thompson, 7 for 43. He also has a receiving touchdown to go along with his rushing touchdown. Three catches, 35 yards. Dante Pettis, 5 for 111. Got to think he's in the, the driver's seat for the wooden nickel at this point. Kendrick Bourne, maybe a babysitter Billy candidate. One catch, 11 yards. D. Hey, Westbrook, C-E-H. 4 for 52. CEH leading the free roll with Pettis Hey-o. in the captain's spot. CEH, what's up? Good for you, buddy. So there you go. Those are your stats. We'll take a look at the contests momentarily. LaMarca, how far down in the free roll are you? 111. Okay. <laughs> I think that's an improvement, though, so that's good. Uh, taking a look at the $250 free contest for this matchup. 
Rehespi, 77 in first place by just under a point over King Henry 13. He has Pettis in the captain spot, so that's pretty good for him. And in the $250 free contest, we got Bumps and Bruises in first place. Got a two-point lead over Souls Simple. So there you go. Bumps and Bruise is not a better name than Shoots and Ladders. Okay, Matt P. bringing up something, and I don't know if he's just trolling me or if this is true. I'm going to read it, even though it's a little gross. Tom, the reason they put the bug in is it's been proven that men will aim their stream at the bug, reducing spillage over the side. Gross but true. If that's true, Matt P., that's fascinating. That there was like a study done that men are so dumb that they choose to do that to the bug in the urine. Field goal. Good. 24-17 at Jaguars lead the Niners. Their lead not as big after the field goal, but still leading. This would be an upset in real life, people. Yes, it would. Matt P., thank you for answering that or letting me know that because I had no idea. And it's something that has bugged me for a long time. Punning pun intended. I didn't even intend it. No pun pun, not intended. Kareem saying white wedding cake is delicious. Kind of bland for me. Yeah. I don't like that. You know, what's a really good cake. And, and you're sort of a traditionalist with food, so you might not like this, but I'm going to throw it out there. Ice cream cake. I'm okay with ice cream cake. I, I'm not the biggest fan of, like, hard ice cream, though. You know? Okay, you're a soft serve guy. Oh, 100%. Lamac is soft. Soft serve, kid. You're soft. I mean, look at me. Everything about me is soft. You're soft, dude. <laughs> First and ten, Jags. Nice gain on first down. I Jaguars had looking good in, in this one. I had relatives in from Michigan, and like the first thing that they wanted to do was go to Carvel, which nice. I respect. You know, like <laughs> Carvel is a New York institution. Legendary. And this dude ordered hard pistachio ice cream, and I was like, <laughs> "You're not allowed back over to my house. You now have to go find a hotel." You just ordered hard ice cream from Carvel? <laughs> Leave. Get out of here. Carvel, I mean, they've got they've got some locations in New England as well. Um they have they make a great ice cream cake. Good I cake. Say Fudgy the Whale. Carvel makes the best ice cream cake. Fudgy the Whale is an institution. First and ten here for the Jags. Minshew sends a man in motion. Oh, he hands it to him. There you go. A little trickeration for the Jaguars. I believe that was D.D. Westbrook, a Heisman finalist in his day with Baker Mayfield. People forget that. I certainly did. I wonder if Gardner Minshew has another run in the NFL somewhere. He feels like the type of guy that's going to, like, he'll be like a little Fitzpatrick-y, you know? He's got a cult following. When he comes in, he's going to be fun. But you're never going to win a Super Bowl with him. That's yeah, what I, I mean, see from Minshew. He can future. be a backup, and, you know, he'll get to do all his entertaining antics for the fans during training camp, but... I don't think he's somebody who'll really get a realistic shot at starting again. There was a reason the dude was, what, a sixth-round draft pick? Yeah. Man, he was good at Washington State, though. Yeah. Here we go, the that, Lambo. That offense doesn't count. No, no. Mike Leach offense, it's, it's fool's gold. Jaguars going for it, looking for the dagger here. Trying to put the Niners away. Throwing on fourth and one. Oh, huge stop by the Niners' defense. Denied. 
444 to go here. Richard Sherman almost picking the ball off. Niners down 24-17 to the Jaguars here. Garoppolo finding Kittle. That's a first down. Okay, this thing got interesting here, folks. Niners got all three timeouts. If they put some points on the board here, it's, I mean, Captain Obvious here, it's a ball game. <laughs> Garoppolo finds most hurt. Do you think that most, and this might be a dumb question, but most has got to be the guy that's best in this game. That is not even close to as good as he is in real life. Right. Um, I would say Dante Pettis in this game. <laughs> but, true for this game, but on the whole, are we giving that mantle to most Yeah, that's probably fair. Yeah. Cause he's, I mean, like, he's like a no one of the doubt. best players here. He's a no doubt fantasy RB one in in Simland. Yeah, it's funny. There's always that guy in every video game that's not that good in real life, but is just absolutely dominant in that game. I remember in NBA Live Ten, Steve Blake was that dude for the Blazers. Yeah, you, you've brought this up. You love yeah. Steve Blake. Oh god, I still to this day, anytime Steve Blake comes up in conversation, I'm like NBA Live Ten, cheat code. Javon Walker for the Packers in the Madden game back in the day. Beast mode. The dude broke his leg. Andrew saying Devin Harris in 2K12. <laughs> oh, Mike Bizzle with a good one. He says Asi 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 is up there. Sure, totally. Because Oi 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 is stinky in real life. Although Rossi <laughs> thinks he's going to make the Pro Bowl. CEH and Steve Blake. Best tight end three in the tight league. End three to Pro Bowl. <laughs> and somehow, Devin Asiasi makes the Pro Bowl with sub five targets on the year. <laughs> uh, CEH is a Hoosier fan. That makes sense. He's got the Colts logo in his avatar. Most hurt with the carry, bottled up. I think I've told you in the Sim fan this, but I went there for one semester. That's right. Yeah, you spent a semester out in Bloomington. The Blooms. What did you think of the Midwest? Um, I didn't see any of it outside of Bloomington for the most part. <laughs> and uh, I had an unbelievable time. And we'll, <laughs> we'll leave it at that. <laughs> Fourth and four, Niners going for it. Clock ticking. They need this. Garoppolo. Oh, did he get in? No. Gonna be first and goal from the one. Huge first down. All right. Four seconds to go before the two minute warning. All three timeouts for both teams. If you're the Jags, do you just let them score right away? No. When you have a vaunted defense like the Jaguars, <laughs> you stand up. Hey, the Jaguars defense a couple of years ago. Oof. Well, more yeah, than a the couple now. Team. <laughs> oh, that defense was awesome. Then they were so not awesome. Like really soon after that. Most hurt. Gets in. Touchdown. Says, get out of here with that. Tells the crowd to shut up. Going to be a tie ball game after the extra point. Under two minutes to go. You can ne you know what they say, though? You can never leave Gardner Minshew too much time. Yeah, with well, three timeouts on the I board. I mean, have we ever seen a missed extra point? I, I, not me. Yeah, I don't think I have either. That's why when the guys score the touchdowns, I say it's going to be this score after the made extra point. I am the broadcaster that just assumes the extra point will be good. I'm that guy. <laughs> All right, here we go. One of the most clutch players in the history of the NFL, Gardner Minshew. 
going to have a minute 58 with three timeouts to go. What do you think happens here, Lamarca? Put your uh, get Put your crystal ball out. On. Yeah. I'm going to say... I'm going to say Minshew leads him for a field goal. You know what I'm going to say? Niners turn it over, and Niners win in regulation. Wow. It just feels like it hasn't happened in a long time, so we're due. Minshew takes the snap. <laughs> Two men across the middle. Oh, he fo- Oh. <laughs> oh, 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 boy. Wow, that would have been awesome. Fumble recovered by the Jaguars. It's going to be second and 18 here. If I'm the Niners, I would have called the timeout there. DEH says, was John Mellencamp's son there? <laughs> um, If he was, I never met him. <laughs> or at least didn't knowingly encounter him. That's someone that you could probably meet and not know you met him. John Well, Kruger, I mean, Mellencamp's if he was son. like, oh, my name is Fred Mellencamp or whatever, I would have jokingly been like, oh, any relation to John? <laughs> and he would have been like, actually, yeah, he's my yeah. dad. Yeah, it's so. my dad. He's... <laughs> he hasn't talked to me in years. <laughs> it looks like uh, the Jaguars want overtime here. Because they are not using their timeouts. But getting into the no huddle. (laughs) For whatever reason. Here we go. They have decided to use a timeout here. Just in time to give the Niners. I was going to say, yes, they did. I was going to say, just in time for the Niners to stop the clock. Yes, you are correct. The Niners took a timeout. For the Niners. Niners. So your prediction. Looking pretty good here. Looking Niners pretty terrible. Win. <laughs> well, let's see how this punt goes. All right, that so we got about... Mask for. Yeah. Got some ground to make up here. Two timeouts. Got to get him in field goal range. <laughs> I don't know if it's going to happen. Boys of Pop says his son's rap name is Lil Cougar. Lil Coog. <laughs> <laughs> oh, bad throw by Garoppolo. Misses his band. Uh, Lil Coog on the beat. <laughs> Lil Coogie. Mike Bizzle saying Asi Asi means just okay in Spanish. His name's perfect. The- <laughs> Lamarca loved that, by the way. I'm just imagining John <laughs> Mellencamp having a son who raps goes by the name of Will Coog. <laughs> That's a huge gain, by the way, by Most Hurt. Giving us a chance to win this regulation. Do you think John Coog or Mellencamp would be upset if he had a son? that became a rapper with the nickname Lil Coog? Yes! Yeah, probably. <laughs> I'm picturing um, what was that movie with uh, Jamie Kennedy? Oh, uh, Malibu's Most Wanted? That's what I'm picturing. <laughs> uh, Lil Coog. <laughs> Garoppolo. Oh! Thro- oh! Come down with that. Here's a remix for Jack and Diane. Oh, God. <laughs> Dad, just let me get the rights to the track, yo. <laughs> All right, here we go. Second and ten. Got to give Garoppolo some credit for taking that shot there. Oh, just completely missing most her. Wide open. This thing's headed to OT, people. Del Coog. <laughs> Third and ten. Niners still have a timeout. Garoppolo. 
Oh. Here we go. All right, so what do you – I guess you got to punt it. Yeah. Answered my question before I asked it. Yeah, El Doctor. It's well, a really good plan. Maybe they uh, blocked the punt here, Marco. Probably won't, but hey, maybe. Obi-Wan says, little coog from the boot. <laughs> the mean streets of the boot. All right, so are the Jags going to try and win this? No. We're going to overtime. Let's see. They're handing the ball to Chris Dobson here, aren't they? Speaking of overtime, how about the fact that... Oh, wait a second! Oh, my goodness. Are we going to the house? Ball game. What Chris in the Thompson, 80-yard touchdown to the house. That's it. Walk off. What? One second left in, the in world. regulation. Chris Thompson just took the ball 80 yards to the house. Jaguars weren't trying to do that. Jaguars were trying to run the clock out and go to overtime. Chris Thompson said, not today. I have a reservation for Father's Day. It's at a steakhouse in downtown Jacksonville, and I'd like to make that reservation. Getting it done. One second to go here. And not only does he steal the game for the Jaguars, he steals himself the wooden nickel. Wow. Earning himself a free ice cream cone at Lions Choice Roast Beef here in St. Louis. Congratulations, Chris Thompson. 80-yard, essentially, walk-off touchdown by the Jags. The kickoff is a formality at this point, people. The Niners are not returning this thing. Unreal. Did not see that coming in any way. (laughs) Ashley Edwards dropping a classic line from... uh... Yes. What was traffic, his name? Traffic, traffic. Looking for my chapstick. <laughs> There's a Ford Isn't it Maverick. <laughs> oh, B-Rad? B-Rad? Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's a movie that could only come out in the early 2000s. Little kids. <laughs> that's going to do it. Chris Thompson, congratulations. That was that was huge right there. Kyle and Shanahan, Kyle Shanahan throws the play sheet in disgust. <laughs> I don't blame blame him. Wow, Minchu hyping it up to the camera. Garoppolo upset. That's your ball game, folks. Congratulations to Chris Thompson on his wooden nickel. Who you got for the babysitter, Billy? Well, first of all, like I said, the Jaguars would be winning this game in regulation. <laughs> Yeah, in your face, bro. <laughs> uh, babysitter Billy. Let's go with... Um, ownership is pretty spread out here, but I'm going to go with Debo Samuel. Three catches for 27 yards. He was about 40% owned. He was he in your lineup. He had ownership in the captain spot. So, Debo. He's my uh, babysitter Billy. Okay, that makes sense. Next, Sim, LaMarca, sticking around, going to be with Glash for the first time in a long time. 8 o'clock, Texans at Titans. Then I will be back. I will be with Glash for the first time in a long time. 10 o'clock, Madden After Dark, Packers at Vikings. That means the return of the 1059 buzzword. So if you're into that type of thing, stick around for that. Next up here on the Dream Stream, Pat Mayo coming up with the AFC West preview. We'll talk later. Okay, well, let's talk about the receivers right now in Los Angeles. Keenan Allen, he was so good last year, but how? <laughs> volume. How, it was, but is that volume going to be gone, especially with no Hunter Henry around? I I don't know if it'll be a hundred percent gone. I, you know, I have it a little bit lower in my projections. I don't know where your projections stand. Uh, mostly because some of that's baking in Mike Williams being able to stay on the field, which is a big question, but. 
let's you know everybody's talking about Josh Palmer in the draft, mostly because the Chargers surprised a lot of people to take him as early as they did. But I think we're also forgetting that Jalen Guyton and Tyron Johnson, despite being where they were in drafts themselves and not being you know high end first and second day wide receivers, showed enough last year that they're going to be in the conversation even if Palmer is a thing. Uh, Mike Williams assuming to be healthy. They brought in our. Uh, <laughs> kryptonite or not on your kryptonite it was something worse than that he our hated jared cook is now there and it's not like jared cook is not going to involve getting targets at tight end he's going to be a factor so i think keenan allen just from a pure volume of how many times does that receiver see that kind of target what, what was his target percentage last year 31 or something ridiculous like that yeah i actually somewhere around. i actually think it's going to be right around that again this year do you I, unless they just I, start I, throwing to eckler more <laughs> Well, I think that's part of it. And then you get a healthy Eckler for the entire season. I was going to pull up my projections to see what my target percentage was for Keenan Allen. Do you have yours? Yeah. I'm curious where yeah, we landed. Yeah, I have mine right in front of me. I have him at a conservative market share of 24%. And with that 24% market share of the targets on the Chargers, that would make him wide receiver number 12 and half point PPR. And what is the total, what is the total targets equal out for you for that? Uh, 142. <laughs> I'm just laughing. Cause did, did you do a decimal place on your target share? Yeah, it's 141.9. I just I rounded up so it doesn't. No, no, no. On your target share, on your target share percentage. I uh, know. I made all the target share percentage uh, equal it with a zero. Oh, okay. Because I was going to say I have 24.3 just ahead of you, which gives me a targets of 145. So I'm just ahead of you. So it sounds like our projections are pretty similar uh, based on the inputs that we have in, but. I think that's relatively conservative, to tell you the truth, because we know... I think it's are, reasonable. I, I, I do think it's reasonable, but I do think that we're missing, like, when you just look at the bell curve of where the potential outcomes are going for this, his, like, top end, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32% is much higher than a lot of even of the top end receivers based on this offense. Sure. Hey, I definitely don't agree, disagree with you there. And this thing is, like, Mike Williams doesn't stay healthy. Palmer's a rookie, doesn't connect early. You know, Jalen Guyton, Tyron Johnson were just kind of things because of the opportunity. Like, there's a lot of opportunities here. I think the biggest one you mentioned, though, is the one I come back to when I was looking at my target percentage for him. And I have Austin Eckler at 15.3, second on the team in target percentage. So I think that's the biggest factor here is Austin Eckler coming into play. Well, Keenan Allen's being drafted, pick number 32. That's wide receiver 10. I think that's fair, but I think that he's closer yeah. to – now that A.J. Brown has Julio on the other side, even D.K. Metcalf, his ceiling might not be as high as those guys. But I think when we look at the end of the year, his like normal range of outcomes is right along with those guys who are going 10 to 12 picks earlier than he is. So I think he's somewhat of a value. Would you draft any other of the Chargers receivers or just leave them be? <laughs> Uh, mostly because I mean, isn't Mike Williams borderline free at right now? Like they're I don't all think free. Anybody, all all, yeah. all of them are free. But do you I, want them then, you either know, way? Like you're sitting in the last yeah. round, Mike Williams is on the board. You're like, oh, give me Mike Williams. I, I would take Mike Williams because his his only issue is just stay healthy. I mean, part of it's his own fault. He just throws himself into the air. It's like, oh, screw it. I'm going to come down to earth and land on whatever body part I break this week. Uh, if <laughs> if he just got smarter about his health. In his own right, uh, you know, maybe you let one of those passes go and you live another day and it goes out of bounds. And I'm not saying like let lead to an interception, but you get my point here. Um, I would take my Mike Williams because it's still talent. And if he could stay healthy, which is a big ask, but if he could stay healthy, he clearly would be the number two on this team. And if Justin Herbert only doesn't even improve, just only replicates what he did last year, and you give Mike Williams 110 targets, he'll finish inside the top 40 wide receivers. Okay, let's talk about Austin Eckler because I, I don't know how people feel about Eckler. I feel like those in the fantasy community, much higher than Eckler than people in real life. Because I'm seeing him go as running back number 10 off the board right now. Let's frame this discussion in the guise of half point PPR. So he doesn't get all of the value that you think that he's going to get. I don't want Austin Eckler touching the ball 25 times a game. I just don't. I don't even need him to be the goal line back. I just need him to get a few goal line touches here and there. But with the way that he projects out, if he stays healthy, with the amount of catches that he is going to bring in, even in half-point PPR, you can make a very compelling case that he and Elvin Kamara, Kamara is 1A, Eckler is 1B in the terms of that type of receiver, well behind Christian McCaffrey, but I think that Eckler is closer to Kamara than Kamara is to McCaffrey. I would definitely agree with what you said. I'm looking at how my projections spit out, which I feel like are conservative. 
on Austin Eckler, and he's right there in the tier with Jonathan Taylor, Ezekiel Elliott, uh, Nick Jones, and then it's kind of a small drop off to the next, actually a ten point drop off to the next section of running backs. Uh, he's actually sandwiched right in the middle. The Camara to Eckler that I have right now is 21 points. This is half point PPR, 21 points. So it's significant for mine, but I think that's almost, in my opinion, and this is why I always, when I do my projections, I go through myself and adjust some things. So you could say I'm stupid when I change some things or I'm smart when I change some things. I feel like it's a little high for Camara factoring in, even if it is Jameis Winston. So my point being is completely agree with you. I think Austin Eckler is one of the best values in the second round. Uh, that feels like a floor for him at RB9, uh, just because if he's healthy for the entire season, how many receptions do I have him for? 81, probably going to get closer to 90-plus. The only other person alongside Christian McCaffrey that's going to catch 90 passes. And I have him for more receiving touchdowns than I have him for rushing touchdowns. Uh, I don't. I have him at nine rushing touchdowns, and I think that's a bit much. So I'm going to decrease the number of that down to six. And if I do that, even in a half-point PPR, that brings him down to Aaron Jones, Saquon Barkley, and Zeke level in terms of overall fantasy points. Yeah, if I gave him nine rushing touchdowns, that would put him right on Kamara's heels. Actually, it would, it would, two it would, points it would, behind Kamara. Yeah. So I, I just I just think in terms of value, like if you're sitting at the one-two turn, which is essentially where he's going. And I don't know. It seems like there's going to be a lot of steam behind Cam Akers, and he's going to rise. Or maybe people just prefer Chubb or Jonathan Taylor. But if you could go picks 12 and 13 and get Kamara and – not Kamara, sorry, Eckler and Cam Akers, and that's your one-two, you are probably going to win your league. I could – yeah, easily. Hey, you could do Eckler, Kelsey, and win your league. You could. I, I think Kelsey will be gone before that, though. Uh, yeah, I can see that in a lot of leagues. But, yeah, Eckler at the turn. And here's, you know what the best part about Eckler? He loves fantasy. He's one of the ones that doesn't hate us. Sure. I mean, I don't really care how he feels as long as he's playing football <laughs> and is on the field. And I'm good with him. No, I'm just saying it's a bonus. Maybe you, you tweet about how much you love him on Sunday evening after he goes off for a huge game and he retweets you. So, well, you know, you never know. You live two different lives, my friend. <laughs> I'm talking about the fans. I don't ever tweet at players. You know that. Here's the question. You have Eckler in front of Joe Mixon, right? Oh, yeah, for sure. Not even close. Okay. Well, no, 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 because Joe Mixon's getting a lot of steam lately because he's never coming off the field. And I think that I'd still take Eckler every single time. In full point PPR, I have a 72-point difference between them. <laughs> uh, that's it, It's a lot It's a lot less than that in half point. <laughs> I was going to say, I don't know if it's quite as big, but I know it's a decent gap. I think that people forget that Joe Mixon, as much as he's a great running back, and he has been on the field a lot, there's been a lot of seasons where he's played really good and still only finished like RB10. I can make this next part pretty easy for it. Who's the backup? Is it going to be Josh Kelly? I th I would put money on Josh Kelly, but I would also put money on the fact that it might not be a clear option the entire year. That's fair. Smelly Kelly's no good. Justin Jackson's okay. <laughs> like, it, it could be anyone. Well, they the drafted team. Roundtree, too. True. I mean, one of these guys, I don't think it's going to be like the primary ball handler between the tackles but one of these guys is going to get it might be a rotation of them that get like eight carries per game maybe a catch so i think there could be value well, wrapped up in one of them the issue becomes that if eckler goes down i don't think one of them just becomes the guy it just becomes a three-man rotation well and, and you, uh, not even just a three-man rotation but don't forget about uh gabe won't you be my neighbors stealing rushing touchdowns you gotta like that one come on pat <laughs> it's all right i thought his name was nabbers which is <laughs> Is it Neighbors? Neighbors? I'm, I'm pretty sure it's Neighbors. It just has one B. I know, but I could be wrong. It'll but be... then you can't make the joke, which you hate my you, – you hate all my nicknames anyway. That one's – listen, if his name is Neighbors, then that's not – that one is not horrible. <laughs> that's, that's one of your better ones. Not horrible. That's a win. <laughs> that's a huge win for you. Uh, tight end, you mentioned that awful Jared Cook is now with the Chargers. And our favorite fantasy player from the XFL, Parham – he got his dreams crushed by Jared Cook, hence why Jared Cook is the worst. <laughs> we were all excited to draft Parham. Do you think Parham's still better than Jared Cook and has used more? Mm, no. no. I think it's just going to be a mess because you know what this tells me about Parham is not just that they signed Jared Cook. They also drafted Trey McKitty. Like, I, you don't bring in a free agent and draft a potential future tight end if you really think that Parham's the answer. So, uh, you know, yes, he was fun in the XFL. Yes, he's a monster. 
and we wanted it. We had excitement and hope that, you know, he could be the surprise tight end. But this team's actions tell me that Parham's not the answer. Parham strikes me. Do you remember that Mark Bo Richter year from like 2001 <laughs> where he had like nine touchdowns on 24 catches or something? I could see Parham having a season like that. You could have said Robert Tanyan from last year. Yeah, but Tanyan was a bit more of a fixture than Bo Richter was. Bo Richter came from like the CFL, signed with the Chiefs, and just started catching touchdowns. It's like that people didn't think he was a real player who was on the field and just left him <laughs> open in the end zone. <laughs> <laughs> who is the were you the one that say who's the one that's saying that that like the tight end position is there anything more than the tight end touchdown where it's just the guy standing in the end zone just waiting for the ball he's like not even moving he's just waiting for the touchdown and that's all he does that like that's a par him that's that kind of guy yeah but he's so athletic he's so huge just you think that if he could get all the coordination on the same page that he actually would be really good no, but there was a reason he was in the XFL and that this team, obviously, you know, we can have fun and want more and hope that players surprise us, but we also have to be realistic at the same time. And again, my biggest thing is I'm going to go back to and nothing the Chargers have done have told me that Parham is the guy. So here's a fun team to figure out for fantasy. The Las Vegas Raiders returning <laughs> Derek Carr at quarterback, unless somehow they trade for Aaron Rodgers probably not they going should. to happen they should everyone should if you're not the Packers and you're like not three other teams you should trade for Aaron Rodgers over under well, win yeah, total, but I meant like <laughs> over under win I meant total like of is, all the teams over under Sorry. win total is seven plus 340 to make the playoffs 18 to one to win the division 33 to one to win the AFC 70 to one to win the Super Bowl Derek Carr is anyone doing it is it worth it is anybody doing what? Is, are you mean are you are you going to the draft anybody on this team question? Yeah, I mean there's there's a running back that we can draft kind of, but other outside Josh of Jacobs. I mean we can just make this a very easy discussion. Josh Jacobs I don't like, but he will eventually become a value because everyone doesn't like him at this point. So there comes a breaking point <laughs> where you can take him. He is currently going right. as where are you at here, Josh Jacobs? Well, he's still being drafted 15, as running back 17? number 13, 20th overall, too high. Ooh. That's a little bit too high. I was, I was 16, 17 would seem more reasonable. That's why. Yeah, I like he's he's after. going ahead of Mixon, Dobbins, Swift, Montgomery, Flea Market, James Robinson, Chris Carson, Edward Zolaire. I'd probably rather have all of those guys instead of Josh Jacobs. I'd rather have Jacobs than James Robinson. And who was the one you said right before James Robinson? Miles Sanders. Hmm. It kind of feels like in the same boat. They talk about a team. We talked about it again on that show. Go watch that show. But the concerns about Sanders in the passing game. Yeah, and just I I have him at 40 targets for Jacobs this year, which seems reasonable. He doesn't always catch all of those. He's a touchdown kind of maven. He's like that Ronnie Brown year with the Dolphins where all he would really do is be like 20 for 67 and two touchdowns, which has value. It's just I just don't yes. – unless, unless he gets used as a legitimate pass catcher, he's just never going to pay off the price. And it's not like people are playing standard leagues anymore. And then they bring in Kenyon yeah. Drake just to take away – I hate the Drake is what everyone <laughs> is going to be saying, well, at least what Josh Jacobs well, should be saying this year. <laughs> Yeah, and you still have your boy, Rocket Richard, back there, who's going to be involved in the passing game, tweeting out his own picture from camp. I don't think I've ever seen a player do that before. Be like, hey, look at me that everybody's talking about. Uh, but there's the passing game concern is always going to be there with Josh Jacobs. Uh, 40, I was going to say, even might be high. Uh, with what this team is looking like just because they just don't want to use them. You bring it up time and again that everybody was super excited after week one last year. Finally, they're unleashing Jacobs in the passing game. And then I was like, well, that was fun. We're not doing that ever again. Um, in the passing game, we know Darren Waller, but I do think there's value right now because this is a team where almost every single wide receiver, like well, I think almost all of them are in undrafted to close to undrafted status. Uh, you know how I feel about Henry Ruggs, the fact that I think people are hating on him too much for what happened last year. He was not supposed to be the outside wide receiver. He's not equipped to be an outside wide receiver drawing number one coverage. He needs to be playing at least half the time in the slot, uh, similar to a Tyreek Hill. He's not Tyreek Hill. But Cole Beasley, he could be Cole Beasley. That's fine. No, wide receiver three. Great. Uh, I think he's going to be in a better position. Also because I think one of the more overlooked and underrated sightings who could lead this team and be their number one wide receiver. John Brown. And if you told me it, thank you. Like yeah. Nobody wants to talk about John Brown. Wherever John Brown goes, John Brown is good. Draft John Brown. Because John Brown is good, period. Uh, so I think you can see John Brown help Henry Ruggs become relevant. 
Uh, the one that I actually have very little, you know, value or confidence in is Brian Edwards, just because I thought he needed time to develop in the NFL. And now you bring in John Brown, and I just don't even see the snaps necessarily there for Brian Edwards, unless Ruggs completely fails and then Edwards steps into that role. Oh, man, there's like ex-Ravens receivers on this team. You got Willie, the need for Sneed. He's on this team now. Kaylin, Keelan Doss is on this team. C. Doss Zay, runs. Zay Jones is on the team. Yeah, former Bill. Marcel Eightman, who was my guy for one week last year when he was the I only. Think, is old, he still old, there? They got rid of him. I believe he's still there. Let me let me go check out their depth chart. He's like wide receiver eight. No, I, I, like you're probably right. Oh, yeah, he's right Don't there. Don't forget about that. that. That undrafted free agent, either, too, Dylan Stoner. The Dylan Stoner's not a bad name. Trey Quinn, former Washington footballer, Trey Quinn. And we didn't even talk about Hunter Trey Renfro. Quinn, like two weeks of relevancy. Oh, yeah. I mean, nine, 90s teen heartthrob, Hunter Renfro. He's still on this team. Like, I would just honestly roll the dice on John Brown because John Brown is good. And, like, this is why I talk about that Mike Williams question, where if you're sitting there in the last round and Mike Williams is available, well, John Brown is going to be available, too. I'd rather have John Brown. Well, I would double down on that as well. Okay, so hence we're not drafting Mike Williams then, because we'll draft John Brown. Instead. Oh no, you could take John Brown and Mike Williams. But you only have one pick. Picks. You're in the last round. You have one more pick left. Who are you taking? Okay, John Brown. Yeah, Waller, top three tight end. That that's easy enough. This, this team's just so weird. Is Kenyon Drake a value on this team, depending mm. on where he goes? Because if you run all like the simulations over and over at how many times in the season, if Jacobs gets hurt, Drake seems like he right. would have exceptional value. Uh, that's what I was going to say is if we it's an injury, but so you kind of go into the Latavius Murray is you really can't start Latavius Murray. And in any I, given and week. I would not a, be looking to start Kenyon Drake in any given week. What I'd be looking right, to do is just right. to hold on to him because I feel like okay, right now I have with both them healthy. I have Josh Jacobs projected to be running back number 22 in half point PPR. I think that if you got rid of Josh Jacobs from the equation on a points per game basis, Drake would be like a borderline top 10 running back those weeks. Mm, I put him a little bit lower, but I'm with you. And that, that's what I was going to get to. Is That's why I brought up Latavius Murray is because like Drake, you're not drafting him to start any given week. But it's the upside is the fact that how many running backs out there, there's only a handful, like five maybe, that you list to say, oh, wow, if the lead person gets hurt, we have a potential fringe, at least fringe, RB1 on our hands because you could say Drake, you could say Mary, obviously, and then you throw in like Tony Pollard and a few others, but there's not really more than five or six guys that are out there. There's a lot of situations you just brought up the Chargers. Granted, they're at the other end of the spectrum altogether, but there's a lot of backfields that kind of hover even in the middle where it's going to be two guys replacing one versus one guy just stepping into that role. Yeah, so essentially it's draft Darren Waller for sure, draft Josh Jacobs. <laughs> later on if you can get him so you're probably not going to draft him then take a flyer on john brown if Kenyon drake slips towards like the uh, 12th round 11th round something like that take him then and it's funny because i don't hate the raiders i actually think they're like an all right team it's just they're not a good fantasy team mm, that's the problem yeah they're not they, they, they have some similar a lot of similarities to the detroit lions honestly i mean they're sort of like the minor league version of like if Derek carr was really good you could see them being like how we kind of look at the Chiefs offense. Like, hey, here are the three guys you need to own. And then everyone else is kind of like, eh, probably not. And <laughs> this team is there's one guy you want to own and everyone else is like, eh. <laughs> probably not. Yeah, that's safe. That's a good comparison as well. Yeah. Last team. And this one's in flux because it's the Denver Broncos. Do we think that Aaron Rodgers is going there? I guess is the number one question because their win total is eight and a half right now. I would say if Aaron Rodgers is going anywhere, it's the Broncos. It's going to come down to Aaron Rodgers. It's going to come down to, is he going to keep his heels dug into the ground with the Packers? And if so, then, yeah, I would say the Broncos. Okay, so let's address this like Aaron Rodgers is not their quarterback, that it will either be Drew Locke or <laughs> Teddy Bridgewater. I don't know how you can run a team, and I mean, I don't care if they traded for Teddy Bridgewater, but now you're just looking at Drew Locke or Teddy Bridgewater and not play Teddy Bridgewater. <laughs> Because the difference, like, I understand and I don't disagree with you. The difference is, and you know, anybody who's read when I've talked about Locke knows that I'm not a Locke fan. But here's where it comes down to is why you do that is you're hoping that this clicks this year and you found a franchise quarterback who just 
everything went wrong, quote unquote, I'm just trying to speak into existence of why you would believe this, is everything went wrong the first two years. There's weapons around him. He's got a year to really get under. And I even, I forget who it was, but somebody threw out the stupid Josh Allen third year thing. Like you and I have talked about before. Josh Allen is the anomaly. He's not the regular that's what happens all the time. Yeah, but not I think people element. overlook that Josh Allen was like pretty good for the first two years too, not dog shit. Right, right. He was <laughs> true, but I think they look at, what they look at is like completion percentages and on target percentages and accuracy, all that type of stuff. And that, I think that's where people try to make these leaps and comparisons with Josh Allen is that you can become so much more of an accurate passer and you can't get the ball on target, all that type of stuff. So anyway, point B is Teddy Bridgewater. You know who you have in Teddy Bridgewater. You know he's. Not ideally your starting quarterback, but he's one of the best backups in the league, and he can get you through. Like, he can get you to. Uh, Drew Locke, hopefully we found something. We uncovered what unlocks Drew Locke, and I think that's why you turn to Drew Locke. You turn to Teddy just – the only way you go Teddy is if Locke is completely nothing, which well, is a realistic possibility. Yeah, th this is the Bears situation from last year all over again. And that's a very good parallel. Like, just start Teddy Bridgewater. And they're not – they have a good defense. They have a great core of players on the offensive side of the ball. Just go with your best option and try to win games. Like, I don't see why that's so hard. Absolutely. Yeah, because people don't – It's your, you can kind of, like, compare it to your thing with fantasy. They don't want to be the fifth best. They want to go for number one. Yeah. He's but, got the higher ceiling. In, it, but but they're, they're just diluting themselves with the sunk cost fallacy at this point. Like, you have a guy who's no good. So stop playing him. Easy peasy. You made your team a lot better. <laughs> it, arguably, yes. Wide receivers on this team. Cortland Sutton is returning. He is being drafted at wide receiver number 32 at the moment. Judge Jerry Judy, Doug Judy, is going as wide receiver number 44, 106th overall. Outside of that, you got Tim Patrick uh, going undrafted, but at uh, number 84 at wide receiver. Which one of these guys has the most value, and do they all kind of have value based on how this team is constructed? Yeah, I'd say Sutton and Judy both have tied the most value because of where they're going. Sutton, yeah, it's coming off a major injury, but we know Sutton has top 20 ability, period. He's extremely talented as a wide receiver. Remember all the excitement everybody had for Sutton last year. Yes, it's an injury. Yes, we don't know how he looks yet. Uh, the quarterback play doesn't help him a ton, but – Similar to Allen Robinson, Allen Robinson has been putting up wide receiver one numbers year after year after year after year with terrible quarterbacks. Terrible quarterback doesn't mean you can't put up numbers. Uh, there is the pushback. Yes, the defense is good enough that they're not going to have to fling it 600 times this year. So you have Sutton and Judy. But because Sutton's going where he is, that's a discount value based off his injury with upside for more. Jerry Judy essentially finished where his ADP is from last year as a rookie. Similar to Henry Ruggs, who is thrust into being the number one attention wide receiver getting, playing only outside wide receiver, who will do better inside, do better with Cortland Sutton playing across from him. And that alone will help Judy, where I think last year is his floor. I actually put, I included Judy in my top 10 breakout wide receivers for 2021. So at those costs for both of them, I think they're both great values right now. He all, Judy also seemed to be playing through massive injuries last year. He looked noticeably yeah, yeah. slower some weeks than in others. He was, yeah, he was not 100% for a good point, good point of the year. And if you look at it, too, did he even catch half of his passes last year? I mean, he that, dropped a good amount, of him too. That was partly on him. He did. So he has the part that he dropped some, and then he has Drew Locke throwing him the ball, which are, like, nowhere near him. So that, that's not a great time. That's <laughs> true. Let's see. What is – I want to say – I just pulled it. He didn't even no. He didn't even catch half of his targets. One thirteen and only caught fifty two. Uh, I would go. I think Jerry Judy is the value here. He's the one that I would be primarily targeting. I don't think Tim Patrick is bad though. I think Tim Patrick is a good player. And if they do decide to run three wide receiver sets in this offense, then I could see him some getting some so some extra love here, especially if mm, Teddy. Plays. I just don't. I I don't think so for two reasons. One is. With Sutton back, I don't know that you get a third wide receiver because no offense still going to be involved. I think those are your top three. And then KJ, KJ Hamler is an extremely talented slot wide receiver, which I think you know could make the push for the number three wide receiver on this team and kind of boot Tim Patrick to number four, which number four would be com completely irrelevant. Okay, let's go to the running backs. This was the question of the episode, Jake. You've already given your breakdown <laughs> of it all. Smash the like button of the episode. Tell me where you think Javante Williams is going to go 
what where he's going to finish at running back this season. And you kind of mentioned it. There's these reports that he's just going to be the guy from week one. If that's the case, he's the top 20 running back for sure, maybe even higher. But what's a realistic scenario with Melvin Gordon still lingering around here? Melvin Gordon beat his DUI, so he's no longer going to be suspended. Yeah. And Melvin Gordon also had one of his best argue on a per touch basis seasons last year for everybody that used to say Melvin Gordon never gets over four yards per carry because I think he did it one year's career before last year. He looked it's not like Melvin Gordon's awful. Melvin Gordon, no. Is he a top ten running back? Absolutely not. But Melvin Gordon's not terrible in the fact that if he does decide to show up, stops this whatever's going on, whether it's a holdout while he's disgruntled, whatever it might be, week one split. You know, I would still say the odds are like a 60-40 in his favor. And obviously, it's not like maybe 60 with a 35 and somebody else sprinkled it. But everybody understands the point there. I still think Melvin Gordon starts out as the lead. Worst case, 50-50 before Javante Williams does take over. I just don't know that if Melvin – actually, I don't. I don't think that if Melvin Gordon is out there playing on this team, practicing and ready for week one, that it's going to be Javante Williams touching the ball 65 70% of the time. I'm really – curious to see how this breaks down in terms of ADP. We don't have any sort of draft data from the time that we're talking about this that reflects that Williams could be the number one guy in Denver and being the starter. Because before the news ended up coming out, Melvin Gordon was being drafted at running back number 24, 57th overall. Williams was being drafted at running back number 44, 121 overall, which is a fantastic value, whether he was the backup or not, thinking that maybe he could win the job as the season went along. I just don't think that's a realistic ADP anymore. Like he's not going to go behind JD McKissick anymore. No, he is. He would. I was. I thought you were going to mention even a better name than that. I was going to see where he went in my draft last night, just to kind of give you an idea. So, let's see. Javante, he went in round five. Jesus. So there you go. Right, right in between Travis Etienne and Chase Edmonds and Michael Carter in that same group. Okay, and just on average, before basically two days ago, he was going as pick number 121, so in the 11th round. Yeah, so he was pick 59. So there you go. Yeah, so other running backs going in that range right now. I mean, that's where Melvin, basically he just has taken the Melvin Gordon spot. They've swapped. Yeah, and that would be fine if we knew Melvin Gordon was already definitively RB2 on this depth chart, but I don't think we can say that yet. And Look, some of it might be value, but... It was a value. That's the biggest point you're making. It was a value because you were getting him at a discount where he could surprise us and be the week one starter with Melvin Gordon number two and have all that happen. Or maybe even Melvin Gordon got hurt. And then we're talking, like you said, the 24 is too low. But now drafting as RB24, now he essentially has to at least split the backfield in week one. So I don't know that I'm paying that price as much as I am a Williams fan as much as anybody else. Last one, Noah Fant. Good receiver. Not a great blocker, which is great for tight end fantasy purposes. He's kind of like Evan Ingram in a weird way, except he doesn't get the hype that Evan Ingram does. I actually have him projected as tight end number six for the season. He's being drafted at tight end number 13. If he he's not someone I want to reach on by any means because you know tight end six through tight end fourteen is an all separated by all that much. You tweak a few touchdowns here and there, and it throws people all over the board. I still think that unless you get an elite guy at tight end, you wait. But it does seem like he is falling down drafts. That if he goes at I mean tight end number thirteen, tight end number twelve in that range where he's like a final three round pick, he could be your starter week one, no problem. Yeah, and if he's going in that round or in that range too, that absolutely. I actually have him at tight end eight, so I'm kind of right there with you, just a little bit lower, but not by much. Uh, to the point being is, if Noah Fant, I added one touchdown, he probably leapfrogs those guys and finishes at tight end six. So yeah, I think for where he's going, certainly reasonable. I, I just mentioned it too, and when I said what about my concern about Tim Patrick, because I think Noah Fant is the number three in target share. So that's what it comes down to is if you can get semi competent play. If it is Teddy, Teddy just made three wide receivers have top 30 value at the wide receiver position. If Fant is the three instead of a wide receiver and it's Sutton, Judy, and Fant, Fant could easily be top 10 if those are the top three weapons. He's someone that you would want to have on your team, but you don't want to pay. You want to pay a discount for it. Like, don't pay whatever yes. full price is. If you get him at 75% off, he's your guy. Yeah, same with. You know, Tanyan being able to repeat those touchdowns. Listen, and not ta- Tanyan, and... basically Tanyan, Higby, Logan Goddard, Thomas. Ingram, Hawkinson, Logan Thomas, Hooper, Irv Smith, Blake Jarwin, Noah Fant. 
whichever one just presents themselves as the best discount, take that one. Yeah, just keep waiting. I almost took Evan Ingram last night for that. But then I was like, you know what? Screw it. I'm going to do Cole Komet just because I, I'm so sick of Evan Ingram. All right, so welcome to Jimmy Graham season. Uh, no, J- Jimmy Graham, is, your, your dime is done, man. We're pushing you aside finally. Right. I know it's, but that, all jokes aside, that was a pure, I'm going for upside. Is like where you, you talk about this all the time is paying these scenarios. You pay the scenario where he does step past because Jimmy Graham is just toast at this point and becomes the number three target in the Bears passing game. Whereas Evan Ingram, even if, I mean, you need multiple injuries now for him to get to number three. That will do it on the Pat Mayo Experience Fantasy Football Rankings 2021 of the AFC West. You want to check out the other divisions? Hit the description, smash the like button to the video, and subscribe to Mayo Media Network. If you want a spot in the Scott Fishbowl, check out my Twitter at the PME, and you can find out how to do that. Shockingly enough, it's about leaving a rating and review on the Pat Mayo Experience Audio Podcast, a podcast which you should most definitely download. Okay? For Jake, I'm Pat. We'll see you next time.
Hi, hello. What's up? How are we? Texans, Titans. What a matchup. Sunday night, prime time during the NBA playoffs and the U.S. Open. But this is more important, as we all know. Hi, Matt LaMarca. Hello, Brendan Glasheen. How you doing? How are you today? Good. Good. Just got home from a nice little Father's Day with my older brother and my dad. Uh, What's Papa Glash doing these days? Is he retired? Yeah. Yeah, he actually was... uh, he was driving the school bus for a little bit as his post, you know, his post retirement like little side hustle. But he gave that up a couple weeks ago, so he's doing absolutely nothing. Beautiful. Yeah. Really has he happy. got the WNBA league pass? Watching his boy. Yeah, I gave him the login. Quite literally, yeah, his boy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, how about how about Daddy Lamarca? He's got a couple more years before he can hang up the old uh, the old working credentials. Oh. <laughs> Wait, the way you started that sentence was really dark. I'm like, whoa. Yeah, no, you're right. I immediately regretted my word choice. Uh, Yeah, he works a a boring desk job um, that he hates, but he's punching the clock for another couple of years. And, you know, he's got leeches on his on his finances like me and my two sisters. So he's got to keep he's got to keep cashing them checks. Good for him. That's good. This was. Look at my look at my older brother's got in his yard. Look at this thing that kids now have these days. Is that like just a big old slip and slide? Yeah, it's like two two slides. So, oh. I know you hit it a couple times. No, I couldn't go on. Uh, too big. But how cool is that thing? Freaking sweet. Now, does he do the trick where you lube it up with some like dish soap? No, but that's a great idea. That's how you make it extra slippery. I thought everybody knew that's well, yeah, for like your regular uh like a regular slip and slide. I think with the the fact that there's actually a slide on the slip and slide. Uh I don't know. Well you know what? We'll keep that in mind for next time I'm there. So hope everyone's having a good day. All the dads that are here, uh if you're all watching, happy Father's Day. I don't think anyone here unless Jim's a father. Jim Jim <laughs> Jim are you a father, Jim? You don't have to answer, Jim. It's fine. <laughs> uh, did you make a lineup? I did. I did make a lineup. Um, let me tell you who I'm I stop played. asking you if you did because you're pretty. Uh, oh, he's a puppy dad. Awesome. Nah, that doesn't count. Jim, do you do you mind? I never really asked you. Do you? Other hosts just kind of call people names and don't really ask. Is, is this okay? Like, is it all right if I do the Romo voice to you? I never really asked you. All right with you. So I played. Um, All right, good. No issues. I I played Henry in the captain spot as I typically do. I also got Deshaun into my lineup. So I felt like you needed to have both of those guys. Tough to do, but I did it. Um, to make it work, I paired them with David Johnson, Johnny Smith, Corey Davis, and. Kenny Stills at 2,200. I played Kenny Stills, too. Seemed like a good price for him, right? Yeah. To probably do absolutely nothing. But he's tw- he's 24% owned in our contest. He gives us a catch. A catch for 30 yards. Yeah, That'll we'll take that. Put A.J. Brown in the captain. I played both quarterbacks. Derrick Henry, and they basically, uh, yeah, two punt plays for me. Aikens and Stills. Okay. Really, really reaching. Hey, but you got the studs in there. We've seen that line of construction work. That's what I'm going for. David Johnson, sir! (laughs) This is a Wendy's. Nicely done. I, uh... The other day, I made a mistake. Shirag, you know Shirag, mm-hmm. editor here at DraftKings. I emailed him a piece that I had written for another website. And uh, he just emailed me back, sir, this is a Wendy's. <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty funny. Because, <laughs> you know, like, this, is, this would go under freelancer problems. 
every email that you have to send is editors at whatever website. Editors at DraftKings.com. Editors at FantasyLabs.com. So I have just like seven editors at email addresses. And sometimes I get a little lazy and I just pick the wrong one on accident. No, but that's really easy to do. You just start typing in E D and then it's like, oh, there it is. Boom. You but you have to really be careful. You, you might pick the wrong one. That's probably what 100%. happened. That's exactly what happened. Okay. Well, glad it got worked out and they turned into a, a lighthearted joke after after the fact. So that's good. <laughs> Shroud's the man. I love that dude. Yeah, I worked with him on uh, on Thursday. We did the NBA follow along. It was a great, great little great little show on Thursday night. Gotta say, it was fun. Did you guys have the Bucks winning the series? Uh, no. no. We, uh, because, what was it? Oh, we basically got to halftime of game six. And then we we found out that, you know, Milwaukee held on to win the game. And then, uh, no, no, I did not think that was going to happen. I thought, I was like, if it's close, there's no way the Bucks win. And what do you know? It was close. And the Bucks won. And there's a fumble. Great. Sean, putting it yep. on the turf. Okay, here comes Tannehill. I know you like to call him Tannehill. Ryan Tannehill. That's the, that's Gruden, right? <laughs> yes. The Gruden. <laughs> yeah, the Gruden pronunciation. Why did you did you have the Bucks winning last night? Uh no, I did not. To be honest, I mean, I was rooting very hard for them, uh, but especially once Durant makes the shot to send it to overtime, I'm like, well, there's no way they can hang on. Like that was just so gutting. Um, and to be fair, they didn't score for like the first four minutes of overtime, but Brooklyn just got ice cold. Yeah, um, I was shocked. Yeah, I thought the same thing. Like up oh, OT. That's it. That's game. Even in that same game, was it game five or was it game seven? Because I saw a video pop up and maybe it was just older, but they were counting down Giannis at the free throw line. Uh, they've been doing that at every game in Brooklyn. That's actually fantastic. I, I read some tweets because uh, I, I didn't like, I watched the end of the game, but did you feel that the crowd was like weak for a game seven? Listen, Brooklyn, um, it's not it's not a basketball hotbed. I don't think that there's a lot of diehard Brooklyn Nets fans who were focused on making the place as electric as possible, you know? Like from what and I I well, I've been to any of these games, but from what I saw on TV, like the atmosphere for the Knicks, you know, first round playoff series has been better than what we've seen in Brooklyn. Yeah. Okay. That tells you Tells you a lot. Obi-Wan says, wounded Brooklyn team. So don't get excited. Yeah, but Obi-Wan, what's the saying we've been... Every team is wounded right now. Who's not what, wounded? What's this? What's the saying that Tarolyn and Jeff were, were beating against a drum to me uh, a couple weeks ago? That's life, right? Well, that's life. And in this particular year, it, it really does feel like survival. So this point. I don't remember who said it, but that's a famous quote, right? The best of uh, the best of, of the best ability is availability. Hmm. Yeah, man. I think this year it really feels like whichever team can survive here at the end is going to win this thing. Yeah, and I do think that Phoenix put themselves in a good spot with their win today. They should get Chris Paul back at some point. Yeah, we don't know exactly when, but they should get him back at some point. Um, that said, like healthy Phoenix versus this Bucks team, I would imagine that the Bucks are going to be favored. I think it'll be close, but I think the Bucks would be favored in that series. I still don't know if I trust them. Oh, that's totally fair. You know, like big game. Once again, they got dreadful performances from their supporting cast outside of Giannis. I mean, in the first half, uh, Middleton and Holiday were a combined four for 22. But 
both of those guys made huge shots for them down the stretch when they had to. True. Yeah, looking at Middleton's stat line, I was shocked. I'm like, well, Middleton has to play better. At least he scored, but his, what was he, 9 for 26? I think his final line was shooting the ball. I'll pull it up real quick. But Chris Middleton's got to be better for them. But, it, I mean, what, what do you know? The Suns today, super impressive. That was a great game. I still can't get over the Clippers. Like, Reggie Jackson, buyout last year in the bubble. This guy. This guy. Crazy. And Terrence Mann seemingly out of nowhere. That's right. Man. I mean, this is why I, I liked the Clippers when they were healthy. I just, I think they have a deep team. But without Kawhi, it feels like it's going to be a futile effort. Terrence Mann from Lowell, Mass, Lamarca. Oh. Hometown Lowell, Mass. Didn't go to high school with him. He went to a, the fancy schmancy. Uh, oh. Let's be, let's be real, Glash. You would have graduated about five years in front of him anyway. Yeah, true. Pretty cool, though. He, he played four years at Florida State. And I, like, if you go back and read up on when he got drafted, or at least that summer, because the, the, the summer he was drafted was when Kawhi and Paul George decided to team up. And if you just go through and read, like, Terrence Mann was getting a lot of love from Paul George and Kawhi. Like, they love him. Doc loved him, too. So, I mean, it surprised me he scored 39, but it doesn't surprise me that he's cracked a spot in that rotation and right. even throughout the regular season, as you know, in DFS, he was a guy that actually got some time when Kawhi was out uh, due to load management. So it was really cool. Really cool to watch that the other night. Uh, Mike Bauer mentions that he's a dog dad, so he didn't like your, uh, your your criticism, if you will, of of Jim being kind of a fake dad. Listen, I have nothing Would against Would you say that dogs. to Lancia if he was here? A hundred percent. I okay. own a dog. I love dogs, but I think that diminishes the role of a parent in a child's life to say, oh, I'm a dog dad. <laughs> like, like, that's essentially comparing a, a dog to a human child, which is not the same thing. Mm. Jim and Ops agrees. Because, oh, I, I'm with you. Because, of course, he agrees. Poppy says, I've been watching the Clippers all year. Give T-Man some minutes and he will produce. So today, he didn't play all that much. Right? Yeah, they started Zubak in the second half, which I thought was interesting. 20, 27 minutes. Okay, so that's that's something. They did start. They, they started Zubak tonight? In the second half. Oh, okay. Yeah, Man started the first half and Zubak started the second half. I don't know if he started in place of man. I would assume so, but maybe it was in place of, um, I don't know, Nick Batum or something like that. I, I, who knows? Mm, who? Yeah. Boogie Cousins played 13. Boogie Cousins had 11 points in 13 minutes. Yeah, and at least one, like, like technical foul. Uh, we are scoreless through one. Deshaun Watson has fumbled. So if you played Deshaun in your captain spot, that's not that's not great. But really, no one else has produced. So we got a long way to go in this sim. OSU fan has a small lead in the uh, curious how the freeze pop holder is doing. Free will. You have that handy? If there's in it, uh -oh. always, my friend. Nice, dude. There it is. You you and Freeze Pops, who will be here at 10, are the only two that have those, you know. No. Because Tommy got one unsolicited, and I, begged, and I basically begged for one. Because I said, wah, Freeze Pops gets all the free stuff. Nobody gives me anything. I ran it by my mother, and she was in, so... Glad it's working out. Freeze Pops interrupted everyone last night, by the way, watching the Nets and Bucks. He tweets at everybody and says, guys, I won my first free roll. Oh, I, I was in there, but 
Oh, you were tagged? Okay. I couldn't remember. I didn't tagged. pay attention to it because I was riveted by what was happening on the television. Yeah, really. Like, the, the, the nerve to do that during the game last night. <laughs> he pulled the walk off on me. He gave himself the wooden nickel and said, I'm out of here. Uh, well, Marco, you got the post game. Wait, did he actually? <laughs> wait, oh, you were on the sim with him? Yes. Oh, got it. I mean, it was like a joking walk-off, but yeah, he walked off. Now I get it, because I saw some tweets like, oh, he actually, I, he dropped the mic last time. Like, he dropped care. the mic on it. Wow. Good for him. I respect it. It's Definitely just the funny most because we've been talking about it, like, and he said, I've never won one. And then literally, like, no less than a few Sims later, he does. Uh, the Drew Stack is with us tonight on production. Jim from Game Ops. Jim has confirmed that he does not mind the Romo pronunciation of his name. Deshaun, just be careful. There you go. Tumbling shy of the first, second and one. Producer Drew says, real diva move. Guy wins one free roll. You know what? I respect it, though. Well... We can say this. It's definitely the most memorable. He, he's the most memorable guy in terms of what he did after winning one, as opposed to, woohoo, I won. I get to brag. Not I'm to mention here. my man worked four Sims in a row. And it was the final one of the night. And it was the final one. I'm cool that's with him cutting out 30 seconds early. That's pretty good. That's, tr- that's a great point. Seriously, shout out to Freeze Pops. I- I'll make sure... He hears it from me at 10, but he's been an anchor on weekends here the last few weeks. So, you know, um, I'll, I'll accept, I'll accept a, some, some kudos as well. Yeah, I know you too, Marco. Sorry. You've, you've worked Thank like you. three on Sundays. And Saturdays. That's I mean, true. I don't work the four in a row because I'm not a madman. but Yeah. Four in a row. I've nice. done, I've done six in a weekend the past couple of weekends. You know what, dude? My bad. I should have, I should have said, I should have shouted you out first. No, it's okay. It's 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 all right, Mr. Glashine. I I understand it, you know. Freeze pops is a little more visible. Squeaky wheel gets the grease. Clint on YouTube says, I want to see Glash as the commissioner. Never knowing what personality is on deck each week keeps everyone on their toes. <laughs> we talked about this on uh, my last sim with Freeze Pops. He wants to start up a you know, like a sim broadcaster's fantasy football league. Mm-hmm. And the big question was, who will commission this league? So, first of all, I, I'd love to hear if you have any thoughts on who the commissioner should be. And then I'll let you know who we dis- who we landed on. Well, Marka, I know we've done this before, but you got to remind me. Wasn't there a point you were doing a lot of stuff with us on DK, and then you kind of... You kind of stopped, not because like you wanted to, but like you had you were doing other stuff for other places, and it it just didn't work out. Is that is that does that sound familiar? I can, I was like a regular on the sweat, right? But I wasn't I wasn't doing any official work for DraftKings. Yeah, but there was a period where you weren't like you just weren't there, and I'm wondering if that's because you had other stuff come up, like other. Yeah, options. yeah, that was when I was an employee at Action Network, and got it. I just got too busy. Right. So I only bring that up because we we've done a commentator or a on air talent fantasy league at the office. And then we did one last year. We 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 did 12 teams the year before we did 14. But a lot of stuff changed. Our man, Tyler Sullivan, who's at CBS Sports, he left because he it, just too much of a commitment, which, by the way, I wish Tyler Sullivan was still with us because that would have been cool to watch him call. Sim. there is a. <laughs> Gillespie, the uh, fullback. Thank God he, he got stopped. Anyway, um, so we got it to 12. I should look up who's in it. But I, I have created the league in the draft night the last couple of years, actually. So you've commissioned the league? Yeah, not because I wanted to, because no one else was stepping up to the plate and getting things done. So I did it. All right. I mean, no, I, I mean, the, you asked, so. I respect that. We said ZT would be a great commissioner. Oh, for sure. Yeah, he's in. He was in the league. 
see, I felt bad because right around September, it was August. And that's when you typically, like, or even like late July, you're getting the ball rolling on that stuff. And yeah. Christian wanted in, and I'm like, ah, oh, dude, we already have 12. Like, sorry. Like, I felt really bad. There's Duke Johnson Jr. So, but now, like, you're a regular here. Freeze Pops was hired during the football season last year. So now he's new to the team. Kenny, Kenny's in the mix now. We, I mean, we could go like 16 deep if we wanted to. <laughs> well, how do, what are your thoughts on that? Is that too much? Like, what do you think? This is funny. This is a conversation we had during the last sim. Okay. My thing is, if you're, you're right going to do... If you're going to do 12 or less, I think it needs to be a two quarterback league. Okay. Or or a super flex league where you can play two quarterbacks. But if you can if you want to go 14 or 16, then I think that would be awesome. Let me write everyone down. Yeah, we, we definitely had some big numbers last year. And then we factor in, like, Bukes and Julian and Garion. Oh, they, they can get cut. We can cut them. I kind of want to. Like, they don't do so <laughs> Jerks. Um, <laughs> how about <laughs> Andrew, our technical director? Drew and I are going to do a hashtag Drew Stack two-man league, six quarterbacks. <laughs> <laughs> Two kickers and O-linemen. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Drews, we can pair them up into one team, I think. You guys would be cool with that, right? Well, if we get, to, but see, if we get them in, that means like Samir. I think Samir was in it. Ah, maybe he wasn't. This league will grow really fast if we let in everybody. And that, I mean, I'm in. If we want to give 20, 20 teams in, I'm just pointing that out. Oh, God, God I did it. great call. I don't have the whiteboard with me. I'm still dog sitting, so I don't have the whiteboard. Yeah, I'm, I'm dog sitting with Sarah. Uh, her aunt's uh, Brittany Spaniel. A Brittany Spaniel? Oh, what, no, what is it? A, uh, a um, Cocker Spaniel? No, a Brit. Is it? Yeah. No, a Brittany. What the heck is a Brittany? Sarah, what kind of dog is Belle again? Yeah, Brittany Spaniel. I was right. <laughs> That's her name, Brittany Spaniel, after Brittany Spears. <laughs> I've just never heard of a Brittany Stan uh, Spaniel. Not that that doesn't mean it doesn't exist. I've oh. never heard of it. Oh, you made me doubt myself for a second. I'm like, wait a minute. Am I, am I saying this right? <laughs> Drew says he has a friend with a cat named Cat Ripkin Jr. <laughs> I like that. Uh, jellyfish, yes, the Texans did score. Duke Johnson Jr. with the score. Did I, who am I missing? I'm definitely missing some people on here. Oh, Rossi. Jeez, Rossi. Kill me if I said that wrong. Oh, let me just look at the schedule. I'm a dummy. Um, <laughs> BK. Uh, no. No, not allowed. He's got why? league insider sources. Oh, you don't like him, right? No, no I, I, have no pro I, I have no problem with BK. I was making a joke. Okay. About the fact oh, he's that he's an on the phone with uh, right with the opposing coach of the Broncos. Like, listen, who do you plan to uh, use a running back this week? <laughs> so, okay, you ready for this? I've got sixteen names, all on air. I think all I got on air. Yep, you ready for it? Yeah. Hit me. Okay. Emerson, cough, you. Oh, I didn't include myself. Crap. I didn't, I got to put my name down. <laughs> <laughs> you, you're just going to commission. You don't need to play. You don't need to play. <laughs> okay. So here we go. Here we go. Emerson, cough, you, Kenny, ZT, Tara Lynn, Jeff, Reed. So Jesse, Christian, Rossi, BK. So you think we should kick off Steve, Julian, and Garion? <laughs> I don't necessarily think we should kick them off, but I think that 
it would be cool to include some behind the camera, you know, like in front of the, behind the camera people. Excuse me. I, I'm kind of with you. So if we now if we get rid of the three of them, we're down to thirteen. And then we can get in the Drews. We can get in uh, Jim. We can get in P Fry. You know, let's get some. Uh, Dude, if we're, <laughs> for this do league, some Mike. Thirty people. I want Mike in there. <laughs> Twenty man league, baby. <laughs> it will. We we'll, we'll need. It would be thirty. <laughs> Yeah, see, like, Bry Guy, Billy, we could include them. I don't know. This is hard. I hate I hate doing this because then you have to be like, well, we can't include them. All right. So then maybe we do two leagues. We do two leagues, and then in the end, we have an epic champ v. champ showdown. Okay, I'm in on that. Produ- production versus on air? <laughs> yes. Wow. All right. <laughs> I don't know what to do. See, we I, get, I, we'll talk this out. We've got plenty of time. I don't even know what to write anymore. I, I just wrote a bunch of names, and now I feel useless. <laughs> <laughs> it's still oh, true. John Rom won the U.S. Open. It's over. The Rombo. Oh, Robbie Noble says, don't forget Tate. Can't forget Tate. That's what I'm saying. There's a lot of ops members, you know? <laughs> Mike Bizzle says, invite Madison back. That'd be fun, but I, you know, hopefully Madison's doing well with whatever Madison's doing. She ain't going to have time for us. Emerson, Koff, you, Kenny, ZT, Terrellyn, Jeff Reed, Jesse, Christian, Rossi, BK, me. Oh! Freeze Pops! Crap! I didn't write his name. Pops. Ooh! Wait a minute. That would give us 14. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. I mean, if I left Freeze Pop, he's like the one who started this conversation. So that'd be yeah, really. Tr- no, we could never. I would. I would not play without Tommy Freeze Pops. He said he would do the same for me, so I have to stand up for my guy. So if we Dimitri go with... If, and like brothers bonding over these weekend shifts. If we ditch Gary and Julian and Steve. <laughs> we'd Put have, them in the ops bracket. Well, that's like offensive to the ops team. Why? Because the ops team doesn't calculate scores for them. What do they do for the ops team? They don't do anything for them. They don't give them any entertainment. Or right, Drew, let us know. Would you be offended if we put those guys in your bracket? Say yes. Say no. Say yes. <laughs> hey, hey, I mean, hey, we got 14. With, and every single name is someone who is involved. Actively on camera at the moment. On the dream stream. Kind of. Kind of, wait a second. I mean, Jesse is not here talking about Sims, though. Because I only bring that up because if we make that exception for Jesse, then that means Steve, Julian, and Gary would have a case. Very fair point, but Jesse's cooler than them. <laughs> She's on TV, and I think that that trumps. Hey, I mean, I, you said it. I mean, you, you took the words out of my mouth. <laughs> <sighs> See, we... we Technically, if we make the if the mission statement is going to be everyone that's involved in the Sims, well, Jesse kind of used to be. In between, you know, she'd be like, she came, she came on the ladies' night Sims a couple times. Yeah, yeah. But if if we make that exception, then I feel I would feel a little bit bad about Steve, Julian, and Reed. I mean, Steve, Julian, and uh, even even to me, even Reed hasn't been I'll that. Call, mm-hmm. I'll call him into my office. And sit him down with the principal. My favorite is like, what was it, producer Drew, like a month ago? My favorite is like Steve. Steve like hit up Drew like, you know, I want to, uh, I want to, I'll, I'll call a sim. Just put me down for one. And I want to be with, like, he, he got all like, eh, I'll, I'll work with Glass Sheen. Put me on, the, put me on the eight o'clock. Ooh. It's like, oh. He tried to big time everybody. Special treatment Buchanan here. Goes on MLB Network a couple times a week. He gets to pick whatever time he wants to call the sim. 
Yeah, just not on the weekend when we need him. Okay, well, that was kind of a fun experiment for a whole half of sim football. <laughs> we still don't have a league. We still don't know who we want to have in the league. Plenty of time left. We'll figure it out. Maybe we can make some sort of competition to get into the league. Ooh. You know, We're that way we just invite everybody. Tryouts. We invite everybody, and then it just comes down to whatever. I like it. You know, you want to be in? Come stake your claim. Wes from, I think this is Twitch. They should do a league with commentators and let us bet on who wins it. So you make a free-to-play pool. Well, that, I mean, that would be awesome. Um, that would be awesome. That, I that, don't that know. needs to happen. I don't know if that's possible, but I can tell you right now, if it is, I will be sending every member of Team LaMarca a personalized letter. Season tickets to, my, to, to the fan club. You fill out a free-to-play pool, and you have Team LaMarca, a.k.a. it'll probably be named Mr. Wiggles, in first place at the end of it. You get a personalized piece of fan mail. You're in the team club, okay? You're in the inner circle. Uh, shout out to Must Be's wife. She finished in second place in the Moose Classic U.S. Open Bonanza. 393 and a half points. There's Tanny Hill on the run. I just want to keep saying it like that. 10 yard run, first down. Touchdown for Houston, Duke Johnson Jr. Um, did, you, did you make a lineup for this thing? The, uh, the Jeff's contest? Jeff's con Oh, the golf? No. No. I don't really play the golf. It's yeah. too much crapshoot for me. Hey, I like to stick to predictable sports like Madden Stims. I, I did okay. I came in 29th. Hey, like, that's not bad. I didn't win anything. How many? 30? No. 200. Oh, that's okay. That's pretty good. It's almost top 10%. Yeah. I mean, I didn't win Top anything. 15%. I think top 20. Yeah, you had to be in the top 20 to win anything. So I was close. But of all the people that are from, like, our production team... I think I, I think I did pretty well. I was kind of surprised. Rory was my dude. Rory was the guy I paid up for. Mm. I don't know if Rory's ever going to win another one. What? Uh, I know he's still a child. Yeah. He just doesn't have the, the fortitude to make the big putts anymore. Didn't he won something though this year though, right? Something smaller. Oh, he'll win. He'll win tournaments. I just don't know if he's ever going to win a big one. Yeah. Mm. Bad boys of pop. I only play the real golf, and I always lose and win at the same time. It's great. <laughs> Eighty poker eighty nine updating us on Sixers Hawks. The Sixers game is basically taking turns, just shooting foul shots back and forth. <laughs> that sounds like it benefits the Hawks, especially if it's Ben Simmons at the line. Simmons has not attempted a free throw. Embiid is three for six. Okay. Okay. I oh, still have on the golf coverage. I should probably flip back over to the tint. I'm kind of surprised. <laughs> That's what I call TNT. I've never heard that. Well, I, I, I got it. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Just figured I'd clear it up for yeah, anybody. Thank else. you. Like, what? Tint? <laughs> No more. That's mean. Uh, on Twitch, I vote Sarah in your league. We would rather see her than Tom. That is mean. Come on, what's wrong with Freeze Pops? He's fine. I mean, he's great. But, well, I don't. I don't understand. Larizi, on Twitch, the Titans are playing very bad. <laughs> Did you see Bad Boys of Pops comment? Uh, I'm reading it right now. Ask is Lil Coogs. 
gonna pop on the stream for this game. So the backstory there is we were talking about uh, CEH was winning the free roll at one point, and he has a Hoosiers logo, which Tom noticed. Said he went to Indiana University, and I said I went there for one semester. And you did? BBOP, I did for one semester. BBOP asked if I met while during my tenure in Bloomington. Uh, Mellencamp's son, John Mellencamp's son, and I said, not that I know him. And Freeze Pop said, well, that's something I think that you probably wouldn't even know if it happened. I said, no, nah, because I, I would ask, what's your name? And if the guy said, like, oh, Frank Mellencamp, I would have jokingly said, like, oh, are you related to John? And then the whole thing spiraled into a bit where John Mellencamp's son is now a rapper, and he goes by the name Little Cougar, a.k.a. Lil Cougs for short. Oh, my God. And for some reason, I was just cracking up at this. I mean, could you have that? I was picturing basically um, Jamie Kennedy's character from... Um, why am I? Why do I continue to blank on the name of this movie? Malibu's Most Wanted. Okay. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I'm, I'm looking it up. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's Lil Coots. Wow. So you you were just you were dying laughing. I had a pretty I had a good laugh at that. Nice. Good. Uh, Twitch says so Sarah, your laugh about Oswaldo Cobblepot. How did close. that start again? <laughs> I don't know. I don't remember. Somebody said I do an impression of Oswald Cobblepot. And I said, who the hell is Oswald Cobblepot? And it just devolved into a whole bit. Producer Drew, it's very true. How does anything start here? That's why, like, our manager, he's, he's got to write that book before we forget a lot more. Touchdown, Will Fuller. So it's Fuller and Duke Johnson Jr. with the touchdowns. Nothing for the Titans. We're midway through the third. Glash, LaMarco, the Drew Stack, and Jim from the Game Ops team. Thanks for being here on a Sunday night. Happy Father's Day to all the dads out there. If you're tuning in, thanks for making us part of your day. Any good Father's Day stories from the chat? Go ahead and share. I mean, of course, they have to be appropriate somewhat. Always got to add that to the uh, to the old uh, commentary. For a few years, my family and I used to do uh, a Mets game for Father's Day. Yeah, you remember you telling me that. And uh, that was always fun. We would try and sit in, like, a different part of the stadium. Um. But I'm glad we didn't go this year because the Mets lost today and it was kind of an embarrassing, like a bad loss, bad performance. So, well, I mean, maybe if you were there though, they, they would have had better luck. No, nothing would have changed. Okay. <laughs> I'm not that type of fan. All right. You know, like my dad, if, if he's watching. Because my dad, my dad honestly hates the Yankees probably as much as he likes the Mets. So he'll watch the Yankees a lot just to root for them to lose. So if he's watching and they're losing and they start to do good, he'll immediately change the channel. Because he like feels like it's his energy is fueling the Yankees on. Or like he's a big Giants fan. So if he watches the Giants game in one room of the house that's the room of the house that he has to watch it in the next week. He's a big time superstitious guy. And that just didn't get passed on to me. Thankfully. I think, I, I think I'd be more of a hate watching fan if Boston ever had two teams, but we're just, we're not big enough for that. Right? Like New York has it. Uh, Chicago in baseball has it. Los Angeles has it. Um, I, I don't really relate to it. I don't really get it. I don't. I don't particularly do it either. I, I do get it. I do. I shouldn't say I don't get it, but I just—it's not my. 
I was, we were having this con me and Koff were having this conversation yesterday. Like he was, he, he, he couldn't wait to see the Nets go out. I'm like, oh, come on. Like, let's, I kind of hope the Nets get to the finals and then it all crumbles. <laughs> uh, must be says his two boys are grilling him up some steaks right now while he watches football and basketball. That's nice. That sounds like a good Father's Day to me. Must be's a good man. As much crap as he gives me about my ears on the stream. He has been taking shots at your ears all sim. All sim, all summer. <laughs> all, <laughs> all spring. Nice guy, though, actually. His, his, his takes on Cam Newton are just wrong, but we'll let it slide. Um... Yeah, Mike Bizzle, Connecticut Sun, not going well right now. Not good. Not good. Their best player, Lamarca, uh, John Quell Jones, she is representing Bosnia in the in Eurobasket, mm. France. So she couldn't turn down that opportunity, helping out, doing her thing with Bosnia, but she was pretty much the MVP of the league, and. Uh, since she's been gone, since you've been gone, they've lost three in a row. So now uh, they're in the middle of the pack, and the New York Liberty are sneaking up on the sun in the standings. Braina. Mm. And Benajah Laney. She's very good, too. Laney's having a great season. Laney was the most uh, – Laney, Laney was, a, was the runner-up for uh, most improved player uh, in the Wobble last year. Um, mm. He's had a great season. That's actually been like a lot of the beef on WNBA Twitter, like between New York and um, God, who is it? New York and it Vegas. I think it was New York and Vegas, but a lot of the beef has been, uh, the criticism of New York is the fact that UNESCO just gets all like all the love and, and, and but people understand she's, she's marketable, but the criticism was, why don't you pump up the other players on the team besides just her? Okay. No, like, okay. My, what I'm trying to say is, it was I get like, what you're saying. It was like Tuesday night and it was, it, it, it would have been like the equivalent of the equivalent of uh like swaggy P with the Lakers like just starting crap on Twitter. Like the WNBA had a good night for that reason. Like it was, there was just a lot of people tweeting, just beef going on in the league. These women were just going at each other beef via, is good. via Twitter, which is, it's good for the league in the sense that people are talking about them on a non-game night. It was Monday. Mondays are typically a day where they don't have games. So it was entertaining to follow. Yeah, uh, Mike Bizzle. Yeah, they're not they're not in first place anymore. They're eight and five. They're middle of the pack. They're the three seed. They, they, if the playoffs started tomorrow, Connecticut would be a three a three seed. Because how many teams make the playoffs? Eight. In the eight. Eight. So four in each conference. Four, well, no, it's just top eight. Just top eight. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. If they don't go by conference. They'll they'll do the conferences to build out the schedule. But top eight, get in. That's the deal. So Connecticut would be the three seed. Um, Ghost Machine is leading our contest. Fuller in the captain spot. Watson, Henry, Fells, Cobb, and the Texans defense. So who's your pick to now win the NBA championship? I'm going to tentatively say the Milwaukee Bucks. But I'm I'm fully prepared for them to let me down again. <laughs> um, I'm aware that this is my heart is making this pick in addition to my brain. But I do think... They have the best roster left in the playoffs. You know, like maybe Joel Embiid is the best player left in the playoffs, but it's close between him and Giannis. 
right? Like, the only player that I would have said is a clear tier above Giannis left in the playoffs. Kawhi. Is Kawhi. And he's right. gone. And yeah. and Kevin Durant, who's now gone. So, they just beat a team without having the best player. They will have the best player, or at least close to the best player, in all their remaining series. I think I think they're the favorites. You think the Bucks have a better roster than the Suns? Yeah. Okay. I mean, listen, I'm I'm a huge Chris Paul guy, but we're still talking about older Chris Paul. You know, he's not prime MVP candidate Chris Paul. He's more bottom of the end, uh, bottom of the MVP ballot candidate. And I like Devin Booker, but history suggests that it's not going to be easy for him to just win a title in his first trip to the playoffs. You know, normally you have to lose. You have to go through some growing pains. So I'm not saying that he's necessarily going to struggle as these games get more important. He certainly has played well um, in the last few rounds, but this is going to be a big test. I don't know how many games they're going to have to survive without Chris Paul. A- any update on when he might come back? No, no, Nobody no. knows. Need more information. Bet you we'll find out something tomorrow because it's an off day. They'll, they'll get Must the be here. continues to, to push the Atlanta Hawks. Um, listen, I would be very happy to see Atlanta make it to the next round. But they got to get past Philly right now. Must be's hottest takes on the table right now are that one. Atlanta, Phoenix in the finals. Atlanta to win the whole thing. His other hot take that I basically pressured him into. I'm, I'm very proud of this. Not only does he think the Patriots are going to go 12-5 and five and make the playoffs. He thinks Cam Newton is going to be the starting quarterback the divisional round weekend. For the twelve and five playoff. Well, if they go twelve and five, I would imagine he's going to. Yeah, he's going to move twelve and five, going to the divisional round. And the other one, which didn't happen, but he was pushing for it. He wanted. Correct me if I'm wrong. Must be you wanted Justin Fields to go number one in the draft. You think Justin Fields is that good? Or let me take that back. He mentioned that he's like, oh, they should take Fields, the the, the Jaguars, but. On, he believed that he thought the Falcons should have taken uh, Fields and not the tight end. He, he, he's he's so over Matt Ryan. So I guess that's not really a take. He just it's. I mean, I, I kind of agree with that take. He kind of that's what he wanted and didn't have. So, but let's play this out, right? Let's play out these rosters. So, who is the Suns' best player in the world? Booker. Giannis versus Booker. Who's better? Giannis. Okay. Chris Middleton versus Chris Paul. <sighs> mm. Wow. <laughs> I mean, it's it's Middleton. I think that one's close. It's close. Hence the pause. We'll give it to Chris Paul. I'm going to give it to Chris Paul. You're a nice guy. All right. Drew Holiday versus DeAndre Ayton. Ayton's kind of on a heater right now. I do love me some DeAndre Ayton. But in that series, I don't know if he's going to have that much of an impact. Should we get that series? And Drew Holiday... Wouldn't, it, wouldn't has, this be a better... Not to, not to knock your style here, Lamarca, but wouldn't it be better okay. to go position by position? All right, let's do it like that. Like Holiday v. Paul. Sure. <laughs> Holiday v. Paul. We yeah. give it to Chris Paul. Okay. All right. Shooting guard. Middleton Booker. Booker. We we'll give it to Booker. Yeah. Two nothing. By this logic, the Suns are going to win. Suns in four. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because you probably say Mikhail Bridges over. Um, I don't even, Pat you don't even know. I thought they had the best roster. Come on, Lamarca. I thought they had the best I roster. I do think they have the best roster. 
You don't even know who's their three. Well, they've been playing uh, PJ Tucker at the, and I don't know if you need to start him against Phoenix. You know? Yeah. He was the Durant stopper. Anyway. So it's Bridges. I like the Bucks. <laughs> Wait a minute. Who's the other? Who's the other starter for the Suns, though? Uh, Jay Crowder. I'll give Giannis the edge over Jay Crowder. That's nice. Of you, yeah. Might just be me, though. So Jay Crowder's going to guard. Well, right. So you've clearly you. So Lamarca thinks it's going. You think it's going to be Suns, Bucks finals. I'm not writing off the Clippers. I like the Clippers. They're like kind of fun now. The Clipper, I mean, the Clippers have fallen into an 0-2 hole in two straight series. Let me tell you something right now. If the Clippers make the finals, it's going to be because of Paul George. Like, duh. But Paul George is going to be, if, if, they, if they get there, that means Paul George is playing at an unreal career best level. I think I'd rather have him than a Giannis at that point. <laughs> Like if we're gonna do this, if, we're, if if we were to play this game in a couple weeks, start of the NBA Finals, Bucks Clippers, I Paul George to me would be he's he, if they get there, he is he would he would be playing at the best clip of his career. Stephen Martinkovich says the Durant stopper did a great job <laughs> holding him to forty eight points. You know what? It's gonna sound crazy. I think he did do a great job in Game Seven. He held Durant to less than 50% shooting. That's a win. Durant's going to get his buckets. But if you can make him shoot 17 of 36 from the field, that's a win. You won that battle. Poppy says, you guys didn't give LeBron credit for getting through the East for a decade with no team. Giannis makes it through with the squad. And he gets props. Hold on. Who said what? Yeah, well, what are you talking about? Well, I'm confused. Who's who's not giving LeBron any credit? When did we say that? Corey Davis touchdown. You played him, right? I did. I did. Nice job, dude. Thanks, man. Um, anybody who didn't give doesn't give LeBron credit for what he did in those early days is foolish. Even the even the the last year he was there. Not to mention, we're giving Giannis credit for going toe-to-toe with the best player in the league right now and winning that series. That's what he's getting credit for. Down 2-0, that team could have caved. I mean, Kevin Durant, yes, was were the Nets shorthanded? 100%. Do they win the series if they have a healthy James Harden and Kyrie Irving? More than likely. I would say almost certainly yes. But they didn't. But they still had Kevin Durant, and that dude was incredible in that series. Incredible. And Giannis beat him. Giannis and the Bucks beat him. It wasn't all Giannis. But it was a lot of Giannis in Game 7. He didn't get a lot of help from his friends in Game 7. I'll tell you that much. Poppy, if anything, I think the, 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 what you, I think what a lot of people are doing, and I, I'm sorry, I'm going there. Kevin Durant deserves criticism. No. Yeah, a little bit. For what? Come on, dude. When You can't win two home games without stars? We're asking, you to, get to, we're asking you to get to the conference finals. You, you couldn't even get out of the second round. I mean, he could not have done anything more. I mean, maybe, the, okay, maybe maybe we should, we have to blame someone, LaMarca. <laughs> when you lose, you got to get blamed. Someone has, to, someone has to be in trouble. All right, then I'm blaming Joe Harris for forgetting how to shoot the basketball. Okay, we can do that. We can do that. That's fine. But it, at the end of the day, it's, it's Durant's show. Also, like, sorry, I, I, I know another another guy from Boston who's gonna find a way to criticize Ky Kyrie Irving. Like, you could, 
he could he couldn't go. He couldn't give it a shot. <laughs> Just saying. I don't like to play that game. All right. Makes you wonder, though, like, oh, I could have used you. Could have just tried. I don't know. I'll stop. But let's play that game. Because if because if Durant wins that game last night, you know what we're doing tonight? Unbelievable job. Kevin Durant put that team on his back. He got yeah. them there. He did it with no one. <laughs> with no one, LaMarca. I mean, he should still be getting the same amount of credit. I, I, that might have been the best series I've ever seen a player put on. The year LeBron had Matthew Della Vadova in the finals, that was a pretty damn phenomenal series for LeBron. LeBron's had some, some banger series. Here's, here's, uh, here's Durant's numbers from that series. Okay. He averaged 35 a game with 10 and a half boards, five and a half rebounds, one and a half steals, and a block. Four losses. He averaged, and he played over 42 minutes per game. He shot 47.9% from the field, 35% from three point range, 83% from the line. So honestly, his shooting numbers were a bit down over those last two games. And Maybe that's who deserves the criticism. Four losses. Maybe Steve Nash is the one who deserves the criticism. That's fine. We can go there. Did he did he sacrifice the series to win game five? I think it's a fair question. Yeah. That's what happens when you lose. <laughs> talking heads like us get to talk about it. Well, I, I, I hate talking head. I don't want to be a talking head. Well, sorry. This is your job. <laughs> but I I have nothing but respect for Kevin Durant with how he played in that series. He made the right pass when he was supposed to. He made the shots when he was supposed to. Like, uh, uh, he was, kinda, he was an inch. trolling right now. I, I, I get it. I get what you're doing. I get what yeah, you're doing. You're playing a little cool. devil's advocate. But again, remember, he was an inch away from one of the most iconic shots in NBA history. Oh, look, I know. Look, if, of course, he's behind the line. They win the game. I, but I, like you, I thought, oh, this is going to OT. It's over. Like, he's just going to take over. And that's it. And I don't trust I don't trust Giannis at the free throw line at the end. Yeah. No, and. Well, Mark, my overall point is just like. I, if people want to get, if people want to like dump on Durant for just not winning the series, not his play, you can do that. You're allowed to do that because a lot of folks, and whether it's right or wrong, I don't. I just think like a lot of guy, like LeBron, took a lot of crap whenever he lost the series, and it, all of a sudden we're just gonna forget LeBron played like every minute of every game, and had had situations in Cleveland where he had nobody, both stints, stint one, stint two, and this guy all of a sudden doesn't have another all-star next to him and it's okay if you want to get on Durant a little bit and you're right here's what my, else could here's my thing with LeBron I can't think of more than one time when he lost a playoff series with a team that was definitely better than his opposition the year that they lost to the Mavs in the finals the Heat were a better team they should have beat Dallas Every other time LeBron has lost in the playoffs, I think you can say that team was legitimately better than them, if not, or, or a coin flip type situation. You know, maybe maybe Phoenix this year, if you want to say that Phoenix wasn't on the same level. But I think when you factor in Anthony Davis not being there for the last couple of games, that does kind of even the playing field. Right. And you know something too, like like you said earlier, like maybe we should just give we should give the Bucks credit. Like it's about damn time, Bucks. Like you took advantage of the situation. The Bucks won the Bucks won that game more than the Nets lost it. Yeah, 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 hear that? Who like did the did the Nets lose the finals or did the Bucks win it? The Bucks won that game. I yeah, thought that there were multiple times when the Nets had 
pull the put like put the nail in the coffin. You know that Harden banked in three. Mm -hmm. I thought, well, that's it. The game's over. But then Chris Middleton comes back from the dead to hit a three pointer. Drew Holiday makes a couple of shots which he hadn't done all game. D, D Rod, you're you're so wrong on that. Kevin Durant's a clutch player. Did you watch the fight? Remember that walk up three in LeBron's face? couple years ago that's like the shot of his career that was clutch and my my words <laughs> were not the most important clutch shot. i Same. believe what i said was one of the most iconic shots that would have been right up there with Kawhi leonard's game winner over Embiid, michael over craig elo you know none of those shots were to win finals games they were to win early playoff series Neville says, Glass just trying to get one take famous. <laughs> I mean, look, we could just, if we all just want to come on here and go, yeah, Kevin Durant, that was so awesome. Like, I hope Smash Lant clips something of you saying, he wasn't that great. Well, let me, no, all I said, we got to blame someone. <laughs> that's all. So we can blame Steve Nash. I think that's the direction we we headed. That that's where we close. At the, at the I'm going point. Joe Harris one, Steve Nash two. Really, injuries one, Joe Harris two, Steve Nash three. That's my blame list. Uh, there was there was a, a simulated football game taking place. Was there? It was was not pretty. Uh, Corey Davis had the lone score. For the Titans, four for 36 and a score. A.J. Brown, four for 65. Will Fuller had a touchdown. So did Duke Johnson, Jr. The Duke. The Duke. The Duke is on fire. Mike Johnson, exactly. How did the Nets get to overtime, D-Rod? He made a clutch shot. <laughs> like, what are we doing? Do we... Uh, that just doesn't fit his argument. So I give D credit for that. He's just excluding that from his argument. It would hurt his argument. Um, okay. You're not here for the next one, so your night is over. Um That's it, baby. So who are we giving the player of the game? Uh player of the game is going to be Man, this was a rough sim. Yeah. Uh Corey Davis? No, probably Duke Johnson, right? He did he have both touchdowns for the Texans? No, Will Fuller had another one. Corey Davis is the winning captain. I'm giving it to him. Okay. Right. But the not my kid is an easy one. That's going to be the boss hog himself, Derrick Henry. 66 rushing yards, no catches, no touchdowns. Nearly 90% ownership. Not okay. getting the job done, Derrick Henry. Rand, first place in the big public free roll on DraftKings. Davis is his captain. And shout out to Mark Mantelli. You know, Freeze Pops, I know he's going to be coming up next. Like, Mark has more has, has won a ton of these. Mark, first place lineup with Davis and the captain as well. Watson, Tannehill, Brown, Jonu Smith, and Adam Humphreys. Viking Ryan Tannehill. Tannehill. Um, Packers, <laughs> Vikings, coming up at uh, 10 o'clock, Madden After Dark. Freeze Pops is here. Producer Drew, as well as Andrew, our technical director, the Drew Stack. Also, uh, Jim. From the game ops team. Yeah, Jim! <laughs> Seven nine. <laughs> Jim, we get an NFC game tonight, Jim! <laughs> that never happens! <laughs> Move over, Bucket Aikman! <laughs> okay, any parting thoughts, Lamarca, before we say bye? Nah, man, that's it. All right, go enjoy the basketball. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, or whatever, whatever else you want to do. I shouldn't tell you what you want to do. You, you go do what you want to do. I will definitely be watching the basketball. I've had kind of one eye on it. Uh, not intensely as I did last night. Last night, I feel bad. I gave the Sim, the Sim fam like a C-plus performance. I was kind of pretty locked in on the basketball game, but... You bounce back you know, tonight. You know, everybody has a bad game from time to time, and that was a bad game for me. So, I, you know, I take it. And uh, all we can do is watch the film, look to get better. Uh, we practice hard. Um, 
you know, and, and God willing, I'll come out and I'll have a better performance next game. That it? Yeah. Anyone else? Okay, that's all the time we have for Matt. Uh, everyone have a great night. <laughs> Pour yourself a cold one. They strike them, huh? And listen to Russ Tucker break down the top college prospects on another tasty edition of The College Draft. Yeah, it is Daddy Soda time here on the College Draft Podcast presented by DraftKings. They're rolling on with the unbelievable NBA offers. And they even have awesome offers on other sports this week. I'll tell you about them later in the show or on other shows. I am Ross Tucker, former NFL offensive lineman, five teams, seven years. Those of you that check us out on YouTube, youtube.com slash Ross Tucker NFL can already see all the teams I played for because I got the helmets with the game balls, all that stuff behind me. I really appreciate those of you that follow us. And follow me on social media at Ross Tucker NFL, whether it's Twitter or Instagram. I want to get my Facebook followers up or Facebook friends or whatever they're called. Facebook.com slash Ross Tucker NFL. If you're a Facebook person, because I've been posting to Facebook uh, more, a a lot more recently, some of the uh, non football things, some of the food, some of the beers, people seem to really like it. I also, can you can check out at Ross Tucker Pod as well, which is where we post all of the shows, the highlight clips today. Uh, really looking forward to having Adam Lefko from TNT on, and Bleacher Report on today's Ross Tucker Football Podcast. Going to compare the NBA to the NFL a little bit, which should be fun. The star of this show, though, is Emery Hunt. He is a rising star. Loved his tweets over the weekend talking about the first opportunity he got as a color commentator, making the most of it, how he's climbed through the ranks. It resonated with me. You should follow him on Twitter, at F-Ball Game Plan. Dude straight out spewing life lessons over the weekend. Football Game Plan on YouTube as well. And then, of course, footballgameplan.com slash 2021 draft guide. If you still want to get that and make sure you have all the info on all the guys you'll be watching in the preseason games this year, which will be here before you know it. Emery, I love the USFL shirt, man. Good morning. Good morning, sir. I had to represent a new football league potentially. Again, we've talked about XFL. The AEF was something for a brief stint, but the XFL really had a strong showing last spring or last winter. And then the USFL announced out of nowhere that they were going to come back. And we've seen the success of the Spring League providing good content in the spring uh, on TV for Fox. So why wouldn't the USFL have success? I'm just excited to get more football out there because there's definitely a market for it. And I think we need it for players, coaches, scouts, evaluators, analysts, wink, wink. Uh, We need all of these leagues, just more opportunities for everybody. So here's what I said, I think, last week, maybe the week before, I don't know. It's all running together at this point on the Ross Tucker football podcast. At what point do like all of these people that have this idea, right? Ebersol and Polian and Vince McMahon and whoever's running the USFL. And I guess the rock owns the WWE. What's it called? The XFL. Now, like at what point do these people all get together and say, you know what? If we all pool our resources, if we all put everything behind this one thing, we we can really do because then we have the capital, we have the exposure, we're all all hands on deck. But it's like they want to do it on their own. It's like they refuse to. I, I just don't understand the logic of starting a new one every year that doesn't gain any traction, as opposed to getting together and really making this thing work. You're making way too much sense on a Monday morning, Ross. Um, one of my favorite pleasures has has been to watch the foods that built America. And one episode they talked about uh, Hershey and how they became, you know, the brand. And it started with them, you know, taking a look at all these other chocolatiers around the country. These small companies are like, wait a minute, you guys are not doing what I'm doing. Um, we got better chocolate, but you guys already have the infrastructure of manufacturing in place. 
let me buy you guys out. You still do what you do, but just continue to produce Hershey's chocolate. Then they became this big conglomerate. That's how you do it. You're exactly right. You already have a lot of these people that have an interest in the spring leagues or you know, a new football league or turn to football league. Everyone has to, you know, check their ego at the door, realize there's power in numbers and there's uh, sustainability in numbers. Understand that and create an alternate league together as opposed to trying to be the, the king atop top of the hill of, of you know, only one hill, because that's why you see so many consistently fall down. Yeah, I don't I don't get man. I really don't. Where'd you get the shirt? Oh, from 502.com. I, I had this shirt for about two years now. Um, I just felt like it was appropriate to bust it out, you know? Oh, all right. So you had that shirt before they came out and said they're coming back. Yeah, 502 Sports is the website, 502sports.com. You can get, as a matter of fact, now that I remind myself, I got to get me a Houston Gamblers hoodie because that was the coolest logo I ever saw. Um, and they have all kinds of, they have USFL, they have World League, they have all types of alternate league uh, apparel that you can go find. I love it. Um, I also love our draft series. We only have, what, two or three episodes left going through every single draft choice in the 2021 NFL draft. Yes, that means your team as well and all the teams in your team's division. This is, by the way, Emery, this is the kind of content that's amazing on YouTube because you can go back or or audio, whatever, but either way, you can go back and listen to the whole series. Like, it's not outdated, right? I mean, you can listen to it. None of these guys got cut yet. So you can go back and listen to the AFC West. You can go listen to AFC South. So far, we have did the entire AFC, and then we did NFC East last week, and now we're about to do NFC North. So we got three more weeks, but you can go back and watch or listen to any of these and hear what Emery has to say about your team's draft picks. We'll start today with the Chicago Bears. And I know we've talked about Justin Fields a lot, Emery, but just kind of your thoughts again on Fields as a prospect. Because I thought it was interesting. I don't know if we talked about this, but I thought it was interesting when I had Matt Nagy on a few weeks ago on the Ross Tucker Football Podcast when he acknowledged, you know, the picks and taking the sacks and some of the decisions against Indiana and against Northwestern, which I appreciated because, look, I think he's a really good prospect. But the people that were acting like, I don't understand why he's falling or what, well, he had he had two bad games. Like, and for some people, that that's enough to say, okay, I'm not taking him. Obviously, it wasn't for Nagy. They traded up to get him. They love him, right? Mm-hmm. And for me, it was like, okay, he had two bad games, in which they won, by the way, um, and also two bad games in a total of, what, 20 games at Ohio State? So 18 out of 20 games, he was excellent. I'm taking those chances anyway, because for me, he had the one element that people always underestimate when they look at quarterbacks. I don't care about height, weight, speed. I don't care about arm strength, accuracy. How well do you play when the game is on the line? How well do you handle pressure situations? Can you sustain that success in situational football? That element, that's where Justin Fields is outstanding. So if you're outstanding there, all these other things you can you can coach around, right? You can coach around not having the strongest of arms. You can coach around not being the fastest quarterback. You can coach around a guy that may not be 6'5", 230. So you can't coach around scary. And if you don't have that, that you know, fearlessness bone in your body, you're never going to be successful. You can be the most talented quarterback, but if that element of your game is not there, good luck trying to win games. We've seen guys be successful statistically, but just don't have the success as terms of a winner is concerned, right? So when you look at someone like Justin Fields, you're looking directly at a Deshaun Watson, you're looking at a Russell Wilson, you're looking at a Dak Prescott, you're looking at those guys that just are able to lock in, block out the noise, and focus on a task at hand and not get rattled by pressure. That is quarterbacking one-on-one. That's the elite-level quarterback play that you, you're trying to get uh, from your player. And if you have that, like a Tom Brady has that, that ability to lock in, zero in, 
and focus on the task at hand. He had it at Michigan when he had to save the Wolverines countless times coming back into the game after being benched or not starting in favor of Drew Henson. That is the quarterback that you want quarterback in your team. Everything else is cosmetic. Having that ability to lock in, hone in, and focus, that's what you want. And that, to me, is a winner. And the Bears got themselves one in Justin Fields. All right, their next two picks, second round and fifth round, but they're both O-linemen, Tevin Jenkins from Oklahoma State and Larry Borum from Missouri. I had a second round grade on on Jenkins because I know people were saying that he was like a top 10 pick. I was like, you know, he's he's good. And I think second round is where I would feel comfortable taking him. He goes in the second round. I had a higher grade on Baram out of Missouri because in my notes, I had one of my scouting notes for his strengths. was like, this dude legitimately blocks out the sun. Like when he gets out there on the move, it's he swallows defensive linemen uh, in the run game. So I just think that they did a good job of solidifying bookends at that position. And they were right where they probably should have gone. But for me, they got two good players. In the sixth round, they got Khalil Herbert, the running back from Virginia Tech. Daz Newsom, the wide receiver from North Carolina, who's already broken his collarbone, by the way. And then Thomas Graham, Jr., corner from Oregon. Graham is a, is a solid all-around football player, li- like him as, as, a, as a cornerback prospect, at a position that they needed depth in tremendously. Um, and I like what they're doing at running back. Herbert is a speed guy, explosive guy. They want to get more explosive in the backfield. They already have Tariq Cohen coming back healthy. He's an explosive talent. Undrafted free agent C.J. Marable from Coast Carolina, explosive talent. So you see the the path that they're going down. Herbert can also be a day one core special teamer as a returnman, something that he excelled at Virginia Tech as well. And you, you look at um, Daz Newsom. Once he gets back out there, uh, he's another one of these dynamic jittery guys that can you know really make something happen after the catch he's a slot receiver that can help them you know just convert those first downs but also gives you a little bit of um you know pizzazz as a uh a guy that could do things after the catch let's get to what what did you think of graham i thought he was a good all-around player and 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 the back end of that draft with defensive picks but the undrafted free agents in kamara charles snowden um caleb johnson out of houston baptist they got some legitimate dudes uh, on defense as an undrafted. And that has been a common theme for Chicago the last couple of years because we've seen guys that go undrafted on defense make the team and make an impact. So I thought they did a great job in the eighth round of the draft as well. So um, what, do you, what do you think about Tonga, the D tackle from BYU? Very good point of attack player. Um, it, he does a good job winning versus double teams, which is a skill in and of itself. So you like the fact that they were trying to find someone uh, young that they could bring along and, and help him, you know, uh, provide that depth up front because they, they lost a key player up front, but they were able to get back, um, you know, Eddie Goldman. You know, he's coming back healthy, I believe. So they're going to have some good depth there, and I think Tonga is going to be the one that provides that for him. Let's get to the Detroit Lions, Emery. Um, man, there was certainly a theme with their draft. Yeah, especially uh, Panay Sewell, uh, on Wazuriki, Aleem McNeil. I mean, they went O-line, D-tackle, D-tackle. You don't see teams do that very often. And physical, stuff the run, control the line of scrimmage, D-tackles. Yeah, here's the thing. I think Detroit probably ordered, you know, 15 copies of football game plan scouting guide because you look at what they got. You know, they got one of my top, five offensive linemen, obviously, in Panay Sewell. They got my number one nose tackle in Alim McNeil, my number two defensive tackle on Wu Zariki out of Washington. Um, and then you go in the fourth round, Barnes was a – I had a, you know, a, a high grade on Barnes as an inside backer. So, personally, they nailed the draft according to my, my scout reports. Uh, but that's a common theme, getting better at the point of attack. Because I don't know if you know this, Ross, or maybe you do because – you played in the, along the line of scrimmage, you still can win football games playing good defense and running the football. What do you think Detroit is going to do uh, with the way they attack this draft? They're going to run the football, play stout defense, and win a bunch of games. No doubt that that was their thought process. Um, you sort of talked about it in general. What do you have in particular on Sewell, 
on Wuzurike and McNeil? Well, Sewell to me is someone that's that's physical. And, uh, you know, you have to keep in mind the the reason why he wasn't my number one tackler. He's like my number five, I believe, but still had an 85 grade, which is a Pro Bowl type talent. Um, is the fact that when you're watching his film, you got to remember he's he was 19 years old. So there's a gap of unknown there. You know, we didn't see him as a 20 year old. And now we're going to see him as a 20 year old in the NFL. So you got to wait and see. But the raw talent from what you saw as a 19 year old is definitely impressive. Alim McNeil is a guy that's tough to move off the spot. Uh, you talk about beating double teams. He can do that. He shows a little bit of quickness with his hands so he can beat one on one blocks, kind of can become that pressure player as a nose tackle on who's Ricky has a quickness, the burst off the ball, uh, the savvy of playing a three tech. I think he provides the the quick pressure. And when you team him up with McNeil, now you have a great nose tackle defensive tackle combination in your four man front. So I love that those three picks uh, by Detroit. Next up uh, in round three, they took Melifon Wu, the corner from Syracuse long guy, uh, very surprised at his tape. You know, when you see these tall cornerbacks, you you know they're not going to be as fluid out of their transition, but that's not the case with Melon Fonwu. He's a guy that can, you know, really flip his hips and, and get out those, those that back pedal pretty quickly uh, and drive on the football also from a dead standstill. So he's playing off. He can really drive on the ball. So you can even see him um, playing inside as a slot corner, a taller slot corner, or – as an alley defender, as a safety sort of. So he does give you some precision uh, flexibility and versatility of what he can do on the back end. I thought that was a really good pick as well. I really like round four. Uh, Am- Amon Ra St. Brown, the receiver from USC. I just think he's tough and physical. I just think guys like that make it in the league. Uh, and then Derek Barnes, who you talked about earlier, the linebacker from Purdue. Yeah, Amon Ra St. Brown is someone that just – he has a pro game – like a pro feel to him. He's just savvy, smooth. He's, um, you know, maybe he's not flashy, doesn't have a dance or or some type of signature move, but he's always open, kind of Tyler Boyd-like. He's open, he's productive, he's consistent. And Barnes, I even put this in my notes, when you go back and watch their game versus Nebraska, I don't know if he was suspended for the first half, but he didn't play in the first half. But once he got out there in the second half, the first series of the second half, was probably some of the best linebacking I've seen in quite some time. This dude was in on every play on that opening series. I've never seen a linebacker come out like gangbusters like that and make every play. So not only is this dude someone that can stack and shed like you like to see from the from the position, but he has good bursts. He's a good blitzer. He's uh, arriving with explosiveness upon contact and and always finds the football. So I'm a big Derek Barnes fan. I think he has a chance to start as a rookie. Last but not least, Jamar Jefferson, running back from Oregon State they got in the seventh round. Big fan of him, too, you know, and we talked about him in our preseason show, how lucky Oregon State was to get a prospect like that coming out of high school, and he fits right in. He's kind of cut from the same mold that an Aaron Jones would be or what they have now on the roster. Um, And Jamal Williams, he's a one-cut downhill runner. He finds the cutback lane. He finds – you know, holes, you know, in in tight, confined spaces. You don't see him consistently take losses. So I just want to see how he's going to fit in his backfield that stack now with Williams and DeAndre Swift, who was my number one tailback last year. Uh, and you saw them flirting with Ty Gurley as well. So where does Jamar Jefferson fit uh, in, in this uh, crowded backfield? Because he's super talented. Speaking of talented, uh, I've got a lot of positive traits. I think I'm happy about that. One that is not my hair because I started losing it very early. Thankfully, people gave me the heads up, my doctors, on the two FDA approved medications, which means they work because the FDA approved them. Otherwise, they wouldn't have approved them. One is a topical solution on the top of your head that you rub it on. The other one's a pill I take every morning. Now I do it through Keeps. Why not? Keith, I don't have to go to the doctor anymore to get a prescription. I don't have to go to the drugstore to pick it up. It's sent right to my house. Uh, at this point, you guys have been listening or watching for a long time. At this point, I've been a subscriber to Keeps and a customer for years. If you are ready to take action, 
and prevent hair loss. Go to keeps.com slash draft to receive your first month of treatment for free. Why would you not do that? Like, why would you not get it for a month, see how it goes? That's K-E-E-P-S dot com slash draft to get your first month free. Keeps.com slash draft. I guarantee once you start, you're going to say, oh, my gosh, I should have been doing this years ago. Keeps.com slash draft. Speaking of draft, Emery, let us now get to the Green Bay Packers. Still a lot of drama going on with the Aaron Rodgers situation. Uh, I mean, we're getting play-by-play last week of Jordan Love at minicamp, which always makes me laugh. The first day, he's terrible. They need Aaron back the second day. Oh, my gosh. He's the man. He's playing great. Give me a break. You know, every year, Emory, just looking at it, every year the Packers have a lot of draft picks. I mean, it seems that they always have a lot. First two rounds, Eric Stokes, the Georgia corner, and Josh Myers, the Ohio State center. Yeah, Stokes is a long corner. Gives them some height and length at the position. They have a type, uh, both at corner and at wide receiver, and, and they got their type at, at corner in Stokes, um, who has really good athleticism and, and the length to, to really disrupt, um, you know, the timing of a, of a route or also just cloudy up passing windows. Myers is my number one center in the class. So for my from my perspective, they got the best center, um, and I think he's someone that's going to find a role on the field as a starter in some capacity uh, before it's all said and done. He's just too good to keep off the bench. Round three and four, wide receiver Amari Rogers from Clemson. And guard Royce Newman from Ole Miss. With Rodgers, it gives them another Randall Cobb, you know, someone that can be utilized in the wide receiver run game, someone that's going to have a field day working underneath both versus man and zone coverage. And he's a thick dude, so he's going to break a lot of tackles, give you some run after the catch ability. Freeman, I think, was great value because he's someone that I had a really high grade on. You know, people saw him this year as a tackle, but that was his first year playing tackle. He was really a guard, um, and he's going to go back inside at Ole Miss. When you go back and watch him as a guard, and his tackle film wasn't terrible. So when you combine the fact that now he has the ability to play tackle if you want or dominate as a guard, they got great value, and they always invest in the offensive line. It's one of the things I love about what Green Bay does consistently. Round five, they had two picks to Daryl Slayton, D tackle from Florida, and uh, Shamar Jean Charles, the cornerback from Appalachian State. Yeah, Charles is someone, Jean Charles is someone that's just a feisty corner. They seem to produce those type guys. You know, they had a guy a couple years ago, Clifton Duck, who was outstanding and built the same way. Shamar Jean Charles is someone that's cut from the same cloth, has good ball skills, good instincts, um, and can play inside as a slot corner and you look at Slayton you don't see no tackles that's six five three forty with quick feet and quick hands like he he moves like a three tech in terms of what he does from a you know ball get off perspective from a hand usage perspective and footwork so you just want to see him play consistent but man it's you you can just see the enticing tools from a big girthy guy that can move quick like that. He's going to be a problem up front. Um, I'm curious, just as, as I get to the rest of the line uh, of the picks for the Packers, I didn't ask you this earlier, but you mentioned Swift was your number one running back last year. Yeah, he was my number one overall tailback. And he, he had, I gave him a 90 grade. When you watch someone that's able to string moves together like that and work his way downfield without losing speed and quickness, Man, it's impressive. I said this, I, I could find a tweet too. I said this, I want to say maybe three years ago, like when he was third string behind Sony Michelle, Nick Chubb. I was like, man, this dude Swift can play in the NFL right now. When you talk about vision, footwork, elusiveness, and burst, he has it all. And I can't wait to see him as a lead dog in that Lions backfield. Last three picks for the Packers. Uh, Cole Van Lannan, a guard from Wisconsin. Isaiah McDuffie, linebacker from BC, and Kylan Hill, running back from Mississippi State. These were all good picks. I had solid grades on all of these guys. Van Landon is someone uh, you can't go – again, we talk about this every show, sight unseen. Wisconsin, 
or you know, you know, lineman. Yeah, I'm getting I'm draft him. I don't care how he looks, how he plays. You said Wisconsin offensive lineman, I'm in. And I think when you watch him play, you see him obviously dominating the run game. But I thought he's someone that you can't just walk back into the pocket and pass pro. So he's like a, a anchor up front. So again, providing good depth along that offensive line. Colin Hill is someone that improved this year briefly in his stint with this new staff at Mississippi State. They showed him more so as a receiver, which is something that everybody wanted to see. But as a runner, he's a, a one cut downhill guy, doesn't waste time dancing in the backfield. And as a focused individual, I love the the mentality that he plays with. He has good leadership skills. We saw that on display this year down in Mississippi, uh, getting him to, you know, spearheading that effort to change the flag, the state flag, got that job done. How could you not want someone like that on your football team? And uh, Isaiah McDuffie is quick, speedy in all directions, kind of fits today's mold of what you look for as an inside linebacker and someone that you don't have to take on the field. I thought he was very underrated at BC, and I'm glad to see him get his just due by getting drafted. Not a lot of people were talking about him pre-draft amongst the draft community, but Isaiah McDuffie can really play. I think he's going to see a significant role. If not within that defense early on, he's going to be a core special teamer, and you will talk about him being a significant contributor uh, defensively as the season goes on. Let's get to the Minnesota Vikings to wrap things up here in our NFC North preview First round pick, Christian Darisau. I got to tell you right now, Emery, I am not loving the latest report that he wasn't practicing. They said scar tissue from a January core muscle surgery. I had that surgery. You shouldn't still be having issues with that in June if you had it in January. Something's, something doesn't smell quite right to me there. Yeah, I hope, you know, health gets, you know, straightened out because he was my number one offensive tackle. Um, he looks the part, you know, those those thin ankles, athletic build, bulky guy, but, you know, can move kind of like how Trent Williams is built. You know, he's these club bouncer type offensive linemen. Um, and you saw him play last year, played hurt last year, but still was able to put together some really good tapes. So I hope he can get healthy and stay healthy because he's a plug and play guy up front. Round three, they had four picks in the third round. Kellen Mond, Chaz Surratt, Wyatt Davis, Patrick Jones. I should probably probably should have done this earlier in the show. Kellen Mond, quarterback for Texas A&M. Chaz Surratt, linebacker, North Carolina. Wyatt Davis, guard, Ohio State. Patrick Jones, edge from Pitt. Mond, to me, was intriguing because Kirk Cousins is 51-51-3 and three as a starting quarterback. We talked about that earlier, how you can be successful – but still not have still had the missing ingredient. You know, it's like having uh, you know, fast food pizza. It's still pizza, but it's not better than pizza you'll get from New York, New Jersey, Connecticut. So there's just something missing when you're having that that uh, you know, that pizza from a fast food restaurant. Although there's levels to fast food restaurant pizza, we'll get into that probably some other show. But that's what Kirk Cousins is. You know, he's someone that the stats look great, but for some reason his teams are never in the playoffs. They're either in and have a quick exit or there's just something about those empty calories, the iceberg lettuce of quarterback play. When you're watching Kirk cousins, great dude can put up stats, has good short area accuracy, but there's something missing. And Kellen mind gives them at least someone that can be a bridge to another guy or someone that they can trust in this, in their system to help push the ball downfield vertically more consistently to be a guy that has played a lot of big games at A&M. So Excited to see how he progresses, but at least puts a little bit of uh, warmth under the seat of Kirk Cousins. Now, all those other picks, Surratt, excellent backer. Can play inside or outside, can match up versus backs and tight ends. Quarter Former quarterback that now plays linebacker. You like the smarts there. You talk about Patrick Jones out of Pitt. Um, he was paired up with his teammate, uh, Rashad Weaver, uh, at Pitt. They had two good bookends, and the Vikings needed someone up front that can one get to the quarterback, but also help stabilize that defensive line. Patrick Jones gives them that. You look at uh, the other guy, that they, Wyatt Davis, who comes from our favorite football movie of all time, the program, <laughs> that hit Elvin Mack, the best inside linebacker prospect in fictional movie history. Uh, Wyatt Davis, I thought he had a, a, you know, a down year last year. Probably he had dealt with a lot of injuries, uh, but his 2019 film it was stellar. And he does give them a good prospect up front that can probably come in and start at some point in the season. But when you add Darisau and Davis, you hope the health 
uh, prevails for both guys and they can be consistent. They can reach that level because they are really two good offensive linemen. Then we get to round four. Uh, Kenny Nguongo, the li- the running back from Iowa State, Cameron Bynum, a corner from Cal, and Janarius Robinson, edge rusher from Florida State. Bynum was my favorite prospect they drafted in the fourth round because he he has top tier cover skills. Um, you talk about someone that can match up one on one, take the ball away, has great ball awareness, so he's playing the ball well in coverage. Everything that you want in a corner, athletic, and someone is probably going to end up starting for Minnesota considering what happened this offseason at that position. Um, at least someone is going to play significantly because they did bring in Patrick Peterson. Uh, but I do like Bynum. I think that was a steal in the fourth round. Uh, you look at Robinson out of Florida State, you know, has the physical tools, just wasn't able to put it together consistently. So we'll see if the coaching uh, change for him going from college to pro will help him realize that potential. Uh, you look at – the other guy you, you mentioned, um, Ngaku, you know, from Iowa State. This is an example of someone drafting for special teams. He was a core special teamer at Iowa State, one of the best kickoff returners in the country. I envision him being that same player uh, for the Vikings. People talked about him as if he was going to take some carries away from, you know, uh, Madison or their depth in the backfield. No, he was signed specifically to help you know, ease of loss of what they had in uh, Kadero Patterson a couple years ago. They still are trying to find someone that could be that returnman, but they got one right there in the fourth round out of Iowa State. Fifth round, they took Imir Smith. uh, Marset. Marset, the wide receiver from Iowa. And then they took the the, uh, punter tight end, my favorite dude in the draft, from Central Missouri. Yeah, Zach Davison, we talked about him on the show when it was me, you, and uh, and Dane, and how this guy out of Central Missouri was someone people need to start talking about, and he ends up getting drafted. Uh, athletic, can stretch the field, and if you need someone that can, you know, get you about 44 yards on a punt, he can do that too. So definitely can kill two birds with one stone. Uh, he's not Mitch Berger, but he's good enough to where he can help you out in the pinch if you need someone uh, to punt the football. And, and Smith Marset is a core special teamer with really good speed. Um, and I think, again, strengthening the special teams unit is an underrated aspect of the draft process. And I'm glad the Vikings took that uh, seriously in this draft by getting two guys that can help them out day one as core special teamers. Last NFC North draft pick, another Pitt D lineman. This one, Jalen Twyman. He has so much buzz coming into the season. And it kind of tapered off because he opted out. And then when you dove into the tape, you kind of, you know, put the microscope on his game a little bit more so. And so that's why he fell. He didn't test well. And, you know, he wasn't the dynamic player that people thought. But he's productive. He finds a way to the quarterback. And that, to me, is worth his weight in gold, especially in what people like to consider a passing league. Twyman will find a way in rotation to be productive, especially going uh, to a team like Minnesota where uh, Mike Zimmer Loves defense. He he. That's his calling card. And you think about what he picked up. You know, guys that that had traits. You talk about Jones and also Robinson, but guys that were productive. Jones and um and uh, Twyman. So now they're trying to rebuild the depth along that defensive line. They got some guys that they can you know throw in to the mix as rookies and try to expect those guys to be frontline starters in a year or two. NFC South next week. It should be awesome. Cannot wait to break down all those draft choices, including Emery's own New Orleans Saints. Make sure you check him out on Twitter at FBall Game Plan, Football Game Plan on YouTube. We are at Ross Tucker NFL, at Ross Tucker Pod everywhere. Really appreciate those of you that spread the word in any way. You know, from those of you listening to the Ross Tucker podcast, you can win a little something, something if you do so. Other than that, the keg is kicked. We are all tapped out. Thanks for listening to the College Draft Podcast. Make sure to also subscribe to the Ross Tucker Football Podcast, Fantasy Feast, Even Money, and the Business of Sports. All available at Apple Podcasts, RossTucker.com, or wherever podcasts can be found. A lot of times on the show, I mention DraftKings. Here's what you need to know. You got to be 21 or older, New Jersey, Indiana, or Pennsylvania only. New customers only. Restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com slash Sportsbook for details. Gambling problem, call 100 Gambler or in Indiana, 109 with it. By the way, 
if what I was talking about included a deposit bonus, doesn't always, sometimes it does. Deposit bonus requires 25 times playthrough and deposit bonuses are paid out in site credit.
Hey, hey, what's up? Dude, I heard you won a free roll last night. Yeah, let's go. Let's go. Number freaking, one, baby. About freaking time. One of many to come. Almost took me 300 tries, dude. Oh, you added up the total of n- number of sims you've done? I, yeah, I, by, if I hadn't won one by the end of June for what I'm scheduled now, I would have been 0 for 271. I was going to guess you were going to quit. <laughs> not not be a commentator, but just quit making lineups. So I, I did say that if I won, I was going to quit my job, period. I said it earlier that day, even. But now that I've won, I want more, Glash. I want more. What are you what are you pasting on your shirt here? I can't I can't see this. Here we go. I'll replace the pin. I'm offended. You get You're it? offended. Yeah. Well Aaron Aaron Rodgers is offended. <laughs> you didn't see this? Oh now I feel like an idiot. Oh, come on. Oh, I am an oh. idiot. You have no idea what this is about. No idea. Unreal. Why don't you Google Aaron Rodgers? I'm offended. Okay. If you don't, if if you want to, you don't have to. I'm doing it right now. <laughs> I love how you don't get it. That's great. He was wearing an "I'm offended" T-shirt amid feud with the Packers. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I remember seeing some buzz about this earlier in the week. You know what though? Like. We're so many days removed from this thing. Like, a million things have happened in the world since then. How am I supposed to just pull pull that out? No problem. May or may may not have been used in a TikTok (laughs) video earlier in the week. And I saw... Ah, so reused prop. It's it's a Packers sim, so I figured, eh, you know. You know what? Maybe that's a miss by me, Glash. Sometimes people come on here and say... Dude, you're so different. You don't dress up anymore. So I figured I'd like throw this on. That was like a way of a, a cheap way of dressing up. I um, I don't, know, I don't know if this is my fault or your fault. I think it's fifty fifty. No, like, absolutely. should I have picked up on the reference? Maybe. Was it a, many days ago at this point? Yeah. Like, how many Sun games have been played since then? That's a lot of sun games. <laughs> <laughs> so how you been, bro? We haven't done a sim together since May 25th. And before that, it was since April 20th. We don't do sims together anymore. Wait, how did you... Did you look this up before we started? Yeah, to? I just... I, I So when I put things into my calendar, I put who I do the sims with so I can very easily do some research. I just typed your name into my calendar app and it showed me every time you popped up. It's a good way to stay organized. Yeah. Trace nice. your steps. A great organization. Um, yeah, it, no, I, I love working with you. I know it's, it's a bummer. We, we, we've got the schedule makers here, so. Yeah, what what's going on, Drew? Yeah, I can. <laughs> You've changed, Paul. He, he hates this matchup. Makes Wait, sense. Matchup or pair? That's probably what he meant. Yeah. Oh, okay. He also might hate Vikings backers. You know, like that, whatever that saying is, you put two people together, they, they, we kind of we kind of come on here and cause trouble. Like, A big time. Big time. Yeah. <laughs> like, like we, we can definitely stir the pot and uh, cause trouble. It's been, it's been too long. I haven't gotten in trouble in a long time. Who you got in your lineup, dude? Yeah. Yeah, right. The lineup. The cons. Yeah, do list. that. Yeah. So, uh, Devin Funches in the captain spot. Ah, bunches of Funches. Mm. Aaron Jones, Dalvin Cook. I am offended, Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> Vikings DST. And BC Johnson. Okay. Okay. So, I went with Dalvin Cook in the captain spot because I don't want to be the guy that's not with Dalvin Cook in his captain spot when he goes off. Mm. Devontae Adams. Mercedes Lewis, I'm offended, Rodgers, Mason Crosby, and Alan Lazard. So a couple punt plays to close out the lineup, but I feel good about my top four. Mercedes Lewis is kind of a beast in these things. 
True. So, hey, so uh, it is. pizza. So if if, if you're new, uh, pizza deals are back. Uh oh. I, I didn't I didn't do any at eight. Didn't do any yesterday. You know, cause cough. I couldn't get a word in. So that that I couldn't. Yeah, do- how'd that go? He was excited for it. Yeah, wait, wait, a lot more bickering. It would definitely would have. Ah, uh, see, that's a bummer. I wish I tuned in. For yeah, you would have been pleased. Yep. Yeah, maybe I'll go back. A lot more Probably. hatred. A, a lot more honesty, like genuine hate of, of, of things we do. Not of not us as like people, but just certain things, you know. <laughs> the cough belittling everybody if a contest doesn't fill. Yeah, oh, big time. We got into that. Like you yep. cough, you can be a little nicer. You can be a little bit more excited about your contests. That's yep. all. And he acknowledged that he gets a little passionate. Yeah. Okay. It, it's definitely like a peer pressure thing. Yeah. And I we clear the air on a story that I mentioned on a stream that cough stole an autographed hockey stick from our old office and <laughs> people that tell him that left out the part where I admitted I stole crap too. <laughs> And then just threw in at the end that cough stole stuff. So, so he wasn't saying like I didn't do that. He was just saying that you deserved blame as well. Yeah, like like it wasn't just me throwing him under the bus because gotcha. that is something I would do, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Second and eleven for, I'm offended. Stop, drop, and roll. Aaron Jones. Aaron Jones. So is Aaron Rodgers going to get traded or what? Like, this is getting stupid. Yeah. I don't know. Um, the latest the latest from on the story, I think, is what we heard from the Packers side, which was, we have one plan, no matter who our quarterback is. That fake confidence that Matt LaFleur yeah, has. Yeah, that's so dumb. I mean, well, what else? Again, it's one of the... Like, no, be real with us. Like, hey, Rogers, get your butt back up here, bro. You're under contract. Get up here and let's win a Super Bowl. If you're... You if you're baby. Matt Laf- If you're LaFleur, though, like, I think he... If, if I was Matt LaFleur right now, I'm like, wow. Like, he could really be holding this whole not going for it thing against me way more. But the, his his beef is with the president and the general manager. Gutekunds. So Lafleur's like, I just gotta keep kissing this guy's butt, and uh, I'm gonna get a, I'm gonna be fine. Like, yeah, yeah. I, I'm team. I'm gonna save my job. Yeah. Uh, real quick, we'll, we'll get into this. I promise. I just, I gotta pick the pizza deals now, or it becomes a it, fair. It, the exercise can't happen. It needs, they need to happen now. Get so, into uh, it. Poppy Herb, Sternberger, two catches. Oh, I thought that read two touchdowns. Ooh. Two catches feels like a fine pizza deal because he's when he catches when he gets a catch it's usually that just a catch. You know what, Poppy? I like Dang. that. But we have rules now. You, get, you gotta you gotta give me your Twitter handle and you gotta message me right now because I need to know it's you. Verify it's you, Poppy. Hurry up. Time's wasting. You know, identity crisis was the. The reason why these uh, pizza deals went away the first time. Mike Bizzle asking, uh, let's ask Tommy, if your team loses in the playoffs, what do you immediately do? Find a team to hate or anything else? Um, are you Wait, is there more pizza deals that need to be figured out here? Because I can stew on this for a second. No, keep going. Okay. Um, I think it's different team by team. Like if I go into, let's say like a Stanley cup playoff and I know the Bruins aren't good enough to win the cup finals, they lose in like the first round that happened a few times over the last decade or so. And just sort of become ambivalent about the Stanley cup playoffs. Like I won't watch hockey the rest of the way, but let's say I thought the Pats were definitely going to win the super bowl or should have won the super bowl. Uh, Then I will, it's a weird mix because I'll obviously hate that team a lot that beat them, but then there's part of me that wants that team to win the Super Bowl. So then I can be like, oh, well, at least they lost to the team that won the Super Bowl. See, the Pats are still really good. They The only team that could have beat them is the best team that season. So I like to play that card every now and then. I don't have a hard and fast rule on how I react. I will say this. I try to avoid Sports Center 
or any sort of sports media for 24 hours as much as I possibly can, uh, which is difficult given my job. Uh, I've had to produce post-game shows for teams that I root for losing in championship rounds and conference championship rounds, and that is brutal. I've also got to do it for when they win, which is amazing. So, you know, I've had both sides. But, uh, yeah, I, it's it's different every time. Maybe that's not a good answer, but it just depends. It depends on the season the team's having. Right, the stakes, where you're at. Uh, real quick, yeah. Sternberger already has a catch, so there's actually now a sweat to this. <laughs> Jamal Williams has a catch. Poppy goes, Glass, you know my Twitter. I'm like, Poppy, with, I mean this with all the love and respect in my heart. I don't know your Twitter. I Maybe do not, it's I, at Poppy Herb. I, I just tried that. It's not there. So, <laughs> I literally just searched Poppy Herb. At Poppy. Yeah. Okay, there's the message. Thank you, Poppy. What is it? Give it out. It's pop. Uh, uh, it's at Club uh, Club something. I don't want to okay. Bunches. Touchdown. It wasn't obvious to his name, though. Right, but even e- – okay, listen, everybody, listen. Even if you've been here forever, that's not we, – we ha- we, the rules are rules. We have to play the game. The, the, every, same rules apply to everybody. Yeah. I need I, – you got to send the message. That way I know that's the chain of communication if you win. It's looking like he's going to win. <laughs> I think when, we, <laughs> when I said yes to it, he had a catch. So, hey, Glasheen. Watch the freaking sim, dude. Yeah, that's bad by you, dude, to be yeah. honest. And I know I encouraged it, but, hey, it's your pizza. I think I owe you a pizza. Yeah, you still do, dude. I don't know. I don't even remember what that's from. I don't either. <laughs> you, want to, you want to just give Poppy his or Sternberg? No, absolutely not. No, I'm going to drag this out. Pizza, pizza by association? It's going to be like three years from now and you're finally going to just cash that in Wes on Twitch Aaron Jones outruns and receives Cook in this game not in real life I assume he's talking he's trying to make a pizza deal with him yeah Care Bear Cook nah it's too easy Care Bear Cook gets over 30 points in the flex come on I gotta pick one from Twitch. I gotta be. I gotta. I gotta show some love to the Twitch fam. I, I kind of like that Aaron Jones one because yeah. Dalvin Cook is supposed to be the best player in this sim, right? <laughs> Dalvin Cook has three for minus two. <laughs> I don't know if I feel good about this. Yeah. Well, you now have the luxury of like, time has come off the clock and you can look at the stats. So, well, it's mm. you're sort of in the power seat here. I know it's my game. <laughs> you get to decide. So you can say no to that if you don't if you think you're gonna lose it. <laughs> I think you should have it done by the first quarter though. Yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> There's pressure here. Do I take this awful deal? <laughs> if you got nothing else and you need to get Twitter uh Twitch in the mix, you might have to. Why did I say bring these back? What did prompt you to bring it back? Is because people were telling you you changed? They're like, dude, that was so fun. We should bring them back. <laughs> that was it. It's like, yeah, it's fun for you guys because it's his money buying you pizza. No, but the, the real the reason they went away was because someone ruined it. And in oh, I remember. Yeah, someone like did someone steal your card info or something or no, like what no, happened it, there? It, it, it did not get that bad. We but had, it was like on the way to that, right? Uh, no, no, it really wasn't. What well, what happened? This dude in the chat, his name was Sir Bladeor. I don't know if that's his real name, but that was his YouTube. Probably name. not. Sir Bladeor won, and I said, okay, now you need to message me on social media. It's like I don't have Twitter, so someone used that as like a. Oh, okay. Someone hopped on and go, oh, I'm Sir Bladeor. I just made a Twitter. I remember now. I had, I had multiple Sir Bladeors messaging me one was in texas one was in oklahoma that's actually hilarious that multiple people had the idea to do that evan says so evans i'm, I'm going to attack you here for a second okay. i think it's weird forcing it to be one quarter only hey evans guess what just be happy they're back okay <laughs> like i make a little rule all of a sudden that we got to get these in 
and it's like, you know what, dude? I just, I think it's a little weird that you're just closing it after. I don't think that's weird at all. Because it gives it gives him less game time to figure out like what's going to either benefit him or not. We're starting the second quarter now. I that's was actually not... going to just ask: Are, are we are we going to the uh, quarter break after that play, or yeah, we, we just we, we just need, roll? We need, to, we need to take a breather here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm cool with this to keep rolling. I'm just I'm checking not. in. I need to stop. <laughs> <laughs> totally Evans, cool. Evan says, it "Oh, we're like... rolling." Drew says, "We're rolling." What the hell? <laughs> Let's keep it going, oh baby. Who is that? Was that Sternberger? Stop it. Who is that? Show me Sternberger. No. Oh, yes! <laughs> yes! That's an early... Is it the earliest pizza ever? <laughs> wow. Are you serious right now? That is an early pizza. Damn it! That is amazing. Aaron Rodgers, not we offended. We the quarter break. <laughs> We're not wow. taking another one tonight. <laughs> no, no quarter breaks. Sorry, guys. What the hell? Oh, my God. Pop that it. is oh, hilarious. <laughs> I can't believe that just happened. I can't either. That's fantastic. And that'll be his only, that'll be the only two catches he has the whole game. Yeah, that's it. Yep, I feel like one of the chat now. This is stupid. <laughs> this is rigged. This is ridiculous. You rigged it. <laughs> hey, this is rigged. Wow. Unreal. If anything, that proves they're not also, by the way. No, 100 like, why, why would some commentator be willing to get pizzas? Right, exactly. Like, why would, why would they rig it so the broadcaster has to buy a pizza for someone? Right. Well, doesn't matter. <laughs> Damn. Talk about Sim. Yeah, really. Yep. Sorry. I'm sorry, Drew. Actually, it? I'm I'm kind of not sorry. Like you didn't do the quarter break, so this is my <laughs> this is my revenge on the producers. <laughs> oh, it's so good. All right, he said enough. Jace is kind of a dumb first name. Sorry. Sorry for any of the Jaces out there. Like, you're trying to do two different names or three different names at once there. Just pick one. All right, well, now I'm messaging uh, Poppy. I just said, wow, <laughs> you want it tonight <laughs> or tomorrow? <laughs> <laughs> Demac Lyon says, Glash, I rostered Sternberger, and I can't believe it. Congratulations, Demac Lyon. Well, since we're... Uh... Midway through the second quarter here. Yeah. How's your uh, free roll lineup doing? Because I'm in 66th. I don't even care about it anymore. <laughs> you know how I we... Mean, honestly, I, I, I got my free roll win. I shouldn't even care ever again. You know that whole thing we started the sim with? Like, oh, dude, it's been a while since we've worked together. <laughs> what do you know? We worked together and someone just won a free compete. I know. Maybe we should never work together again. Yeah. Actually, I think we're working together on Wednesday. Well, so cool. I'll Looks be like someone else is getting a pizza. I'll be somewhere. <laughs> Kyle saying what up. He loves this duo. Okay, this is Glash on the broadcast, yes. Can you say, can you tell them I say, hi, Glash, Glash. Morgan says, hello, Glash, Glash. <laughs> glash, Glash, Glash. Glash, Glash, pow, 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 Glash, Glash. Thanks, Morgan, I think. Yeah, I, yep, I think that warrants a thank you. Yeah, she walked away. She just wanted to come by and say that. Actually, I was using the freeze pop holder the other day by the pool. It was a big hit. Yeah, I was asking, I was asking yeah. Lamarca. Lamarca has his. It's going strong. Oh, I've, I haven't seen Lamarca's. It says Big Saxy on it. Oh, that's awesome. I did not know that Lamarca acquired such a thing. Oh, the cooler just fell. I tried to take it out of the pool. Actually, you know something? There it is. Boom. I'm going to go there. Whoa! That was wild. Tipped ball. You know who I blame for this? Who? Jim! It's Jim! Because Jim is so good at his job. That's why we didn't have to take the quarter break. 
I don't know, Jim. I don't know, Jim. I think he needs a pizza in Poppy Land. Jim, Herb needs his pizza, Jim. Jim, it's your fault. Oh, oh Rogers, brutal. So, hey, Jim. <laughs> What the hell? <laughs> Slow down, Jim. <laughs> so Poppy wants his pizza tomorrow. So uh Oh so no, Poppy. Get get it tonight, dude. Come on. Enjoy the victory, you know, in the moment. Jay Sternberger had two catches in the first quarter. Or was it the second was it the beginning of the second? But the I don't actually re I don't remember quarter. which quarter was which because we didn't stop. It's one super cool. Drew said he's probably already had dinner. Leave the guy alone. Maybe he's on a diet. Okay, true. But if he's on a diet, what, is he not going to be on his diet tomorrow? Well, if he was on a diet, why would he get involved with the pizza deal? True. Maybe he's getting a gluten-free pizza. Yeah. Some places have that. It's kind of gross, him? though. Why would I leave him alone? I have to buy this guy a pizza now. <laughs> Order it tonight. Put it in the freezer or fridge. Hey, man, it's his pizza. And if it's fridge, you can eat it tomorrow. You could freeze it, and you could eat it in a few days. How long would you leave a pizza in the fridge for and be able to eat it still? Like, if you get a large pizza and you don't finish it that night, how oh, many dude, days can it go? Me. Yeah, but, like, let's say that you were out and about and you couldn't eat it the next day. Uh, Is it good to eat on Wednesday? Probably. Yeah. Thursday, maybe pushing it. If you get a pizza on Monday, can you eat it on Friday? Uh, is there Does a right it, answer? I, I'm asking. Like, what's your preference? I don't know. <laughs> I never thought about it. When I get pizza, I eat the whole thing. I'm... Yeah, but what if you don't and then it's left over? <laughs> Literally something I've never thought about. <laughs> well, it's time to think about these things, Flash. All right, I'll you be. And I, you and I, are, you and I are doing Sims together again, and now we talk about these things. I'll be sure to think about this when. when think about when, it. Hey, when you come to when you're in Rhode Island at yes. the, end of the end of the summer, I'm gonna bring a pizza and go, dude. I'm gonna put this in your fridge. All right. Yep, hundred percent. And then I will wait fourteen days to eat it. This guy, this guy Poppy, wanted pizza. We brought, I brought the pizza deals back. He wanted freaking pizza. You, you good? Can you believe it? <laughs> you can. Why? Priv making an appearance. Yeah. Bye, Priv. So you're at her aunt's house right now? Yeah. Dog sitting. Yeah. I'm oh, gonna yeah, I've seen I've seen some dogs in the in the social medias. I didn't know if you guys had acquired a dog. You know the spirit of the pizza discussion tonight. I have a blame pie on this on how this was won tonight. <laughs> Dog sitting is also partly responsible for this too. Okay, fair. Remember when Evans made that comment before Jay Sternberger caught his second pass? Like it kind of seems like you hate it. Well, okay, I understand that. This whole thing is like, well, you know, typically I, I accept these deals because like this guy ain't gonna win. <laughs> And he just won. It's amazing. In the second quarter. <laughs> it's so good. Like Yvonne, Yvonne Saunders saying, no, Tommy, after three days, harmful bacteria forms. Okay, good to know. I usually finish my pizza within 48 hours. <laughs> <laughs> like, what's the point of even being here now? Should we just go? Kyle says, are you guys together for Madden After Dark Wednesday night? Buzzword should be Father's Day. I agree with you, Kyle. I think the fa I think the buzzword should be Dad. Just Dad over and over again. And he got an 84 on his humanities test. Next test is the 29th. Good job, Kyle. I agree. I think Dad should be the Father's Day the buzzword. Dad? 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 <laughs> Are you my dad? Dad? 
Thielen. Oh, oh, it looked like he was going to stay up, but he didn't. By the way, Glash, the last sim I did was kind of crazy. Did LaMarca tell you about it? No. Okay, it was tied. There was probably what, guys, like 15 seconds left? Jaguars had the ball. Looked like they were just going to run it out and go to overtime. They were on their own 20. Chris Thompson broke it for an 80-yard touchdown. Ru like a rush up the middle, 80 yards to the house. Essentially a walk-off touchdown. There was one second left, so they did a kickoff afterwards. Tied ball game, basically a walk-off touchdown, 80 yards to the house, Chris Thompson. Was it the first play from scrimmage? No, last play of the game. Basically. No, I know, but it was... Was it like after like a kickoff and then he yeah, ran? Yeah, 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 yeah. It was it was uh one of, it was a situation where they were gonna probably run it out and just go to OT wow. and Chris Thompson just kept going. That's wild. It was awesome. <laughs> we were both completely shocked. And it was one literally one second after Lamarca goes, This thing's going on. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> That's a sack. Oh, no, it's not. He got rid of it. Mike Bizzle saying 80 plus. Yeah, it was it, it was 80 something. I thought it was 80 on the nose, but it was crazy. Are the Sixers going to lose? I hope so. I wish nothing but bad things for the city of Philadelphia. God. Back to that I whole hate, uh, hate watching discussion. I hate the Sixers. I hate the Eagles. I hate the Flyers. I guess I don't care about the Phillies. I kind of like Bryce Harper, actually. So Phillies are fine. All right. I liked those Phillies teams with Jimmy Rollins and Chase Utley and Ryan Howard. Roy Halladay was fun to root for when he wasn't mm -hmm. in the AL East. Cliff Lee, Cole Hamels, Ryan Lynch. Roll, 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 roll. Yeah. Sorry. Glash, Glash starting to watch some NBA on the broadcast. Oh, Glash. <laughs> I've been meaning to say this to you. So, obviously, you're famous for your Apple Watch posts on Instagram. I was given an Apple Watch for my birthday from my amazing fiance Morgan. When was your birthday? Uh, it hasn't happened yet, but she had been holding on to it for a long time, and uh, she just couldn't hang, you know, hold it anymore, so she gave it to me. I was wondering if you wanted to become walkie-talkie friends. Sure. Yes. I'm in. <laughs> Send it. <laughs> awesome. Doing it right now. All right. Are you walkie-talkie friends with anyone else? I thought you, doesn't that just mean like being a friend with someone on your watch? Well, you, well, you have to request them and they have to accept you. Here, right. I'll do it right now. Why are you calling it walkie-talkie? Because you go add friends. No, because it's the walkie. It's the walkie-talkie app. So you clearly don't know what I'm talking about. No, I, I just thought that was just you giving it a dumb name, to be honest. Okay, I'm gonna. Okay, I'm gonna. I'm, very fair. Uh, okay, I'm gonna find you. I'm gonna walkie talkie request you, and we're gonna walkie talkie on this broadcast together, and your mind is gonna be blown. It's my favorite feature, but I just don't know. Like, I don't know off the top of my head who has Apple Watches and who doesn't, so I don't know who to suggest like to be friends with or not you know but i know you have one and i've been waiting to do a sim with you so i could ask you all right have i got Where? it yet no okay i had to scroll to your name okay, also uh, your boy is in second place in the free roll oh there you oh. go walkie talkie here it is okay i added you always allow yes turn on okay tom is not available what I should be. Ooh, connected. Oh, here we go. Walkie talkie has accepted you. Cool. Open walkie talkie. Okay, I'm going to send you one. Here we go. Checking availability. Glash is not available. Make yourself available, Glash. <laughs> it says I'm connecting. Okay. Oh, touch and hold to talk. Hello. Power Rangers? Why isn't it working? Do you have bad Wi-Fi? Hello, this is Glash. Hello. You getting these? No. It says you're not available. 
Huh? <laughs> you what the heck? What the heck, bro? I'm so excited for this. Now it's not working. Well, this was really well timed. Oh, yeah, this connect. connection failed. Here we go. I got you now. Good. Do it. Glass. Check one two. Check one two. That's freaking cool. Uh, in the sim, I'm offended at quarterback. Third and ten, over. And four, over and out. Adams on the catch. Timeout taken by Green Bay, over. <laughs> this is the coolest thing ever. There's a good energy in the sim. I don't know, Jim. Fourth and three. They're going for it. Here's Aaron Jones. First down. Packers. Over. How you doing in the free roll, Jim? I don't know, Jim! How happy are you that I showed you this? This is pretty cool. Gotta, gotta be honest my favorite feature but i just don't know enough people that have apple watches off the top of my head so we i we could do this well all day on a WNBA broadcast i could apple watch walkie talk you if you if you don't make yourself unavailable on those <laughs> interesting like i could walkie talk you on a sim if i'm doing a sim with someone else just ask you a question and then get your live response through your watch in fact, I might do that tomorrow night when it's me, Cough, and Tara Lynn. <laughs> they're going to hate it. <laughs> they're going to just be jealous. Are you kidding me? No, they're going to hate it. <laughs> I would still do it, though, if I was you. Oh, t I'm totally doing it. Yeah. Yeah. So that's been my excitement of today, waiting to do that with you. And I Let didn't remember until the end of the second. I will say, that definitely cheers me up. So thank you. There's good energy in the sim. You didn't say over. Over. <laughs> wow. Oh, that's so good. It's such a good feature. I'm going to be walking around with this thing and you're just going to be barking. I'm going to be, I'm going to be at like Mohegan Sun. They're going to be, who is talking to you? It's going to be like, it's going to be like, uh, here, I'll give you an example. Hey, Glash, I know uh, you're calling a Connecticut Sun game right now, but uh, don't you think that Cough is too much of a bully when it comes to his contests? You're going to be, like, on CBS Sports Network, and that's going to be playing over the air. Maybe – hold on a second. Maybe one of us should leave the room for a minute. Okay, you should leave the room. I'll leave my watch up against the mic. Yeah. Okay, let's try that. Well, let's go through the okay. stats first. Okay, Got to sure. highlight Jay Sternberger, two for 20. <laughs> Poppy won a pizza. Poppy Congrats. says, I'm loving this. Wife got me floor seats to next Saturday's Clippers game for Father's yeah. I want a pizza. It's probably a bad time to mention that I'm holding on to 51 tickets for the Sim playoff. Good for you, Poppy. Nice, nice little weekend. Yep, Rich, Hawks and Bucks. It's not over yet, though. I see 35 seconds, 98-94. Yeah, but it's a five-point game. That's pretty tough when you have, uh, you know, dudes that can't hit free throws on your roster. Hawks, Bucks, can't imagine that the NBA front offices in New York wanted that as their Eastern Conference final. Have to imagine that when Brooklyn lost last night, they were really hoping that the Sixers would win. Two markets that really don't move the needle on the NBA. Atlanta 
historically not great at filling their stadium, even for playoff games. Milwaukee, obviously, big football town. So, bummer from a ratings perspective for those that care about those things. As a media nerd, I, I sometimes kind of track that stuff. Sometimes, all the time. All right, go in the other room and try and walkie talkie me. Yeah, r- real quick, I uh, want to shout out our great team here at DK, our, the Drew Stack, Jim from the Game Ops team. Also, uh, all of you tuning in, happy Father's Day. I know me and LaMarca were talking Father's Day a little bit. Uh, hope all the dads are having a great day. Um, did you, uh, I, I got to send this over to you guys on our Slack, and we can get into this after we test out our, uh, test out our uh, walkie-talkies. Did you, did you see this, uh, the, the, the Suns in four thing has now oh taken, a, taken a different turn. It's it's not good. Uh, if Smash Lanta, if you're watching, uh, I just put a link on Twitch, that that tweet. So this guy has become like a mini celebrity, basically. Yeah, now it's causing folks to... Uh, Try and be the next dude that fights someone in the crowd. To get tickets to a game. And autographed jerseys. Not good. I mean... This is why we should not celebrate violence. Yes, and that's kind of... If you missed it... So, okay, quick backstory. I'm not sure if you saw this. Sons and Four guy is now on Cameo. Freeze Pops. Of course, because of course he is. Yeah. Smash Lanta. Oh, yeah. Cameo. Yeah, I was uh, I was tagged in a tweet from that guy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so, from Smash Lanta. I, I, I was confused. I didn't know who the guy was at first in the video. I was like, oh, is this Smash Lanta talking junk about Cough? And then Cough later in the day clarified, no, that was the Sons and Four Right. We thought Smash knew him, but we just found him on Cameo. Hilarious so, commitment by Smash Lana to do that. Yeah. So. Hey, hey, look, if I was that dude, I would try and capitalize my 15 minutes of fame as much as possible. I get it from his perspective. I'm not condoning what he did, but I understand him trying to monetize it while he can. You gotta get yours, bro. I can't believe Jay Sternberger has two catches for 20 yards. All right, go in the other room and uh, let's test this out. It's great energy in the sim. Has she seen this episode before, or is this a new episode that was recorded, or uh, what's going on with Grays? Over. This is a uh, new episode of Grays Anatomy, 331 into the show. Currently paused. Sarah looking at me with a strange face. Over. Sarah, I apologize. Uh, this is strictly a science experiment. Uh, we will be out of your hair momentarily. Over. It appears as though glass. Oh, <laughs> go. Check one, two. Check, check. Are you there? Uh, Glash, I don't know if you can hear me, but our producers would like us to stop this. <laughs> uh, I, for whatever reason, my, my watch is not allowing me to chat with Glash anymore. I don't know if that's uh, <laughs> because the Sim Lords wanted it to stop, but it was it coincided with the producers saying enough of that. But there we go, dude. We can just do this all day. <laughs> um, Must be asking what the purpose of going in another room is. Just because. Well, having the audio of us speaking into the microphone and hearing the watch, it's to just kind of 
I think the audio is very clear coming through it's the great. Watch. I think it's really good. I'm sort of obsessed with this thing. Add this to the list of another thing where Freeze Pops could have easily just texted me this at like eight <laughs> and said, hey, dude, we should try this watch thing. But like we all do, we decide yeah. I'm going to ask you in the first quarter, like, yeah. let's try this thing. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, I think it's so much better to ask on the air than it is to plan it ahead of time. <laughs> I got nothing. Maybe not. <laughs> Uh, Joe says, you guys are draining the energy from the sim. It's a right. very fair point. Fair very enough. Fair point. Come on, Aaron. First rush, four yards. Bad energy in the sim. <laughs> hey, it worked. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what was going on there. I'm still learning, guys. Demac Lyons says, Glash, my wife just bought four tickets to the Bucks Hawks, so I guess I need to win some real contests to pay for this. There you go, Demac Lyons. Are you in the Atlanta or Milwaukee area? Or are you just going to travel for some good NBA? And do you you want to take me and Freeze Pops? I mean, I'll You're... go. You got four tickets. <laughs> Demac Lyon got tickets to the game? How did the Andersons get tickets? Yeah, he's definitely in Milwaukee because he's a Packers fan. Oh, go Pack go. Hmm. He's probably not loving the old uh, Aaron Rodgers thing right now. I got to say, this has to be a good distraction for Packer fans. Bucks making this playoff run while Aaron Rodgers is pouting and not coming to camp. I love it. I love our, our fellow DK on-air people going to Twitter right now reacting to the NBA. Julian what, Edlow. If yeah. I'm the Sixers, Doc is fired in the morning and no Simmons way. is traded by draft night. I'll Are look, you kidding me? Oh, let me finish. Let me finish. If the six, if I'm the Sixers, Doc is fired in the morning and Simmons is traded by draft night, a late first is fine. What are we talking about here? Awful take, Julian. Wow. No. Explain. You don't trade Ben Simmons. He's an incredible defender. He's a once-in-a-generation type of guy at that position. You build around him to win a championship. You get guys that can take those free throws. If he stinks at free throws and he can't shoot threes, build around him. But, guys, you're saying to trade him, what – what are you getting in, in return that's equal to Ben Simmons? You're not you're not getting a fair trade there. Wait, you you're serious? Oh yeah, you keep Ben Simmons. What are you getting in return that's going to make you better than having Ben Simmons? I don't know, but I would move on. No way. You know why I he's, say that? He's so young, dude. Because he can't. You know, here's the bottom. He can't be their second best player. He can't be the second best player on a championship team. He could be the third guy. They could have had Harden freeze pops for this guy. Well, that's if you can get James Harden, you do that. But, but they, they they missed. They missed, and now maybe, you live with it and you build with it. You, maybe, I think I maybe I think you're starting all you're starting way over. And Bead's window isn't going to be forever. I think you need to try and work with this. Here, here's what they could do. Here's, here's what could happen. I'm, I, I'm just, I'm, did, haven't given this much thought. What if the Zion stuff is real in New Orleans? And if you're, just think about it from New Orleans' perspective. I think everyone would rather have Zion than Ben Simmons. But Correct. Yes. If you're New Orleans, you're like, oh, if we could land with Ben Simmons and come out of this with Ben Simmons, I, I think we'd take it. Maybe. Maybe Portland, Dame Lillard. That's that's what you're hoping for now. If you're one of those teams that, what, if you're a team where your star wants out, maybe you'd be okay with landing with Ben Simmons. I'm not saying it's fair. I'm not saying it's a fair trade, but that's that's what you got to start thinking about. 
I know the chat is just roasting me on this. I'm staying firm on it. I, I don't think you're getting a guy of that caliber. I just don't think you are. Yeah, we, but if we got Drew on here saying CJ McCollum and Rocco. If you can do that, do it. I, but is CJ McCollum and Embiid winning you a championship? No, I don't think so. No, but it might be one of those things that that old adage of taking a step back to take a step forward eventually. Dude, Ida Raider saying I think... Ben Simmons is Kirk Cousins of the NBA. I think he's better than Kirk Cousins, guys. I don't know. I I'll I'll be the guy that dies on that hill. Then I think that ben, I think that you need to try and work with what you got. Because okay. I don't think Embiid's playing for a decade. The only so, way you're t- okay. Here's here's what I think. The only way your take works is if they trade Embiid and get a haul, and you get like you kind of do what I'm not saying you they're completely the completely start over. You start over, but you, Simmons is is one of your guys, and you and you got to hope you draft or sign two players that are way better than him. Yeah. Dude, also, like, your defense take? Trey Young's been going off this series. Yeah, but Trey, Trey Young is different, man. Like, that dude is like... And, and he's off the floor at the end of the game. That's more on Doc, in my mind. He, he can't put him out there. <laughs> he's a liability. Man, I just... I just know what I've seen from Ben Simmons, man. Like, he's a special talent. I'm sorry. He just I, is. I think you're coming from a good place where, like, I think to a lot of people dump on him. Yeah. And I do think he him. takes it unfairly. I do. But but not this, every player can do everything. Not every player needs to be able to do everything. But here's the... At he this does time, a few things really well. At this time of year, though, we, we find out your game parts of your game that can get exploited and it's on the biggest stage yeah but okay you say so does marcus smart uh drew i'd want marcus smart on my team to try and win a championship marcus smart's making like 12 million dollars right now (laughs) not 35 correct the max money thing's tough i'm just saying guys like i don't know what you're getting in return that makes it fair like I think I think Philly loses whatever trade they do that that Ben Simmons is in. I do. I have I have Philly. I have friends from college that went that are big Philly fans. And what cracks me up is they're the same people that would be like retweeting those. What's that Twitter account that like finds the NBA players and that's in that summer gym that they all work out at? You know what I'm talking oh, about? Oh yeah, out in LA. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And there's Ben Simmons draining threes in 2019. Look at, oh, oh, who people say he can't shoot. He's coming. <laughs> Here he comes. He, he won't do it. He won't do it. He won't even shoot. Them. He won't even try. Yeah, he won't even attempt. To find. But that's not his game. <laughs> Dude, come on. He's gotta, you got to have a jump shot in the NBA. Come on. He gets to the hole, baby. The you dude can get to the hole. You don't mean this. I mean, no, obviously I don't. He should be a better shooter by now. It's kind of insane. But I do mean that I don't think you're getting a good enough return to trade Ben Simmons. I think you lose whatever trade you're in that includes Ben Simmons from Philly. Because who's giving up, like, good, unprotected picks? That's what that's what everyone really wants. Someone might get stupid because someone, someone in the NBA that's an executive, might think trying like to save you. Trying a job, yeah. That might, that might think like you, and 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 thinks he's. And look, both can be true. He can be a special talent, but the things he's really special at, they don't shine through well enough at this time of year. And the things he's really bad at do shine through at this time of year. It's a tough position to be in. I don't envy Philly's position here at all. And in hindsight, I'm happy we ended up with Jalen Brown. And, and Jason they Tatum. They yeah. could have had they could have had Tatum. They took Mark Holtz. That's true. Remember that? Dude, think about Mark Oh, yeah. 
They swung and missed on that one and sent him to Orlando. Sure did. They've, they've given this time. It doesn't work. Both of them together doesn't work. Is the process still going on? I don't know. Is it? Are we still in the process? Anyone? Any? We, I actually feel like we don't have a big Philly presence in our chat, ever. It seems like everyone hates Ben Simmons, so they might be Sixers <laughs> fans that just hate Ben Simmons. I'm alone in this. I don't. And here's the thing. I don't love Ben Simmons. I just don't think that you're getting a fair return. I think you just you swallow your pride and deal with it. If I if I were the Sixers, that's I think at this point you're just like okay. You never know, dude. Someone might get stupid. Must, must be. be. I'm not saying he's going to be an all star. Must be, but he could. Must be. Remember, come on, the NBA All Star Game. He's popular. Like he, he, he could easily make an All Star game. Right. You know what I mean? Like that's not really a. That's it's not, not a, a good indicator. Like, that's no. not helping your argument. Like. Right. Woo-hoo. Making an All Star team and making an All NBA team are much different. Also, like this. How about this time of year? Winning. I don't know, dude. Tough spot. I understand the criticism, and I get why people would want to move on. I just think that I'm not being heard. <laughs> I think you're right that he's very talented, and he's a... But do, he's it's just not working. And I, just, you know I think with the right pieces around him, it would work. That's the problem, though. He shouldn't be making $35 million if he's got all these... He's making too much money. That's There's no doubt about it. I, I cannot disagree with you there. He's, he's making too much money. He's to his game. He's making way too much money. But I, I just think a dude that talented... No, There's very few players like him at that position. He can guard almost every position on the floor incredibly fast and crazy wingspan can get to the rim yeah he's better than most players as a point guard i you're, you're i just don't think you give up on a guy like that you're, you're you're describing like the third or fourth best player on a championship team and he's being paid like the second and he is 24 years old too like you know we're not talking about a 32 year old here so I, I'm just, yeah, I mean, you know how it goes now in this league. Like guys are in the league now at 18, 19 years old. He's going to be what year five, year six coming up in the NBA. Yeah, but they don't hit their like true athletic peak until no one wins a championship until they're like 28. In this so, so you think Philadelphia should just run it back? I think they should try and fix everything around those two guys. I'm not giving up those two guys. No, but they but they kind of did. They got Seth Curry. They got Danny Green. They got shooters. They tried that. Lamarca tweeting out Ben Simmons for CJ McCollum makes too much sense for it to actually happen using the wrong two in the tweet. Um, <laughs> he didn't tweet that. You, you're calling him up. <laughs> no, he did. He tweeted that. No, I know, but he didn't tweet. He used the wrong two. Oh yeah, gotcha. Yep, that last part. Um, <laughs> why? I don't understand. I don't understand why that makes too much sense. Why do the Blazers want him to appease Damian Lillard? Does Lillard hate C.J. McCollum? I think C.J. McCollum... I think they really like each other. I think there's there's a difference. I think C.J. McCollum's a fine player, but he's not a star. And maybe- okay, but... Well, then why does that make Philly better? Like, why does that make Philly any closer to winning a championship? Up, it, will, it would open up the paint for Joel Embiid, and he it, it will be... You can... You can you can adjust your offense to center around Embiid's game in the middle. I know he's injury prone, so that we'll have to get over that part of it because I don't know. He's got problems too. We can go there if you want. And then you just surround Embiid with shooters. And the other problem, they paid Tobias Harris, who, again, nice player, but... All-star. Yeah, there you go. All-star, <laughs> Tobias Harris. Excuse me. He, w- he wanted to be an all-star. Remember that whole thing. He also... They they, they, tr- they had to trade Al Horford. They they, they they signed the wrong people. That was a bad. That was a bad signing. See, dude, but they, like, look what they did with Horford. They dumped Horford, and they ended up okay. They were the one seed in the Eastern Conference. We have a safety. Safety, baby. Wow. 
walk like an Egyptian. <laughs> oh, hey, oh. Um, Rich says, I don't know, man. This is a Ben Simmons football sim. It stinks. LOL. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like you just said, they were the one seed with Ben Simmons and Joel Embiid. And they didn't win. Like, the, the Horford thing looked awful, but they, they, they moved on. They, they All set. See you later. They fixed that wound. Just like the Celtics just did. Kemba, hey, okay, see you later. Now, it's not perfect because they had to take on another bad contract. I don't know, man. I'm so happy they traded Kemba. Come I'm on. glad they cut their losses there early. We're doing so good not talking about New England. <laughs> <laughs> I thought this I'm offended sign would carry us for a quarter, but not no, too many. It's, <laughs> lot it's too, many too many days removed. There was a pizza deal won by Poppy. <laughs> we we learned how to use talkies. talkies on our uh, uh, Apple Watches. Yeah. And now we've got DK hosts going on Twitter giving their hot takes about the uh, about the Sixers. Buzzword coming up. Yeah. Yep. I think it, it's got to be dad. Doc Rivers, moments ago, on whether Ben Simmons can play point guard on a championship team. You ready for this? Give it to me. Quote, I don't know the answer to that right now. End quote. Doc is done with him. They're moving him. <laughs> Unless Doc's out too. So I don't. I don't know that you can fire Doc here. I, I agree, and I think I. I get it. He just got the Sixers to the one seed. I agree with you. With Embiid missing a, a decent amount of time. And the, the argument about Doc like collapsing as a coach in these games. Just keep this in mind. Very different situation here. This is one of the youngest teams Doc's ever coached. Right. Outside of that Orlando team that he coached yeah, no, before no. he was in Boston. Right. After after the Boston era, okay, the Clippers with Paul and Griffin, underachieved. Leonard, George, collapse, underachieved. This, even though different. they collapsed a couple games ago, different, different crew here. Like, Doc deserves a lot of credit for even getting them to where they were. But I yes, agree. I think it just so happens Doc is now with a team that's got some flawed uh, superstars. You think that the Sixers wish that they weren't playing the Hawks in this series? Like, does this look a lot different if they're playing the Knicks? I think the Sixers take care of the Knicks in five. Oh, I thought you were getting at this would have been a better look for Philly if they had lost to, like, Milwaukee. No, no, no. Or to like the Nets. At least they can say, "Well, they're the Nets." Well, they're the no. Hawks. I'm saying, I'm saying that the Hawks were a terrible matchup for them. Clearly, I mean, we, I guess it's that point of the night we should say, "Give the Hawks credit." You know, you know that whole thing. Like, oh, we, we just do, we do we do all that. That's what everyone does. We do all this slamming, slam, slam them. They stink. Blah blah. Well, give them give, credit. Give the other team credit. Yeah, the give the other team credit time of the night. Yeah. <laughs> We're less than 10 minutes removed from the end of the game. Did you see the tweet that producer Drew just put in our Slack? Uh, let's see. Look at that, dude. It's awful. Three <laughs> Look, shot attempts. I, I understand the sentiment, and I feel like, you know, I, I'm alone here, and I understand that, but I'm going to fight this battle. I don't Someone. care. That. All right, we're coming up on a on a buzzword here. I will uh, set the mic. Buzzword is dad. Dad. Buzzword is dad tonight for all the great dads out there. We can all Shout come to the dads. On this. All of us with our really really weak basketball takes, our <laughs> thoughts on pizza, our thoughts on this stupid Apple Watch walkie-talkie app that we've discovered we can all come together with the buzzword that unites us dk sim fam don't call it <laughs> coming up on the buzzword
Dad, 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 Daddy, Papa, Papa, Father, Sasha, Sasha, Daddy, Dad, 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 Daddy, Oh, Papa, Papi, Papino, Dad, 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 Dad. Dad, 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 Wait, why would... Andrew, why is that the case? Dad? Oh, I see. Now, I, I, I my bad. I, I read the previous message. Good, hey, good energy in the buzzword tonight. That was a good one. Chat was on top of it tonight. Shout out to Father's Day. Flash, I gotta be honest, I have Flash, no God. idea who to give either of the awards to. Over... Give the uh, not my kid to uh, Vincent. <laughs> Actually, now see, I refuse to give up on him. I uh, open my big mouth, and two more dislikes come in. So people are now <laughs> yeah, trolling that's, me. That's completely your fault. Yeah, absolutely. Should have saw that coming. Well, let's take a look at this thing here. I'm in 66th. I'm in fourth. It's like D Devontae Adams only has four points. Guess how many catches Sternberger still has? Two. Yeah. <laughs> I'm giving the babysitter Billy Award to Devontae Adams. You might want to give the player of the game to Ch Chase Sternberger and then highlight <laughs> that he won Poppy a pizza. That might have to be the case. Let's take I mean, a look, though. You really can't make it up. Like it's it's amazing. It was almost on cue. Unbelievable. You gotta love it. You know what, Devon? Uh, Dalvin Cook had a bad game. Only nine point one five points in my captain spot. I kind of want to revise my babysitter Billy award and give it to Dalvin Cook. You you want more from Dalvin Cook? Fair. So I'm going to give it to Dalvin, but a, a nod of the cap to Devontae Adams, who did not show up tonight either. Dad? And then, honestly, it was such a low-scoring affair. Maybe it's one of these defenses. Maybe it's the Packers' defense for the safety and holding the Vikings to three points. Maybe the Packers' won the Packers defense won the wooden nickel. Chris, good point. Sternberger has more catches than Devontae Adams. <laughs> so bad. Dustin says, I just read that Doc and Ben got into a fist fight in the locker room. Don't, don't think that happened. But hey, this league, man. <laughs> I'm giving it to Green Bay DST. They get the wooden nickel. Congratulations. Everyone on that defense gets a free, small mini ice cream cone at Lions Choice Roast Beef here in St. Louis. Congratulations. Ro Rossi's Fat Cat, a Not My Kid Award on Father's Day. That's a harsh reward today. <laughs> hey, point. for some people, people might think it's Father's Day, but for others, they're saying, hey, that's not my kid. Not a Father's Day over here. If we were on the, I think we, you and I, we could be on the, we could make it to the, we could make it to midnight. We could be on the air and go for another hour. Yeah, hundred percent. I, I hate when that happens. When the Sims, oh, I'm like, I've got, I've got more to say. Like, <laughs> yeah, that was, that was one of the, the quicker Sims of, of my Sim career. A lot happened in that hour. Unreal. I feel like I drank a cappuccino, like right before this thing started. Came out of the gate hot with that Jay Sternberger pizza. 
he caught like he caught one at the end of the first and then instantly second quarter. <laughs> I mean, the whole idea behind the pizza deal, too, is, like, to have a little bit of a sweat. Nothing. All right. Yeah, Daryl, we were talking about that. So if we keep if I keep reading your comments, which I want to do, we'll, we, we'll be here for a while. And these guys want to go to bed. So got to got to move on to tomorrow. And that's why, you know, we'll, we'll have some fun. Uh, you're not here one tomorrow. day at a time. Yeah, you're not here tomorrow. You're, when's your, when are you I back? am Monday night. Pow! I'm here with Terrilyn and Koff. Oh, my three man booth. All right. Good stuff. All right. Thanks to Jim from Game Ops, Drew Stack, Freeze Pops. Great, great job. Poppy uh, will be in touch via Twitter. Uh, you need to give me the details on what pizza you want, where mm. from, and then a time, and I will have to call it in. Awesome. Good for you. Congratulations on your Sternberger. It'll be tricky timing wise because I've got I'm I'm at the Sports Hub tomorrow uh, midday, so it's kind of hoping. Oh, nice. Kind of, kind of was kind of hoping he would do it tonight, but now you're, that's you're with my man Beetle. Beetle and Zoe are going to be at the golf tournament. So, ah, I'll be, I'll be, so you're I'll back be. at the studio holding it down because Hardy's out there kissing babies, taking names. Correct. Exactly. So I probably won't be that involved, but it will be. It'll be yeah, good. There you go. All right. Here is the schedule for tomorrow, June twenty first. 2021 on the DraftKings Dream Stream. Uh, the Sweat. Who's hosting the Sweat? Is Jesse back tomorrow? Do we know? Didn't she move to Italy at this point? Wherever the heck she was? Fair question. <laughs> it's like the longest honeymoon I've ever seen. Oh, Kaufman's hosting the Sweat tomorrow. Excellent. Nice. Extra sweaty. We we can't confirm, but that's a that's a good take. <laughs> Kaufman at 11 o'clock for an hour. Then you get Kaufman again for another hour. Wow. Ravens, Bears, Kaufman and Rossi. 2 p.m., Bengals at the Raiders, Rossi and Kenny. Rossi and Kenny is a spicy combination. Yeah. I don't do a lot of Sims with Kenny, and I think that's probably a good thing. Why? What makes you say that? I feel like I he would be really mean to me. <laughs> well, look at that as a good thing because that yeah. means he'd be being himself. <laughs> That's what I mean. I don't I don't want him to be mean to me. Three p.m. Uh, get the green with Reed and Jeff tomorrow. No Emerson. Jeff hates Christmas. Found that out today. What? Yep. <laughs> I love how I read one ma- like I read a matchup <laughs> in the combo, and you've got a little. Anecdote. This is like yep. this is this is this how you took notes in middle school? Yeah, hundred like, percent. Small bullet. <laughs> this is my way to remember this duo. It's like on your Rolodex, you have one note about each person. Okay, here we go. Ready? Four p.m. Cardinals at Seahawks. Kenny and Christian. Ooh, Christian. If, is he going to be play by play? Is he not? We never know. <laughs> Five o'clock guy just, is guy just talks the whole time. Five o'clock, <laughs> the slate. NBA tomorrow, so I'm sure there will be things to talk about. Chirag and uh, Julian. Couple smart dudes right there. Always go to them for DFS advice. <laughs> you ragged on Julian's take, though. I know. Disagree with him wholeheartedly, but I'll go read his thing to make a lineup. 6 p.m. Started the late slate. Cowboys Chiefs with Glash and Brandon Kristall. BK. He, he always has those great stories. Love hanging out with BK. Hey, 8 o'clock, Steelers at the Chargers. You're going to be there with Kaufman and Tara Lynn. Tara Lynn can no longer claim that she has won more free rolls than me. We are now tied at one. Madden After Dark to wrap up your Monday tomorrow. Giants at the Bucks. Me, Jeff, and Tara Lynn. Wow, three-man booth for Madden After Dark. Sign me up. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, half of those lines... We, we should just record them because you can see them like every night. <laughs> so generic. All right. We need to leave. Uh, Get out great of here. Time. Hopefully, maybe this may have rubbed producer Drew the wrong way to, to not put us <laughs> together. So probably I'll see you in September, dude. Have a, All right. Have a good next summer. T- next time that we need to be together, we'll be together. Other than that, it's not going to happen again. Have a good summer. Uh, Over and out. Yeah, I'll be, I'll be say bye.
That concludes today's dream stream. Good night.